Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome to a 100 day Stardew Valley Marathon. For the purpose of this massive video, I am going to showcase 24 hours of my best 100 day Stardew Valley challenges. All of these 100 day challenges have not been shown in the previous marathon, so this is a brand new 100 day compilation for you to sit down, relax and just watch and fall asleep to. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to become a full time YouTuber again. You can make that happen by just pressing that button. It is free of charge and it helps me out an absolute ton. I wish you all a happy new year and I will see you in the very near future with more 100 day Stardew Valley challenges. So let's get straight into this marathon and let's have some fun. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley but as a honeybee farmer. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome back to another 100 day Stardew Valley challenge. We are going to play through 100 in-game days of Stardew Valley with one primary goal in mind and that is to construct as many bee houses as possible. Let's see how many bee houses we can make, let's see how much honey we can harvest and let's see what we can do with that honey. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. And let's have some fun. It is day number one on our lovely honeybee farm. We start by planting the parasips, running around the map and picking up as many forest buzz as possible. If we want a huge honeybee empire, we're going to need some money to back that claim up. We are going to go straight to Gunther with an artifact we picked up from the ground, which is a cool statue of a chicken that's going to complete a quest that will get us a nice 250 gold, bringing us up to 750 gold. We will then use that money to purchase some lovely potatoes and put them right back on the farm for an even bigger profit. The next day we get the fishing rod from Willy, so we are going to spend today pulling up loads and loads of fish. What better way to make money on day number two? After a while I do head up to the lake area as the fish up here, especially the largemouth bass, are a lot more profitable. Day number three is of course the rainy day, so we will do what we usually do on day number three. Get a fiberglass rod, get some trout soup, get some bait and pull up as many catfish as possible. Today will be a real good money maker for us. With all this money that we are going to make we more or less have two options. We could go all in and get tons of strawberries or we could do an early skull cavern run. Let's see and find out what happens. Day number four starts by watering all the crops. I have a few crops planted there now at the moment. I will make a decision later on if I should multiply this patch by three or four times the size. Or if I should keep it small, keep it simple and focus on other aspects of the game. But before we do that, it is time to prepare for the mines with a backpack upgrade in Pierre's. If we see the lovely villagers of Stardew Valley, we will of course stop and say hi to try to complete the introductions side quest that would give us even more money. I decided to purchase more potatoes today as I need to increase my farming level as quickly as possible so I can unlock the recipe for the bee houses in this game. So you can't go wrong with potatoes in spring, that's of course before you get the lovely overpowered strawberries. Day number 5 we're going straight down into the mines and if we see copper we will of course stop and prioritise that as we are going to need tons of tappers to make tons of bee houses. Bee houses are actually quite expensive to make, they require coal, iron, maple syrup and of course wood which is something that we seem to be lacking in all of the time. <laughs> But I am going to show you some really nice tactics in this video on how you can accumulate huge amounts of wood and how you can accumulate huge amounts of coal without spending a fortune. The next day Clint of course gives us a lovely cosy visit. He will give us the schematics for a furnace which we will need to make copper and iron bars. Today is Saturday. The best is to go to the beach and collect all of the lovely forageables. We do need to increase our forageable level as quickly as possible so we can get three fertilizers so we can start those three farms put on the tappers and start getting some syrups. Oak resins and maple syrups are on the priority list for us in this video. The rest of the day is spent cutting down trees because we are going to need hundreds of thousands of wood. So we're in Cindersap Forest at the moment and the best tip I can give you about this place is that when you're cutting down trees make sure you also take away the stump so that the trees will regrow over time. Super lucky at the end of day number six we got a fairy to boost our crops up for a few days that's going to save us lots of time and lots of energy and resources. So it is time to harvest our first batch of lovely potatoes and thanks to the fairy, we also get to harvest a second batch of potatoes as well. This is going to get our farming level up past 2 which is really nice 
but we will need a few more levels before we can learn the bee house recipe. The best way to increase farming level, especially early on in the game, is to just put all your money into crops and pull those up out of the ground. So I spent all my money today on a huge amount of parsnips. 227 in total. It was going to take the whole day to hoe up the ground, plant these and water them up. But it will pay off greatly a few days from now because of the amount of XP and profit I will make from utilizing this tactic. If we want to make the ultimate honeybee farm, we will have to make some serious sacrifices early on in the game, which is what we're doing right now. So at 6 o'clock at the moment, I'm doing pretty well. I have the whole ground hoed up. I have all the crops planted. Now it's just a matter of watering up the crops as quickly as possible. I'm hoping this will get me to level 6 farming so I can invest in sprinklers, which will automate this task for me in the future. That is the true goal of springs, just getting set up properly with the farming. So then going into summer, we can primarily just focus on building hundreds and hundreds of bee houses. How many bee houses could we make by the end of this video? We're going to find out very soon. <laughs> So it is day number 8, we're back into the mines making our way down. Getting the star drop on floor 100 is always a massive bonus because of the fact that it increases your maximum energy. By the end of day number 8 I decided to sell loads of mining resources that I'm not going to really use. I could keep these into Gunther but I was better after selling them and getting money as lots and lots of money will be needed for strawberries and for other resources especially wood from Robin later on when we have exhausted Stardew Valley of all its trees. But on day number 9 we do get a rainy day which is a huge relief for me. That means I don't have to spend the whole day watering up these crops. I do pull up the first batch of forageables from the farm and I will replace that batch with newly fresh forageables because we are of course going to go for the tea saplings as we are going to need tons of money to get our lovely bee house business up and running. The rest of the day is spent cutting down the rest of the trees that are inside this farm. An axe upgrade is also due so we can get at those stumps as well for additional foraging XP. Day number 10 was another rainy day. I was blessed with luck. And I'm going to spend the whole day now pulling up all of these potatoes. I'm going to get lots of XP from this. That's level 4 farming right there. We're also going to go to Clint today too. And we're going to upgrade a tool. We're going to go with the pickaxe just so we can make faster progress in the mines. The rest of the day is spent cutting down more trees. So the main goal of spring is to accumulate as much wood and money as possible. The more trees we cut down, of course, the more foraging XP we are going to get. I do need level 7 foraging to get tree fertilizer. Level 3 farming unlocks the bee house, but we can't make the bee house at the moment because we need maple syrup. That is the primary resource to make bee houses. So we need to get the tree farms up and running as quickly as possible. Level 5 foraging comes into play. We're going to go with Forester. Trees drop 25% more wood is an absolute no-brainer there because of the amount of wood we are going to need for those bee houses. We're going to go straight back to Pierre, sell him all of the parsnips I have collected. That brings me up to almost 14,500 gold. We're also working on Caroline, giving her daffodils to get her to two hearts, so she will give us the tea sapling recipe, which is extremely overpowered. Demetrius also visits the farm. We're going to go with the mushroom cave, because that is the most profitable setup for this video, as we can get those mushrooms every single day. And not only can we use them for energy, but we can also sell them to make a fairly decent profit as well. Level 5 farming at the end of today, we're going to go with Tiller. Crops were 10% more. We're also going to check the mushroom cave every day going forward to see what kind of mushrooms we can get. If we're super lucky, it can give us purple mushrooms. And not only are they a fabulous resource for energy and health, but they also sell for a pretty nice penny too. We go to Clint as well to upgrade our axe to a copper axe because we're cutting down so many trees. We need to upgrade the axe to save time and energy so we can farm wood more proficiently. We're back down into the mines now, we're making some steady progress. Got down to floor 50 today, got the Tundra Boots. We also made it down to floor 60 for the Crystal Dagger. And we made it down to floor 70 for the Master Slingshot. That we'll need later on if we get the Ginger Island, of course, to get some valuable Golden Walnuts. So, it is day number 13 and we are prepping the land for strawberries. We're going to start by hoeing up the ground and watering as much of it as possible before we go into the event to save us time. I spent all my money on strawberry seeds, I got 135 in total, and I decided to do the Easter event as well, where I face off against some of the toughest kids Stardew Valley has to offer, but they are no match for me as I have done this event approximately 50 times now. <laughs> so I know where all the eggs are, no problem. The prize of course was the straw hat, and for the rest of that evening, I spent the time just putting down the strawberry seeds. 
getting them ready for the next day. So there's quite a number of strawberry seeds there. I also have a lot of spring wild forageables planted in the ground. So it does take a while to water those up every single day, but it will pay off dramatically in a couple of days. I get the copper axe off Clint, and we're back down into the mines. This time we made it to floor 80. I get the firewalker boots. When I come across diamonds like this, it's always so satisfying. Not only do diamonds sell for 750 gold, they also give a lot of mining XP when you get a diamond node. Emeralds are really nice too, and rubies of course, as you can trade those in for spicy eels later. Another diamond today, I was so happy with that. That's 1500 gold in total for selling those. So today was raining. Praise Yoba. I didn't have to water any crops today. I also have a little tree farm going up there. Once I get tree fertilizer, I can speed that progress up dramatically. So I'm back down into the mines today. Floor 100. That is our first of many star drops that we're going to get on this run. We're also going to go down as quickly as we can to get the floor 120 to get the skull key so we can start doing skull cavern runs. Once we get floor 120 in the mines, we do get the skull key, which is really nice. So we just have to access the desert now to do skull cavern runs. We get level 5 mining. We're going to go with plus 1 or per vein. Day 16, look at all our lovely forgeables. We are going to pick all these up, convert these back into spring wild seeds, and then we are going to rinse and repeat. We're going to put the spring wild seeds back into the ground. That's going to give us a lot more forgeables back. And the reason for this isn't actually to make tons of tea saplings. It's just a great way to get foraging XP up as quickly as possible. Is to just invest in hundreds and hundreds of spring, summer, fall and winter wild seeds and just put them into the ground. Because you get a lot more back from that than you would from cutting down trees. Even if you go into the secret woods every day and cut down the big tree stumps, you're still only getting 25 XP for each stump. But the forage is because you can accumulate so many, is a no-brainer when it comes to increasing your foraging skill as quickly as possible. The rest of the day is spent running around the map trying to get as many extra forageables as possible. Because I have the copper axe, I can now get rid of all of the regular tree stumps on the farm. Not only does this free up space and give me hardwood, but it also gives me valuable foraging XP, 25 XP apiece, which is really nice. I now have the foraging skills to make tree fertilizer, so we are going to use that straight away. We do need, unfortunately, fiber to make tree fertilizer. So because of this, we're probably not going to be able to make a whole lot of tea saplings when Caroline does give us the recipe. But it is more important to get the ball rolling with bee houses as quickly as possible. And the fastest way to get the ball rolling with that is to assemble the tree farms and put tappers on those as quickly as possible. The next day is spent in the mines. We are farming copper because we are going to need tons and tons of tappers for all those trees. So we can start getting those lovely valuable resins and syrups. We also spend a great deal of time in the midsection of the mines getting iron as we need lots of iron bars to make the bee houses. We also need lots of coal. So if we come across dust sprites, that's also a huge bonus for us. It is now day number 20 and we are getting there with the bee houses. What you're going to see is a huge surge in bee houses in the next week or so. For now, it's just more prep for these bee houses because there's so many mats needed to make them. That's why you haven't seen them yet, but don't worry, by the end of this video, you are going to see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bee houses. I guarantee you, you will never see as many bee houses that you're going to see in this video. Absolutely guarantee it. So today is the 21st. We are harvesting the strawberries. Our trees have grown. We are setting them up with tappers. Look at all these trees ready to be tapped for maple syrup. We'll worry about the cakes later on. Right now, I just want to get as much maple syrup as possible so I can make tons of bee houses. It will take a few days for these tappers to generate maple syrups, but it will be worth the wait, and the profits we're going to get from the honey is going to be staggering. So I decided to speed up the process here of bee houses, and I spent all my money on copper ores from Clint. I also go back into the mines to get even more copper ore. Not too worried right now in terms of general game progression, Especially if I'm going to Georgia route, the bundles can wait. Right now, I need to get as much ores as I can to start making these bee houses. So Clint is actually a great resource to go to if you're really struggling on time to get those ores together to make bars. So I put more furnaces down on the farm here now. It's also raining today, which is really nice. I made more tappers from all the copper I got. So I have another huge tree farm here. I'm going to put tappers on all these trees. I'm also going to put down hats as well so it'll be super easy to get the maple syrups off these tappers a few days to come 
So we're going to go to Robin. We're going to purchase a few recipes from her so we can get some nice pets. We're going to go with the stone walkway and the brick floor. They're one of my favorite floor recipes to put down on the farm. So this is what the farm looks like right now with the stone walkway pets. And it's going to make it super easy now to harvest all those tappers in a few days. Because nothing will spawn on the ground with those pets set up. So I won't have to use the axe or the pickaxe, you know, to clear the way to get those resources. So we're going to visit the lovely Morris today. We're going to give him 5,000 gold for the lovely Georgia membership. We are going to go to Georgia in this video because I want to get to Ginger Island early. Because when it comes to winter, we're going to have to do a massive conversion with the bee houses and move them over to Ginger Island to make the most of the bee house setup. So we got a really nice quest here today from Shane. He wanted a jade to rub on his nose. But he was offering a lot of money for the jade, so I said, why not? Went into the saloon here, gave him the jade, and the reward was a nice 600 gold. And that's not too bad for a quest as easy as that. The next day, let's just take a look at all these lovely forgeables. What a sight to behold. We are going to harvest all these forgeables. We won't put any more back down into the ground, because I don't think we have enough time to harvest another batch. Plus, I was at the end of my tether when it comes to watering those anyway. But I did manage to make 640 spring wild seeds, which is a huge amount. I could have made more, but I ran out of wild horse radishes. So if I find more horse radishes in the next week, I'll be able to make a lot more spring wild seeds that way. I also got Caroline up to two hearts finally, so I got to enter her lovely sunroom where she will teach me the art of tea saplings. I will make a few tea saplings, of course, just to get the ball rolling with the Georgia upgrades. I also purchased the last backpack upgrade from Pierre to increase my capacity to 36 slots. It was time to go to Clint here now, give him some iron bars and my axe. He would upgrade that to a steel axe in a couple of days. I also went to the flower dance event here. Not to dance with anyone, because I'm not working on anyone in this video. I just wanted to buy more daffodils and dandelions so I could make more spring wild seeds. It's, it's much better to buy them here rather than spend a day and try to find them in the wild, because that's 20 extra forage was right there for a very cheap cost. So I get my steel axe off Clint, it's back down into the mines, I'm on floor 81, I'm gonna farm this floor for the day to get fibre, so I can make tea saplings and tree fertilisers, and those require fibre, so it's going to be a very fibre intensive grind in this video as well, because to make the most out of the bee houses, we are gonna need the fibre to grow the trees, to get the syrups, to make the bee houses, so there is a process for everything that I do. But it is going to pay off in a few days when you see the amount of bee houses that I'm going to start to make. It's going to be hilarious. 25,000 gold from selling the tea saplings. Not bad at all. Day 26, we are going to get the last batch of strawberries. We're going to sell all those to Clint, bringing us up to 70,000 gold. We were loaded with cash at the moment. What are we going to do with that cash? We are going to invest it into the lovely Georgia community. We're going to start, of course, with the bus upgrade so we can access the Skull Caverns and get the lovely resources within. Skull Cavern is a great place to not only farm Iridium ores, but to farm coal, copper, iron and gold ores as well, plus other goodies that you can get down there. Because I have the steel axe, I can now get rid of the large tree stumps on the farm, creating more space, adding more structure to the farm. I am going to use up most of the slots on the farm for bee houses and for other bits and bobs to make the farm look really nice, but you'll get to see that later on in the video. So we are almost finished spring right now, and we're actually going to enter summer with a very strong setup to mass produce bee houses. We're also going to prep for a Skull Cavern run, so we're going to go to the lovely Gus here, and we're going to purchase loads of salads off him, and we're also going to go into the secret woods as well, and we're going to cut down all of these tree stumps to get more hardwood, which we will need later on, and to get more lovely forageable XP. Another great way to get XP, I find, is to get the spring onions here. They don't give a whole lot of XP, you know, per each spring onion, but because so many can spawn at once, it's actually a really nice tactic to get bursts of foraging XP if you're around Cinderstab Forest. So if it is spring and you're around Cinderstab Forest, my advice, just go down to that area and have a look to see if there's spring onions there. It was time for a Skull Cavern run, and we start off by getting a Prismatic Shard on floor 15. I was super happy with that. I also had a triple shot espresso and a spicy eel in my inventory, so my character was moving a lot faster than usual, which is another nice bonus. So I am farming diamonds today, iridium ores, and all of the mining minerals I can get my hands on, because they're going to come in handy for those bee houses that are on. I also get the white turban here. I'm going to swap out my straw hat with that, because the white turban is actually a really cool hat to have. 
Apparently, it's meant to be a very rare drop, but for some reason, I always seem to get tons of white turbans when I do a playthrough. <laughs> so before the day ended, I made a super sprint over to the pylons here in the desert with the Prismatic Shard to get myself a lovely weapon upgrade, the Galaxy Sword. That will be the strongest weapon that you're going to see me use in this playthrough. And it's a very nice weapon indeed. It can be upgraded, of course, using the Ginger Island DLC, but we're not going to go down that route in this video. We are going to put more focus on the bee houses. Speaking of which, it was time to get some poppy seeds and spangle seeds because if these are paired up with the bee houses, we will get different kinds of honey. So there's loads of different combinations you can do with flowers and bee houses. These are the best combinations we can use now in summer at the moment. When it comes to fall, we can of course get the fairy roses and that is going to give us the most profitable honey in the game. And that is when we are going to start making the big bucks. But for now, this setup will have to do. I made almost 25,000 gold today, primarily from selling Iridium Bars and other bits and bobs I got from this called Cavern. So that was a nice profit there and that will allow us to do even more upgrades. I also got 10,000 gold from Mr. Key from getting past floor 25 in the Skull Cavern. So we are going to smelt more bars today. I'm smelting up gold bars at the moment. They will come in handy for making sprinklers later on and for doing tool upgrades. We're also going to get our first batch of maple syrups. And there's tons of maple syrups here to get. The batch over there to the left should be ready either later on or the next day. And I now will be able to make loads of bee houses. But first I had to buy more resources off Clint. I decided to spend all my money and purchase coal because you need lots and lots of coal to make lots and lots of bee houses. So I had the iron bars, I had the maple syrup, I had the wood and I had the coal. It was time to make our first batch of bee houses. 21 in total, not too bad. You will be seeing a lot more to come though. This is just the first batch just to get us started with the bee house challenge. Now it did take a whole season to actually get this set up. But what you're going to see now over the next few days is what I like to call explosive growth because we now have the setups the best way to get cold in my opinion early on is to make charcoal kennels and just burn all the wood you have in it to coal it is cheaper than buying coal off clint you're actually saving 50 gold per coal if you do it this way if you purchase the wood off robert and then convert it into coal it's cheaper than just purchasing coal directly off clint so day number 30 we're getting there that evening all of the tappers on the left hand side of the farm are ready to be collected that's more maybe sorry for us this is what the farm looks like at the moment so it's coming along really nice i have another little tree farm down there i'm actually going to put more tappers on those trees for oak resins for kegs later on because we can actually convert honey into mead and mead is more profitable than wild regular honey i spend a great deal of time today converting all of this wood into coal because i need loads more coal to make a lot more bee houses and the best way to get the ball rolling on this is to break down every single tree Stardew Valley has to offer. I also needed more fiber to make more tree fertilizers because the more tree farms I make, the more wood I'm going to get, the more coal I can get, the more bee houses I can make. So, like I said a few minutes ago, everything has a process. If you can follow those processes, just dig deep, you will be able to amass hundreds of bee houses within the first 100 days of your playthrough. So we're getting copper now as well today because I want to make more tappers. Copper also comes in super handy for making cakes too. So there's no harm in trying to accumulate hundreds and hundreds of copper bars early on in the game. So I just made a new batch of tappers here. Now I'm going to put these on our lovely oak trees to get back oak resins. I decided to give Robin her last axe. Could have given that to her ages ago, but I forgot about it. <laughs> but I'm not going to shy away from 250 gold, especially if the axe is just lying around in my inventory. So I have 10,000 gold. I'm going to spend most of this on wood. Wood is very cheap from Robin in year one. So if you have the gold to spare, my advice, especially if you're going for very specific goals which require tons of wood, just buy it off Robin and save yourself tons and tons of time. Most of that wood will be converted into coal. So we're back down into the mines and we're going to do lots of mine runs in this video because especially the start levels of the mines, it gives us stone, it gives us fiber, it gives us copper, it gives us loads of materials we need to make the ultimate bee house farm so we're getting our first batch of honey today and this is just regular wild honey because our poppies and our spangles haven't fully grown yet i also get access to the bat house area and i am going to use every single resource this area has to offer so i'm going to get all of the fiber that's in this zone all of the stone all of the wood 
this area is going to be empty by the time I am finished with it. So when it comes to maximizing your 100 day challenges, always make the most out of each day. That's the best advice I can give you. And the bathhouse area is actually a really nice place to get lots and lots of fiber. And you can actually make really nice tree farms in the bathhouse area too, if you have the tree fertilizer to spare. So I was back down to the beach to get even more forageables to increase my foraging level. And I also made more tea saplings today too because my money was really low. And I decided to sell more tea saplings just to get a boost in money so I can get a lot more resources off Robin. And I get a lot more upgrades via Clint and Drew Morris. It was time to add a little bit more structure to the farm. So I decided to use up some stone I had to make a stone walkway of floors. I had tons of stone on me at the moment from doing skull cavern runs and going to the mines in general. I wanted to put all of the bee houses on these tiles so that when it comes to farming for honey later on, I'd be able to do it swiftly and efficiently because nothing would grow between the bee houses and nothing would grow between the charcoal kennels. For example, you know, bits of wood or, you know, debris or things like that that you don't want on the farm. So when it comes to making the most out of your day, putting down paths is actually a really nice way to go about collecting resources efficiently. I was back to Robin and I was going to blow all my money on wood again. Some of this wood would be used to go towards constructing bee houses. Some of it would go into the charcoal kennels to make more coal. So I was down to 2,778 gold. But look at the farm right now. All the poppies have grown. So now when I put bee houses beside these poppies, I would get special honey, which will sell for a lot more than the regular type of honey. So over the next week or two, you're going to start seeing huge surges in money and profit because those bee houses just go by themselves all the time. It's such a nice automated way to make loads of money in this game. You just can't go wrong with a bee house. Fair enough, they don't work in winter, but because you have, for example, the desert and because you have Ginger Island, you can use those areas to make sure that your bee houses work all year round. So, speaking of the desert, we do pay a visit today, but not to do a Skull Cavern run, we just want to get all of the wood the desert has to offer. But then back into the mines and we are smelting ores into bars. I spent the rest of my money on bombs because I wanted to do another Skull Cavern run because I needed a lot more minerals. And Skull Cavern is really good to stock up on loads of minerals, not just copper, but especially iron too because loads of iron bars are needed to make the bee houses. But for today, it's just going to be spent in the mines again, getting copper stone and fiber and anything else that might pop up for me. So it was time to restructure the bee houses. I had to pickaxe up these ones because if I tried to harvest the ones out in front, instead I would end up picking up the poppies and that would ruin the setup I have because then I wouldn't be getting the special, you know, spangle honey or poppy honey and I wouldn't be able to make crazy profits. So a quick restructure was needed to make the most out of the bee house setup that I had. It was back to the desert, got some warp totems, got some power ups. It was time for another lovely skull cavern run. And I was on the lookout for everything. I suppose I was more interested in copper and iron than I was with iridium, but if I got iridium, it was nice. I could use it to upgrade tools in the future, and I could also sell the bars to make some decent money as well. But there will come a time where I won't really need iridium to make money RT saplings, because I'm going to be getting so much honey every couple of days, I'm going to end up making millions and millions of gold. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's make more bee houses and put those down on the farm. As you can see, slowly but surely, the bee houses are becoming more plentiful. By the end of this video, you will not believe how many bee houses we end up making. Having the UI Info Suite mod is really handy too for bee house placement. I thought I could put some honey into the luau, but it didn't let me. So I ended up going to the luau with nothing. And this is the first time this happened to me, so I was curious to see what kind of scene I would get by not putting anything in it. And it just get some dialogue here from the governor saying he feels like it's missing someone's unique voice you know which is basically means that without me the luau isn't going to be anything special <laughs> so i just thought i'd show that scene because it was something i never seen before it was back to robin i had loads of money and we were going to use all that money to get more wood to make more bee houses and of course to burn it down into coal so as you can see here now there's a bit of a trend starting to form if we do get loads of money we will use that to purchase wood. I'm also going to make some kegs because I do have a lot of regular wild honey. And it is more profitable to convert that into mead. So later on you're going to see a really cool setup where you're going to have loads of honey and also loads of mead. Now it's only worth as far as I know to convert the regular honey into mead. Most of the other kind of flower honey you get is more profitable. But we'll see anyway as we play along. I made more charcoal kennels today just so I can increase the, um, the coal output that I'm getting. 
It doesn't take too long for the charcoal kindles to convert the wood into coal, so you don't need too many, just enough where you can kind of go around in a loop constantly and get as much coal as you need. So I got 100 melon seeds now today to plant these down in the farm because I wanted to increase my farming level. If I can get farming to level 10, I can get artisan. That would increase the profits I make on meat and honey by 40%, which is staggering. So the next goal was to get my farming level to 10, but I'll still sell the meat and I'll still sell the honey as I get it because I still need lots and lots of money to make more bee houses. Speaking of which, a lot of our bee houses have now produced more honey for us, so we're getting summer spangle honey here, which is really nice. So I'm going to sell all that, and I make a huge profit today of 47,319 gold. The poppy honey is much more profitable than the summer spangle honey, but I decided to get both crops just for a bit of diversity. It was packed to Clint today, we are going to get the gold axe upgrade from him, so we can cut down trees even faster. And then we were going to pay Marit a lovely visit and get another upgrade today. We're going to go for the minecarts just to get the fast travel around Stardew Valley. It was then back into the mines and we were going to smelt ores into bars. We needed tons and tons of iron bars for more bee houses. So you've probably noticed by now that there's a trend here. And we kind of stick to this trend throughout the whole video. Where we constantly need to make iron bars. We constantly need to buy wood. And we constantly need to get coal and maple syrup to make more and more bee houses. This is what the farm looked like at the moment. So as you can see, it's coming along pretty nicely. So I decided to visit a traveling cart merchant today just to get that rare seed so we can get another star drop and fall off of the statue inside of Secret Woods. That will come in super handy in a few days. And this is just a cool cutscene here of Morris working super hard <laughs> and fixing up the minecarts. The next day we're back in the mines and we are getting more iron bars. We're going to visit Morris again because we can afford it. So we have a choice here between the bridge, the greenhouse and the panning. I decided to go with the panning because it's the cheapest one there. And I wanted some money left over to get wood and other supplies off Robin. So it was back to the shop and I was going to spend all of my money on more wood. And I only ended up getting 856 pieces there. But that's okay, we can convert that back down into coal. Or we can use it just to make more bee houses as well. Speaking of which, 21 more bee houses ready to go. So at the moment, we're kind of getting small increments every few days of more bee houses, more bee houses. But eventually, I should be able to make a lot more in one go. I got the gold axe off Clint, which is great. I can go ahead now and cut down a lot more trees for wood. I'm going to clear away a section here now on the farm. I'm going to put down lots and lots of trees. I have lots and lots of tree fertilizer here too. So I'll be able to make a nice little tree farm down here in the corner. And I can put tappers on these trees if I wish, or I can just cut down the trees if I want to get more wood. I will eventually come back later on and I'll put down a stone walkway path. So if I do want to cut down the trees, it'll be super easy to put down seeds. It was then back to Sinners that forest. For some reason, the wizard is going for a stroll there. I don't know if he does that normally, or if it's something to do with one of the mods I have installed. But I don't actually have a whole lot of mods set up for this challenge video. So if anybody knows why he's going for weird strolls, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what mod is the culprit for that. Or maybe it's just his normal programming, who knows? So it is day number 45, we're almost halfway to the challenge. And look at all of the bee houses that we have set up and look at all of the honey we are getting. We also have a nice little cluster of trees down here in the bottom right hand side of the farm. And it's going to give us lots and lots of wood back. And I'm also getting the foraging skill up too, which is great. So I'm back to floor 81 today. I'm farming fiber. But if I see enemies or if I see diamonds or crates or barrels, I would, of course, hit them open as well. Because you never know what you might get. This, in my opinion, is one of the best methods in the game when it comes to farming fiber. Of course, the better method would be to get fiber seeds, but we don't have the community quests yet. And sometimes it can be very hit and miss in terms of when you're going to get the community cleanup quest from Linus to give you the fiber seeds. So it's time for another upgrade here with Morris. We're going to go with the bridge this time. This will activate the quarry for us. So we can use all of the space in the quarry for projects. We can also go into the quarry cave. And we can do some farming inside there too if we need to. We was back to the regular mines today. And we were just going to smelt some iridium ores into iridium bars. I can sell those to make extra money if I wish. And we also have a nice tree farm over here with oak resins. That I'm actually stocking up on now because I want to make more cakes in the near future. The time will come where I will need loads of cakes to convert regular honey into mead. So it's back to Clint with the pickaxe upgrade today. I'm going to get a gold pickaxe just to make life a little bit easier for myself if I want to do any future Scott Cavern runs. 
and we are smelting more iridium ores into bars. So the bars are super handy for making quick money, or if I want bursts of money, I can just set a few iridium bars here and there. But I also need iridium bars if I want to upgrade tools to iridium tier tools, or if I want to repair the ship, you know, for Willy, so I can go over to Ginger Island. So there's a few uses for the bars at the moment. So today I'm going to get lots of maple syrup, and I'm getting summer spangled honeys as well. I also make more tree fertilizer, just so all of these lovely seeds can grow super fast. And we're back down into Cindersap Forest, and the great thing about Cindersap Forest is the trees actually grow back very quick down here. There's actually a lot of trees to cut down, but even if you end up wiping out the whole forest, you'd be surprised if you give it a week or two how many trees actually bounce back for you to cut down again. It does save a little bit of money, especially if you're going to robin all the time buying wood like myself. So, it was time to visit the quarry, and what I was going to do here is basically take up everything and just have it as a whole clear ground and eventually then I'd move stuff over here. So all of the trees here, all of the ores were going to be mined up and the trees were going to be cut down. And once this was done, I'd then go into the quarry cave and I'd just get the gold in sight. Don't really need the gold in sight, but I might as well grab it since the cave was open and there's always a chance I can get a magic rock candy off these haunted skulls. Now it is extremely rare, but you can also get rings like this. I just got an aquamarine ring there that's 10% critical rate. Increased chance, which is nice. You can also get really nice clothes from fighting the haunted skulls too, and that cave can be farmed every single day, which is handy if you look for something else to do with your time. So, this is what our farm looks like on day 49. As we can see, there's lots of honey to be harvested. I'm hoping when those melons fully grow, it will be enough to get me to farming level 10, so I can get more money for selling all the honey and for selling the mead that's going to come in the future. So, I decided to sell all of the honey to Pierre today just to get some extra cash so I could go back to Morris, get the last upgrade, which is the greenhouse. Now I don't actually use the greenhouse in this playthrough because there wasn't much point because the sole focus was on the bee houses. But as far as I know, unless you use a mod, the bee houses don't actually work inside the greenhouse. So I got it just because I needed access to Ginger Island. So all of these trees have fully grown. I've put down a path here. I'm going to cut all these trees down, but putting seeds down will be super easy because I can just run along and just hold down right click to put down the seeds because the pathways are there. So it'll be super easy to set that up going forward. It was time to make more bee houses. I'm at 26 more bee houses there now at the moment. So I'm going to put those down along here. Just in front of these poppies. Now it is the 22nd of summer. So I'm not going to get a whole lot of poppy honey anymore. But those bee houses will come in super handy when fall comes in. When I get fairy roses. That is when we're going to see the big money. So I get a lovely cutscene here of Morris and Co. Celebrate. The lovely restoration of the Georgia Community Center. Look at it in all its splendor and glory. It is back to Clint. We are going to get him to break open tons of geodes here in the hopes to get the key off Gunther so we can access the sores and meet lovely Krobus and purchase his exotic wares, like the Star Job, for example. We're back to cutting down more trees in Sinusap Forest. Wood is something that is always needed, and we're going to be cutting down trees until day 100. Back into the mines to get more iron ores. If I see dust sprites though, I will absolutely fight them as well because they can drop coal. The one thing I would have done differently if I had to do this challenge all over again would be to farm the dust sprites much earlier to get the burglar ring so that they drop double coal. Uh, but it's a bit too late now to kind of, you know, do that because I'm at the stage now where I'm getting loads and loads of money so I can just buy lots of wood off Robert and just convert it into coal. But if I had more time, I probably would have went for that monster eradication goal. So I'm on level 8 farmer at the moment. Pulled up all of the melons. Is that enough to get me to level 10 farming? We'll soon find out. If it isn't, the pumpkins will definitely get me there. It was then back to the quarry, and I have lots of stone walkway paths. I'm going to put all these down. I'm going to set up a really nice charcoal kennel area here. And this is going to be the place where I am going to get hundreds and thousands of coal. Look at all these charcoal kennels ready to go. I have 51,680 gold. That gold is going to be put to wood. And that wood is going to be converted into coal. So basically, we're not going to have any more problems when it comes to wood or coal. Speaking of wood, that's another tree farm we're going to knock down. So I've got loads of money here now to spend with Robin. And I'm going to spend a lot of this money to get tons of wood. Look at all the stacks I just got there. Thousands upon thousands of wood ready to go, ready to be put into these charcoal kittens to get back coal. It's much cheaper to do it this way than it would be to buy coal directly from Clint. You're actually saving 50 gold uh, per coal by doing it this way. 
So I ended up getting almost a full stack of coal by converting all that wood into coal, which is amazing. All I have to do now is buy more wood off Robin and I'll be able to make tons more bee houses, which is amazing. Speaking of which, it is day number 54 and we are making 52 bee houses ready to go. And this is going to be a magnificent setup for fall, especially when we get the fairy roses. So I'm going to put these bee houses down here and there's still a lot more space for a lot more bee houses. I suppose the big goal is how many bee houses can we make? Can we fill up the whole farm? with bee houses so i got another prismatic shard today super happy with that i can give that one into gunther um i got a couple of more treasures today as well so i got bombs here i also got an auto petter but i forgot to record it it's no big deal though because we don't even use the auto petter i ended up just throwing it away because i wasn't going to purchase any animals for this challenge because it was just a pure bee house challenge so i got on really well in the skull cavern today i got lots of iridium ores lots of coal lots of copper Lots of iron, as we can see there. Clusters like this is always really nice to get. I wasn't too keen on getting prismatic shards or anything like that. Finally got level 10 mining. I almost selected the prospector. Chance to find coal doubled. You know, that, that did make sense to me. But I went with the blacksmith because I can just sell the bars, buy more wood off Robin, and convert it into coal. So blacksmith all the way. Look at all the honey I'm going to get today. I'm going to sell all this honey. I'm going to make an absolute fortune. I have 22,000 gold at the moment, but when I sell all that honey, I'm going to have probably up and above the 50 or 60,000 gold easily. I'm going to make a lot more iron bars, and I'm going to fix up the boat for Willy so we can get access to Ginger Island. So I just needed five battery packs, five iridium bars, and 200 hardwood. And I had all those materials on hand, so we were good to go. I made almost 83,000 gold by the end of the end of 55 there by selling poppy honey and summer spangle honey. I have 105,000 gold at the moment. What are we going to do with that? Well, we are going to invest it in our lovely beekeeping business, of course. But before we could do so, it was back down to 481. We had to farm more fiber because we needed to make more tree fertilizer to make more tree farms. Now, you could argue that you could have just not done this and just bought more wood off Robin anyway instead of cutting down trees. But I also wanted to increase my forage level as quickly as possible and the best way to do that was to make huge giant tree farms at this stage of the game. So day 57, the first day of fall, we are in Piers. We are purchasing fairy seeds. So I need a good few to spread around the farm so that I can make fairy rose honey which is the most profitable honey in the game. I also purchased 100 pumpkin seeds as well to grow those in the hopes to get my farm level up to level 10 so I can get 40% more profit for selling my honey and for setting future mead that we're going to make as well. So I'm going to plant all of these lovely pumpkin seeds. The sprinklers are set up, so I only have to water them once if I want to harvest them one day earlier. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm also going to go ahead eventually and I'm going to get Deluxe Speed Grow just to increase the growth rate by 25%, just to make all that grow even faster because the fairy roses do take quite some time to grow. And the sooner they grow, the sooner I can get lots of money. I'm going to get Robin's project community quest there to get hardwood. That'll be easy enough to do as well. And I'm going to give Willy 1,000 gold so he will give me a ride on over to Ginger Island. So we can set up the farm over there for more bee houses. So the great thing about Ginger Island is that the bee houses will work all year round. As you don't get a winter over in Ginger Island, which is great. So I'm just going to spend today getting the usual golden walnuts. Now this isn't going to be a golden walnut guide. If you do need a golden walnut guide... I will have a link in the description of this video that will showcase my golden walnut guide to get all of the golden walnuts in this game quickly and efficiently. So I gathered just enough golden walnuts to get the farm activated today. This was the farmhouse so I could sleep here now tonight and when tomorrow rolls around I will start over on Ginger Island and that's Stardew Valley. And I could use this land for more bee houses so very exciting times indeed. I decided to go for a watering can upgrade with Clint just to make the lava cave a little bit easier which is the cave over in Ginger Island and day number 59 here just look at all this glorious honey now it's just all wild honey at the moment because the fairy roses are still growing but I can put all that honey into the kegs and I can get back mead which is a little bit more profitable so I'm going to spend a great deal of money here now on more wood from Robin and we're back into the mines again to gather more iron ore, more coal, and other resources that will show up along the way. So this is something that we're doing a lot, but the reason being is this is probably one of the best ways to get our hands on iron. This is just go in here all the time and just farm it. We could buy it off Clint too, but it is extremely expensive to buy ores off Clint. 
Maybe if I get a little bit more money together, I could just buy stacks and stacks of ores off then to speed up progression. Speaking of progression, we're going to visit Sandy today. I'm going to get some deluxe speed grow just to speed up the progress with the fairy roses and the pumpkins back on the farm. I'm also going to spend a great deal of time today just clearing all the trees in the desert because it's extra wood for me and because I have the gold axe, it won't take too long at all. So I'm going to make more bee houses today, 42 in total, ready to go. I'm going to plant them right down here and as we can see, the farm is starting to look like a proper bee house farm now. It's got hundreds of bee houses on it. I get my copper watering can off Clint, super happy with that. It is time for another tool upgrade. I was going to go with the Iridium Axe, but I decided to do the Pickaxe instead because the Pickaxe is so handy when you go into Skull Cavern because it can just wipe out nodes in one shot. I had to buy more of Fair Roses off Pierre here now because I need to put these over in Ginger Island just to get the ball rolling over there with the Fair Rose honey. The great thing about Ginger Island is that the Fair Roses will remain active over there all year round, making Ginger Island a very profitable place. So I went to Willy, I had to sell him some bits and bobs I found on the beach to afford a ticket to get over to Ginger Island because I spent all my money on fairy roses. Not to worry though, we did get over in one piece. I put down the fairy roses and spent the rest of the day just cutting down the trees, specifically the hardwood trees, just to complete Robin's community quest, which we done right here. That's 100 hardwood for Robin. That's a quest complete, 2,000 gold in the bag. And Robin will surely send us on a really cool recipe the next day for that quest also. So I decided to visit Pierre again today. I'm going to sell him all of my lovely honey. That puts me up to 45,000 gold. And I'm going to buy even more fairy seeds to put over on Ginger Island. So I'm going to spend all my money on more fairy seeds here because I've got big plans for Ginger Island. And you will see those plans in the next week or two. In game, of course. Not in real life. <laughs> so we are back on our lovely Stardew Valley farm. Look at all the mead. Look at all of the honey. If you're thinking to yourself now, whoa, that's a lot of bee houses. I would just like to say, you've seen nothing yet. Things are going to really start ramping up from here on out because the money now is starting to flow. This means I can get upgrades a lot faster. For example, the axe upgrade there could be afforded no problem at all. I'll be able to get lots more wood off Robin. The only thing holding us back at the moment is maple syrup and iron bars. If we can get around that, we'll be able to make hundreds and thousands of bee houses. It's time for another special orders quest we're gonna go with crop order because we're already grown the pumpkins so it was no brenner to take that one we then decided to go into the volcano dungeon today just to get some more golden wallets and get some more bips and bobs i got a dwarf hammer out of a chest and the dwarf weapons are actually really good not as good as the dragon tooth weapons but they're still pretty decent i also got a prismatic shard as well from the summit so i got my iridium axe back off clint it only needed three swings now to fully break down a tree, which was great. I can now clear these forest farms very quickly indeed. That's going to be hundreds and thousands of more wood in my inventory to make even more bee houses. So that night, more maple syrup has spawned on the tappers. So I'm going to harvest all this and I should be in a good place now to make more bee houses. That's 46 more bee houses ready to go. Where are we going to put these bee houses? That's the question. Fortunately, the farm did have a lot more space on it. But I wanted to put them close to fairy roses to maximize profits. So I decided to put them just beside the string of bee houses right here. On the left and I'll also do the same on the right as well. The big challenge is going to be bringing all these bee houses over to Ginger Island. The Ginger Island farm isn't as big as the Stardew Valley farm. So it's going to be quite a challenge, you know, setting all these up for maximum profits. But when it comes to winter, we will tackle that. So I got all the pumpkins today. I'm going to make huge profits from that. I also picked up the berry basket for Linus because I was feeling, you know, a little bit sorry for him because he had no way to forage his lovely berries. I also gave him a berry on top of that too just to make him super happy. So there you go, Linus. Have a good fall for yourself. We finally got level 10 farming. Of course, we're going to go with artisan. Artisan goods are worth 40% more. This is going to really, <laughs> really bring in the money. Speaking of money, 17,600 gold from the governor for completing the crop order request. Not too shabby at all. So it was time to get more lovely fairy rose honey today. As the fairy roses were fully grown, we are now going to start seeing some serious profits coming into the farm. What are we going to do with all those profits? You guessed it. We are going to buy some wood off rabbit, convert it into coal, and farm some iron to make even more bee houses. But before we do that, it was time to cycle through all of the lovely buildings here and build ourselves a nice stables. What kind of amount did we get for this video? You're going to see it in just a few days. It's a very unique mount. 
and it did take me a while to pull it down off Nexus mods, so I hope you like it. It was back to Clint, but this time it wasn't for any tool upgrades, it was to process some geodes because I still hadn't got the key from Gunther to get into the sores. Let's see how much money I made today. 275,000 gold from selling the overpowered. Very Rose Honey, it sells at 952 gold per honey, which is absolutely insane. It was then back to Clint with 407,000 gold. What are you going to do with that? Why are we going to buy some iron ores off Clint? Why not? What else are we going to do with our money? So I purchased a full stack of iron ores here with that. That is going to save me an incredible amount of time in terms of making bee houses. All that was holding me back now was maple syrups. And in all fairness, I had enough trees on the farm to make a good few bee houses every couple of days. I actually had a huge amount of maple syrups stockpiled. So I'm going to smelt all of these iron ores into iron bars. And then I'm going to let loose on the bee houses. Let's see how many bee houses we can make. But before that, it was time to go back to Robin and purchase even more wood. I had over 250,000 gold to spend on wood. And you can bet your uncle that I was going to spend more or less all of it on wood. Just look at all the wood I bought there. What are we going to do with that wood? We are going to use it to make lovely bee houses. Let's see how many bee houses we can make. Let's see, can we get over 100? Oh, we did. So as you can see, I made an absolute ton of bee houses. 141 bee houses in total, ready to be deployed to the lovely Stardew Valley farm. Where are we going to put these bee houses? Down to the bottom left here would be a perfect spot just in range of the fair roses as well any excess bee houses that were left over i just moved them on over to ginger island there was fair roses over there as well so this is our new mount what are we going to call it the pencil because it looked like a pencil with wings so let's just have a quick tour of the farm we're on day 71 and we're going really strong here now with the bee houses as we can see we have hundreds of bee houses set up all ready to be harvested I'm going to make approximately, I would say, 400,000 or 500,000 gold from this setup that I have at the moment. And that will only increase as the days progress because we're going to be making even more bee houses. So, it was time for another special order's quest. Robin's resource rush, 1,000 pieces of wood. No problem at all. We had plenty of trees on the farm to go around. So, I wasn't farming that much fiber anymore. So, the trees weren't growing as fast. But that was okay. I had enough bee houses anyway to, you know to sort me out. I did go to the Stardew Valley Fair, and I ended up coming second place. Not too shabby at all. 500 star tokens. I just gambled those. I always gamble on green. Green seems to win most of the time. And I got enough star tokens in to get a star drop. The next day, it was back to Sinistap Forest. I was just cutting down some trees. Didn't really need to cut down the trees, but the reason why I did is because it just didn't take all that time, and I had the Iridium Axe, so it literally just took three swings to cut them all down. So I said, why not? I also wanted to complete Robin's resource rush as quickly as possible for another 2,500 gold in the bag. So for the rest of the day, I just went around with the lovely pencil mount, just cutting down trees, picking up forages, visited Robin again. And Robin must be a millionaire by now because we were going to invest a lot more money in wood. Some of this would be converted into coal. The rest of it would be used to make more bee houses. Look at all the wood I have on me at the moment. With the rest of my money, I decided to purchase another full stack of iron ores. At this moment in time, nothing was stopping me to mass produce bee houses. Went back to the quarry area here, and I was going to convert all of this lovely wood into coal. So that was the coal sorted, the wood was sorted, the iron bars were sorted, and I had loads of maple syrup back on the farm to mass produce more bee houses. What were we going to do with all those bee houses? Why, we're going to try our best to press them down on Stardew Valley. If we didn't have the space or the setup for it, we'd move them on over to Ginger Island. The big challenge, of course, as I mentioned a few days ago, was moving all these over to Ginger Island. It was going to be quite the task indeed. So let's make more bee houses right now. As we can see, I made well over 100 here. I made 143 bee houses in total. It's just so satisfying to make so many bee houses. So as we can see, it's really starting to ramp up right now. I had to find a place to put these bee houses and try to keep them in range of the fairy roses so they can get fairy rose honey. So I put a stack of them down there, but I still had a lot left. So after I put them all down, this is what the new setup looks like. As you can see, we have hundreds and hundreds of bee houses. We end up with approximately over a thousand bee houses by the time we're finished with the challenge, just so you know, an absolute absurd amount of bee houses. And all the money I spent, I get it back straight away. 
just almost half a million gold right there by just selling honey. Money just wasn't a problem anymore. If I needed ores, there wasn't much point going back into the mines unless it was just out of boredom because there was nothing else to do. I could just buy ores off Clint. If I needed wood, I could just buy wood off Robin. Speaking of which, it was back to Robin. <laughs> I was going to buy more wood. Sure, it's only 10 gold for one piece of wood. Now, it does become a lot more expensive in year two. So the best advice I can give is that if you need wood for massive projects, buy it off Robin in year one while it is super cheap. Because once you're finished year one, Robin, you know, isn't very nice to you anymore. So I decided to make lots of cakes today instead of bee houses because winter was coming in and I wasn't going to have enough space over on Ginger Island, you know, for tons and tons of bee houses connected to fairy roses. So I would be converting a lot of honey into mead. So it was time to cut down all these trees and I was going to put the kegs down here instead because I didn't really I didn't really need the tree farms down here anymore. So what we're going to have down here is a huge area for processing mead, which is a really nice artisan good and it's also very profitable. So I went to the Secret Woods today and my sweet gem berry was finally ready to be uh, traded in for a star drop. That's another star drop in the bag. It was time for another special orders quest. I had a choice between fighting enemies and fishing. I decided to go with Juicy Bugs Wanted because my fishing skill wasn't too great and I didn't really want to pick back up the fishing rod at this stage of the game and trying to fish again. So I went back down to the regular version of the mines here now and I was primarily killing bugs but if I saw copper ore and stone I'd get those as well and if I saw the fibre I'd pick that up too if I wanted to make three fertilizers going forward. So it was now the 23rd, day number 79. Look at all of our lovely bee houses. Have you ever seen so much honey in your life from playing Stardew Valley? This is what a proper honey farm looks like, in my opinion, of course. <laughs> my personal opinion. As we can see, there was lots of honey to be had. And it would take quite some time to harvest all of those bee houses, to harvest all of the honey. I had a lot of wild honey on hand, so I just put that into the cakes just to make an extra profit. The next day, I managed to get all of the bug meat assembled, put that into Woody's chest there for 3,000 gold in the bag, so I was very happy with that. So, at the end of the day, I'm at 463,000 gold from selling Fairy Rose Honey, 487 pieces in total. An absolute crazy amount of money. The next day, all of the meat was ready. It only takes 10 hours for mead to fully produce inside a cake. It was also George's birthday and I actually had a leak inside my chest so I decided to make George's day and give him a leak because everyone deserves happiness, even George. George may come across cranky and cross sometimes but you know what, deep down, he is a lovely person. A train visited Stardew Valley today. Take my advice and do not go in front of the train or try to attack the train because the train is invincible and it will win in the end. I got the leprechaun shoes, I was super hyper happy with that. They are one of the coolest shoes in the game in my opinion. Not as good as the space boots, but we could find a very quick remedy to that by transferring the stats from the space boots over to the leprechaun shoes by using Emily's lovely sewing machine. So we now had a custom tailored leprechaun shoes with 4 defense and 4 immunity. It was then time to embrace the honey, so I decided to combine honey with Claude to make a unique piece of clothing from honey. I got a simple dress, but because it was made from honey, I decided to put it on and look at the part. I was now the ultimate bee farmer. Not only did I have the cool snazzy leprechaun shoes, I also had a really cool simple dress made from honey. <laughs> it was time to go back over to Ginger Island and we were going to put down even more bee houses over here. It's going to be very interesting to see how many bee houses we can fit over here by the end of the video, especially when we start transferring all of the bee houses from Stardew Valley. This is what the Ginger Island farm looked like at the moment. I had golden walnuts to spare, so I decided to add a nice mailbox to the Ginger Island farm. Once this was completed, it was time to go for a nice stroll on the beach and look for the secrets that Ginger Island had to offer. Right over here to the right hand side is another nice golden walnut along with a pearl. And over here we get a quality bobber with a golden walnut. If I want to make more brick walkways, the best way to get clay is to come over here every couple of days to the dig site and just lay siege to all of the lovely clay nodes within. This is one of the best ways in the game to farm clay quickly and efficiently. Not only that, but you're also getting bone fragments as well that you can put into bone mills to get back all sorts of goodies. I got the mummified frog, the fossilized spine, and I got super lucky today as well and managed to hoe up 
a snake vertebrae, which is super rare. You do need two of those, however, to complete the snake fossil, but getting one so early is still really good. I went to Professor Snell himself and I donated a few things to him to get some more golden walnuts just so I can get a few more upgrades done to Ginger Island. I went back over to Stardew Valley and I'm just going to speed up the game a little bit here just to show you what it now looks like with all of the bee houses and the honey ready to be harvested. As you can see, it just looks glorious. Fairy rose honey and maple syrup all ready to be harvested, but the great task of today was the transferring of all the bee houses, hundreds and hundreds of them over to Ginger Island. I actually couldn't get it done today. I passed out in the attempts, but I managed to do it the next day and I came over to Ginger Island with almost 600 bee houses ready to be deployed for lovely honey farming. This is what the Ginger Island farm now looks like with all of the bee houses fully deployed. As we can see, a great majority of them won't be able to benefit from the fair roses. And because it was on to 85, I didn't really feel the need to go ahead and plant new batches of fair roses down below. I already had enough money as it was. So as we can see, the Ginger Island farm did look really nice. Back on the Stardew Valley farm, it did look extremely barren at the moment. But not to worry, we will be filling up this farm with as many kegs as possible. Speaking of which, I got loads of oak resins there. It was now time to process our lovely copper ores into copper bars because we need copper and iron and oak resin with wood to make kegs. It was back to Clint and I was going to buy some more copper ores off Clint just so I could speed up my keg production. I also had enough money too to buy several stacks of iron ore and coal and whatever I liked to be honest because I just had so much money at the moment. I had over 1 million gold assembled from the fair rose honey. So I went over to the desert today and I decided to move all of the furnaces to the desert just to make it a lot easier to mass produce bars. So what you see here now is my new setup in the desert where I can very quickly and efficiently get through all of the iron and copper ores that I have. It does take the majority of the day to process these materials but it is worth it because I'll be able to make tons of cakes from this and I'll be able to convert all of that lovely wild honey back into kegs no problem at all. Speaking of kegs, let's see how many kegs we can make right now. As we can see, I've got tons of resources available to me to make tons of kegs. So I managed to make about 173 kegs there, which was really nice. And you might think to yourself that you need a whole lot more, especially to convert all of the honey that we're going to get. But the great thing about mead is it only takes 10 hours in a keg. So you can actually get through two batches every single day. And with all of the kegs I have at the moment, it won't actually take that long to convert all of the regular honey into mead on a daily basis. So we're back to Ginger Island here now at the moment, and as you can see, there's lots of honey to be harvested. Most of it is fair rose honey, but all of the bee houses down at the bottom will just be regular honey. Even so, I still managed to make 320,000 gold today from selling fair rose honey. I had so much money, I decided to do Stardew Valley a little bit of a favor, pay 500,000 gold, and get a lovely theater installed in Pelican Town. I also stumbled across the lovely Krobus here behind the bush. He was playing some hide and seek. He dropped a magnifying glass for me, which opens up all of the secret letters you can find throughout the game. This reminded me that I still haven't gotten access to the sores. That's something I had to do as quickly as possible before the challenge finished, because I really wanted to get down to Krobus, say hello to him, and get his lovely star drop. So I got Clint to break open more Omni Geodes for me, and I was hoping by the end of today that would be enough to activate the scene where Gunther visits my farm, which he did, and I got the key off him, so it was straight down to the source of his Acrobus. So I purchased a star drop off Acrobus. Not too shabby at all, that was another star drop in the bag. I then decided to go into the mutant bug layer here and get the Dark Talisman, just so I could get the magical ink and access that lovely magical terminal, because the obelisks were something that we could actually afford. So I wanted to see how many obelisks I could get before the challenge ended. So I just gave the henchman there some void mayonnaise. He was super happy with that. You can't fish that up right beside the henchman, but you can only fish up one. I gave the magical ink here to the wizard, and I was now able to use his lovely magical terminal. So the gold clock was a little bit out of reach. However, I could go for a desert obelisk. I could also go for the mountain obelisk and the beach obelisk. I couldn't, unfortunately, get the ginger island obelisk because I didn't have any bananas. But if I did plant a banana sapling much earlier on, that would have been in the realm of possibilities. It was back to Robin today, and we're on day 90 now, so we're almost there. 
and I bought loads of wood off her. I also went back to my farm in Stardew Valley, and I cut down some more trees to get even more wood so I could make more kegs. Because I think at this stage I'm finished making bee houses because I had so many. So this is what my Stardew Valley farm looked like. As we can see, it didn't look too great, but I did decide to move all of the kegs from the bottom left hand side of my farm right up to the top of the farm just to give it more structure. Plus, I didn't have to make the trek all the way down to the bottom left every time I wanted to put some honey into the cakes to make some mead. So I got more maple syrups today, went back to the Ginger Island farm and look at all this lovely honey. It never gets old. You might think to yourself, oh, you must be bored of harvesting all these bee houses all the time. I have to say, I never got bored not once every time I had to harvest all this money because it just meant so much money that I was going to get from doing this. I had well over 700 bee houses on Ginger Island at the moment. And that's another 389,000 gold made there just from the fair rose honey. I was going to make a lot more from the mead as well. So I decided to do some ice fishing today by going to this lovely event. I also got a few decorations for the farm. I won the fishing event and I got some cool fishing tackles along with a sailor's cap. I decided it was time to swap out my hats and put on the sailor's cap. I had a look at the special orders quest and the community cleanup quest was available. I did go for it. I did decide to do it. I didn't really need fiber at the moment, but there wasn't too much else to do with the days that were left in this challenge because it was just primarily waiting for honey to be collected and then putting the other honey into the cakes for mead. So I decided to do the quest. 500 gold as a reward, but I say it in all the videos, the real reward is what you get the next day off Linus. He will give you the overpowered fiber seed. I did purchase two cinema tickets here. I gave one to Sebastian because it was his birthday. I also purchased his favorite snack, which was the jasmine tea. Unfortunately, the film that we're going to go see is something that he doesn't actually like and he found it quite boring. But because he actually had a snack that he loved, it did kind of mitigate that damage. So I ended up getting a few friendship points with him anyway. Day number 95, look at all of the lovely honey on our Ginger Island farm. I am going to harvest all of this honey. This wild honey will of course be converted into mead and the fair rose honey will be sold for huge amounts of money. Back over on Ginger Island, let's take a look at our cake setup. As we can see, we have got lots of cake set up with lots of mead and I'm going to sell all this mead for super profits. I also had almost 2 million gold on hand. What are we going to do with that? Why well, are we going to cheat ourselves to some lovely obelisks? We were going to start with the desert obelisk, of course. I had the cactus fruits and I had the coconuts to get that done. So I decided to put the desert obelisk right beside my farm there. This put me down to just under 1 million gold. If I can make a few hundred thousand gold in the next day or two, to put me up to 1 million gold, that would be enough to get the other two obelisks. I just needed coral and clams, I believe, to make the beach obelisk. And that's what I was doing right now. I was picking up cards there just to get the mats together to make that. Because I had the money to make it, no problem. And I had the iridium bars to make it as well. Once that obelisk had been made, the next one to make would have been the earth obelisk. Which is not a really good obelisk to have on the farm. To make the earth obelisk, I needed earth crystals. And I actually had those from going to the mines all the time farming copper. But I'd have to hold off on that for the moment because I didn't have enough gold to make it just yet. So I went back to Ginger Island, completed the gem bird puzzle. Also give in a few more bits and bobs to Professor Snail here, completing another artifact for him. I got more golden walnuts from that, fixed up the beach area because I could, gathered a few more golden walnuts from this zone, went into the pirate's cove as well, I got the secret golden walnut inside there. So that was a lot more golden walnuts added to my lovely repertoire, and I did that because there was nothing else to do, I was just waiting for the bee houses to generate honey. Speaking of which, it was the last day that we get to harvest all of this lovely honey. The good thing about this is what this is going to send us straight over the threshold in order to get that lovely earth obelisk. We're going to have a lot more than 500,000 gold. I had 873,000 gold. All I needed for the earth obelisk was 10 earth crystals, 10 iridium bars and 500,000 gold, which wasn't too bad at all. So I put the earth obelisk right down there at the bottom of the farm. We are finally on day 100. What a challenge this was. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. Never realized how much money you could actually make by mass producing bee houses. I made millions upon millions of gold. So that ends the video for us today. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Leave a like on the video if you thought it was fun. It does really help me out too. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure I will see you in many more videos to come. 
I'm sure I will see you in the future streams. If you want to watch more Sergio Valley content, check out my videos here. They're a whole lot of fun. I hope you all have a great week. Bye for now and see you in the next video. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but as a dairy farmer. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. For the purposes of this video, we are going to play through 100 in-game days of Stardew Valley. Primarily as a dairy farmer. This means there's going to be lots of goats, lots of cows, lots of milk and of course lots of cheese. Let's get into the goals of the video. The first goal is to make over 1 million gold from selling dairy products. The second goal is to complete the community center. The third goal is to marry a Stardew Valley NPC that has a great appreciation for cows. And finally, the last goal for this video is to create the ultimate dairy farm. So let's get straight into it and let's have some fun. Day number one begins with cutting down some trees. We're going to make a chest, put that right in front of our cozy house, and that's going to be filled up to the top with valuable resources. We are then going to scurry around the map and the quest for fiber and forgeables. We also hand in an artifact to good old Gunther here, and we will receive a reward for that of 250 gold, which isn't a bad start at all for today. With all that money, we are going to visit Pierre in his lovely shop, and purchase lots of kale to grow on our farm. Day number two begins with planting some spring seeds. We're going to water those up and visit Willy to get a training fishing rod. This will make getting XP with fishing a lot easier. We're going to spend the rest of the day pulling out some fish because we're going to need lots of money to make the ultimate dairy farm. I do eventually move up to the lake area to get some largemouth bass because they're quite profitable in terms of spring fish. On the third day, of course, we get the lovely rain, so we're going to go straight back to Willy's, get the fiberglass rod. This means we can now use bait to increase the fish bite rate, and we are going to try to get as many catfish as possible. I do get super lucky here and get a dinosaur egg. I could sell that, but it's only worth 350 gold, so I'll just donate it to Gunther instead. I do get level 5 fishing at the end of the day, and I'm going to get the fisher pork. Fish were 25% more. We're also going to give Caroline some daffodils to get her hearts up to two, so she would give us the tea sapling recipe. Day number four is another day of fishing. The primary goal for now is to get as much money as possible so I can start getting barns and cows and later on even some goats. I get the Neptune's glaive and a diamond out of a treasure chest there. I'm super lucky with that. Day number five, look at all these lovely parsnips. We're going to harvest all those. They'll come in super handy for the mines later. It's time to get our first barn with Robin, but we don't have the wood or stone requirement. Fortunately, wood and stone at the moment is super cheap, so I'll buy what I need, and then I will go for the first barn building that we are going to see. We are going to see lots and lots of barns in this video, just so you know. <laughs> so once I plant the first barn, I'm then going to get a backpack upgrade. This will come in super handy in the mines, so I'm not throwing away valuable resources. Down into the mines now, we are killing slimes, getting some minerals, making our way down as quickly as possible. If we get to floor 100, we do get that fabulous star drop. Copper ores are super important because we will need copper bars to make cheese presses later on in the game. So we do farm a lot of copper in this challenge. The Neptune's Glaive is super handy early on, and as it packs in most enemies, in just a few swings the slimes stand absolutely no chance against me. Day number six, we go to Clint. It's time for the pickaxe upgrade. Clint will give us the copper pickaxe in a couple of days. That will make progression in the mines much better. Today is Saturday, which means if I can fix the bridge on the beach air, I will get access to all of the accumulated forgeables that have been accumulating over the past seven days. And look at all these lovely forgeables I get to pick up. Not only can I sell these for lots of money, but I get loads of forging experience at the same time which makes this a magnificent place to go every Saturday to get some goodies and some experience. Day number seven starts with me siding up some kale, getting some potatoes down into the community center. And that is our first bundle completed, the spring foraging bundle. 30 wild spring seeds ready to go for our lovely farm. I'm also going to donate all of these accumulated artifacts into Gunther just to get the ball rolling there with the key to the source because we will need that later on to change up our professions. We're doing more fishing here on day number 7 and I'm getting super lucky 
just got another diamond there which will sell for 750 gold and we are continuing to give Caroline more lovely daffodils to get access to her secret sunroom so she will give us the tea sapling recipe. So we're going to go to Marnie today, we're going to purchase some cows. I'm also going to get a milk pail because we need to milk these cows almost every single day and that does become quite tedious <laughs> until we get auto grabbers later on. We do get the copper pickaxe off Clint and we are on our way back to Robin. It's time for, yes, a silo this time. Silos are super cheap. The hardest thing to make a silo, in my opinion, is getting the clay. Demetrius pays us a visit. We're going to go with the Batcave because we're going the community centre route. It's much easier to make progression through the Batcave than it would be using mushrooms. So we get to pick up all of our lovely spring wild forgeables today. And we're going to take our copper pickaxe and go back into the mines. Let's see how far down we can get. We make it to floor 50. We get the Tundra Boots, which is a pretty nice boot upgrade. Look at our lovely pink and white cows. They are very disgruntled today because they're starving. Not to worry though, we are going to get them some food. We're going to make them the happiest cows in the land. It is back to cutting down more trees and eventually we will have all the trees on this farm actually cut down. When that happens, we will venture out into Stardew Valley and do a massive deforestation. We will need thousands and thousands of wood to make all the barns that we want to in this challenge. Speaking of which, it's back to Robin with another barn for our lovely cozy farm. That is the second barn that we're going to place there. That means we can get four more cows in just a couple of days. It's also back to Clint. We're going to upgrade our axe to a copper axe to save time and energy when it comes to cutting down trees. And we're back into the mines. We're on floor 66 now at the moment. And the Neptune's glaive is making quite the work of all these enemies indeed. Coming across the odd diamond vein here and there is super helpful as that means a lot more money for us. If I see huge iron clusters just like that one, it's always nice to put a bomb down and blow it all up at once to save some energy. I make it down to floor 80, I get the firewalker boots, but we're not finished just yet. We do encounter a black elite slime here, which has a ton of HP and hits like a truck. Not to worry though, we will eventually defeat that slime. Let's see what kind of prize we can get up on victory. As you can see, it takes quite a number of hits, but normally it is worth the time to kill these particular slimes because they always drop some pretty decent gear. We just got the Yeti Tooth there, which is an actual weapon upgrade for us, and another diamond, which is magnificent. Down to floor 100 on day number 12 here. Not only does this star drop increase our maximum energy, it also fills our energy gauge right up to the top. It is now off to the lovely Easter event. We purchase some lovely strawberries, and we also do the straw hat event and of course we win because we've done it so many times by now we are absolute pros <laughs> the kids didn't stand a chance against us Date number 14 look at all our lovely spring forgeables but more importantly look at our lovely cows they are ready to be milked it is time to get the dairy farm up and running this is the first batch of milk we will more than likely sell this because we just don't have the resources just yet to make cheese presses and we need all the money we can get. We do, however, complete another bundle. We get some speed grow. We're also going to complete all of the minecart bundles as well, which is super easy to do. That will unlock fast traveling for us around the map of Stardew Valley. That is the first room completed inside the community center. Once we get enough funds together, we can then go ahead and unlock the desert. So it is back to Clint. He gives us the copper axe. Thank you very much, Clint. We are now doing more fishing today because we really need more money. We only have four gold on us at the moment. So we're pulling up chubs. We're pulling up largemouth basses. We're pulling up bullheads. And anything we get in between is welcome. It will be sold. Back to the farm. We're cutting down, yes, even more trees. We need more wood because Robin is more or less done now with that barn. So we need to get the wood together to buy another barn off Robin. The spring forgeables are coming on great, but what we need right now is the tea sapling recipe. All of these wild seeds will be put back into the ground, of course, because we have enough time left in this season to make even more spring wild seeds. We finally get Caroline to two hearts, so we are going to venture on into her lovely sunroom, where Caroline will have a nice chat with us and mail us on the tea sapling recipe the next day. We then go back into the mines, we make it down to floor 120, and we get the lovely skull key we can now do Skull Cavern runs if we so wish. We also get level 5 combat. We're going to go up the fighter park. The next day is a rainy day. But to brighten up the day, we get the tea sapling recipe off Caroline. 111 tea saplings made. We're going to sell those 
straight away and that will more or less unlock the desert for us. So we are going to visit Marnie today and it is time to purchase more animals. We are going to get more dairy cows. We wouldn't have it any other way of course. If we want to have the ultimate dairy farm, we are going to need tons and tons of cows. For the rest of the day, we are going to do more fishing because we are broke yet again. The cows do cost 1500 gold a pop, so our money does deplete very quickly. Between barns and cows, we don't really have a whole lot of money to throw around. The next day though, starts with watering the lovely spring seeds. We are going to make huge profits from this eventually. It's only going to take a few days to water all these up. With our 65,000 gold, we will now complete all of the vault bundles. Not only will this unlock the desert, but it will also give us lovely rewards such as the crystallarium, the lightning rod, and we even get some chocolate cake to boot. The Junimos are super happy. That is the second room in the community center fully complete. It is now off to Clint. It is time to upgrade our copper pickaxe to a steel pickaxe. That would be the minimum requirement for Skull Cavern runs. He's also selling cold seeds, but we're not going to get anything like that in this video. That just comes with some of the mods that are installed when it comes to the dairy stuff. It is day number 19. The cows are super happy, which means I'm super happy. So we're going to milk all these cows, water up the crops and get on with the lovely dairy farm adventure. It does take a while to milk all the cows and it will take even longer down the road when we get even more. So we're going to purchase a duck egg off the traveling merchant today. This means we don't have to get a coop, we don't have to get ducks when it comes to those pesky community center bundles. We're also going to go to Gus and we're going to purchase some salads for future Skull Cavern runs so we can survive. It is then back to Clint to get our lovely steel pickaxe. What are we going to do with this? Why, we're going to go straight into the Skull Cavern and we're going to get some lovely ores. Diamonds, copper, everything is on the table for us today. But what we're really looking for is to get through floor 25 to get 10,000 gold for Mr. Key. We do crush that record, however. We also get some really nice treasures today. We get some energy tonics. We also get lots of iridium ore as well. And to make life much better, the strawberries have come to fruition. It is time to harvest our lovely 91 strawberries that are in the ground. This will give us lovely farming level ups, but more importantly, we can sell these strawberries to get even more money, to get more barns and to get more fabulous dairy cows. So we're going to do more fishing today because, you guessed it, we need more money. Running down to 2200 gold, getting diamonds and the like from the treasure chests is always great. Level 5 farming, we're going to go with rancher. Animal products worth 20% more. This will actually be more beneficial in the long run. Mr. Key also gives us 10,000 gold for getting past 25 in the Skull Cavern. We also have some lovely Iridium bars ready to go as well. We will primarily sell most of those to get even more money to make more barns. We have a couple of barns down at the moment, but we're going to be putting down a lot more. So we're going to finish off the construction bundle today. We have some hardwood, regular wood and stone. And we're also going to finish off the exotic foraging bundle as we get access to the desert so we can get the cactus fruit and some other bits and bobs. More rewards for us. Speaking of which, I decided to treat myself to another bag pack upgrade. That was the 36 slot deluxe pack, now set up on the character. So we are going to get all of the stone on the farm today, and we're going to get the rest of the trees that are left too. So we're going to have this big huge empty farm, but it will be filled up eventually with cows and barns. <laughs> Day 23, look at all our lovely spring forageables. That will be the last huge batch of spring forageables we're going to put down today. We're also going to go to Pierre and we are going to purchase a huge amount of parsnip seeds, 16 total, because we need 5 gold star parsnips for the quality bundle in the community center. Now we're going to put up more fish. We also get level 7 foraging. We can now make the tree fertilizer, which is super important for us because wood is needed. So, in terms of who we're going to marry in this video, yes, we are going to marry Haley. Haley secretly loves cows. So she is going to be our flower dance partner. We have been working on her over the past couple of weeks in game by giving her gifts. Eventually, she will become the wife of a dairy farmer. What a luxurious life we are going to have together. So it is day number 25 and this is the last batch of the strawberries that we are going to harvest. We're getting lots of XP. We're getting lots of strawberries. Yes, we are going to get lots of money. So I'm going to make another barn today. I need more wood though. Story of my life. Not to worry, Robin sells an unlimited supply of wood. Only 10 gold apiece. I purchased tons of wood off Robin just for the sake of progression. Otherwise, I'd have to go back to the farm, run around Stardew Valley, waste 
lots of time to cut down some trees. It's just easier if I purchase the wood I need off Robin, especially if it's just small amounts of wood here and there. It's then back to Marnie's. We're going to get more dairy cows, of course. Eventually, we will be able to get goats, but we have to make a couple of upgrades. Level 6 farming quality sprinklers and level 10 fishing. We're going to get fish worth 50% more. Back to Clint, he is going to upgrade our axe to a steel axe, which means cutting down trees will be a lot easier. It is time to make some tree fertilizer and plant some regular trees on the ground here, just so we can get more wood. And we are down to floor 81 here and we are farming fiber. What are we going to do with all this fiber? Why, we're going to make a lot more tea saplings, of course. The next day, we are going to harvest our lovely parsnips. We're hoping for five gold star parsnips here so we can contribute towards the quality crops bundle and we get that no problem at all as you can see we get more than five ghost star parsnips we also get lots of farming xp and we can sell the rest of the parsnips for some extra money so i came across a help wanted quest here willie wants a gold bar to put under his pillow he's offering 750 gold how could i refuse i ran down to willie gave him the gold bar 750 gold in the bag i also purchased an iridium rod a trap bobber trout soup and some bait it is time for a legendary fish battle we are going to fight the hardest fish in the game the legend up in the lake area it's the 27th of spring we have level 10 fishing and it is raining we meet all of the requirements to take on the legendary beast himself but before that we are going to pick up all these lovely forageables on the beach because there's so many down there so it took me a few goals to catch the legend but on the third attempt i managed to read it up and that is going to sell for a nice amount of gold indeed it's going to sell for 11,250 gold. It's always such a nice boost before you get into summer. I also get my steel axe back off Clint. I've got almost 27,000 gold to spend. I'm also going to sell him some iridium bars, putting me up to 47,000 gold. And we're going to upgrade our pickaxe to a gold pickaxe, just to make life that little bit easier for future Skull Cavern runs. With the steel axe, I can now get rid of all the large tree stumps, meaning I can get into the secret woods and get all the hardwood inside there. I also checked out the traveling cart merchant. She was selling a juice for 600 gold. I decided to leave it for now. I did pick up the apple though, as apples can be super rare. Into the secret woods, I can now harvest all of these stumps on a daily basis to accumulate tons of hardwood. Hardwood comes in super handy later on for cheese presses. And of course, if you want to get to Ginger Island. So I gave Robin her last axe today. That's 250 gold in the bag. And I decided to get some more wood off Robin because if I want to make more barns, I need a lot more wood. With all that newly acquired wood, it's time to make another structure. Yes, it's going to be another barn. I also went into the bat cave here and look at all these lovely forgeables. I got super lucky here too. I managed to get an orange, lots of peaches, lots of apples, lots of items I needed to complete a lot of bundles. Or almost complete a lot of bundles in the community centre. Speaking of which, let's look at the artisan bundle today. We had most of the items needed to complete it. We're just missing a few things, but those items should be easy enough to get. For example, the cloth or even the cheese, which we will have tons of later on in the video. That bundle was as good as done. I was thinking about making a cheeky preserve jar and putting some sort of a fruit into it, but I decided to wait until I was start converting all of this milk into cheese look at all the cows we have on our farm right now and this is just the tip of the iceberg these cows will absolutely multiply and there's going to be tons of them by the end of the video it's actually going to be hilarious to watch so i'm going to purchase around 200 melon seeds today it is the start of summer and i also made quality sprinklers so i don't have to water the crops anymore praise the lord farming is not something that i enjoy 31,200 gold from tea saplings and we are into the second day of summer. We are going for all of the summer forageables so we can complete the summer foraging bundle. But there's only three items in it for this one and the reward, 30 summer seeds. So happy with that. We also get a gold pickaxe back off Clint. Happy days. It is time to forge ahead into the secret woods where we are going to cut down more tree stumps to get even more hardwood because we are going to need tons of it. For later on in the video especially when it comes to making all those cheese presses so we are going to milk all of our lovely cows today we're also going to pet them make sure that they're super happy when we reach farming level 10 we will be able to purchase an auto grabber off marnie it does cost twenty five thousand gold but it will be super worth it later on when we end up getting tons of cows so i get more cows off marnie and we're going to 
get a big barn of Robin this time, meaning we'll be able to get goats, which is going to be super exciting. So the trees I planted earlier on were actually mahogany trees. I'm going to cut all these down now to get some more hardwood, because I really need to start making cheese presses soon. I am going to smelt some gold ores into gold bars. I'll be able to sell those for money later on. Look at all the cheese presses I made today. I'm going to get back lots of cheese from these. And I'll be able to sell all this cheese for lots of money so we can get even more barns and more cows. I also got access to the bat house area. Lots of resources up here. Lots of stone, wood and fibre. Haley unfortunately lost her bracelet on the beach. I however helped her out. So she was super happy with that. I also caught the crimson fish which is the legendary summer fish. I'll get loads of money for that too. So I'm going to get another big barn today off Robin. That's going to be the second barn upgrade for us. That means more goats if I wish. I'm also going to pick up a large egg off the traveling cart lady now. This means I won't have to buy chickens. And I'm also going to get the wool also, which is going to be another bundle complete. So the more of these items that I get, the less specific animals I have to buy from Marnie, meaning I can put more lovely cows and goats on the farm. So all I need now to complete the animal bundle is a large goat's milk or a large brown egg. I should get the large goat's milk eventually. Putting the cheese into the artisan bundle completes that. The reward is a keg. Super happy with that. I'll be able to make wine. And that will go towards the enchanter's bundle later on in the video. As you can see, some of the cheese looks different. This is a mod that overhauls the way the dairy farming works in the game. So, if I put in a high quality milk, I will get back what's called a large cheese. You can break that down into two regular cheeses. The same applies for the goat's milk, of course. If you get a high quality goat's milk later on, you get a large goat's cheese, and that can be broken down into regular goat's cheese. So, it's a real nice mechanic. Not too overpowered, of course. It just balances the dairy mechanics of Stardew Valley, making it a bit more profitable. So I put some grapes into the keg today, make some grape wine. That will go towards the Enchantress bundle. And I'm going to plant all these seeds. They're going to grow up into lovely trees, going to put down all my tree fertilizer. This will ensure that I have enough wood for barn upgrades for the foreseeable future. So we're going to pull up more fish out of the lake today. The more fishing we do, the more money we get, the more cows we can buy. Look at all the money we get today from selling primarily cheese over 55,000 gold for selling over 200 pieces of cheese. We were now loaded with money with 72,000 gold in hand. What were we gonna do with that? Why, we were gonna get more barns and buy more cows off Marnie. Marnie is gonna be loaded after this. Where does Marnie get all the cows from? I do not know. She must have a huge farm that we don't know about. It's time to get another big barn off Robin. So we're gonna upgrade our last regular barn now to a big barn, that'll be three big barns we have on the farm that can house eight animals each. We're now going to purchase some goats. These are a tad bit more expensive, 4,000 gold apiece. But goats are really cool as goat's milk is highly profitable. We're now going to go to Clint and we're going to get the final pickaxe upgrade, the Iridium pickaxe. That does cost a whopping 25,000 gold, but we will make our money back with that for future Scott Cavern runs. We're doing more fishing today. We're looking primarily for fish for the fishing bundles. Look at all our lovely cows and goats right now. The goats, of course, are purple goats, thanks to a lovely mod I installed. <laughs> I think they go well with the pink and white cows. It's also worth noting, too, that I couldn't find a mod to change the skins of the brown cows. So most of the cows I do get are white cows, just for the aesthetic of the farm. So look at all our lovely summer forageables today. I'm going to pick up all the forageables make some tea saplings and we are going to sell these for an absolute ton of money the problem now is actually wood we have a little bit of fiber left but we keep running out of wood because the barns are so expensive when it comes to the wood resourcing we're going to upgrade more stuff with clint but first we're going to set up some bars put ourselves up to twenty thousand gold and it's going to be a gold axe upgrade for ten thousand that's going to make cutting down trees a lot easier for us Day number 37, we are going to fill up all these cheese presses with lovely milk. We're going to go straight up to Robin on day 38, and we are going to get a lot more wood off Robin. Just enough, of course, to get another barn or a barn upgrade. So we are going to get another big barn today. That's 450 wood every time we want a big barn upgrade. We're going to go to the luau today as well. I did manage to pull up a gold star sturgeon. That will give us the best effects with the governor, and that will give us the most friendship points for all of the Stardew Valley NPCs. 
that are affected via the outcome of that event. I now have the grape wine. I can put that towards the Enchanter's Bundle, which is great. I will put my Ancient Fruit into the keg now to get some Ancient Fruit wine back. I can sell it around for a nice profit as well. So, today's raining. All the cows and goats are inside keeping warm. We are going to pet them and we are going to milk them to make sure that they remain super happy. Look at all the barns we have now on the farm. Each barn has at least four cows inside it. The big barns have cows and goats. We're going to go back to Clint today, get our gold axe. That's going to make cutting down trees a breeze now. So we won't have to use a whole lot of resources on energy. Look at all the trees we have on our farm right now. So many regular trees, so many mahogany trees, and of course, a ton of melons to harvest. Life was looking really good for the dairy farming at the moment. We're going to go straight back to Robin now. It's going to be another big barn upgrade, of course. That means we can get more goats off Marnie and more cows. What are we going to get today? It's going to be more goats. They do cost 4,000 gold a pop, but they are so worth it. Cows and goats in this game are actually extremely profitable. It is time to complete some of the fishing bundles today. We're going to start with the ocean fish bundles and we're going to finish off the crab pot bundle as well and the lake fish bundle too. So we're almost there with all of the fishing bundles. We also make 58,000 gold today from primarily selling melons and cheese. So we are going to pet our lovely goats and cows today. We do have to watch out for the hay requirements though because the more animals we get the more hay we have to harvest off the land. Because I have created so much space though, I don't need to buy too much hay at the moment because the cows, when it's not raining, will all go outside and eat the grass that spawns on a daily basis because there's so much grass out there. So, to try to get my farm level up to 10, I purchased a ton of hot peppers today. These would take five days to grow and they would regrow for the entirety of the summer, making the crop extremely profitable. To get even more money, I do go down into the Skull Cavern, but this time, I come prepared and I make it down lots and lots of floors. I even get a prismatic shard today, super happy with that. I'll now be able to trade that in for a galaxy sword in the next few days. Look at all the cows and goats we have on our farm at the moment. The farm is now really taking shape and we actually do look like proper dairy farmers now at the moment. But why stop there? We might as well go all the way and put as many barns and get as many cows and goats that the 100 days will permit. It is time to complete more bundles. The summer crops bundle has been done. A reward, a quality sprinkler, which is actually pretty nice. I also have the requirements to complete the fodder bundle, which can be difficult if you don't have the apples. But another bundle done, and as a reward, we get the heater. We will need lots of heaters that are on in the video to keep our animals warm during the winter. So I do have lots of iridium ores. We're going to turn those into iridium bars, and we will upgrade our prismatic shard to a galaxy sword by bringing it to the special location here in the desert. This will be the strongest weapon that we will have in this playthrough. It is time to get another building done from Robin, another big barn for the win. We're also going to go to Marlin and we're going to sell him all of the weapons that we don't need anymore because it's better to get money for these items rather than just have him sit in a chest for the entirety of the challenge. Level 10 farming, we will go with Shepherd, befriend barn animals quicker, this means we can get higher quality animal products a lot faster. It is time to finally complete the animal bundle. We finally got our large goat's milk. The reward at cheese press couldn't have asked for anything better than that, to be honest. It's then back to Marnie. We are going to get more supplies off Marnie. We're going to get auto grabbers because we finally have level 10 farming. So we are going to purchase an auto grabber for each barn. That means we won't have to make the cows or the goats anymore. The auto grabber will do it for us, which is fantastic. So, I managed to get one star fruit from giving Gunther some artifacts. That's going to go straight into the cake for some star fruit wine. Why not? I also have tons of geodes here accumulated from Skull Cavern runs to give to Clint. He's going to break open all those, and we're going to give those back to Gunther to hopefully get the key to the stores so we can access Krobus. And sure, when you look at the next day, Gunther gives us a visit, he gives us the key. And we're going to harvest our lovely hot peppers. So we don't really need to harvest those anymore. We do have farming level 10. But we will still harvest them because they will give us money. It is time to get more farm animals. This time we're going to go for cows. Because I feel like we have enough goats at the moment. And the big difference between cows and goats is that a cow will give you milk every single day. Or a goat will give you milk every two days. The goat's milk is more profitable. But in the long haul, cows are actually more profitable than goats. 
So we're going to get another barn off rabbit today, and we're going to spend the rest of the day going through Stardew Valley, cutting down all of the trees. So, we are going to make a yogurt jar. It is quite expensive, iridium bars, large milk and stone, but because yogurt is a dairy product, we are going to give it a try, just to see how profitable it is. It would take a full day for these yogurt jars to convert milk to yogurt, but it's going to be interesting to see what the profits will be. In the meantime, we are going to get more auto grabbers from Marnie because we have more barns on the farm. And we're going to farm floor 81 in the mines to get more fiber to make more tea saplings because our funds are getting very low. But if we do get diamonds along the way and super rare mushroom floors, we will absolutely take it. So we go down to the source today, visit Krobus, and we purchase the star drop off him, which is definitely worth it. We also pull up the legendary mutant carp from the sorry water that is another legendary fish added to the roster we will sell that to make even more money to expand our lovely dairy farm so i decided to give Haley some flowers today to make it official she will of course accept who wouldn't want to live with a luxurious dairy farmer such as myself so i'm getting yogurt and goat yogurts today let's open up the menu and see how much they're actually worth let's see how profitable they really are so for the regular yogurt it's 175 and for the goat yogurt it's 300 gold a pop not super profitable after this i decided to scrap the whole yogurt making business and just stick to the cheese presses because it would be more profitable for me to just keep making cheese rather than making yogurt so the reason why we're going to keep making cheese is because most of the cheese we get now will be high quality cheese that will give us large cheese and large goat's cheese that's going to give us back two regular cheese ago. That's going to be huge profits for us. Got the owl statue today, which was really lucky. I also have more tree fertilizer. We're going to make another tree farm. These are just regular trees, but when these grow in a few days, we're going to cut them all down and get thousands of wood for future barns and barn upgrades from Robin. Speaking of which, it was time for another big barn off Robin. So that is the last yogurt I'm going to get from those yogurt jars. I'll probably end up taking away now over the next few days. I'm also going to break down all of the big cheese and big goat's cheese down to regular cheeses. And I'm going to sell all those eventually too to make huge profits. The auto grabbers are super handy. I just have to go into each barn, click on the auto grabber and I can just get all the milk back. No problem at all. It is saving me a ton of time. Because I have the shepherd profession, I'm now getting iridium milk, which is really cool. It's still worth to convert it though. I'm also pulling up a ghost fish here because I need it for the fishing bundle. And we're back to Robin. The days are going so fast now. We are going to get another barn. Look at all the barns we have on the farm at the moment. We've got tons of barns. And we're going to have even more by the time we get to the end of the video. We're just over half ways now. And we already have a huge amount of farm animals. Speaking of which, it's back to Marnie to get more cows. Cows are only 1500 gold compared to goats which are 4000. So it makes more sense to just keep getting the cows. As in the long run they are actually more profitable. So we're going to cut down wood today. We're going to go to the desert, cut down all the trees in the desert as well. And I also need to get a sandfish from the waters here too for the specialty fishing bundle. I also get a star fruit wine today from a keg. I'm going to sell that to make loads of money. And the hot peppers are ready to go again. I actually have a quest in my journal. George is actually looking for the hot pepper for his knee. So if I have time, I'm sure I can spare the hot pepper for poor old George and his knee. Look at all the cows on the farm. It's actually taken quite some time now to run around and to pet all the animals on a daily basis, but it is super important to get the friendship points up to get the higher quality foods. So I got a magic rock candy today from trading in three prismatic shards, and I'm also gonna complete this specialty fish bundle, which is one step closer to completing the fish tank. I get a dish of the sea recipe there, plus three fishing. The big challenge, for this year is going to be the red cabbage. The traveling cart has not produced a red cabbage seed or a red cabbage yet. So I do check the traveling cart every time she comes around just to make sure that I don't miss it. Eventually we will have so many cows and goats, more cheese presses will be needed to keep up with the daily rotas. It is back into cinder sap forest. We are cutting down more trees and we are smelting more ores into bars to make more sprinklers if we need them in the future. It is back to Robin, and yes, it is going to be another big barn upgrade for us. Look at all the lovely trees we have now on the farm. What we see here now is a forest. 
built up to the top with lovely trees. We're going to cut down all those trees. And we're going to harvest all of these hot peppers again. Hot peppers regrow so quickly. We now finally made it to the end of summer. Where we get to enjoy a lovely visual event. So we're now in the first day of fall. It is time to get some pumpkin seeds off of Pierre. We're going to get 50 just so we more or less guarantee ourselves to get 5 ghost our pumpkins. So we can finish off that quality crops bundle. We're also going to purchase a few other bits and bobs too. To finish off the rest of the community center bundles. So as we can see here now. I don't have a whole lot of crops compared to the amount of quality sprinklers I have. And land that's been hoed up to put down more crops. I'll pickaxe all that away eventually. And just put down some barns there instead. I've now reached the stage where I have tons and tons of money. So I don't really need to go crazy on crops anymore or to do a whole lot of fishing. What I have to do right now is focus down and make sure that the animals are happy. And the best way to keep an animal happy is of course to keep an animal fed. So I had to get even more hay but thankfully there was loads of grass around my farm that I could pick up. So it was time for special orders quests. Community cleanup is probably one of the best special orders quests you can do in the game. So I picked that quest straight away, completed it. The fall foraging bundles, my reward, 34 seeds, I was going to put those straight into the farm because I could still make more tea saplings and because I'm doing the community cleanup quest now, getting lots and lots of fibre was going to be super easy. The only thing that would hold me back in terms of making tea saplings would be wood. Now Linus doesn't have a whole lot of money on him so he just gives 500 gold for the completion of this quest but the real reward is what Linus will send us on in the mail the next day which should be the recipe to make a fiber seed. We also put up the legendary anglerfish there as well. We can sell that for some money. And we get some Asian fruit wine from our lovely keg. So we're going to go down to the stores now today. And it's time to swap up the professions. This time we're going to change around the farming profession. And go with artisan. So we can get 40% more money for our lovely cheese products. So just got the fiber seed recipe off Linus there. I'm going to make lots and lots of fiber seeds. Plant that in the farm. The great thing about fibre seeds is that they don't have to be watered. So you don't even need to worry about sprinklers. But you do have to make sure they are protected with scarecrows. So the crows don't swoop down and eat them. So I made more cheese presses. I put them up there at the top of the farm beside my bat cave. That means I can make a lot more money on a daily basis. Most of the milk I get now is a high quality milk. So I can get back large amounts of cheese. I can convert that all down into regular cheese to make tons of money. So it was time to complete the river fish bundle. That is one more bundle done. And the night fish bundle can be completed as well. So that is all of the bundles done. As a reward I get some bait and a glow ring. But the real reward is the fact that the Junimos are super happy that another room has been completed. So we just have a few rooms left to go. We're still waiting for a red cabbage. Let's see if we can get that from the traveling cart lady anytime soon. Now, it's time to get some more barns put on the farm and to convert even more milk into cheese. Look at all the cheese we're getting back now. We're getting back large goat's cheese, large cow's cheese. We have so much cheese. We're going to make so much money. We're going to go back to Marnie. Yes, we are going to get even more animals for our farm. Why stop now when there's still plenty days left in the challenge? First though, we need an auto grabber. Once that has been purchased, we're going to get more fabulous dairy cows to milk. We're going to go back to Pierre also. And what we're looking for here now is rice so we can make a Mackey roll. We need that for one of the community center bundles. We already have the seaweed and the fish. So I made a cookout kit today because I didn't have any upgrades done to the house and I needed to cook this item. So that is one great benefit for the cookout kit. I know I said in previous videos it wasn't great, but it actually saved me a ton of resources here. I also made the fried egg as well. So that was the mackerel and the fried egg ready to go for the chef's bundle. So I had to purchase a pig today because the traveling cart merchant was just not giving me any truffles. So we got a pig for the old farm. I'm pretty sure the pig will fit in nicely with all of the other cows and goats. So it's time to process more milk and turn it into cheese. Let the profits continue. So it does take quite amount of in-game hours to get that done. We also get Haley to max friendship. That means we can get married. But first, we have to upgrade our house. We have to make it bigger so Haley will move in with us. It is time for another special artist quest. Fragments of the past was selected this time. 
we just have to get 100 bone fragments. Best place to get that if you don't have access to Ginger Island is to go down here into floor 70 to 79 and you can farm these skeletons for lots of bone fragments. If you have a monster musk, it will make life a lot easier. If you have a burglar ring, it will make life even easier again for you as they will drop more items every time they are killed. So it is day number 65, we're getting through the challenge. Look at all our lovely fall forgeables ready to be harvested. We are going to convert all these back into wild seeds. And we're going to put these straight back into the farm so we can make even more tea saplings at the end of fall. Despite the fact that we do have loads of gold, that can actually get used up very quickly depending on deluxe barns and of course more cows and more hay that we have to constantly get. Day number 65, we are killing more skeletons, getting more bone fragments. We're almost there now with the quest. We should have the quest done at the end of today and the reward for that will be a bone mill, which is actually really nice when it comes to getting speed grows and fertilizers. So we have all of the bone fragments. All we have to do now is just put them at the drop box inside Gunter's place. And that is another quest complete. For that, we get 3,500 gold, which isn't too shabby at all. We're going to go straight back to Robin, but this time it is going to be a house upgrade. We do have to sacrifice 450 pieces of wood, but it will be worth it because we get to marry the love of our lives, Haley. It's also time to go back to Marnie and get more lovely dairy cows. Look at all of the milk that we get from these autograbbers now. The great thing about the autograbbers is that continually accumulate and store milk for you as long as your cows are happy. So you could just leave these autograbbers off for a few days and then collect them all in one fell swoop and put them through all of the cheese presses. So we just get the bone mill there from Gunther. We don't actually use that because we're more focused on the whole dairy and animal aspect of the game this time but the bone mill is still a really nice item to have if you're struggling for tree fertilizers or deluxe speed grow or anything like that the bone mill is the way to go look at all of the goats and cows we have now and it's just so satisfying to run around the farm and just spam pet all of these lovely cozy animals i also made more cheese presses as you can see but wood is always always needed now, I do have loads of money. I could potentially buy thousands and thousands of wood off Robin, but I wanted to get my foraging skill maxed out, so that is why I still run around cutting down all of the trees, and it gave me something to do as well, as if I couldn't cut down trees, there wasn't much more I could do in any given day, because you could pet all the cows in a few in-game hours. So, look at all the cheese presses I have now. I moved them all down here to the bottom left-hand side of the farm, so it's now really easy for me to go down with all of the milk from the autograbbers and just put them inside of the cheese presses. I'm getting back so much large cheese now that they're doubling up into regular cheese and I'm just getting tons of money from it. Because today is raining and because I have the house upgrade, I can buy the mermaid pendant from the, the strange NPC there. And I can now give that to Haley. But before I get to give the pendant, we get a really cool scene here where Haley will show us her dark room where she does all her photography activities so it's a really cool scene here with Haley, and it's one of the great things i like about Haley, where when you first meet her you don't think much of her it does show her with a camera so you do know very early on that she does like taking pictures of things so we try to kiss her hair and of course she accepts who would turn down a request from a luxurious dirty farmer such as myself <laughs> once the scene has been completed we can then go ahead and we can give Haley the mermaid pendant and that is going to get us married in the next couple of days. Haley can move into the farm, which is going to be fantastic. So Haley is going to set that up in a few days for us. Normally, you have to wait three in-game days for a wedding. But if a special event is on in between those days, it will push it out by one more day. So we actually have to wait four days to get married to the lovely Haley. In the meantime, we will pull up all the pumpkins on our farm and we will convert all of our lovely hard-earned auto grabber milk into cheese where we can sell it. It is time to complete the quality crops bundle. We now have all of the gold star pumpkins to do that. And we can also complete the fall crops bundle as well. That completes the pantry, awarding us with a preserved jar and a bee house. We do have to all try our best to protect as many bees as possible. Bees are absolutely precious. So it is back to Robin. We are going to construct another building. This time we are going to go for the coop because I need a duck for a duck feather. The traveling cart is refusing to give me one of those. 
But we're gonna do Robin's project here. She needs 80 hardwood, which is another special orders quest. So it is back into the secret woods to cut down all of the hardwood stumps. But to ensure that we complete that quest, we are gonna plant some mahogany seeds down on the farm and put down some tree fertilizer as well. The Junimos do repair our lovely greenhouse and we get first place in the Sergio Valley Fair with a rating of 101. That's a thousand star tokens that we will gamble on the color green. Of course, we wouldn't have it any other way. It is extremely rare that that red arrow will land on the orange block. With all of our lovely star tokens, we do treat ourselves to another star drop. I also purchased 100 pieces of hay for 500 star tokens, which is a really good deal because hay is quite expensive. Marnie, of course, likes to rip everyone off with the prices. <laughs> but to cheer me up even more, I get married to Haley. What a great day it has been. Haley will now move into the farm and also become a dairy farmer. Life is going to be different from now on, but the future looks bright. And why wouldn't it? Weddings are always a great thing to look forward to. So we are now back in the desert and we are cutting down all the trees, picking up all the forageables. We have level 9 of foraging at the moment. I would like to max that out before the challenge is finished. So that is the chef bundle completed. I just handed in the macaroni roll there and the fried eggs. As a reward there, I got a pink cake, which is really nice. Now we're up in the Batos area, cutting down trees. We're basically scrummaging around the map. And if we can find any trees at all, we simply cut them down. Any seeds we get, we'll put them back on the farm, make some more tree fertilizers, rinse and repeat. So there's lots of trees down here in the bottom west hand side of Cinderstep Forest. Cut all those down. We're going to continue to work on Haley. If we can boost her up a few more times with the friendship, she will give us a star drop. So I'm going to put another ancient fruit into my cake here. Let's get another ancient fruit wine. That sell for a few thousand gold. And we are going to pet all of our lovely cows and goats today. Look at our lovely dairy farm. Just look how majestic it looks. All of our lovely cows, all of our lovely goats, super happy, super cozy, we wouldn't have it any other way. It is time to get another barn off Robin today, and we finally get level 10 foraging. We're gonna, of course, go with the botanist park. All foragers we pick up will be of iridium quality. So, we have a few mahogany trees that are grown today. We're gonna cut those down in the hopes to complete Robin's resource rush quest, and this should just about do it. Once that quest has been completed, we'll then run back up to Robin's, put that into her deposit box, and we will be rewarded with 2,000 gold. Thank you very much, Robin. So it is back down to the beach here now. It is Saturday, so we're going to pick up all of the forgeables on the beach. All of these forgeables will be of iridium quality, so they will sell for maximum profit. And because it's Saturday, we get to harvest a week's worth of forgeables that spawn on the lovely beach. That's why it's so important to come down here every Saturday if you haven't been to the beach all week. So you can just maximize your time and maximize your profits when it comes to beach forgeables. So Clint is going to give us a iridium axe over the next few days. We finally get a red cabbage and a tuck feather from the traveling cart. So we don't really need the coop anymore. And that completes another bundle for us. All we need now is one more forging item that we can get in winter to complete the whole of the community center. So look at all the milk that we're going to get from all these autographers and all of the different barns. As you can see, there is now quite a lot to collect. It will now take a huge amount of time to process all of this into cheese. But the money we're going to get back from this is going to be extraordinary. Look at all of the cheese presses we have here now. Now the cheese press quantity hasn't really changed. But as we can see, we have just way too much milk. So I might have to make more cheese presses just to save myself some time. All of these large cheeses will be converted down into two regular cheeses a piece. I also got my lovely sweet gem berry, so I'm going to give that to the lovely statue here in the secret woods. That's going to give me another star drop. It is time for another special orders quest. We're not going over the curious substance because we don't have chickens, unfortunately for Gus. We're a dairy farmer, not a chicken farmer. <laughs> so we are on the hunt for an ectoplasm. And a great place to try to get this is to go to the middle section of the mines and just fight regular ghosts they can drop. It is quite rare. You can also go to the Skull Cavern as well and fight the carbon ghosts. They also have a chance to drop the item that we need. Now we do spend the whole day in the mines today in the attempts to get an ectoplasm. But unfortunately we do not get one because it is quite the rare item. If we had the burglar ring it might increase the odds of getting it. 
So the next day, we go down into the Skull Cavern, and I just wanted to show footage here of me getting a rare dinosaur floor, and just look at all these pepperexes. And it's always nice to kill all these because there's a very high chance they will drop dinosaur eggs. So if you ever want to become a dinosaur farmer, that's the place to go. It's the Skull Cavern. So we finally get level 10 mining. We're going to get the blacksmith perk. Bars worth 50% more. And we also got our ectoplasm as well. We're going to give that to the wizard for 2500 gold. And more importantly, he will reward us the next day with mini obelisks. It is time to get more big barns. So... Look at all our mahogany trees, we're going to cut all these down, we're going to get more hardwood. We will need over 200 hardwood if we're going to fix up the boat for Willy, if we want to go to Ginger Island. I also get an ancient fruit wine, and we're going to give that to Haley because she is a great wife and she deserves the best. I also had the gold to spare. <laughs> so Haley, don't drink it all in one go. So we just got the mini obelisk there from the wizard, that comes in super handy for getting around the farm very fast. And because it's Thursday, we are going to go to the Desert Trader and get another Magic Rock Candy for future Skull Cavern runs. It is now time to get all of our lovely milk out of all the auto grabbers. So it's going to be hundreds more milk that we're going to have to process into cheese. That's going to give us back hundreds more cheese. And that's going to get us back hundreds of thousands of gold. <laughs> I wonder how much money we're going to make at the end of this video. You've probably noticed by now I haven't really been selling the cheese. I'm going to leave it accumulate. And we're going to see how much we get at the end. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be a lot. So Haley, our fabulous wife, gives us a star drop. That will more than likely be the last star drop we're going to get in this challenge. Because we didn't really catch all of the fish. I could have went for it because I caught the legend in spring. But my mind was so focused on dairy farming. I more or less just forgot about the other fish you could catch in spring and fall. So... That will be the last star drop we're going to get, but it's okay because we did get quite the number of star drops in this 100 day challenge. Is it possible to get all of the star drops in 100 days? Yes it is. Check out my other 100 day videos to see it done for yourselves. So I purchased lots of heaters off Marnie today and some hay just to keep the cows happy and fed because we're coming into winter now in a couple of days. And they're all going to be inside their barns because it's going to get really cold and we need to make sure that the cows are happy that they're warm and that they're fed. Otherwise, they're not going to generate milk, we're not going to get money, and our life as a dairy farmer will cease. So, I got a golden pumpkin at the end of the uh, Halloween event today. I'm going to sell that for some money. I also decided to mine open the meteor that landed on my farm there a few days ago. Didn't get anything great out of it though, just a few iridium ores. And it was back to converting all of our lovely milk back into cheese. Which is what we do most days now, because we have so many cows and goats. There's just so much milk to get you to maximize profits for the end of the 100 days. So it is winter and the farm looks extremely barren. But inside of these barns were the comfiest, coziest animals that you have ever seen. It was back to Rob and it was time for more structures. We were going to go over the Deluxe Barn this time, which means we can get more cows or goats. We could even get pigs if you wanted, but one pig is enough. It was time for Robin's resource rush. She wanted a thousand pieces of wood in a week. No problem at all, Robin. There is a little bit of a cheat we can actually do for that that I'll show you in a couple of days. So it was time to complete the winter foraging bundle. One of the final bundles we had to complete to finish out the whole of the community center. We were rewarded with winter seeds for that. But I don't really bother planting those because I didn't need to. I didn't really need the money. I had tons of money. I have tons of milk, tons of cheese. We were sorted for life. The dairy farm is now successful. The big question is though, how much money are we going to make at the end of the 100 days? There is only a handful of days left to go. I do, however, plant some fiber seeds if I want to use the fiber later on. I also get access to the quarry here. So I put down some mega bombs and I'm going to get rid of all of these resources. The more stone I get, the better. Because you also need stone to get Robin to make the barns. I also cut down all of the trees and mine up the rest of the resources that survived the mega bombs. <laughs> so no resource will go and turn in the Stardew Valley map. So we are inside the quarry cave now and we're fighting our way through these haunted skulls. There's actually a chance those skulls can drop a magic rock candy which is really nice when they do drop them but it's super rare. We get the golden sight, teleport out and we're back down in the mines on floor 81 farming more fiber to make more tea saplings because despite the fact that we do have 195,000 gold deluxe barns are expensive 
and I do have to buy a lot of hay on a daily basis as well to keep the animals fed because I just have one silo at the moment and I don't want to waste three days and get Robin to make another silo because I could use those three days to get four more animals so I'm just going to keep purchasing hay off Marnie if I need it. So today is going to be a day of processing milk into cheese. Look at all these lovely auto grabbers. They've got so much milk inside them. So much large milk as well. There's very small amounts of regular milk. Because most of the animals I have now have had them for a while. And they're all super happy. So all of these large milks will turn into large cheeses. Convert them down into regular cheeses for tons of money. We're going back to Robin as well. And we're going to go with the big barn. Didn't have enough resources for a deluxe barn. Now, I could have bought resources, but at this stage in the game, a big barn is just as effective as a deluxe barn when it comes to animal quantity. So, I'm going to purchase more hay off Marnie now today, and I decided to just get a full stack of hay, 999 pieces. That should sort me out until the end of the challenge, hopefully. And we're also going to get some more cattle off her as well. So, we are going to get more dairy cows. I wonder how many animals we will have by the end of the 100 days. I finally got the Nautilus shell today. That is the last item I needed for the community center completion. So that is going to go straight into the bulletin board, into the field research bundle. And that is the community center completed. As a reward, I get a recycling machine, which is really handy actually. Recycling machines are actually pretty profitable. But more importantly, that is the Junimos super satisfied. They're all saying goodbye. Their grammar isn't great, but who cares? The Junimos are happy, the cows are happy, I'm happy, everyone is happy, including our lovely wife Haley, who is going to get, yes, another Age of Root wine, just for you. So when I went back into Pelican Town, I was met with a really nice scene here of everyone cheering the completion of the community centre. We then went straight back to Robin to put her to work again. Poor Robin, this time we're going to get a stables. Where will you see the mount that we have gotten for this 100 day challenge? It is the coolest mount around. <laughs> and it's going to fit in so well with all of the animals that we currently have on the farm. So in the meantime, we are going to do some quests. We're just going to go down here and we're going to give this henchman some void mayonnaise. We're going to get access to the magical ink so we can use the wizard magical terminals if we want to get some advanced structures that are on in the video. That's if we get some. But more importantly, the magical terminal can be used to move structures all around the farm. And it's much easier to access that terminal than it is to access Robin on a daily basis. So there was two days left for Robin's resource rush. I needed a thousand pieces of wood. There wasn't a whole lot of trees around and I didn't know if the other trees I had planned to use in the fertilizer were going to grow in time for it. So for the rest of the day, I ran around cutting down all of the trees that I could find. Day number 91. Look at our lovely mount. What are we going to call it? We are going to call it Goat Mount. Honestly, I couldn't think of any other name because it's more or less a goat. It's a mount. Goat Mount. Look at it go. We were super happy. Best friends for life. Me and Goat Mount running around the farm doing whatever it is a dairy farmer and a goat mount does. We were styling. So it's back to Robin, this time we're going to the shop, we are going to purchase wood chippers because we had so much hardwood accumulated over the past 90 days of just grinding out stuff. I decided to purchase 50 wood chippers and this was going to annihilate Robin's resource rush quest because when you put hardwood into the wood chipper it also counts towards her quest. So I'm going to put down all these lovely wood chippers now on the farm, I'm going to put hardwood inside them and this is going to give me back regular pieces of wood. On the rare occasion, it will give me back like an oak resin or a maple syrup or something like that. But for the most part, it will just be regular pieces of wood. And that is Robin's resource rush completed. 2,500 gold in the bag. Thank you very much. It's now back up at 63,000 gold. Day 92, I decided to take a break from the dairy farm and I decided to do some fishing. I did win the ice fishing event, which is really nice. As a reward, Mayor Lewis gives me some really nice fishing accessories including a sailor's cap which I don't use I just wanted to spend a day doing anything else besides putting milk inside the cheese press so day 93 look at all our lovely fiber seeds we're going to harvest all of this lovely fiber we're also going to cut down all of those trees as well we're going to get tons of wood back we still had time to put down one or two more barns to get a few more cows or goats before the challenge ended it'll be very interesting to see what the farm looks like with all of the animals 
roaming around the place. I also decided to take on another legendary fish today. This was the Glacier Fish, an extremely hard battle with that one. Not as hard as the legend in my opinion, but still extremely hard. So Willie showed me his broken down boat, he needed materials to fix that up, he needed hardwood, iridium bars and battery packs. Thankfully I had all those resources on hand. But just to make sure I wasn't depleting my current stock, I did smelt some more iridium mores into iridium bars and go into secret woods to get a few more pieces of hardwood. The next day I donated 5 iridium bars to the anchor, 200 hardwood to the hull and 5 battery packs to the ticket machine because Willie likes to rip everyone off and charges a thousand gold every time he wants to take someone over to Ginger Island. It was time to pet all of our lovely cows and goats today. Only five days left before the challenge is completed. So we're going to pet all the animals, we're going to loot all of the auto grabbers and we are going to convert all of our lovely milk into cheese. It's going to be really interesting to see how much money we're going to make now in the next couple of days. So the cows will generate milk on a daily basis, but the goats will generate milk every two days. So I had to check the auto grabbers each day to make sure that I was going to get all the milk that I could possibly get to see how much I could make in terms of a total profit. Back to Robin, of course, there was time to make another building. So we're going to go with a big barn. We're going to put that down in the farm and we're going to go straight back to it. Look at all of this lovely cheese that we're getting. It's just so satisfying to just run all the way through these cheese presses, put in all the milk, get back all the cheese, rinse and repeat, convert all of the large cheeses down into regular cheeses and store it in the chest. But eventually we'll be putting that into a shipping bin. Day 97, I didn't do much. I decided to go for a stroll with lovely goat mount. We're a magnificent team together. I also decided to give my magic rock candy to Abigail because I wasn't going to do any other skull cavern runs. And Abigail looked all alone and sad. So I wanted to brighten up her day because I could. If you can brighten up someone's day, go for it. There's not to lose. Day number 98 and we're going to spend the whole day just converting our lovely milk back into cheese to store away to sell on day number 99. Which is coming up in the next few seconds. <laughs> so as you can see, it's taken the majority of the day to get through all of the milk that has accumulated. Day number 99, let's just zoom in here and show you all of the goat's cheese and regular cheese that I have accumulated. As you can see, there's a lot more regular cheese because cows, you know, make milk on a daily basis where goats is every two days. I made 1.5 million gold from selling dairy products. And that's literally one season's worth of cheese, which is an extraordinary amount of money. So is dairy farming profitable? It absolutely is. Of course, it's not going to beat star fruit wine or ancient fruit wine when it comes to kegs. But if you ever wanted to try this challenge for yourself, it's quite doable because the animals will pay for themselves and then some. So I decided to fast forward it into spring here just to show you what the farm looks like with all of the animals outside. And as you can see, there are tons of animals out and about. The farm looks really nice. This is a beautiful dairy farm, ready to go for year two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. I'm very close to 10,000 subscribers. It's going to be a huge achievement for me. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but on a Junimo farm. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another 100 day Stardew Valley challenge. For the purposes of this challenge, we are going to play through 100 days of Stardew Valley, but we are going to use the power of the Junimos to help us accomplish some pretty hardcore goals. Let's get into the goals and rules of this video. Rule number one, we can only use the power of the Junimos to harvest regrowable crops and foraged items. This means we cannot plaster our lovely beautiful Junimo farm with starfruit or other overpowered crops such as pumpkins. <laughs> Rule number two, the Junimos can only be used on the Stardew Valley farm. We cannot use them over on Ginger Island. And that's of course if we get to Ginger Island. Let's talk about the goals now. For the first goal, we want to obtain the Infinity Blade. This means we have to unlock Ginger Island, get into Key Secret Walnut Room, and obtain three Galaxy Souls. This is quite a challenge indeed. Let's talk about the next goal. Obtain the Gold Clock. This is a 10 million gold item. 
be very hard to get but it's going to be worth it i have about 8,000 subscribers at the moment so hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet if i can get 10,000 subscribers in the next few months it will be a great milestone for me and i might even do a special video for you Day number one begins with cutting down some trees, breaking up some rocks, and gathering some fiber. Once enough wood has been collected, I make a chest, run around the map, pick up some forageables to make some tea saplings later on, and of course, we're going to give an artifact to Gunther to get that nice 250 gold from a quest complete. The next thing we're going to do then is going to go to Pierre with all our new earned money, and we're going to get some potato seeds, 15 in total, that'll make a good start with the farming. We're also going to give Caroline a daffodil here to try to get that tea sap recipe off her later on in the game. And the rest of the day is spent watering crops and cutting down trees. Straight into the next day, we're watering more crops. And once this is finished, we're going to go straight down to Willy. Now, I'm going to get a training rod off him. It's only 25 gold. This will help me boost my fishing skill up as fast as possible. Today will be a whole day of fishing, followed by a whole day of fishing on day number three. Because, as we all know by now, <laughs> if it's raining, we're fishing. We wouldn't be doing anything else. We're also going to speak to the NPCs around Stardew Valley to beat the introductions quest because that's going to get us some gold as well. I'm also going to give Abigail a catfish here too just to complete a quest that she had on the notice board. She's going to give me a whopping 600 gold for a quest complete which is really nice. Level 5 fishing will go at Fisher. Fish were 25% more. We got really lucky here now the next day. 600 gold for another catfish. I actually had a few chilling out in the chest. So I went straight down to Marnie, gave her that catfish, and she was super happy with that. That was another 600 gold for me, and this was so nice. This put me up to 2200 gold. Went back to the farm then, and just spent the rest of the day cutting down trees, because I was going to need thousands upon thousands of wood if I wanted to get that cold clock by the end of this video. It's going to need tons of wood. So it was actually a rainy day in day 5 here now, and so I started pulling up all the parsnips, because they're all finished. There's still a few days left to go with the potatoes. I decided to treat myself to a backpack upgrade. I wanted to get this early so I wasn't throwing away stuff all the time when I was fishing or going down into the mines. Gave Caroline another dafter as well and she was happy with that. And I also completed the How to Win Friends quest. That was another 100 gold. So, I purchased 80 bean starters. Now these are trellis crops. Don't have a whole lot of experience with these and you will see later on that I put them down a bit wonky and I couldn't actually water some of them on non-rainy days. Speaking of rainy days, it was raining. So, we're back to pulling up catfish. Down into the mines though, day number 6 here now. And the main goal here is to just get down as fast as possible. So I can start grinding up all the copper, iron and gold that we need later on. Got down to floor 20, got a steel small sword. Happy enough with that. We went a little bit further though. The next day, Clint gives us a visit. He's going to give us a recipe to make a furnace. And we're going to make lots of those. As you can see here now, I can only water only some of the trellises because of the mistakes I have made by planting these trellises. Not to worry though, the Junimos will come to our aid soon enough because Junimos can very easily walk through trellises. We're also going to put down some Junicrows, which are more or less Scarecrows, it's just a Scarecrow mod. All mods will of course be in the description. Back down into the mines here now, I got a wooden club, super happy with that. I finally got access to the wizard's tower, it was finally time to put some Junima huts on the farm and you'll notice that the Junima hut is free to use, which is what I'm allowing myself to do with this challenge. All Junima huts are free and these Junimos aren't just your typical ordinary Junimos, oh no, these are super advanced Junimos. These Junimos have been to the future and back, they have learned the ways of farming. Not only will these Junimos collect crops for me, they will also water crops and they will also clear away crops that have died when you go into a new season. These are super Junimos. <laughs> so no watering for me. I'm never going to miss a green bean again. <laughs> Speaking of green beans, I decided to buy another 163 of them just to give the Junimos a little bit more work to do. And look at our beautiful Junimo farm right now. We're only on day nine and we already have a huge bean farm ready to go. Look at our hardworking Junimos. And because it was raining, of course, we are going to put up more catfish because the more money we got, the more crops we could buy. So, I finished the bundle here now just to get some more spring wild seeds. And that was 30 spring wild seeds right there, so I'm going to plant those. So I needed a bean and I needed a cauliflower to finish the spring crops bundle. However, the Junimos will help me finish these bundles if I give them money because they are super Junimos. Once the Junimos are paid, they will find the items for me, which means completing these bundles through the community center route will be super easy using the power of the Junimos. 
The meat just gave me a visit. He wanted to upgrade my cave there with either a mushroom cave or the bat cave. I went with the mushrooms because they're more profitable and they give nice energy and health. Well, down to Clint, it was time to upgrade some tools. We're going to go with the pickaxe, of course, so I can make steadier progression in the mines. So I met some more spring wild seeds. I'm going to plant these. The Junimos will actually water these for me as well, and they'll harvest them when the time comes. I just got to be careful when I get gathered later on because the Junimos won't get double harvest. So I was back to fishing again now today because there wasn't really anything else to do because my pickaxe has been upgraded. I got another rainy day on day 12. I'm just blessed with rainy days when it comes to these challenge videos. Strawberries are of course a regrowable crop, so I purchased 133 of those. I wanted to get more, but I just didn't have the funds on me right now to get more of those. But 133 should suffice. I did wipe the kids out of course in the easter egg hunt and I won the lovely straw hat. Which is the primary hat you will see me wear for the majority of the video until we get the super secret hat later on. <laughs> These Junimos primarily work for free as long as there is one foraged item in each of the huts. These Junimos will work every single day for me no problem. They won't ask for days off, they won't ask for any additional payments, they don't get sick, they don't complain. They are the super Junimo. <laughs> Back to the mines of course, making steady progress, got the crystal dagger. I love finding rooms like this where you get to hit open all the crates. Sometimes you can get some real nice stuff from these crates, including hardwood which I will need plenty of later on in the game. Met it down to the floor 70s here. I wiped out a skeleton there. He dropped the bone sword. That was a pretty nice weapon upgrade for me. Got down to the latter floor. Then I got the firewalker boots, which is a really nice boot upgrade as well. You can't really see it there now because of the graphic, but they were just firewalker boots. Gave Caroline more daffodils now today. She's one heart out of 10 at the moment. Once she gets to two hearts, I can make some tea saplings. Gold clusters like this are always super welcome. Gold bars will be needed later on in the challenge. Made it down to floor 100, got my first star drop of the game, so progression was pretty good. Got level 5 mining too, we're going to go with the minor perk, the plus 1 orb per vein. Put some more furnaces down in the farm, going to smelt some gold bars. And I also got the space boots the next day in the mines as well, from getting down to floor 110. So I was getting very close to the skull key now. Just getting more gold here now. And when I get down to floor 120, I do get the skull key. This means I can now go to skull cavern, but first... I had to unlock the bus, and to do this, I needed money, tons of money. I did have a pretty decent fishing skill, so I was getting some decent money for fish. It was time to harvest these lovely forageables. Look at all the green beans as well, I was going to make tons of money from those. Went down to the boiler room in the community centre. Going to finish all the bundles here now, this would unlock the travelling carts for me. Didn't need Junimos to get any items from that bundle. I had all the items from just going into the mines. That's one of the easier bundles to complete, of course. Once that room was done, the Junimos were super happy. They'll fix up the cart for me. Gave Caroline another daffodil. Finally got her the two hearts. She will reward us with the recipe for the tea sapling tomorrow through the mail. So I was looking forward to that. That was going to be quite the money maker. It was time to cut down more trees around our farm. Because if we wanted to make preserved jars and cakes and things like that, we we're going to need lots of money. Going to pick the tiller profession here for farming crops worth 10% more. That would be an absolute no-brainer, of course. So, I needed money to get some extra upgrades done on the farm. So I sold Clint here some gold bars just to get myself up to 10,000 gold. When I had the 10,000 gold, I then went into Pierre just to get the last backpack upgrade. Because I was struggling really bad in the mines with just a second backpack upgrade. This one, though, will make life way easier. I then went back to Clint... And I got him to process some geodes because I wanted to make my way down to Krobus as quickly as possible. So it was time to donate some stuff to Gunter. I had lots of stuff to give him from all of the things Gunter was able to process for me. When the business was said and done, it was then back to fishing because it was a rainy day. Catfish were fresh on the menu. Day number 20, we're actually getting through the challenge now, believe it or not. We're back down into the mines, we're one fifth of the way through it. And we're focusing on stone, we're focusing on copper ores. The reason why I needed so much copper is because I'm going to have to make loads of tappers later on. Junimo is hard at work today on the 21st. Look at all these lovely green beans that they get to harvest. It was an absolute wonder to watch them work so hard. I also got the copper axe back off Clint, which is really nice. It was time to give him another tool to upgrade. This time, we were going to go with the copper pickaxe to a steel pickaxe. That'll make life a lot easier for us in the mines. More cutting down trees at the end of the day, and I also got level 5 foraging. Gonna go with Forester. Trees drop 25% more wood. I chose that over gather because wood is just more important. It was time to raid all the Junimo huts. I was getting strawberries, 
green beans, the odd forage bill here and there. And I was going to sell all these crops to make an absolute ton of money. So I'm going to go to Pierre directly with these crops because he's going to give me money straight away. And I wanted to get the desert unlocked as quickly as possible because we were now coming into the, the later end of spring and I still hadn't been to Skull Cavern. So with the money that I had acquired, it was time to unlock all of the vault bundles. Not only would this give me access to the desert to Skull Cavern, but it would also give me a crystallarium and other really useful items. I also used the power of the Junimos to complete other bundles too to get the bridge repair up as quickly as possible. So I got them to fill up all of the other bundles where items I didn't have, which was most of the bundles that were actually there. All of the other foraging bundles. I just didn't want to wait, you know, for spring to end, for summer to happen, for fall to come in, and then for winter to get all these done. Most of these bundles were very cheap. So I said, why not? I had the money. Let's just get the Junimos to find the items for us and unlock the bridge as well as the desert on the same day. That is the power of Super Junimos. I'm at 65 tea saplings today, super happy with that, going to sell those to make even more money because I was totally broke after getting all the upgrades for the vault and to fix the bridge. I got my steel pickaxe back off Clint, I did have 39,000 gold to play around with though, so I got him to upgrade my axe to a steel axe to make cutting down trees a bit simpler. Went into the quarry cave, got myself the golden sight and I teleported out of there. It was then off to Gus, I was going to buy some salads off him, just for healing food for Skull Cavern runs later on. Salad is a great way to go. And the rest of the day was spent fishing because I just wanted to get more money. There wasn't much else to do at this rate, because I was waiting for a super lucky day to go into the Skull Cavern. Day 25, and we are pulling up Forgebus from the ground. Now the Junimos can do this as well, and I do get XP, but I just wanted to speed up time a little bit and just forage myself. I'm at 86 more tea saplings, gonna sell those for lots more money. I got my steel axe off Clint, it's amazing how quickly these days go. And it was time for another upgrade, we were gonna go with the gold axe this time. So that was gonna be a decent upgrade there. With my steel pickaxe, I was able to get rid of all the big rocks around the farm because I was gonna need a lot more space coming into summer. I was gonna buy an absolute mountain of crops. I got level 10 farming, I was gonna go with agriculturist crops grow 10% faster. Day 26, we're going to the desert, get some spicy eels, triple shot espressos, made some bombs using iron ores and coal that I had lying around, and it was time for a Skull Cavern run. Got super lucky with holes here, got down 6 levels on the first hole, got down 7 levels on the second hole, and I got a room here with crates, I got some nice warp totems, rubies, cave carrots, Anthony geodes, not complaining at all. I also got a spicy eel off killing a serpent there, which is really nice, but what I wanted just for today was to get past 425 just to get that nice 10,000 gold off Mr. Key and I have accomplished that feat easy enough that'll be extra money for me come summer so I had my steel axe it was time to break open the log here and go into the secret woods I did mention earlier on that I was thinking about getting the gold axe upgrade I decided not to though because I needed to collect more wood I did however bring my prismatic shard to the desert here and I upgraded it to a galaxy sword. And eventually we would try to upgrade this galaxy sword to an infinity blade. But in order to do that, we first had to get access to Ginger Island. And obtain three galaxy souls. So I got my 10,000 gold off Mr. Key for making the path for 25 in the Skull Cavern. Day 28 was just gathering fibre to make more tea saplings. I also needed fibre to make tree fertilizers as well. Because I wanted to make a tree farm here in the quarry. It was the first day of summer I bought two full stacks of blueberry seeds. That was almost 2,000 blueberries. It took me the whole day to plant those. I did have to use mega bombs and regular bombs to hold the ground a lot faster because there was no way I was going to hoe all this with just a regular hoe in one day. But I did have lots of bombs from Skull Cavern, so it wasn't a problem at all. I also got more Junima huts and I placed them out evenly so that they'd cover everything that they could. I also got Clint to break up more Geoterra because I really wanted to get down to Krobus because one of the special goals of setting this challenge is to get Krobus to move in with me. I wanted to be best buddies with Krobus. It was time for some fishing upgrades. Got the Iridium Rod off Willy today. I'm also going to get the Trap Bobber off him as well just so I could pull up the harder fish. And I went fishing for the whole day then because the summer fish here actually sell for really nice money especially the super cucumbers. Not the snuff at it all. Day 31, I pulled up a sturgeon. That's going to be coming real handy for the luau later on in the video. 
The rest of the day was just spent primarily fishing just to get more money. I had 23,000 gold on me at the moment, but I needed a lot more money if I wanted to get that gold clock. I also got the red snapper as well and the tuna, which are both needed for fishing bundles. I also pulled up the sandfish too, which is needed for the specialty fish bundle, and the puffer fish, which is also needed as well. Any fish that I couldn't get my hands on right now, I could always just pay the Junimos to use their magical powers and find that fish for me. 2500 gold here for the wood skip, I said why not, I had the money to burn so I burnt it. The river fish bundle I was just missing the tiger trout, so I paid 370 gold and I got the Junimos to, to get the tiger trout for me. 5 dish of the seas, that was pretty nice. So I needed a walleye to complete the night fishing bundle, I paid the Junimos to beat that bundle as well. <laughs> and a sardine for the ocean fish bundle. I could have got the sardine in spring, but to be honest, I totally forgot about it. That was okay though, I had the Junimos backing me up. That was another bundle completed. So that would unlock panning for us now, we could pan around the map. Maybe we can get lucky ring from panning, who knows. Level 10 fishing, gonna go with angler, fish worth 50% more. Went to Robin as well, I paid her 10,000 gold at 450 pieces of wood to upgrade my house to make it a little bit bigger. I went to Clint, it was time to upgrade some tools. This time we were going to go with the gold pickaxe. So that cost 10,000 gold, but it be worth it later on. It was back to the desert trader. This time I traded in one emerald for a piece of cheese for the artisan bundle. Because that's a very expensive bundle, even if I was to get the Junimos to help me with that one. It would cost quite a lot of money to actually beat that bundle. It, it would actually would have been cheaper to go the torture route. Uh, you know, rather than pay the Junimos to beat these bundles separately. But, because we are Junimo farmers, the Junimos would not forgive us if we went the Georgia route. So this is what we had to resort to. So, at the end of day 33, I got really lucky here. I got a fairy, and she would speed up some of the crops there. I also made some preserve bins the next day, just to put in some blueberries to make blueberry jelly. That would triple in value for me now when they're finished. I fished for the rest of the day just to make some more money because my funds were a bit low. Day 35 went to Clint, got the gold pickaxe off him, super happy with that. I spent the rest of my money on coal, tons of coal and the reason why I spent it all on coal is because I wanted to make more preserve jars and coal was just really hard to get at the moment. Went to the quarry today, cut down all the trees that grew using the tree fertilizer to get more wood because I wanted to make more preserve jars and eggs later on. The blueberries were coming along pretty well, so it was just with a thing of beauty at the moment on the farm. Spent the rest of the day now fishing up catfish in the secret woods. Day 37 starts with getting that lovely blueberry jelly from those preserve jars. That'll be a nice profit now for me. I also put down more preserve jars as well to increase my blueberry production. It was time to upgrade more tools. I'm going to go with the copper watering can this time. At this right now, I was just preparing myself for Ginger Island. So I had the cloth, cheese and a jelly for the artisan bundle, but I currently didn't have the funds to pay the Junimos to find the other items for me. I needed 22,000 gold to actually beat that bundle using the power of the Junimos, so we'd have to come back to that later on. I did however pay the Junimos 3,800 gold to complete the animal bundle for me, so hopefully they won't raid Marnie too much. <laughs> I got a cheese press for completing that, which is pretty nice, and it was sent back to Gunther. I gave him some artifacts here that I got from treasure chests, including a dinosaur egg, which was super lucky. I also went into the mines today, day 37, and it was time to get some gold, I was getting stone, I was getting fibre. There was a load of things that I needed. Day 38 was actually a Skull Cavern run, but this time I came down prepared. I had lots of bombs, I had ladders, I was well equipped, and I came out of here with a ton of Iridium Ores and Prismatic Shards. I was super happy with this run, I got done really far. Even got to floor 100 here. I got a red slime egg. That will actually sell for a nice few thousand gold. So the next day, I went to the Desert Trader. And I traded in three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Which is the best consumable in the game. I also went to the Luau today as well. Totally forgot to bring the sturgeon with me. So I just turned in some grapes. And the governor said it was just an average soup. Well, you know what, governor? Average is better than no soup. So, let's have some. So... Day 40, and this is just a thing of beauty. Look at our giant Junimo farm. All these blueberries will be harvested by the Junimos, so they've got their work cut out for them for today. They'll also water all those blueberries as well. Pam was offered 2,250 gold for the diamond. How could we say no? It was also time to upgrade my clothes to prismatic clothes using cloth and prismatic shards. I was able to get the pants and the top 
But to get the magical hat, I was going to need 333 on the geodes. So it was time to start saving for that. It was now back to Clint. I got the copper watering can. I was super happy with that. I then got Clint to break open a ton of Omni Geos that I had from the Skull Cavern Run. 51 in total. And I actually get really lucky here. And I ended up getting the Prismatic Shard from one of them. Which is really cool as well. Because that's one of the rarest things you can get from breaking open a Geode. Which is a Prismatic Shard. So I did some smelting today. And I also put more blueberries into these preserve jars. Just to get a little bit extra money on the side. Why not? At the end of today, I made a total of 375,000 gold. This is primarily from selling all the blueberries that these Junimos collected. Look at all the blueberries that they collected. It's just so much. After making so much money. And we're, only, we're literally just hitting the tip of the iceberg here, you know? We're not even halfway through this challenge yet. <laughs> so, I had 371,000 gold to play around with. I used the power of the Junimos to unlock all of these bundles to get my hands on the lovely greenhouse but i wasn't really after the greenhouse what i really wanted was access to ginger island as quickly as possible just to get the ball rolling there once the pantry was completed it was time to do the bulletin board and i go straight onto the bulletin board after this and all the bundles here aren't too expensive the most expensive one is probably the die bundle there for ten thousand gold the field research bundle was only almost seven thousand for example the Enchantress bundle was 8500 and with the Fodder bundle it was 8700 But because we had so much money, we could just pay the Junimos to get all these items for us. And they gladly do it. It just goes to show that even Junimos need money. Junimos were now super happy that all of the requirements have been met. They said goodbye and it was only a matter of time now before I get access to Ginger Island. But before I went to Ginger Island, it was time to set up some decent routes in Stardew Valley. So I just done a tree farm there. I'll put tappers on those trees in the quarry in a couple of days. I also got a nice scene here too in day 42 which just shows the community centre back to its full potential. So I purchased a rare seed today for 1000 gold. That'll get me a star drop later on in the game. I also started gathering some hardwood because I needed I believe 200 pieces in total to fix up the hull to get ginger island. I had all the other items that I needed. It was just the hardwood now that was holding me back. So, that night, lightning struck the abandoned Georgia Mart, unlocking the hidden bundle. I also went to Clint the next day, I've got my Iridium pickaxe, super happy with that. I know I say super happy a lot, but I, honestly, I am super happy getting these lovely tools so early in the game. <laughs> so, to complete the hidden bundle was 80,350 gold, much better than the Georgia rates, of course. So, I paid the Junimos to go and fetch all the items needed, to complete that bundle and they also happily obliged once that bundle has been completed i can now access the theater which is amazing this means getting friendship up with crobus and other npcs in the game will be super easy because the theater is a great way to get friendship points with the npcs day 44 and we're getting through summer look at all these lovely blueberries that these junimos are harvesting it will take them the whole day but they are super hard working junimos down into the broken board, we're going to fix up the hull, the iridium anchor, and we're going to fix up the machine as well. So, all materials were found. That means Willie and Robin will fix up the boat that night. So, I just wanted to show you that Pam's picture here with the HD portraits. I thought it looked really nice. Speaking of Pam, it was time to get her to give us a lift to the desert. We were going to go visit Sandy here, and we were going to purchase as many starfruit seeds as possible. 456 in total. These will go into the greenhouse. Well, we'll put as many of them as we can into the greenhouse. But first, we had to hoe up the ground, put down some sprinklers. So I'm going to put down iridium sprinklers here inside the greenhouse, fill it up with starfruit, and I had 340 starfruit seeds left. I'll put those over on Ginger Island. I got level 10 mining with the blacksmith perk. Bars worth 50% more. And I'm also getting Clint to break open more geodes here for me because I really wanted the key to the sores to go down and meet Krobus. I paid a thousand gold today. I'm gonna get Willy to bring me over to Ginger Island where our new adventure begins. Ginger Island is a great money maker because the farm acts as a giant greenhouse. You can grow anything you want on Ginger Island and you don't even have to worry about the crows. But before we get access to the farm, we had to hunt down golden walnuts. Thankfully, because I've done this so many times, I know the location of all the golden walnuts without looking at any sort of guides. 
Ginger Island is a pretty cool, whimsical place. You can befriend the parrots, they can beat up turtles for you, which are blocking your paths to certain areas. There's puzzles located all over the map, of course. If you need a guide that will show you where to get all these golden walnuts, check out my golden walnut guide, which will be in the description of this video. It will show you the location of every single golden walnut, so you can unlock the secrets of Ginger Island for yourself. For the rest of the evening, I just got rid of all the debris on the farm here. So come day 46, I can put down all these starfruit seeds. I also go back to the desert to speak to Sandy, get some deluxe speed grow. I combine this with my farming perk. That's a 35% increased growth weight for those starfruit, which means they grow a lot faster. Gunther finally paid me a visit. He will give me the key to the sower so I can now meet the lovely Krobus and befriend him. So I sold a lot more blueberries to Pierre because I need a lot more money to get a lot more seeds. Also went to Krobus and I said hello to him. Krobus loves wild horse radishes. He also loves void eggs. Cool tip here is that you can purchase a void egg off Krobus and then gift it to him. And that's a very easy loved gift for Krobus, provided of course you have the funds all the time. I also purchased a star job off him for 20,000 gold. It's also worth noting too that he sells iridium sprinklers every Friday, but I didn't really need any of those. It was back to Ginger Island, this time I was going to spend the day fishing to get up the Skull of Walnuts, and I also completed the pylon puzzle as well, which took me the whole day to do, but I finally beat it. Day 48, look at all our lovely blueberries, our super junimos are going to harvest up all those, and we're going to make a ton of money when we sell those at the end of the season. I also put some tappers on the trees here too, in the quarry cave, and then on day 49 it was back to Ginger Island to do a volcano dungeon run. I also purchased the ginger ale recipe, as this gives you a luck increase, and I also purchased the warp totem ginger island, which would come in super handy as well if I ever have to access ginger island later on, I don't want to wait around for Willy. So, in the elite treasure chest on floor number 8, I picked up some dragon scale boots, I was super happy with that. For some reason it was really dark in the volcano dungeon, it might be because of the Daisy Nico's early recolor mod. So I enchanted my galaxy sword, I got the crusader enchant, super happy with that. The next day it was finally time to free Professor Snail and start his archaeology quest. The professor will send us on a quest to obtain loads of different fossils and the more fossils we give him, the more rewards he gives us. We needed to give him all of the fossils of course to get all of the golden walnuts that he had on him. Fortunately, you can get all of the fossils in the first year, no problem at all. Nothing will hold you back, except for luck, of course. He also had some island survey reports here, so it was 22 for the purple flowers. And then for the purple starfish, he just had to answer 18. And that was another two handy dandy golden walnuts in the bag. The parrots weren't just great at combat, they are also great at construction, and they built up the resort area which allowed me get access to this lovely beach where I got another golden walnut from the Starship Pond. There was also a spot here too where you could hold another golden walnut up, just like that. I then went inside the Pirate's Cove here. Pirates appear in here sometimes if it's not raining, which is really cool, but more importantly, there was another golden walnut. I have Krobus a theatre ticket and he was really excited. He said he normally doesn't show himself outside in front of humans, but he had an idea. So I went up to the theatre area and I got Krobus one of his favourite snacks the black licorice. Krobus was in a really cool kind of purple suit. I thought it was really cute. And he says, hello, I'm very excited to be at the visual entertainment center and to consume the popped corn just like you. How am I doing? You know what, Krobus? You are doing magnificently well. So we saw Journey of the Pirate King. Krobus actually didn't like this movie, but he did like the treat I gave him, so I think I came out with more friendship points than, than zero or in the negative category. It was back to cutting down more trees because eventually I am going to make an absolute ton, I mean a ton of cakes. I sold loads up on loads of blueberries up here, got to 145,000 gold, ready to play around with that. It's time to start making some sheds. So I'm going to put all the sheds down here at the bottom of our lovely blueberry farm. As we can see the junipers are still hard at work. Bless their souls. <laughs> All these sheds will be filled up to the top with cakes and we will be making starfruit wine. That's where the big money is going to come from. It was back to Clint again. Used all my money, well almost all my money, and bought a full stack of coal, 999 pieces. I was now covered for coal for the rest of the challenge. The reason why I bought so much is because I needed to smelt so many ores into bars. I needed tons of copper bars 
to make tappers for the quarry because I was going to make a lot more trees which are going to have a lot more tappers which means more oak resin for me that means I could make more kegs I also went back to Ginger Island and I started breaking open all these trees to get up my foraging skill to get wood I even went for the hardwood as well because hardwood could be broken down via the wood chippers into regular wood later on in the game as well back to Robin I got a big shed this time which was a nice upgrade I got Clint to break open some golden coconuts here and I managed to get an artifact I needed for Professor Snail. I also fished up the fossilized spine on Ginger Island too and I managed to use some panning here and I was lucky enough to get some iridium ore. I was actually hoping to get the fossilized tail but iridium ore is not a snuff at. So I had a good bit of artifacts already discovered. I actually was lucky enough to get one of the snake vertebrae there but I still needed one more. So I was hoping I was going to get that soon enough. So we are on day 54. Look at all these lovely oak resins. There's well over 50 oak resins here now in total. So that's going to be at least 50 kegs. I also discovered that because the Junimo hut was close to the greenhouse. The Junimos went inside and started harvesting my star fruit. So I actually couldn't really help that. But you know what? I said I'd leave them off. I know I met a route to start where that the Junimos going to do the regrowable crops. But there's nothing I could do about the greenhouse. The Junimos just absolutely love to work the farm. And who am I to say, no, you can't do that. You can't have fun. You can't pull up those lovely starfruits. Look at all the blueberries I'm going to sell today. I had thousands upon thousands of blueberries that were going to be sold. I wonder how much money I'm going to make from selling all these lovely blueberries. I'm finishing off summer by going to a lovely visual event here, which is the Moonlight Jellies. Combined with the lovely fishing mod where you can see fish in the water. I made over 1 million gold at the end of summer by selling blueberries. Isn't that just insane? <laughs> Look at all the blueberries that I sold. It's the first day of fall and the Junimos are watering the ground. They're clearing away all the dead crops. So while they're doing this, I'm going to go to Pierre with my millions of gold. And we are going to get tons of cranberry seeds. We are going to get... Huge, huge amounts of cranberry seeds. Well over 2,000 cranberry seeds to boot. And we are going to set up the whole farm with cranberries. So that's going to be the theme for this fall. It is going to be cranberries. Cranberries are actually pretty good in terms of profit yield. You know, like they do cost a lot of money. But you do make it back tenfold. And because we have so many cranberries planted, we are going to get back millions from this. It took me the whole day, of course, to plant those uh, cranberries. I also had access to the special orders quests now on the second day of fall. We're going to go prismatic jelly here for the uh, the wizard. Um, I also had a few crops grow back in Ginger Island. So I had the melon, the wheat and the garlic that I was lucky enough to get in Skull Cavern. That was 15 golden walnuts in total from the frog. Five each for each uh, crop grown. All the star fruit was fully grown too. So not only was I going to get a ton of star fruit, but I was going to also get five golden walnuts to farming so i purchased another full stack of starfruit seeds there off the lovely sandy and they will go back into the greenhouse and they'll also go back into ginger island as well and the great thing about ginger island as well as the greenhouse is that the speed grow i put down remains so i don't have to go away and purchase extra speed grow that will last throughout the whole challenge so i went to the shop this time and i purchased wood off robin just to get the ball rolling properly with the cakes because i needed thousands and thousands of wood you know, to make all the kegs that I needed. When I purchased all that wood from Robin, I then ran around Stardew Valley, cut down some trees, went up to the bat house area here. There was tons of fibre up here, which was nice, because I hadn't been up here yet. So I got all the fibre from here, and then I cut down all the trees from here as well. Then the quest was on the prismatic jelly. To get that, I had to kill a prismatic slime, and it's super rare. Floor 8 was an ambushed floor, but I unfortunately enough didn't get it. The next day, however, I did come across just before the day ended. And this prismatic slime hits like a truck. It also has a lot of HP. But I beat it. I got the prismatic jelly. And that was a good day of grinding done. The next day, I gave that to the wizard. He was super happy about that. I didn't do it for the money. I did it to get the monster musk recipe. Which comes in real handy later on. Monster musk also makes it super easy to get some of the monster eradication goals done. Now, I wasn't going for monster eradication goals in this video. But it's nice to have it anyway. So, the first batch of Starfruit wine was done, I just got it there at the greenhouse, then it was back to the quarry to get more oak resins. And then I filled up my shed with kegs, 
and all these kegs were going to have star fruit to make star fruit wine, which is just super profitable. The next day, I got the monster musk recipe off the wizard from doing his prismatic jelly quest, and I took Krobus to the theater again. This time, because it was fall and new movie was going to be played, it was called Mysterium. Krobus actually liked that one, which is pretty cool. So that was more friendship points with him. It was time to expand our lovely tree farm at the quarry, so I did just that. And now, here we go, folks. Day 63, look at all these fabulous cranberries. And the Junimo's hard at work. You probably noticed, too, the Junicrows, which is basically the Scarecrow, changes throughout the seasons. So they look different depending on if it's spring, summer, fall, or winter. Back to Robin. We're going to get another shed, of course, because it was just easier to manage the kegs if you just keep sticking them in sheds and put the sheds beside each other. Went into the mutant bug layer, got the dark talisman, went to the uh, swamp area here, and I gave this henchman, I normally call him a goblin, but he's a henchman, I gave him a void mayonnaise that I fished up just from the waters around him. Now I can get access to the magical ink that I give to the wizard. The reason why I needed this was to build the other buildings, because I could just make the Junimo huts from the mud, but if I wanted to make the gold clock that I ran, I had to get that, so I might as well just get it now and get it done. So I got the Tropical Fish Special Orders quest there from the Special Orders board. And that just means I had to get 5 Lionfish, 5 Blue Discus, which took basically the whole of today, which is a 64. And then tomorrow it was going to be the Stingray. I also got the Fossilized Tail there too from Panning, so I was super happy with that. And the next day then it was just a full day of fishing. The Stingray, unfortunately, wasn't very common for me, so it took me the majority of the day to get it. The next day though... Willie gave me a deluxe fish tank. His tanks to get him all those fish. So I was super happy with that. And the star fruit was fully grown again on Ginger Island. So it took me the majority of the day to harvest all that star fruit and plant more star fruit seeds. And of course, I ran out again. So I had to buy another full batch of star fruits. I could only afford 580 this time I was running out of money. So it was time to sell some cranberries to Pierre and go back to Sydney and get more star fruits. So that put me up to 56,000 gold there. I went to Robin though, and this time it was going to be a big shed upgrade, just so I could fill out the place with more kegs. Also went back to the mines, I was smelting copper bars, as per usual, because I wanted to make more kegs, and more importantly, more tappers. So, with this setup now, every few days, I was going to be able to collect more than over 100 oak resins, which means I could easily make tons and tons of kegs, because if I needed one, I could just buy it off Robin. So today was just a day of processing, putting all the star fruit into the kegs to make star fruit wine. I wonder how much money I'll end up with in this challenge. It'll be very interesting to see. The cranberries have regrown, the Junimos will of course harvest all these lovely cranberries. For me, while they're doing that, I'm going to cut down some trees like the pro with my lovely gold axe. The more wood I get, the more profits I am going to make because the more kegs I can make. I also went to the travelling cart and I noticed an unusual item I've never seen before, an industrial pipe. Never came across such an item, so I purchased it and I stuck it inside the house. It was actually decoration, but I thought it was really cool, so I said, you know what, I'll show it in this video because it was something a bit different, and you know, sometimes different is good. <laughs> so, we were back to smelting more bars. This time, though, I was smelting iridium ores into iridium bars, and I purchased 61 bombs off the dwarf there because I wanted to go back into Skull Cavern to do a decent run. But before that, I was back in the regular mines farming copper. The next day, I went to the desert merchant. I purchased some staircases, and it was time to go back into Skull Cavern for another mega run. I mean, it was so successful. I came out with tons of iridium ore, and I came out with absolute tons of prismatic shards again. Not to mention tons of other items, such as Omni Geos and stone and things like that. The next day, I took the rock rejuvenation quest for Emily, and I also completed a puzzle in Ginger Island by getting all the gem birds. I also found the last snake vertebrae and finished off the artifacts for Professor Snail completing his minigame. The award, of course, was a mango and a banana sapling and a ton of golden walnuts. With the golden walnuts that I got, I finally completed the warp obelisk inside the uh, Ginger Island farm so I could warp back to Stardew Valley and I got access to Key's secret walnut room. Unfortunately, there was a choice of Junimo Kart and Key's kindness, so I went with Junimo Kart thinking, you know what? I've played it long enough now, surely I can beat Merluz's record. This was my best attempt, so I'm just going to show this uh, this once for this challenge. And I got to the fourth level there, but I failed miserably. I was only a few thousand points off beating Merluz, but I couldn't. To get Merluz back, I decided to prank him 
and I put his shorts into my Grange display. He gave me some star tokens, told me to clear out my trunk as quickly as possible. I took the star tokens, gambled them a few times, treated myself to a lovely star drop, and you know what? I left the shorts where they were, so everyone can see what kind of a man Mary Lewis is. <laughs> so, we're more than halfway through fall now, day 73, and look at all the lovely cranberries, it was just so much. I did give Emily all of the gems that she requested, and she was super happy with that. She says, can you feel that the ocean has a profound healing energy? It absolutely does. What also has a healing energy is the 1000 gold coins that she gave me, uh, which I don't think added up to the actual gems that I gave her, but the reward will be worth it the next day. Speaking of rewards, look at all these lovely iridium bars that I get to sell. Each one will go for 1500 gold, which is not snuff at. I made over 1 million gold today from selling cranberries. <laughs> I mean... It's just because there's so many cranberries there, there's over 2,000 of them set up on the farm. So I treated myself to a Desert Warp Totem recipe and another Magic Rock Candy. That was Magic Rock Candy number 2. And I went to Sandy and I purchased another full stack of starfruit seeds to put in the greenhouse and back on Ginger Island. It was then back to the quarry. So you'll probably see like a, a little um, kind of an event farm here, you know, where I kind of do kind of the same things every week to maximize profits where I'm going to the quarry to get the resins, making the kegs, buying star fruit, processing that into wine, trying to make as much money as possible to get the gold clock. This is what it's all about though. If you want to get that gold clock in year one, you have to go down the star fruit route. There's no ifs or buts about it. So I went to Robin day 75, made another shed. That's going to be upgraded and then filled up with kegs. Gave Krobus another theater ticket. We went to see Mysterium again because we loved it the first time. And Krobus likes it, which is the main thing as well. That's more friendship points with him. Back over on Ginger Island, we're cutting down all the trees this island has to offer to get even more wood. Then it's back to Robin, of course. And you guessed it, it is another big shed upgrade. So I tried Junimo Kart one more time after about 10 or 20 attempts, finally made it to the fourth level again, and I died miserably yet again. Could not beat Mayor Lewis's score of 50,000. Mayor Lewis is an absolute beast at Junimo Kart. <laughs> To make myself feel better, I did combine an Iridium Band with the Ruby Ring twice, giving me a total of a 40% increase in attack power, as well as magnetism and glowiness. So I know I've shown this a few times already, but I just had to show it every time it happened. Literally a farm filled up the top of cranberries and the Junimons just working hard to make me that money. So I went for a Curious Substance Special Orders quest today. I had a whole week to do that. That'd be easy enough to do. And I also got the Danger in the Deep key quest which awards me with 50 key gems and it also gives me access to the hardened version of the mines and radioactive ore it's also worth noting too that a radioactive bar just won with the blacksmithing perk sells for 4500 gold i decided to use magic rock candies today to get down as quickly as i could inside the dangerous version of the mines and also in the hopes that more radioactive ores would appear so i could turn that luck into a serious profit I did get the occasional radioactive veins here and there, but they're still very, very rare. Still though, the best way to farm ore is to just go in and out of floor 1 when you have the dangerous version of the mines activated. Those green ghosts are lethal if they hit you with the debuff, it means you can eat food to heal for a good few minutes, so it could be life threatening. So it's also worth noting that if you take a ginger ale, you can heal that debuff. So I spent a few days in the hardened version of the mines. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to complete this quest as quickly as possible to get the key gems. So I could get those galaxy souls to get my weapon upgrade. Because one of the goals was to get the infinity blade. And that required three galaxy souls. Made it down to the bottom of the mines. That was the end of day number 81. Or I should say the beginning. Because it was only 2 o'clock and I had radioactive ores to smelt into radioactive bars. I also went to the shed to today to get all of the lovely starfruit wine. I was going to make so much money from this. Obviously, I wasn't selling it right now because I didn't have the artisan perk, you know, with the farming profession. But I would swap professions later on in the game and then sell it to maximize profits. I got Robin to make, yes, another shed. And it was also back to Sandy to buy more starfruit seeds. So once these starfruit seeds were purchased, we we're going to go back over to Ginger Island. But the great thing here isn't the amount of starfruits that we get to harvest. It's the fact that the banana tree finally bore a banana so we can give that to the lovely gorilla here and get 
more golden wallets as a reward. We also got our sweet gem berry as well. It took almost a whole month to get that because I forgot to plant it. And I brought that down to the secret woods to get another star drop. Later on that day, I went to the Halloween event here and I picked up a golden pumpkin which will come in super handy for a Crobus birthday. That's coming up soon. The next day, I gave the wizard his ectoplasm and he awarded me with 2500 gold. But more importantly, he'll give me a really good recipe for mini warp obelisks the next day. So I brought Crobus to the cinema yet again. This was the third time we're going to see Mysterium because it was such a good movie. And I also went back to the Desert Shredder. I now had enough Omni Geodes saved up to get the Magic Turban, which now completes my full set of prismatic clothes. So I was super happy with that. Just look at me go. I am styling. Went to Robin. Time to construct another farm building. It was a big shed upgrade as per usual. So we're now in the first of winter and we ended up in hide and seek Crobus today. Gives me a magnifying glass. It's also Crobus's birthday today. So, to make it up to him, we're going to give him that golden pumpkin we got in the Halloween event. And he's super happy there. We now have him on 8 out of 10 hearts. We're going to try really hard to get him up to 10 hearts so he can move in with us. Time for another quest. We're going to go with fragments of the past. 100 pieces of bone. Super simple because we have monster musk. We also have access to the dig site as well. Which is great for bone shards. I paid 10,000 gold. Time to respect the farming profession to artisan. And we're going to respect foraging too for gatherer so I get more forgers and I pick them up off the ground. It was then back into the greenhouse and we're getting even more starfruit wine, putting more starfruit back into the kegs. That will have to stop eventually though because we're finishing up on the 16th of winter and it does take a good few days for those kegs to produce starfruit wine. We're going to go with four precious stones here for the key quest. That was very simple to do because I just had so many prismatic shards. I almost had enough key gems now to get three galaxy souls. I was just missing a few but one more quest would seal the deal for me. Once this was done, it was back into the regular version of the mines with a monster musk and I was just killing skeletons to do the fragments of the past special orders quest. I then realised it was a much faster way to do it, if I just went to the dig site with a couple of bombs, I could very easily get the bone fragments here to complete the quest because you just get so many bone fragments from blowing open all these veins. So once I got all the bone fragments here, that was the quest done, it was straight back to Gunther then handed him in the bone fragments and I would be rewarded with a bone mill and some money as well. 3500 gold? Not bad. In the grand scheme of things it is very small but every little bit helps. It's time to construct another farm building but this time it wasn't going to be a shed. This time it's going to be a stable. And where will you see what kind of mount I got for this video? You're not going to believe what kind of amount it is. <laughs> but it is a very unique and fun mount. So the Junimos are still working hard in winter. No season will stop them from working. They're just sorting out my winter seeds there for the forageables. And at the same time, I was getting even more winter forageables to make more winter wild seeds. I had a lot of Junimo huts on the farm. I didn't want them to go cold. So I felt really bad that they were just inside their huts with nothing to do. So I was committed to getting more seeds. So I finally got access to a new mount. I'm going to call it Juno. It is basically a giant Junimo that you can ride around on. <laughs> Look at it go, it changes colour every time it takes a step, which is really cool. It has different modes though, so it, does, it doesn't have to do that. You know, you can just give it a set colour as well, if you don't want it uh, alternating between different colours like that when you're riding it around. So it's a really cool uh, mod there for the horse transfiguration. I didn't want the Junimos to collect the Winter Forgebills because they didn't have to gather a perk and they were only getting one at a time where I had a chance to get two. So I tried to collect as many as I could before the Junimos claimed them all. I did however get to make an extra 300 plus Winter Wild Seeds from the ones that I gathered. And I just turned them back into Wild Seeds again so that was pretty cool. That would keep the Junimos busy for a while. Back down to Krobus, purchased the Void Egg off him, gifted him the Void Egg straight away to see if I could max out the friendship but we weren't there just yet. So I went back to Robin, to the shop, and I purchased all the recipes she had on offer. I just wanted all the different types of pats that you could put on the farm. And I also got her to upgrade my house as well to make it a little bit bigger. So when Crobus does eventually move in, he'll have a nice, streamy, spacious house. Much better than the source. So it was time to go to the winter event here now, the winter fishing event. And I purchased some decorations there as well for the travelling cart merchant. And I also won the fishing event too, and as a reward, I got some pretty cool fishing tackles and I also got a fishing hat. It didn't however come close to the magical turban that I had, so I just kept the magical turban on because it just went so well with the prismatic pants and top that I had. 
So we're now on day 93 and it's just the usual processing of starfruit into starfruit wine. This would more than likely be the last time I'd put starfruit into the kegs. I also purchased a void ghost pendant. Uh, I needed a few hundred void essences for that, but I had that from doing the old dungeon runs over and over again. And Krobus decided that he would move in with me, which was great. It was time for another key quest. I'm going to go with four precious stones because it was just easier to complete and I wanted those key gems as quickly as possible. So I put in the four prismatic shards, got the key gems and I purchased the last galaxy soul that I needed to upgrade my galaxy sword to the infinity blade. So before I went up there to do that, I just did a regular volcano run just to get my hands on more shards and stuff like that. Got the infinity blade. I also put three rubies into it to increase its raw attack power. And it also had the Crusader Enchant, so it was quite the formidable weapon when it was finished. I now had one of the strongest weapons in the game, the Infinity Blade. A level 22 sword, 104 to 130 damage, 4 speed, 2 defense and the Crusader Enchant. It was now time to make the farm look pretty. I fished up the Iridium Crobus here, needed a fishing skill of 15. That was easy enough to get with the Fishing Master Enchant. I also got the stone Junimo statue behind the community centre and Krobus finally moved into the house but he wasn't very talkative on the first day. But not to worry, I'm sure he'll come around in time. So it was time to start cleaning up the farm. I was just pickaxing away all these hold spots so I could put down some pats and make the farm look really good. The next day Krobus came around and he gave me a really nice hug. I was really happy about that. I also got all the winter forageables here as well. And I finally reached max skill on the forging. That was now all skills fully maxed out. Super happy with that. I decided to give Junimo Kart one more attempt just to see if I could beat Merluz's record. And I was going to speed this attempt up. I got so close with this attempt and I just died due to a city fall. I must have been off by about a thousand points there to beat Merluz's score. But in the end, I couldn't beat Merluz. But I got really close to beating him. I also forgot to give Robin her last axe as she lost in spring, but there you go Robin, I know it took almost a whole year, but there is your last axe, that's 250 gold in the bag. <laughs> it's better late than never, as they say. Back to Ginger Island, this was going to be the last starfruit harvest we were going to get. All of these starfruits would just be sold, they wouldn't be processed into starfruit wine. But it will be very interesting to see how much money we make here and boom, look at that. We made over 10 million gold, primarily from selling starfruit wine. Let's look into the farming tab to see how the profits are broken down. As you can see, mostly starfruit wine and we just have the regular starfruit down there as well. So it was a good, it was a good day, a good money making day. What are we going to do with all this money? We are going to get the gold clock, of course, which is another challenge complete. We did, of course, need the help of the Junimos to get the gold clock, but we actually had money left over. So we got the desert and the ginger island warp obelisks. And now what we have here is a lovely tour of our Junimo farm. So as we can see, I put up some iron fences. I put down some benches, put down some flowers, put down some seeds. I made the farm look really nice. All challenges have been completed. We got the gold clock. We went over 10 million gold. We maxed out all our skills. And we even got the infinity blade upgrade. So it was a really successful run. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like as that really helps me out. Got about 8,000 subscribers at the moment. If I can hit 10,000, it'll be a great mind stall for me. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but on hardcore survival mode. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another 100 day Stardew Valley challenge. For the purposes of this challenge, we are going to try to complete as much of the game as possible within the 100 days. But there are going to be some serious restrictions that are going to make this run a hardcore survival run. Let's get straight into the rules. Every single day will be played using the worst luck attainable thanks to a lovely luck mod that I have downloaded. Monsters will now scale with luck. Their attack, defense and speed has now been greatly enhanced. Monsters will also spawn on the farm so we're going to have to keep our wits about us especially in the evening time. Stardew Valley is experiencing a drought. No sprinklers can be used ever. <laughs> No tool upgrades are allowed, this also includes fishing rods, so we will have to use our regular fishing rod 
to catch every fish in the game. We cannot sell tea saplings or fish. The community center will now have regular and remix bundles active at once. No backpack upgrades shall be allowed. We will be playing through this whole game using the regular backpack that we start with. Only one chest will be allowed in this run. So we're gonna have to try really hard not to over accumulate on items that we don't need. Hunger and dehydration statuses have been added to Stardew Valley. If my character gets dehydrated or goes hungry, I can very quickly lose health and stamina, resulting in my character passing out. And last but certainly not least, no buff food of any kind will be allowed. Thanks so much everyone for subscribing to my channel. This is the special 10,000 subscriber video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. It took a lot of work, a lot of effort, and <laughs> a lot of patience. So let's jump straight into this video and let's have some fun. It is day number one on our lovely hardcore survival farm. We start by just clearing up some of the rubble around the farm to make space for some lovely crops. We're going to start with our free 15 parsnip seeds. Any mixed seeds we get, we will of course plant those as well. We're going to cut down some trees and make the one and only chest that we can use in the entire run. So we're going to have to be super careful when making decisions on what goes into this chest. What can be stored, what can be used straight away. As a result, you will see frequent visits to the community center. It was time to pick up the spring onions. Any other forages we saw along the way were also picked up because we wanted to increase our foraging skill as quickly as possible. As you can see there in the bottom right, dehydration and hunger have already gone down substantially so we have to eat food to keep those stats up thankfully spring onions come in super handy rest of the day was spent just socializing with the lovely residents of stardew valley just to get to know everyone day number two starts with watering up the crops and there's going to be plenty of water in this challenge because we cannot use sprinklers ever we also get a lovely mail from willie to say that we can get a fishing rod off him this will be the only fishing rod we can use in the challenge. This will make it an absolute nightmare to catch certain fish in the game, including most of the legendary fish and of course the cursed octopus. But for now, let's just start with the easy fish and work our way up. Let's see how well we can get on by using this regular fishing rod. It's also worth noting too that all of the fish I catch here I cannot sell. These fish will primarily be used to eat, to recover, hydration and hunger. In order to get perfection in this game, we will have to sell at least one of every crop in the game. There's also a lot of community center bundles that are going to be active, so purchasing one of each crop from Pierre is a good way to start spring. As we can see, I've got a nice assortment of items here on the farm planted in the ground. Later on that night, I get attacked by bats. I was a bit confident here, but then I realized that after getting one hit off a bat, my health was drastically reduced. To stay alive, I ran into my house and went to bed for the night. I wasn't going to chance my arm fighting those bats anymore. I did need some serious defenses in order to tackle the monsters of this game, as well as a decent weapon. It's also worth noting too that the chest rewards in the mines are also remixed, so I'm not too sure in what order I'm going to get items. Day number three is of course our rainy day, and we do spend it fishing. Getting up the fisher skill as quickly as possible will benefit us, because the higher quality fish we get, the more that can do for hunger and dehydration for us, as well as giving us lots of health and energy. So fish is still the way to go in order to survive in this game. I fished up the catfish and the eel today, both needed for perfection. They're also needed for community center bundles. So we're on to day number four. We're gonna start with watering the crops and most days will start this way unless of course we get a rainy day, which would be super rare of course. You'll also notice on the top right hand side of the screen, you will see a die. This icon will always be grey, indicating that every single day will be the worst luck you can actually get. So I was doing more fishing today, and the reason why I was doing so much fishing was because every time I tried to do anything else, dehydration and hunger would quickly fall. So I had to constantly eat fish to keep my character ticking over. So in terms of fishing level 5, I went with the crab pot perk because I figured that if I can get lots and lots of crab pots put down, it would increase my survival rates big time, as it would just be an easier way to accumulate fish and to eat those for health and energy. There was no point increasing the value of fish, because I couldn't sell them in the first place anyway. So the monsters in the mines were much tougher, but the hardest part was actually getting down two levels. It took so long to get a ladder because the luck was so bad, 
I had to mine open almost every single, if not all, of the rocks on the level just to get a ladder to descend down to the next level. So that was just floor number two. And as we can see here, I got to floor number 10, but it took almost the whole day just to descend 10 levels. I did get a wooden blade in the horse chest, and it's a small bit better than the rusty sword, but not by a whole lot. I was hoping for much better boots, much better defense, but for now, the wooden blade would have to do. In order to get perfection, we were going to have to max out all of the relationship statuses with the NPCs of Stardew Valley. Doing help wanted quests like this, Linus was looking for an eel, is a great way to get the friendship points up. It's also worth noting too that if we accumulate enough hearts with Linus, he will teach us a recipe called sashimi. That will make it a lot easier to store up fish as we can only have the first backpack active, can't upgrade the backpack to the second or third tiers. So turning fish into sashimi is a great way to save up inventory space. So if we do see quests from Linus, we will absolutely prioritize those to get the hearts up with him to learn the sashimi recipe. So that was one of the big tasks I wanted to get done with as quickly as possible. So I'm going to pay Gunther a visit here and we are going to have to donate to him every single mineral and artifact in the game in order to get perfection. Perfection of course will span over a couple of videos as you cannot get perfection in just 100 in game days, especially if you start from year 1. So I spent the rest of the day just pulling up more fish just to keep my character ticking over. We don't want my character getting dehydrated or super hungry. I also completed my first community center bundle. That was the spring seeds in the bag. 30 spring seeds ready to go. We're going to plant those straight down in the farm. This is just an overview of the other bundles. As you can see, there's a ton of bundles there. We have both regular and remixed bundles all stacked on top of each other. Some bundles are pretty easy, others would be very difficult, especially with the restrictions imposed. It was going to be very hard to complete some of these bundles, but we'll get more into that as the video goes on. So, it was Mayor Lewis's birthday today, it gave him a daffodil, it's a light gift, it was extra friendship points with him. I spent a good portion of today watering crops, as you can see my dehydration bar and hunger bar are now at an all time low. When this happens you've got to be super careful and make sure to eat lots of food. The last thing you want is your character passing out, especially at the start or in the middle of the day. So once all of these crops were harvested, it was time to go back into the mines. As we can see here now, my health is slowly but surely just going down because my character was dehydrated. I didn't have anything on me at the moment that could get my hydration up, so my character eventually just passes out because I was taking health damage from dehydration. And the great thing about this game is that because I have the worst luck possible passing out, more likely than not will result in me losing every single item I have, including my only means of self-defense, the wooden blade. So I had to pay Marlin a visit here, and I had to use his item recovery service, pay him a small fee, and he would recover that wooden blade for me, because at the moment, I didn't really have anything else I could use to go down into the mines to fight the monsters. Sure, I could use the scythe, but the regular scythe isn't that great in the long run. So, we're at day number 9, and we start by getting all of these lovely spring forageables. Now, we can't use our usual tea sapling tactic, but we can still sell the regular spring seeds by accumulating all of the forageables we pick up off the ground. I got a glow ring here now on floor 20 in the mines. I was actually pretty happy with that, because that will make the later floors much easier, especially the dark floors when you get to floor 30. Day number 10 was a rainy day. This was the second rainy day now that has happened, apart from day number 3. It just meant I didn't have to water the crops that day, which was a godsend. So I went straight back to the mines, and I tried to make as much progress as possible. As we can see, the enemies are much faster. They do hit much harder as well, so we have to be super careful that we don't get one or two shotted by these enemies. We don't get any prizes for getting to floor 30, but at least we made some progression. So I spent the rest of the day pulling up more fish because I didn't have a whole lot of stuff to eat in order to get my hunger and hydration back up. So it was fishing and it was putting up spring onions. Spring onions saved the day so many times. Reason for this is normally when you come down here to Cindersap Forest and collect them, you normally get a good few and they do wonders for your hunger and hydration. I gave Robin the last axe today. That was a nice 250 gold in the pocket and it was more friendship points with Robin. I also picked up an ancient seed from the mines as well. Gave that into Gunther to get the ancient seed recipe and an actual ancient seed that I could plant in the farm. It was really nice to actually get that early. I could use those in seed makers later on to fill up the greenhouse with ancient fruit, which would be really nice for the profits to roll in later on. The next day, Marnie paid us a visit. 
And this time, we were going to use a mod that converted the cat into a crow. But the mod didn't change the way the crow sounded, so when you pet the crow, it actually meowed. So I called it Crow Cat, because it was, in my opinion, half crow, half cat. <laughs> so I put up a green bean on the farm. I needed that for a community center bundle, so I was super happy with that. Once all the crops were watered, it was back to the community center to fill up as many bundles as we could. Now, I couldn't complete most of the bundles as I was still waiting on a few items, but I had to come up here anyway to get rid of these items because I just didn't have the storage space to keep them. So that makes the backpack challenge really hard is because you have to make frequent visits to places to just drop items off. So the crab pot bundle was an easy one to do. I got most of those items, if not all, on the beach. Three free crab pots ready to go. I was going to put them down just outside Jody's house there. And hopefully I'll get a few snails and a few other bits and bobs in those. It was time to smelt some bars. We were going to smelt some lovely copper ores into copper bars. We're going to need all the copper that we can get to make tappers later on for our lovely tree farms. We're watering the crops again. And it was time for the lovely Easter event. So I didn't have a whole lot of money. But with the money I did have, I purchased a couple of strawberry seeds. I got 23 in total. They'll make for a nice profit. And I also won the event, of course. I've done it about 100 times now. And for this, I get a lovely straw hat. Day number 14 was an absolutely magnificent day. It was time to get all of the lovely spring forageables. Even though I couldn't make tea saplings, I could still sell the spring wild seeds if I wanted to. But for now, I was focusing on my foraging skills. So most of those will go back down into the ground. It was Haley's birthday today. I gave her a daffodil. She was super happy with that. Lots of friendship points with Haley. I also gave Caroline a daffodil too because she was in the same vicinity and I had a spare daffodil, so why not? I would have to make a tea sapling eventually and sell just one to get perfection, but we can do that later on in the challenge. Another bundle complete by bringing in a cauliflower. The reward, 20 speed grows. I was going to use those on the strawberries just to get an extra harvest for those. If I saw fiber like this, I would of course take it as I can use fiber for lots of recipes in the future. Look at all these lovely spring onions. These spring onions were just saving the day constantly because I was getting back so much hydration and hunger from eating them. I also managed to pick up a ton of salmon berries and I put that into the forager's bundle. The salmon berries that I had left also came in really handy to keep my character ticking over as well in terms of hunger and hydration. So it was time to visit Marnie now today and I gave Marnie a quartz because she can actually give a really handy recipe later on. The recipe is called Pale Broth and all you need is white algae to make it. It's also good to get the friendship points up with her so that when you get the quest in summer to go in and get Mary Lewis's shirt, you can just head on straight in, complete the quest, and get a nice amount of gold for completing it as well. So I was back down into the mines, I was on floor 33 now at the moment, and I still had the wooden sword. And it actually wasn't doing too badly. When I got down to floor 40, I did get the slingshot. Now I'm just going to throw this one away because I get the master slingshot eventually, which is far superior to the regular slingshot. Because I'm also on the 40s, it was going to be much harder to progress because I still had the regular pickaxe and I couldn't upgrade it. So it was just going to take more swings to get through the floors. I'm at 65, almost 6600 gold today, primarily from selling the spring seeds that I had accumulated. 180 in total, so that wasn't too bad. The rest of the seeds I just put back down on the farm. I couldn't put too much things down because I couldn't use sprinklers. So I had to take into consideration how much energy and how much time was needed to water all those crops every single day. So, it was time to go to Robin, and I was going to get a coop. It was time to get some animals. Animals would make my life a lot easier, because, for the most part, you just have to pet the animals, make sure they're fed, and they will auto-generate products for you every single day. A fairy visited my farm that night, and I got really lucky. She actually gave the strawberries a nice buff, so I was able to get a good few harvests today. That also gave me a farm and level up as well. So, back down into the mines. I got down before 50, got some thermal boots. They're actually not bad for starter boots. They give some defense, they also give some immunity. But I was going to need much, much better gear for the later dungeons, especially the Skull Cavern. When I got down to 460, I got the Iron Edge. I was actually really happy with this. It's a beautiful weapon, but it wasn't as good as the Lead Rod that I had. 18 to 27 damage, plus the fact that it was a mace type weapon. I could slam it off the ground and I could hit multiple enemies at once. So I was back down into the community center. And the challenge here now with the construction bundle, believe it or not, was going to be the hardwood. Because I couldn't upgrade tools, hardwood was going to be extremely hard to come by. You can occasionally, though, get hardwood from chests and crates inside of the mines when you break them open. Children's bundle would be an easy one too, just needed an ice cream to finish that. 
and I can get the ice cream and summer off Alex because he sells it. For the adventurers bundle, that was going to be easy enough too. I already had the mats for that one. And as a reward, I got a small magnet ring. Not bad. It was sent back to Gunther to hand in some of the artifacts that I found. It was very important to give Gunther as many artifacts as possible. Because if I can get access to the sores and I can get access to Krobus later on, I can buy a star drop off him, which would increase my maximum energy, which would be really nice. The traveling cart is also another very important NPC here to interact with, as she would sell a lot of items needed for some of the community center bundles. I got level 5 Forgin. I was going to go with Forester, but I said for now I'd go with Gatherer so I can pick up more forgeables to increase my survivability. I can always change them around later on anyway, once I get access to the sores. So I made some recycling machines today because I had a lot of trash accumulated from fishing. And instead of selling the trash, it would be more beneficial to put them into the recycling machines. So I went to Marlin today just to sell some stuff I didn't need. I had a quick look at some of the weapons he had. I was tempted to get the Templar's Blade. But I decided not to, because it was 4,000 gold, and I could really use that money to get other stuff. He did have combat boots, though, plus three defense sounded really nice. I decided to think about this, because I wasn't doing too badly in the mines. So I decided to come back to him later on, if I needed better defense. So it was back to Gunther, and I got Clint to break open some geodes here, from going down into the mines. That was more minerals given into Gunther there. The sooner I can get access to the sores now, the better. It was also Shane's birthday today, so I bought a bear off Gus, gave that to Shane, he was super happy, attempted to have a conversation with him after that, and he wasn't interested at all, he just wanted to drink his bear in peace, so because it was his birthday, I let him have it. <laughs> Another help wanted quest from Marnie, she just wanted a seaweed, 60 gold, but I wasn't after the gold, I was after the friendship points, so I spent the rest of the day fishing. Increasing my fishing skill was of course super important, if I picked up a seaweed, happy days. Day number 21 was a beautiful day. Look at all these lovely spring forgeables I get to pick up. I was going to get lots of forging XP for this. Also, I was going to make lots of money from selling all of these spring wild seeds. I didn't bother planting any of these back down into the ground because it was the 21st of spring now. We're almost in summer. So all of these would be converted into spring wild seeds and they would be sold. It's time to go to Marnie and get some chickens. We are going to get four chickens in total. They only cost 800 gold to pop. We're going to call him Link, Zelda, Ganon Dwarf, and last but not least, Link's trusty navigational friend, Navi. Can you guess the theme? I'm sure most of you will be able to guess where those names are from, but we will be doing lovely themed names in this video with all of the future animals that we're going to pick up. So I went a bit over the top today. I purchased 175 parasnip seeds in the hopes to drastically increase my farming skills so I can get access to more powerful perks. Because I couldn't upgrade my tools, I was relying more on the perks I could get from these skills. I gave Jody a cauliflower today as part of a quest. And the reward, it was actually a pretty nice reward. I got a total of 350 gold for giving him the cauliflower there. That was a pretty nice profit. I spent the rest of the day pulling up fish as I was running out of resources to keep my character from either starving to death or going thirsty. <laughs> I did make 21,000 gold at the end of today, primarily from selling spring seeds of course tea saplings would have made me a lot more money but we can't sell tea saplings demetrius smelled the money he visited us the next day no weather condition would stop him he gave us a choice what kind of cave we wanted we said nothing because this is a hardcore survival run and what you see there is also a bonus restriction that i didn't mention at the start of the video we won't be using demetrius's ability to set up a cave for us with this challenge it will be an empty cave we can of course decorate it in the future though. So we're going to visit Robin today. It is time to construct another building. I'm going to get her to construct a silo now because I need a structure that can hold hay to feed these lovely chickens. I also spent a great portion of today clearing away all these rocks to make a little tree farm here. And eventually when those trees do grow up, I was going to put tappers on those to get back lots and lots of syrups and oak resins and pine tars and everything else. The eggs that these chickens will create on a daily basis will come in really handy to get a steady base of income coming in. The eggs will also serve as a last resort if I don't have any other items to eat to keep up my hunger and hydration stats. So it was back down getting more spring onions. The spring onions were an absolute lifesaver. Not only did I get foraging XP, but they were also really handy to have on hand too, just for the hunger and dehydration. I got a coffee bean off of a dust sprite today. I was super happy with that. I also got a crystal fruit, but I decided to eat the crystal fruit to make room for the coffee bean 
because I knew for the fact I was going to get more crystal fruits in the future. The coffee bean was a lot harder to come across. You know, if I could plant the coffee bean today, I'd be setting myself up for hundreds and thousands of coffee beans before we get into fall. Got the master slingshot today. I had to try to decide what it's about. For that, I decided to throw away the slime. I didn't really need the slime at the moment. Day 24, it was time for an event. And I got the tub of flowers recipe here now. And I also purchased 10 dandelions and 10 daffodils along with the rare crow. The reason why I purchased daffodils and dandelions was because I had other forageables stored away in the chest. And I didn't have a whole lot of daffodils or dandelions. So I could just make more spring wild seeds that way. I didn't have enough friendship points accumulated with any of the NPCs yet to dance with them. But that was okay. I got all of the items I needed at the event. Look at all these lovely parsnips I get to harvest today. It was time to make tons of money. And of course, I was going to get lots of farming XP as well from picking up all these lovely parsnips. You also get XP for petting the animals too and for picking up the animal products every morning. So for the quality crops bundle, I had the five gold star parsnips. Happy enough with that. I also get five XP per egg. So the more chickens I get now, the better. Unfortunately, I had to manually feed these chickens every single day, but when I do upgrade the coop later on to the final tier, it'll auto-feed the chickens for me, which would be super handy. I made five mayonnaise machines today because I wanted to make bigger profits when it comes to the eggs. Selling the eggs on their own isn't too bad, but if you can turn the eggs into mayonnaise, you can make a much higher profit. Mix that up with the artisan perk we get later on, and we can make loads of money from chickens. It was time to upgrade the coop today with Robin. 10,000 gold, 400 wood, and 150 stone would get us a big coop. It would also unlock ducks for duck eggs and duck mayonnaise that we need for community center bundles as well. So I was down into the 70s now fighting these skeletons, and these skeletons were scary. Some skeletons were super fast, some had regular speed. It all depended because the stats on these monsters scale with luck. So sometimes the skeletons could hit you and it could take half your health bar away. Other times the skeletons would be much faster than you and you just had to run and leave the floor or you're just going to die. <laughs> so it was really hard to progress in the mines. Level 5 farming, I decided to go with Rancher because I was going more for animals than I was with crops. And the animal products would be plentiful as the seasons come on. So it was Pierre's birthday today, I gave him a daffodil. Super happy with that. Extra friendship points for Pierre. I also checked out the traveling cart merchant today to see what she had and she had an apple which was amazing i needed an apple for the community center bundle but that was just one apple i still needed three more for the father bundle i believe it was i also needed 500 sap for the sticky bundle after cutting down tons and tons of trees i finally saved up enough sap to get that done the reward was amazing 10 tree fertilizers so i was able to power grow 10 regular trees on the old farm so i decided to go for three to four different trees in each area this means i could quickly produce pine tar oak resin and maple syrup within the next couple of days i also made some lightning rods because i needed battery packs sooner or later i decided to get the battery packs sooner rather than later i also visited gunther today it was time to donate more items to him the diamond the frozen tear would be donated i was going to keep the jade because i needed that for a birthday that was coming up. So I went back to Clint's now today and I got him to break open more geodes. I was really hoping for the prismatic shard, but what are the odds I was gonna get one of those with the odds stacked against me. So it was time to go back into the mines and this time I was on the starter floors. Primarily, I was just looking for copper as lots and lots of tappers would need to be constructed in the next couple of days for all of the trees that were gonna fully grow up. Despite the fact that I had horrendous luck, I got pretty lucky today with copper deposits and I was able to get lots of copper ores to make lots of copper bars to make lots of tappers. So I visited Clint today and I gave him all the copper ores that he wanted. I said I might as well hit two birds with the one stone in terms of gathering enough copper ores for Clint to give me 280 gold but I also got friendship points plus I needed the copper anyway to make tappers. It was Emily's birthday, give her that jade. I almost gave the jade to Gunther but I said you know what? Emily loves jades, I had one on me. Friendship with her was more important, especially birthday friendships, as you get massive multipliers. I visited Traveling Cart again today, and she actually had a coconut here for 800 gold. Now, coconuts are very common in the desert, but I wasn't going to the desert anytime soon, so I decided to get the coconut now, just so I could put that into one of the community center bundles. I was going to get the honey, but I said no, I would have maple syrup soon enough. I'd be able to make bee houses easy enough. 
I did go to Marnie's though and I decided to buy some ducks. Four ducks in total because I already had four chickens and the bigger variety of animals I had, the better. And here we go with the names. Unibo. The next name up we're going to go is Tulin. Can you guess the theme here? For the next name, we're going to go with Raiju. Or maybe it's Raiju, but I pronounce it as Raiju. And finally, last but not least, we're going to go with Sidon. So can you guess what all those names are a part of? Let me know in the comments if you know what the theme is. Just to add a little bit of more fun to this video. So I decided to get some free crops off Gunther for giving him all those lovely artifacts and minerals. I took the melon seeds. I didn't bother taking the cauliflower seeds because we're at the end of spring now and you can't sell those seeds. So I would only end up throwing them away or they would have just taken up a precious inventory slot. So I decided to use Gunther as a little bit of an external storage and he can keep those seeds until next year. So it was time to fill out more community center bundles. And the dye bundle was going to be pretty hard because it was all going to come down to that red cabbage. And the only way to get that for the moment was off the traveling cart when she spawned. And she only spawns, if, you know, one or two days each week. So when she does spawn, it is very important to check her all the time. So I decided to farm some dust sprites today because I needed a bit more coal. I also had a quest to kill some dust sprites too, so it was hitting two birds with the one stone. I then went down into the 70s to fight those skeletons again, and there was two reasons for this. One, I wanted iron ores, and two, there's a chance these skeletons could drop a bone sword, which would be a really nice weapon upgrade for me. The bone sword is a magnificent weapon to get, especially when you're kind of half rich with the game. As we can see there, despite the fact that I was hitting these skeletons with everything I had, they still managed to close the gap on me and hit me a few times. These skeletons also had ranged attacks, such as that. And as we can see there, he turned a bone at me two consecutive times, which done a lot of damage. So I was very close to getting killed here, and I had nothing on me to heal myself. The skeleton turned another projectile at me, which more or less finished me off. And those bones hit really hard. More so, because the enemies are overpowered with the mod I am using. <laughs> as a result, I lost all of the items I had, including my valuable lead rod and diamond. So it was back to Maryland to use his item recovery service to get back my lead rod. There was no point spending money for him to get back the diamond because the diamond says for 750 gold and I didn't really need it for any bundle or anything like that so I just left it off. So I looked at weapons again. I was looking at the Templar's blade. I was going to buy it. I said no I don't need it. The lead rod is fine. I did take the combat boots though because they give plus 3 defense. And the boots I had at the moment only gave plus one defense. So I needed the extra defense because the monsters were hitting so hard. And I thought the combat boots might make life a little bit easier for me. I sold the thermal boots for 150 gold to Marilyn. And that's the great thing about Marilyn, you know, is you can sell them stuff. I thought this was hilarious. I picked up spring onions and they were all in the shape of a H. H for help. Because <laughs> the monsters were so hard. And I don't know how many times I was close to getting killed. So I thought that was hilarious. Day number 29, we're getting through the challenge, and I was going to get all that lovely mayonnaise. Before I get the mayonnaise, I had to do a little bit of inventory management here, with the few inventory slots that I had available to me. So because I was still using the first backpack upgrade, and because I couldn't upgrade the backpack, run, multiple runs were needed all the time to get stuff done, especially picking up animal products, you know, processing them, putting them into a chest, or just selling them. They all took multiple runs, and it gets worse than around in the video, when they end up having like 12 or 24 animals all roaming around the place, picking up their animal goods. So I paid the wizard a visit today, and just to hand in a quest there for killing the dust sprites, I also gave him a solar essence to just get the ranger points up with him as well, because he's kind of out of the way all of it on there in the corner, so I don't actually get to see him that often. So we were in summertime now, it was time to get that ice cream off Alex, 250 gold, well spent. This means I could complete another community center bundle. Before I went to the community centre, our good friend Linus was looking for a green algae. I, of course, will oblige, because I wanted to get more friendship points up with him. So it was back into the community centre, to the children's bundle. I submitted the ice cream there, and as a reward I got three battery packs. I was actually super happy with this, because I could use one of the battery packs that I got to complete another bundle in the boiler room. So I went into the engineer's bundle here, given the battery pack, and that was one other bundle out of the way. The reward for that was a lightning rod, so the rewards were actually really nice, and the one good thing about having both regular and remix bundles in the community center was that I was getting all the rewards back. So it was like a double-edged sword, really. So I gave Linus the green algae. I was super happy with that. That was more friendship points from Linus. 
I also gifted him a grape as well and this actually got him up a friendship level which is really nice. So as you can see there on his portrait he has a green ball now around him which means I've got at least two hearts with him. I was hoping that would be enough for him to give me the sashimi recipe. It was then back to Pierre's to purchase some crops. I did purchase a good few melon seeds because I needed five gold star melons for one of the community center bundles. I also purchased one of every other crop that he had. It did take uh, two visits in total to get all of the crops, but it was worth it because we needed it for perfection. I caught this super rare Dorota fish. This fish is actually really hard to catch because it's so rare. I couldn't sell it of course, so instead I just ate it just to get the hunger and dehydration up. Did feel like a waste, but the rules are the rules. So another community center bundle completed. As a reward, 30 summer seeds ready to be planted. Of course, because we were in a new season, it was time to get all of the fish this season had to offer. One fish in particular, the sturgeon, was needed for a couple of bundles. The lake fish bundle, of course, was one of the bundles needed for the sturgeon, so I just dropped that one in there. The reward was a dress spinner, which we couldn't actually use, but I could, of course, sell it because it was just a tackle. Gave Marion her quartz today because she likes quartz. I was able to access her bedroom, picked up the lucky purple shorts because I have to give those to Merlou's to complete a quest. And that would be a nice 750 gold in the bag once that quest was completed. I decided to get this quest done and over with as quickly as possible because the more quests I complete, the more friendship points I get and the more gold I get as well. So 750 gold wasn't too bad and all I had to do to complete that quest was to get a few friendship points with Marnie. So it was back to cutting down trees on the farm, I just had to make a little bit more space. Using a regular axe was very painful because it took 10 hits to cut a tree down and it took a few more hits to get rid of the stump. I did go for a house upgrade today because I wanted to access my cooker so I could cook up some foods that are on which should be super handy for hunger and dehydration. It was back to fishing again, I did attempt the octopus a few times, it just wasn't happening, way too hard with the regular fishing rod. I got level 7 foraging, I could finally make the tree fertilizer. This means I could now grow all of these trees in super record time and I could start putting tappers on all these trees to get lots of serves back. It was back down into the mines, I was on floor 77, I wanted to make it down to floor 100 to get the star drop. Also to get some nice rewards in the chests, if I can get a better weapon I'd have been so happy. The lead rod is a fine weapon but there's much stronger weapons you can get. The skeletons were giving me a hard time but eventually I made it down to floor 80, I got the firewalker boots. These boots are actually better than the combat boots because not only do they give plus 3 defense, they also give plus 3 immunity and I could just sell the combat boots back to Merlin for 150 gold. I needed a gold bar to complete the boiler room, so I decided to chance for 81 here to see if I can just get 5 gold ores in total to make 1 gold bar. And I ended up doing that no problem at all. I had to be super careful of these enemies though, because the metalhead and the red slime would hit me for a huge amount of damage. So I had to be really careful here when I was fighting them. Thankfully, the lead rod that I had had a nice area of effect attack, so I could use semi-ranged attacks to hit that metalhead back after a few strikes. He did get defeated and I was able to go down here to get the other gold node. After breaking open this node though, I only got back one gold ore. Of course, because my luck was so bad. But I do get the five ores eventually and I was able to make the gold bar, which was good. So, day number 33, we are back on the farm and we are petting our animals. Look at all the eggs we have now. We've got chicken eggs, we've got duck eggs and we have lots of hay in the silo. So things were looking really good for us in terms of the animal aspect of the game. I got my fire quartz and my gold bar. I was able to finally complete all of the bundles in the boiler room. This would open up fast traveling for me around various parts of Stardew Valley. So this was the first room fully completed. As a prize, I got five Omni Geodes and a furnace and I was super happy with that. The Junimos were also super happy as well. So that was one room done. Good couple of rooms left to go. It was back to fishing now today. And it was just more flounders. I was trying for the puffer fish. I was also trying again for the octopus. Just could not get that octopus at all. It was way too hard. But on the bright side, the Junimos will use their super nature magic to fix up the traveling carts for us so we can get around Stardew Valley. Level 6 farming, we could make quality sprinklers. For the few seconds, I did get really excited. Then I realized the restrictions I have imposed on myself. So I couldn't actually use the sprinklers. <laughs> so I had to motor on with what I had. I did get Robin to make a fish pond though, gonna get the ball rolling with the row and with the caviar later on for those advanced community center bundles. 
It was a Saturday. I decided to go down to the beach, get all the forgeables there that I had to offer. I was back into the mines then. Diamonds were so handy. Not only did they award 150 million XP, but I could sell the diamond for 750 gold. It was all about progress in the mines at the moment. I was very close to floor 100. I did get level 5 mining at the end of today. I decided to go with the minor perk, plus 1 aura per vein. That was a no-brainer. The Shadow Brutes were now a terrifying enemy, and the Shadow Shamans were way harder to actually defeat. Not only did they have increased defense, but when they hit me with that debuff, minus 8 defense, any enemy in this game would be able to one-shot me, no problem at all. So when I got that debuff, I had to be super careful not to take an enemy attack. Also, when it comes to fighting the Shamans, you had to hit them with everything you had early on so they don't heal themselves back up. The Tempered Broadsword was a godsend. This was a huge upgrade from the Lead Rod. Of course, I didn't have the Ground Slam, but I did have a weapon that hit much harder, meaning I had now a fighting chance against most of the enemies in these regular mines. It was back to Gunther the next day to donate more items to his lovely museum. So it was the Aquamarine. I also had some other minerals like emeralds and rubies and topazes, amethysts, and of course, the Fire Quartz. So that was most of the easy minerals now you could pick up in the mines. It was Gus's birthday today. I gave him that diamond I found in the mines. He was super happy. Lots of friendship points with Gus. It is definitely worth getting the friendship points up with the NPCs as quickly as you can because they do send you sometimes really nice items in the mail that could help you out. So I was making lots of copper bars today because I had to make tappers as quickly as possible. I just thrown a super cucumber into the fishing pond there because there's a chance you can get back iridium ores from those. I finally got level 10 fishing. I'm going to go with... Lore Master, Crab Pots, no longer require bait, one less thing I had to worry about. Sure, it did mean I was going to get lots of trash items, but I could just recycle those to make a profit that way as well. It was time to pick up the coffee beans and all of the summer forgeables. Foraging XP was still welcome. The sooner I get that to level 10, the better. I was going to convert all of these summer forgeables back into summer wild seeds, plant them back down in the ground. Any excess would be sold because I had very limited space inside that chest. I donated a summer spangle to the garden bun today. All that was left was either a fairy rose or a sunflower, which I would have either or very soon. I gave Maru a battery pack today for her birthday. She was super impressed with that. Lots of friendship points from her. We didn't stop there though. We then went on to Rob and it was time to construct another building. We're going to go with the deluxe coop this time. This would enable rabbits, and the reason why I wanted rabbits earlier rather than later was because of the rabbit's foot that you can get, which is a universal loved gift for most of the NPCs in the game. I also had the sashimi recipe here, so just to save on inventory slots, I processed all of the fish I had into sashimi. Sure, some fish did give back more health and energy than what the sashimi gave, but I converted them all nonetheless because inventory space was more important. So the next day I managed to get some coffee beans and I pulled up my first ancient fruit. I was super happy with that. I could now donate that to the community center. I also went to the luau today and I was going to throw a sturgeon into the luau. This was the best thing you can put into the luau. Gold star sturgeon was the way to go. Pierre also sells a star fruit for 3000 gold. If you ever get stuck when it comes to putting something into the luau to get those friendship points. The luau is a really nice event to attend and should be attended every year. If you're looking to get perfection because of the amount of friendship points you can accumulate, depending on what you can put into the luau, the cauliflower is not a great item you can put into the luau as well. So it was back to the traveling cart merchant now today, and I decided to get the rare seed for a thousand gold because that is needed for perfection. And it was back to cutting down trees with my regular axe, which is just soul destroying. Eventually, I could just make bombs and blow all the trees away, but I would not get the foraging XP for it. Back down in the mines, we were slain monsters with our lovely tempered broadsword. I did feel a lot safer with this. I was on floor 95, almost at floor 100, and it was only 2 o'clock during the day. Let's see how far we could get. I had to be super careful with that squid kid. His projectile attacks are now absolutely lethal. One shot off that projectile could put me in an early grave. When I got down to floor 100, I got my first star drop of the run. I was super happy with this. Not only does it fill up my energy it also increases my maximum energy which means i can do a lot more tasks around the farm unfortunately it doesn't increase my hunger or dehydration bars so the effects just weren't the same as previous runs with level 5 combat fighter was the way to go with 10 percent extra attack power day number 42 it was time to harvest all these lovely melons i just needed five gold star melons 
with the quality crops bundle. I also made a lot more crab pots because they were cheap to make and they didn't require bait. It was time to fill up the beach with crab pots because I could turn all of the fish related items that I get into sashimi and that would mean surviving would be a lot easier. It was time to process more geodes here with Clint. I had some omni geodes and I had some regular geodes that Clint could break open. It was back into the pantry here for the summer crops bundle. I donated the blueberry and the melon. I also gave in five gold star melons as well for the quality crops bundle. All I needed now was just five gold star pumpkins or five gold star corns to get that done. A reward was a quality sprinkler. I couldn't use it though, but I could sell it and make money that way. I also got a garden pot for completing the rare crops bundle and I decided to put the sweet gem berry into that instead of waiting for fall to grow it. With level 7 farming I could make quality retaining soil which is a very interesting concept indeed and I could also make the loom so if I wanted to invest in sheep later on the loom is a pretty cool way to go. I made lots of money too from selling various crops and items around the farm. So I got lots of pine tars today and I decided to mostly sell these to make a pretty nice profit. Tree farms are actually a pretty nice way to make money if you have lots and lots of tappers set up. So I wanted to make a barn today. didn't have enough stone, but Robin sells stone super cheap in year one. I decided to take advantage of this, purchase the stone I needed, and then it was on to make the barn. I was running really low on sashimi, so it was time to run down to the beach here, collect all the crab pots, and all of the fish related items that I got, I could turn into sashimi no problem. To prevent debris from growing between my lovely tappers, walkways were the way to go. So I had loads of stone here to make stone walkway floors, and I had some clay left over as well to make a few fancy floors as well, and I decided to put those between all my trees to make harvesting all the syrups going forward much easier. The next day it was raining, thank god didn't have to water anything. Rainy days were so rare now. I also got a Mackey roll here off Linus, which is needed for the community centre bundle, so it's one less item I had to make to progress in this game. I was actually super happy with that. I also had a huge amount of summer wild seeds, and I planted a lot of them back down on the farm, but I didn't plant too many because I had to take into consideration the fact that I couldn't use sprinklers, and also, if you water too much, you can lose a lot of hunger and hydration, and you're going to have to go through a lot of resources to keep your character ticking over. So I kind of kept it to 100 and I just left it there. It was time to complete some of these vault bundles. The 2500 gold was easy enough, the 10,000 gold was affordable, and the 5000 gold was affordable. The 25,000 gold bundle would have to wait. In the meantime though, I turned the quality fertilizer, the lightning rod, and the three chocolate cakes as a reward. So it was time to put down more floors here now on my tree farm because I still needed a few more floors to make it 100% secure. The next day it was back into our lovely coop and we had our ducks and our chickens. I was just picking up all of the eggs again. Business as per usual. So I was just going to convert all of these eggs back into mayonnaise. It was a great money maker. Look at all the oak resins I'm going to get here. Most of these oak resins will be sold. We can always go back and use them to make kegs later on once we have a little bit more resources available to us. It's time to spend some money today now at Marnie to get some rabbits. I was going to finish off the vault but I decided purchasing four rabbits I'd be better off in the long run. And the Skull Cavern wasn't going anywhere. So with the names we're going with Impa, Pura, Joshua, and last but not least, the Deku Tree. Because why not? If a rabbit wants to be a Deku Tree, it can be a Deku Tree. <laughs> Back to the beach today. It's time to get all of our lovely crab pot related items because I needed more sashimi to keep my character afloat. The sashimi was paying off so well. Visited Gus today just to see what he had on him. I purchased the pizza from him. And I also checked to see what his bonus food of the day was. It was pepper poppers. Didn't really need those. So I just left it be. It was Sam's birthday today. And Sam loves a pizza. So give him the pizza. Lots of friendship points there with Sam. Thank you very much. The more friendship points I can accumulate now. The better it just means the more stuff I'm going to get through the mail. From these NPCs. It's back down into the mines of course. I was going for more copper now again this time. Because I wanted to make more items. I did found an infestation floor at number 12. This is actually a great way to accumulate kills with slimes and with rock crabs and bugs just to get those monster eradication goals completed. I got another ancient fruit today and it was time to pet all of our lovely coop animals. So we had four chickens, four ducks and four rabbits. Of course they're all part of one theme. I'm sure you can guess by now what theme that is after all the names that I've given them. I made 11 more crab pots, just put those down by the beach there. The more crab pots I put down, the more fish I'm going to get back, the more sashimi I can make, the easier my character can survive. Speaking of survival, it was time to get the ball rolling with more animals from the lovely Marnie. 
the more animals we had, the more animal products we were going to get, the easier life was going to be for us. So we're going to start with cows. Can you guess the theme here? We're going to go with Woody, Buzz, Potato Head, and Slinky. <laughs> Can you guess where they're from? So it was time to get some stuff out of the recycling machines. I got some cloth here now. I was super happy with that. I needed cloth for the community center bundle for the artisan bundle. And I was also clearing off more debris from the farm. All of these little rocks I was just going to mine away. Because I needed stone. But also getting the one mining XP per rock comes in super handy. So I was getting maple syrups now today. Which means I can make bee houses. From doing my previous challenge 100 days as a honey farmer. I understand the potency of what these bee houses are capable of. Especially if they're paired up with fairy roses. You can make quite the profit. So I completed the exotic forage bundle today. I got back 5 autumn's bounties. Couldn't actually use it as a buff food because I'm not allowed to use buff food because of, you guessed it, a restriction. <laughs> I could, of course, sell this food though and make some extra money on the side. So I went to Demetrius today, gave him an ice cream because he actually loves ice cream and it was his birthday. He was super happy with that. It was time to do a little bit more fishing, specifically cave fishing. So I needed the ghost fish here, I needed the stone fish, I also needed the ice pip and the lava eel, all for perfection because you have to catch all these fish in order to get the star drop off, will he? The stonefish actually sells for a nice amount of money. Unfortunately, I couldn't sell it because of the restrictions I have imposed. I could, however, turn all of these fishies into sashimi and eat them no problem at all. The ice pip was a difficult catch, but it does not compare to the difficulty of the lava eel. It was time to catch a lava eel using a regular rod. I actually got pretty lucky and didn't move around that much, making for a nice catch indeed. Sometimes the lava eel can be extremely difficult. The next day on our beautiful farm, we start off by collecting loads of pine tires. Then we're going to go back to Robin. It's time to upgrade our barn to a big barn. This will unlock goats, which means we can get goat's milk. And that's actually pretty decent because we can turn it into goat's cheese. And goat's cheese is actually a really nice item to have, especially if you're doing caves, if you're in skull caverns. It heals really well. So we were back into the mines. I needed to make it down to floor 120 to get the skull key. So I could attempt Skull Cavern runs. When I made it down to floor 110, I got a weapon here called the Steel Falchion. It's actually a magnificent weapon. Not only does it hit hard, but it is very fast, meaning it's got really nice DPS. A second fish pond was put on the farm because the fish ponds can actually be pretty profitable. Especially if you accumulate lots and lots of raw and you put it into the preserve bins for the age row. So I got lots of honey today, which is really nice. I need the honey for community center bundles. And it was time to pick up all of our lovely summer forageables. Look at all of the wild seeds I get to make today. 380 in total. It was also time to harvest all of our lovely coffee. But I had to watch out. My character was dehydrated and is starving. So I had to eat some sashimi as quickly as possible. Or my character would just end up passing out. So I got a rabbit's foot today. Super happy with that. I also got some wool off the rabbits too. If I make some looms, I can turn that wool into cloth which sells for a pretty nice penny indeed. The challenge to complete the Enchanter's Bundle would be the Pomegranate. So because I didn't invest in any sort of fruit trees, I was at the Travelling Cart's mercy. I completed a Help Wanted quest today. Our lovely Linus here wanted a sweet pea, so I obliged because I had loads of those, and I needed the extra friendship points from him. I got level 8 farming, I could now make kegs, oil makers, and deluxe speed growth if I so wished. So I put a Lava Eel into this fishy pond, because Lava Eel Row... It's extremely profitable, especially if it's aged. I went to Marley today. I purchased a milk pill because we need that to milk the cows to get the milk to make the cheese. Speaking of cheese, it was time to purchase more animals. We're going to go with goats because they can make lovely goat's cheese, which is the finest cheese in the valley, of course. So I had enough money here to purchase four goats in total. So we're going to call these uh, Bo Peep, Rex, Jesse, and finally, Bullseye. Can you guess the theme... It's pretty easy in my opinion, but it might not be for yourselves depending on what you have and haven't watched on telly. So it was time for another structure upgrade, we're going to go with Deluxe Barn. I also decided to make some kegs today, and the reason why I made a few kegs is because I wanted to get the ball rolling on wines, which I needed for the community centre. I also decided to go to Willie now today as well, I'm going to give him a sturgeon because it was his birthday and he actually loves a good sturgeon. So it was lots of friendship points with him, so I have him now at 4 hearts out of 10, so we're getting there with Willie. Still a ways to go though. Next up, I decided to put my coffee beans into these kegs so I can get back coffee. 
Now, obviously I can't use the coffee because it is a buff food, but I could use these items that are on for quests, especially Key's special wallet room quests. Because we were now on the 25th of summer, there wasn't much point going back to Pierre's to purchase more crops to profit that way. Instead, it was time to do some more quests. George's knee was given out, he was looking for a hot pepper. We obliged, of course, for the friendship points and for the money, 200 gold in the bag. It wasn't a whole lot of money, but the friendship points was much more valuable. I finally made it down to floor 120. It did take almost two whole seasons, but it was worth it. We now have the skull key. I also picked up a pale ale today. We actually needed that for a quest for Pam. And it's a nice quest to do because it gets out of friendship points with Pam when you complete that quest. We now have a barn filled up with cows and goats. Four cows and four goats in total. And eventually we can put some pigs in there as well so we can make some money off truffles. We also needed truffles too for the community center bundles. We also had a coop filled up to the top with rabbits, ducks and chickens. And they were generating animal products almost on a daily basis for us. So it was now the 26th, day number 54, we were collecting lots of oak resins. So for the first pale ale that we're going to use after the brewer's bundle, it's actually a difficult enough bundle to do, especially if you're not focusing in on making artisan goods from all your processing machines. A great way to get green tea, of course, is to get the green tea leaf inside Caroline's secret sunroom at the end of a season. The last week there, you can get one leaf every single day. It was also time to do more fishing now today as well. So I was pulling up all sorts of fish. I also got the puffer fish, which I needed for perfection. Unfortunately, I just could not get the octopus. So I was going to have to try for that next year. It was just far too difficult. But the tilapia and the puffer fish were both needed for community center bundles. I also got the red snapper as well. So we were definitely getting there with the fish tank inside the community center. The beach totems were nice, but I ended up selling those because I just didn't have enough inventory slots to store that item away. So I had to be really choosy when it comes to what items to keep and what items to get rid of. Back to the travelling cart today to see what she had. Now she had a walleye there. I was looking at that for a while. I decided would I get it or not. I decided not to because I was going to get it in fall. And that was going to happen literally the next day. Went back to Marnie's. Had a look at what she had. I decided to purchase a pig. 16,000 gold. But I needed the pig to ensure I was going to get the truffle to complete the community center this year that's if i could complete it this year <laughs> i was going to call the pig oinkalat now it's not really theme related i just couldn't think of a theme at the time and i said you know what pigs do oinkalat so i was going to call it oinkalat so more things here for the brewers bundle that was the mead i also got the green tea as well all i was missing there now was wine or juice and that bundle was good to go put the sunflower into the garden bundle as a result, I got back a bee house. I was actually super happy with the bee house because they're so expensive to make. All I needed for the wild medicine bundle was either five purple mushrooms or five fiddlehead ferns. Both difficult items to get because of the restrictions I have imposed. Gave Pam her pale ale. She was super happy about that. Pam comes in really handy when you get friendship points up with her because she can send you some really nice things in the mail such as battery packs. And she can also send you some really potent healing items as well. So it was time to work on our fish ponds now. Today we got some super cucumber raw there. And the lava eels wanted some fire quartz, which I had lying around the place. It was then just petting all of the chickens as per usual. I made one tea sapling today. Not to sell of course, just to plant on the ground. So I can use that to get tea leaves going forward. So it was time to complete more bundles. I finally got the large cow's milk. And the reward was a cheese press, which was really handy because I could now make cheese. So we were now in fall, getting through the challenge. I decided to get some pumpkin seeds today, about 100 in total. The reason why I bought so many was because I wanted to get my farming level up to level 10 as quickly as possible. I also purchased one of each other crop that Pierre had, just for the sakes of perfection. So it was time to water up these crops. It did take the day, of course, between hoeing up the ground putting down the seeds and watering the crops. The next day, it was back to fishing. Put up the salmon there, needed for perfection, of course. There was also lots more fish to be had. I also could access the special orders quests. Now we had Robin's Project or Gus's famous omelette. Robin's Project was out of the question because we'd no way get in hardwood, but we had chickens and ducks, so the omelette quest was the way to go. Abigail wanted a super cucumber. She was offered 750 gold. More importantly, it makes Abigail happy. So we said, why not? It was Penny's birthday today. I gave her an emerald. She was super happy with that. More friendship points for us. 
was also time to complete the fall foraging bundle and I had all the items needed from walking around Stardew Valley. The reward, it was 30 fall seeds. I was going to plant those straight back down on the farm. I had to watch out for those bats though because enemies spawn every single night and sometimes enemies can hit for a lot. Now I didn't have any weapons on me at the moment so I just decided to run it home and call it a day. Level 9 foraging, the reward was a rain totem and a cookout kit. Didn't need the cookout kit of course because I have the upgraded house. The rain totem though might be an interesting choice to use later on if I can mass accumulate mats to make those. So I got the angel fruit wine, I might use that for an enchantress bundle. I'm also putting in some animal products here to get back some cheese. I needed cheese for the artisan bundle so these items will come hand in hand when it comes to getting perfection. So it was time to donate the cheese to the artisan bundle. All I needed now was just a goat's cheese or a jelly or one of those pieces of fruit to complete that bundle and we were good to go. I did complete the brewer's bundle though by handing in some wine and as a reward I got back a keg. I was super happy with that. You can never have enough kegs in my opinion. So it was time to finally complete the fish farmer's bundle. I needed 15 pieces of raw. That took a while because of the high tier fish I put in. I got a worm bin back as a reward. The worm bin is actually a pretty nice item, but because I can't use bed, it was kind of useless to me. So it's time to pick up all of our lovely eggs now today. We had duck eggs and we had chicken eggs, and because our animals are much happier now, I was getting large eggs. And these were a little bit more profitable than the regular ones. I also got back some goat cheese here now as well, so I was good to go to finish off the artisan bundle. So we were straight back now to cutting down trees, and it was soul destroying using a regular axe, but I needed wood, and I also needed foraging XP. To get from level 9 to level 10 foraging, it's actually extremely difficult. I checked out the traveling guard to see what she had, and lo and behold, she had an octopus, which I needed for a community center bundle, so I just purchased the octopus because I just could not catch one in summer. Now, purchasing a fish doesn't actually mean you caught it, so I still had to catch one normally in order to get the star drop off Willy. All I needed now was a lava eel to complete that bundle, and eventually the lava eel pond that I have in the farm will produce another lava eel that I can just pull out and use that to complete the bundle. It was Elliot's birthday today, so I gave him um, a duck feather. He loves duck feathers. The higher quality, the better, of course. That was a lot of friendship points with our good friend Elliot. It's time to water crops now this morning. It was the usual daily activities of watering crops, petting animals, and processing animal goods into more advanced artisan items to make even larger amounts of money. So I got a sea cucumber today, super happy with that. Didn't catch that one before. And I also caught the angler legendary fish. This is the first legendary fish we caught using a regular rod. To be fair, it is a very easy fish to catch. The other legendary fishes are much tougher. What do I do with the angler? Why I turn it into sashimi? Because I can't sell it for money. So I might as well just save up on inventory space and convert it into sashimi. <laughs> it was soul destroying, but there was nothing else I could do with it, to be fair. So I was back to Gus now today and I had all the eggs accumulated for him in order to complete his special orders quest. So there were 24 eggs there in total. And as a reward, I got back 3,000 gold. So I was super happy with that. You also get really nice friendship points with those NPCs when you do those quests as well. I had enough money to finally get the 25,000 gold uh, vault bundle done. As a reward, I got back a crystallarium, which was really nice. I could just put a jade now or a diamond inside there. And that would generate minerals every couple of days for me. The Junimos used their lovely Junimo magic today to fix up the bus, which gives Pam a job, gets her out of the old caravan. So it's a win-win for everybody. It was finally blackberry season. I just needed 50 of these now to complete the community center bundle for the blackberries, which is the foraging bundle. It was time for another special artist quest. It was a choice between cave patrol and prismatic jelly. I went for the prismatic jelly because Rasmodi is here actually gives some pretty decent rewards for completing his quests. He gives uh, mini obelisks. He also gives monster musk, which is really nice food. So I put up a lava eel from my fish pond today because I had a total of two inside it. And that was the Master Fisher Bundle completed. As a reward, I got a lovely curiosity lore, which we couldn't use, but we could indeed sell it. I also had the 50 blackberries needed to finish off the Forager's Bundle. And I got three tappers back as a reward for that, which was actually pretty nice because tappers are always needed on the old farm. So I was farming slimes today. I was looking for the prismatic slime. Now... 
it does require a lot of luck to get the prismatic slime to get the prismatic jelly because i had the worst luck possible the chances of spawning were minuscule so i spent days trying to get it the next day it was getting some maple syrup in the farm and once i had all this done i decided to purchase a hundred wheat flour from pr now there is a much cheaper way to get this using a mill but i didn't have one and i did get a little bit impatient so i said you know what i have the money i just purchased the wheat flour to complete another bundle here so i started with the chef's bundle putting the maple syrup then it went down to the home cook's bundle i needed 10 milk of any kind 10 eggs of any kind and 100 wheat flour so that was another bundle completed there and the reward for that was five complete breakfasts alex actually loves those but because i had rabbits on the farm i could just sell those instead so i finally got access to the desert i was picking up coconuts cactus fruit went into the skull cavern just to see how i'd get on then i realized i just had a regular pickaxe i had no bombs and i had the worst luck possible i was not going to get far in the skull caverns today the enemies inside here would also hit like absolute beasts i had to be super careful when fighting these enemies the slimes had a lot of hp let's just see how many hits these slimes actually took to kill some slimes have more hp than others but sometimes they can scale ridiculously off of the luck mod that i have installed and sometimes their health would just go on forever and they would take so many hits to kill the next day it was just back forged items didn't get far in skull cavern at all i made it past one floor didn't have any resources left to continue so i just left so back in the farm now, day number 66, we're getting there. I was looking for the prismatic slime again. An ambush floor was on floor number 8 here. I decided to take full advantage of this. I farmed this floor for the whole day, accumulating kills for slimes, rock crabs, and the occasional bug or two. This is a great way to get kill counts up for monster eradication goals. The next day, look at all our beautiful animals. I got my first truffle now off the pig. So I could use that now to complete yet another bundle. The more rabbit's feet that I got here now, the better. Duck feathers were also welcome. I could sell all these items for lots and lots of money. I was keeping the majority of the rabbit's feet because they're a universally loved item when it comes with for the birthdays. It's no brainer to use those. I picked up Linus's berry basket because that's a handy quest to do. I gave Vincent a blackberry by accident. He actually loves grapes, not blackberries, so I made a little bit of a mistake there. <laughs> I did give Jordy a rabbit's foot for her birthday though, and she was super happy with that left the house without any huge implications. I'm sure Vincent will get over the fact that I gave him the wrong fruit handy enough. Give Linus his berry basket. He was super happy with that. It was then back into the Adventurers Guild to get the hard hat, the insect head, and the crab shell ring for completing the doggies, the insects, and the rock crab monster eradication goals. The crab shell ring was totally overpowered. Plus five defense was a no-brainer. I wasn't just happy with one, I decided to buy another one to get plus 10 defense in total to increase my survivability. Because the monsters hit so hard, I figured if I can stack defense on my character, I would have a much easier time in the mines fighting enemies. The hard hat, of course, didn't give me any extra protection. It just made me feel mentally safer, knowing that I was going into these dangerous dungeons with a hard hat instead of a straw hat. <laughs> So I was fighting more slimes today. I was going in and out of floor 5 in the hopes to spawn this prismatic slime. It just wasn't happening at all. On the, on the good side though, I was getting lots of kills on slimes. So I decided to give Marnie an amaranth today. She needed that for a quest. That rewards me with 500 gold plus extra friendship points with Marnie. So happy days. It was also time to get some more supplies off Marnie. So we were actually kind of getting close to winter. I decided to purchase two heaters now, rather than purchase them later, just so the animals don't get cold when the winter months come in. I went back to Robin as well, I was going to get another silo just so I could store more hay for the winter. So I had a fierce battle today with a scorpion carp, and I was so close to catching it, and then it just went downhill after that. The carp just started sputtering all over the place, and I failed it. I did get um, a sandfish though, which I needed for the community center bundle, so that was handy enough. More ancient fruits was brilliant. I was actually saving all these ancient fruits and I was going to put these into seed makers eventually and I could start a little bit of a, an ancient fruit farm inside the greenhouse which would be very profitable. So it was Abigail's birthday today. Gave her an amethyst. She was super happy with that. More friendship points from Abigail which is really nice. Today was a rainy day so I took advantage of this by attempting to fish up some wall eyes which are handy enough to catch. I needed two in total. 
one for the night fishing bundle and I needed another one for the quality fish bundle. So there was two more bundles done. The big challenge for the fish tank, believe it or not, was the wood skip because I needed to get access to the secret woods to get that wood skip and because I couldn't upgrade my axe, I couldn't access the secret woods. And I know I could have used the chair cheat to get in there, but I felt that was cheating. So I decided to leave my fade in the hands of the traveling cart to get the wood skip. So I put down some more bee houses there now and I was getting back Pharaoh's honey, which is the most profitable honey in the game. This honey sells for an extraordinary amount of money. The more bee houses you make, of course, the more money you're going to receive. So I sold my tempered broadsword. I decided to purchase the lava katana for two reasons. Number one, higher base damage. Number two, it has plus three defense that would stack very nicely with my crab shell ring combination, giving me even more defense in total. It was time to try to get this prismatic slime, and I was praying maybe today is the day to get it. It was the last day that I could attempt it on, and it just didn't turn up. So no prismatic slime this week. The next day was a nice day, though. All the pumpkins fully grew on the farms. So I was going to harvest all those, pet all the animals, and I was going to make some serious cash by the end of today, because all those pumpkins were going to get sold. I would keep a few pumpkins though, convert those into pumpkin juice just to make the extra profits as well. I also had enough crops on me now to finally complete the fall crops bundle and the quality crops bundle was good to go as well. That was another bundle done. The rewards are pretty nice, a preserved jar and another bee house. Really nice rewards there. For the artisan bundle, I just needed a truffle oil or a jelly and I was good to go there. So it's probably going to go with a jelly because I had the preserved jar now and I could just throw something into that. I put the sandfish into the specialty fish bundle. It was just the wood skip now that I needed to complete the fish tank. I also put the truffle into the chef's bundle. The fiddlehead fern though was going to be the challenge there because normally you can get those in Skull Cavern and you can also get them in the secret woods. But if faith was on my side, if luck was on my side, hopefully one day soon enough the traveling cart would have that item ready to go. It was time for another special orders quest. We had crop order. Juicy Bugs wanted. I was going to go with the crop order, but I said, you know what, I'll just get the Bugs quest for now. Get that done with Willy. 100 pieces should do. There was an infestation floor here at number 22, so I used this to my full advantage. And I farmed this floor for the whole day, killing slimes. And I also got to kill Bugs too, making my way down. I was actually getting pretty close to the slime charmering because I spent so long just farming slimes for the prismatic slime. Oinkalat surprised me, gave birth to a baby pig, I was super happy, I called it Oink Lily. I mean, I was, I didn't even know Oinkalat was pregnant, so it was a big surprise. It was a very happy surprise. It was also time for the Sergio Valley Fair, I put in a huge assortment of items there. I got first place, 1000 star tokens as a reward. Gambled those on green as per usual to get enough star tokens to purchase my lovely star drop. That was the second star drop now in the bag. So once this star drop was consumed, I then went on and I bought the rare crow from this event as well. Because I needed that for perfection. Because you have to get all the rare crows in order to get the recipe to make the um, the final rare crow. Which is a really nice one to have because it doubles up on space that it covers in the farm. So I got 3000 gold there for completing Willie's quest. And I also got Clint here to break open all of these geos that I accumulated from trying to get the prismatic slime. I did get a lot of new items from breaking open these geodes, but still not enough in order to activate the source. A lot more farming was needed in order to get down there and meet the lovely Krobus. So I got some jellies today, cranberry jellies, and I also got the sweet gem berry from my lovely garden pot. Now I couldn't actually use the sweet gem berry to get the star drop from the secret woods, so I decided to hold on to it for now. Give Marnie rabbit's foot today because it was her birthday. And I got a lot of friendship points back for that. Marnie was now on 7 out of 10 hearts. I also decided to purchase one of each sapling because I had a lot of money on me at the moment. I said, why not? I'll put all these into the greenhouse just to ensure that if I don't complete the community center this year, I would hopefully complete it next year. Provided, of course, the traveling cart coughs up a fiddlehead fern and a wood skip. So the Junimos used their lovely Junimo magic and fixed up the greenhouse today for me. And I was going to put all of the saplings and the ancient fruit seeds inside that. I got back five pumpkin juices now today. And I could sell those now to make a pretty decent profit. I petted our lovely crow cat. It's very important to get the friendship points up with that as well. As it affects your grandfather's evaluation at the end of I think year number two. Or it could be year number three. So I filled up the greenhouse here now with the lovely saplings. 
and it was time to pet all of our lovely animals and milk them. So one of the great things about getting farm level 10 is that you can get an auto petter and I wanted to prioritize that now so I wouldn't have to milk these animals anymore. The auto petter isn't really considered a chest so I allowed myself to have at least two of those, just put one into each animal building. So I went back to the traveling cart today and she had the red cabbage seed which I needed for perfection so I purchased that straight away. Still needed the fiddlehead fern though and the wood skip but getting the seed this early was pretty nice. So in terms of the garden pot, I put the red cabbage seed in there, just as a reminder to not forget it every single morning I woke up. <laughs> it was also time to look at the help wanted quests Clint wanted to catch with. She was offering 600 gold though, and it would make him happy. So I said, why not? I did some fishing for the day. Eventually, I did get a catfish, even with the regular rod, with level 10 fishing, catfish are easy enough to get. So I gave Clint his catfish. He was super happy. Got 600 gold there, easy enough. So it was day number 76, it was time to get all of this lovely wheat. I was also getting hay as well, which was nice. This was all going into the silos. And the reason why I wanted the wheat was because I needed it for the community center bundle. Any excess wheat that was left over, I just sold that. It makes some extra money on the side. So it was down to the beach as well. It was a Saturday, which is the best day to go to the beach and get all of the forageables because it accumulate over the whole week. Saturday is the day to go if you haven't been to the beach all week. It was time to cut down more trees, get more forage and XP, get more wood. And I finally got level 10 farming, went with the Coop Master of course, so I could befriend those rabbits a lot faster. I was going to go with Shepherd, but I said, you know what, the rabbit's feet are much more valuable. So I decided to go with the Coop Master instead. I got my Asian fruit today, and I also got my lovely Lava Eel Row, as well as all of that beautiful Fairy Rose Honey. Just look at it, and there was so much of it. Of course, I could have capitalized on that and made a lot more bee houses, but I was going for perfection. It wasn't a specific challenge. I purchased two auto grabbers off Marnie. They were going to save me so much time and resources. Not only would the auto grabbers automatically collect items from the animals, but they would store the items for me as well, which I needed badly. So it was time to access Robin and her lovely wares. It was time to get another Cooper put on the farm. I also gave Pierre a small amount of bass because he just wanted that as a help on the quest, so I said, why not? I put my tea leaf into the preserve jar there. That will get me back a pickled tea leaf, and I needed that for perfection to sell it. So it's back down into the mines, and I got really lucky here. I got an ambush floor here on floor number 11, so I could very easily just come out and back into this floor for the whole day and accumulate the slime kills very quickly, very efficiently. This was a great way to get the kill counter up to get the monster eradication goal done. I just got it done there. That was 1,000 slimes in total defeated, so I could now get the slime charmer ring, which means damage from slimes will always be nullified. This was a huge boon for me, especially with the ferocity that these monsters now come with. Slimes wouldn't do any damage to me now going forward, so it's going to be super handy. So swap out a crab shell ring for that. But I will keep that other crab shell ring close case I'm doing specific monster challenges but there's not a whole lot of slimes around and I need the extra defense. I was using cherry bombs that I have accumulated from killing doggies to blow open ores because it just took too many strikes with the axe to break them open. I also put all of my ancient fruit into seed makers to get back ancient seeds. I got back nine in total which was a fine start. Just gonna put those in the greenhouse and water those every single day. It's time for the quest here from Demetrius. Biome balance or aquatic overpopulation. I decided to go for biome balance because it would be easier to just get ocean fish as opposed to getting specific midnight carp fish. So I spent the rest of the day just trying to pull up ocean fish here. As we can see, because my luck was so bad, it took a while to get a bite. And sometimes you wouldn't even get a fish, you'd get back like a seaweed or you'd get back a piece of trash. So it's actually really time consuming to get this quest done, but I had to do it because I had to get the farm computer recipe off Demetrius. I had to make that in order to get perfection. So it was a very long and arduous quest to get done. All of the fish I did catch though, I didn't have to give those to Demetrius. I could convert all of those fish into sashimi, which helped me out a ton. It was George's birthday today. It was time to cheer him up, give him a nice lucky rabbit's foot. More friendship points from George. Day number 80 was spent pulling up more fish out of the water. I needed 20 in total, so we had a long way to go. Once the quest was done, I only got 1500 gold from the Matrix, which I thought was a bit unfair, but I only had to do that quest once, thank god. You just need one farm computer. 
got my pickled tea leaves today along with my aged super cucumber roll and i got the farm computer off demetrius too which is the recipe it's actually a handy computer to have if you have a really big farm with a lot going on it can quickly tell you what's up it was time to upgrade my coop with robin for the big coop and it was back down into the mines i was farming dust sprites to get a burglar ring early on would actually be very advantageous especially when it comes to accumulating specific monster drops farming dust sprites for coal was also important i got three more iridium ores off of our lovely super cucumbers and it was time to start focusing down on hardwood so if i saw crates like this i would destroy them in the hopes to get hardwood so i could complete that construction bundle so it was time for the halloween event and i purchased a recipe there now for the jack-o-lantern i also got the rare crow as well and i decided to pick up the golden pumpkin as well from the maze which would come in really handy for the birthday down the road for one of the npcs because it was the last day of fall i spent the whole day just scything up all of the hay to fill up the silos with because this would all be gone come winter so i spent all today running around with the site to get as much hay as possible to fill up the silos i had two silos there so hopefully that would be enough hay to do me for the entirety of the winter season it was also time to upgrade our coop to a deluxe coop but peep give birth today to another goat that was really cool we had to give the goat a name I decided to call the goat sid <laughs> so it was the first day of winter it was time to get the magnifying glass and this was crobus here that jumps out of the uh, the bushes it's called shadow guy because we actually haven't met the npc yet but once we get access to the sores we're going to make great friends with the lovely crobus so marnie wanted the george cola we of course will oblige it was also time for another special orders quest we had fragments of the past and cave patrol i decided to go with fragments of the past because the bone pill is actually a really nice item to have especially when it comes to getting back tree fertilizers and speed grows and things like that it was also time to do another bundle so i just put in all of the winter forageables there as a result i got back 30 winter seeds which i put straight down on my farm the only thing we could grow in winter was forageables so i might as well capitalize on this with my lava katana in hand and my crab shell rings these skeletons weren't as fearsome as they once were so for the next few days we were going to go on a skeleton hunting spree we also needed skeletons for the monster eradication goals and upon completing this special orders quest the reward will be the bone mill which we also need for perfection so two birds with the one stone made total sense i finally got my red cabbage today it was time to put that into the community center to complete another bundle and that was the dye bundle now fully completed and the reward was a seed maker not too bad indeed but the next day or two now we were back down in the mines farming skeletons this was good also because i was getting lots of combat xp and the more combat xp i got the more hp i was going to accumulate through the level ups so it was super important to get my combat skill to 10 so i could survive much more efficiently when it came to the skull cavern despite the fact that i had really good gear now in terms of a defensive setup i still had to be careful that these enemies didn't overwhelm me because they still hit for a decent amount of damage as we can see there the bat just hit me for 30 damage the skeleton hit me for 17 damage depending on how some of those skeletons scale up with the luck mod they can still hit for a lot more than that the next day we were petting our lovely animals we had a fine barn now built up with pigs goats and cows all of the items i got back from the auto grabber i just sold just to make some quick money just didn't have the time to try to process all that i needed 500 stone to make a slime hutch and that's what i did i purchased 500 stone off robin i had the funds to do so and once i had the 500 stone accumulated i went ahead then and i made the slime hutch just for the sole purpose of unlocking the chance that slimes can drop slime eggs which is a really nice money maker so i got some secret notes one of the secret notes directed me to a nice treasure chest there which was sold for 5,000 gold and a strange doll needed for gunther's collection it was time to give gunther these 100 bone fragments and as a reward i got 3500 gold which wasn't too bad at all i also gave linus a rabbit's foot now and his birthday and that almost got him to max a friendship which was really nice we're almost there with good old linus for the rest of the day we were fishing i got the squid there now i needed that for perfection but i also needed it to complete a quest for willy here which tasked me with fishing up a squid as a result i got back lots of friendship points with willy i also spoke to him as well just to get the extra few friendship points as well it's important to try and speak with all of the npcs on a daily basis to get the extra few friendship points it does make a huge difference towards the end game so i got the bone melt recipe today off gunther for getting him all those lovely bone fragments 
I paid a visit to Marnie today. I purchased an extra heater for that coop that I set up. And it was also time to purchase some rabbits. 12 rabbits in total. Now, I couldn't afford 12. I could just get 10. But let's have a look at the themes. Bugs Bunny, Lola Bunny, Easter Bunny. We also have Judy Hops there as well. Peter Rabbit, of course. Oswald, Bucky O'Hare. Energizer Bunny. <laughs> we also have Roger Rabbit. Next up, we have Flopsy. And that is all of the names. Can you guess the theme? I'm pretty sure that's an easy theme now in all fairness. So we're going to pet all these rabbits. And having the level 10 farming pork coop master will actually make these rabbits tear off their limbs a lot faster for us. So we can gift all of the lovely residents of Stardew Valley. So I got a perch today and it was time to do a bit more fishing. Now the big bad fish of winter is the glacier fish. And I can tell you right now I attempted it a few times. It was, just wasn't happening. It was way too hard without the um, the tackles you know it was just way too hard but i will attempt it again eventually and see if i can catch it so i gave jordy the large amount bass that she wanted there she's been asking for that for a long time i just finally decided to pay her to visit and give her that fish for more friendship points i also decided to put a slime egg that i got off marlin for free into the slime incubator so that will hatch in a couple of days and get our nice slime farm going so i gave marnie a cave card today just activated a cutscene just means more friendship points with marnie this is my attempt of the glacier fish. As we can see, because I don't have the trap bobber, it is extremely hard to keep fishing progress up to catch that. It is such a hard fish to catch. I tried a few more times to catch it, but it was just nigh impossible. And because I had really bad luck, I didn't get any more attempts that day on the glacier fish. I did go back to Marion to get the final two rabbits I needed to fill out the coop. So we're going to go with Mega Rabbit and Mr. Happy. And that finishes our second coop built up the top with rabbits. Today, of course, was a Saturday, so we were going to spend today getting all of these lovely forageables in the hopes to one day get level 10 foraging. So it was time to complete another bundle in the craft room. I finally had the five purple mushrooms gathered to complete that bundle. I got two cookout kits as a reward. I'm just going to sell those because I already have the house upgrade. I also got the 10 hardware as well for the construction bundle, so I got the charcoal kennel as a reward for that. So that was another room completed, and as a reward, the bridge will be repaired so I can go into the quarry cave. So it was time to go to the bulletin board. I got Natalie Shell. That was another bundle completed. As a reward, I got back a recycling machine. So I was actually getting there with all the bundles. So what was stopping me now from completing most of these bundles were one or two items that I just could not get because of the restrictions. So I needed Travelling Cart Merchant to kind of do me a favour. With the quarry fixed, I could now do quarry cave runs. Caroline's birthday, gave her a rabbit's foot. She was super happy with that. More friendship points there with Caroline. I also gave Emily an amethyst and I <laughs> tried to tell her it was from Clint, but she got confused and said, Oh, you got it at Clint's. Well, I don't care where you got it from, but it's beautiful. And she gave me a kiss on the cheek. Poor Clint. <laughs> so I met some regular bombs now today and I decided to blow up all of the nodes here in the quarry. Got back lots of stone. I got some secret nodes, got some minerals. I didn't have any mystery nodes, so the chances of getting the prismatic shard was zero. I did chance to quarry cave today. It was going really well. The slimes couldn't do any damage to me because I had the slime charmer ring. On the other hand, these haunted skulls, I totally underestimated these and they hit like absolute trucks. Just two hits was all it took for these skulls to send me packing. I woke up inside the regular cave. I lost 1600 gold and 11 items, including my super valuable lava katana and my 29 sashimis so i had to go back to marlin yet again and use his item recovery service to get back my lava katana fortunately he only wanted 500 gold to get back my lava katana so i paid that money no problem at all i didn't have any sashimi on me in order to restore my hydration or my hunger so i had to eat the eggs that my rabbits and my ducks were producing so thank god for having animals on the farm <laughs> I did have crab pots back on the beach though, so eventually I do go back down there. You know what, I loot those crab pots and make more sashimi. But for now I had to eat the eggs to keep my character ticking over. So even with my super setup, I still died horribly to the haunted skulls. They just hit so hard. A new approach would be needed if I was going to get that golden sight. Even though I said I couldn't upgrade tools, I could obtain the golden sight, no problem. I just couldn't use it. It was time for another event here and I purchased the uh, Winter Rare Crow and I also did the event to see how much fish I could pull up. 
I did manage to pull up just enough fish 6 in total to win the event and take home the prize which is a sailor's cap and all of the lovely fishing tackle. Couldn't use the fishing tackle of course so I just sold it. The next day I was able to get all of the lovely pine tar. It was time for another special orders quest. Cave patrol we were going to do. There was, no, there was no point doing it Robin's resource rush because I didn't have a decent axe on me. So I went for cave patrol instead. Clint just wanted me to kill 50 skeletons. So I was back down into the mines killing the skeletons. I didn't mind going back down killing the skeletons because as a reward Clint would give me the geode crusher which is needed for perfection and I was getting decent combat XP from killing the skeletons anyway so it was all good. Having a slime farm was really nice because I had the slime charm ring didn't have to worry about breeding slimes or getting close to the slimes so I just didn't bother with a, a fence inside that slime hutch. This time in terms of tactics in the quarry cave I was going to take on these skulls one by one sometimes i might pull two but that was fine as long as they were coming at me from one direction it was okay to deal with them the last thing you wanted though was something like this where i got swarmed by the skulls i actually almost died here but i managed to come out of it okay one more hit from that skull and i was dead but i managed to do a parry here and it managed to kill the skull no problem at all as a reward i got my lovely golden sight i wasn't going to use that though i just got it just because it was there and it could be obtained and that skeleton also served as a really nice warp point out of the cave so that golden site would be stored away so it was sebastian's birthday today it gave him a sashimi he actually loves sashimi so that's a friendship points with him all of our lovely rabbits were now fully grown up and they were all generating wool eventually they will start dropping rabbit's feet for me to pick up as well that will make life super handy for me, especially when I have all those rabbits' feet. I'll be able to gift them to the villagers on a daily basis, maxing out all of the friendships as quickly as possible. With all of this wool I was picking up, I was just going to sell it. Eventually, I will consider making looms to convert that wool into cloth. It was back down into the mines around day 95 now. We're making decent progress. Just have to kill 50 of these skeletons to complete Clint's special orders quest. They were dropping secret notes too, which was handy. Some of the secret notes come in super handy in terms of getting some decent passive abilities in the game. One quest in particular that I won't be able to do for a while was giving the bear and maple serpent the secret woods because I couldn't get access to the secret woods. So Bullseye had a baby goat, congratulations Bullseye. We ended up calling that goat because I was just at the stage now with this challenge where I just couldn't think of a name because I was just totally worn out. <laughs> just, just being brutally honest with you, this challenge took a lot out of me because it was so hard. Gave the wizard a void essence today, got back a thousand gold, that was decent enough. I also gave him another void essence just to get the extra friendship points as well. So that was Dark Region quest done there. I also got a rabbit's foot here now, I gave it to the Georgia driver. And he's going to give me back a special charm which gives me a permanent luck increase. So that will actually make life a little bit easier for me. Who knows, maybe the next time I get the prismatic slime quest it might actually appear. So I was harvesting more oak resins now from the farm. And then it happened, a huge mistake. I thought I had the watering can equipped it, but I had the pickaxe equipped it. And I pickaxed an ancient fruit. So I reset the day. And I can say with confidence that that is the only time I actually did a day reset. I was tempted to do resets previously, especially when I died and lost all the items. But I didn't. So I just wanted to show that. Just to kind of show that even players like me that do a lot of 100 day challenges still make newbie mistakes like that it could have been worse though it could have been a bomb that i put down instead and i could have wiped out tons of stuff inside of the greenhouse <laughs> so speaking of bombs i did use a cherry bomb today and i got rid of the debris here blocking off a path to an npc which we need to embrace which is the lovely dwarf in order to get perfection we would need max friendship with the dwarf here so i started off by giving him the lovely golden pumpkin that i got at the halloween event I also purchased the rare crow off him as well and a floor recipe which we also need for perfection. So it was Harvey's birthday today. I gave him a coffee. Harvey loves coffee. He was super happy with that. More friendship points from Harvey. When we were finished with Harvey it was time to do a couple of more quests for some of the other NPCs. Willy here wanted a snow yam. He was offering 300 gold but more importantly friendship points for the win. I checked out the traveling merchant today to see what she had. She didn't really have anything I needed. I was really hoping for the Fiddlehead Fern or the Wood Skip, but she didn't have those, so I just had to proceed without those items. I did give Willy, though, his Snowy, and he was super happy with that. More friendship points there with Willy. 
and 300 gold in the bag. Willie was telling me all about bait and tackles and the rods I could get, but because of the restrictions I imposed by myself, I couldn't actually get those rods off Willie. <laughs> I did pay Robin a visit, but not to construct any new buildings, it was just to reorganise the farm and just put buildings in different places. So I made a fried egg, put that into the chef's bundle, I just needed the fiddlehead fern to complete that bundle. Got Clint to break open some more geodes here in the hopes of getting maybe a prismatic shard so I could get a much better weapon, but no joy. It's time to donate more items to the museum here now, I got a few new items off Clint, but not enough to get into the sores. So that would have to be in our next 200 day video. Let me know of course in the comments if you want to see a continuation of this run using the hardcore rules that I have implemented. So I purchased the painting there of the famous Lupini and I also did the mermaid puzzle which rewards me with a pearl. And the pearl is actually a universal loved item so I can use that now. I decided to give it to Clint just because I didn't want it lying around the place. So I got the exclusive event fish here now today. I got the spook fish the midnight squid and the next day i went back to the market event i got the painting of a mermaid and i managed to get the blobfish as well i couldn't get that fish the previous night so that was all 100 days done we now at the end of the challenge i really hope you enjoyed this challenge it was really hard to do these 100 days without using sprinklers without upgrading the backpack without upgrading tools it restricted me so much I only made something like 600,000 gold and told I didn't make a whole lot of gold because I was restricted so badly. But it's going to be very interesting to see if I can get perfection using these rows, especially pulling up those legendary fish. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week. Bye for now. I played 234 days of Stardew Valley but I used the Marigold mod and have attained perfection. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another Stardew Valley video. For this video, I bring to you the 100 days, 200 days and the finale to make the Mega Margo movie. Margo stands for Modular Gameplay Overhaul and it is a complete and comprehensive rework of Stardew Valley gameplay mechanics. If you like 100 day style videos, check out my previous works. I have tons of 100 style videos on my channel. Make sure to like and subscribe, it helps me out a ton. Let's jump straight into the action. It is day number one on our Four Corners farm. And we start by whacking some weeds, cutting down some trees, and we're gonna make our usual chest to store all items in that we don't need at the moment. Once the chest has been placed, we're gonna run around the entirety of the map and try to collect as many forgeables as possible. But before we do that, we're gonna hold the ground up and plant our free 15 parsnip seeds before we proceed. Once all of the forage was have been collected, we more or less spend the rest of the day just mining and cutting down trees on the farm. We're also going to visit the beach to see if we can get any sort of artifacts that we can give into Gunther for a handy 250 gold. You might remember in the last video challenge that we did, there was one artifact that I could not get for the life of me to complete all of the artifacts found in the game, and that was, you guessed it, the Trilobite. Well, guess what? The first artifact we found in this challenge was in fact the Trilobite. I feel like the game just likes to tease me sometimes. But we handed that in, that was 250 gold. That's extra money to buy some more crops off Pierre. And we're gonna start with buying some kale. Kale is great crop for growing and for selling. It's also very nice for energy as well, but we're not gonna be using it for energy. We just want money at the moment. So I got some skill ups today, mining and foraging. I can now make wild seeds for spring, which is really nice. So I'm going to plant those in the ground. We are going for tea saplings after all. We get the fishing rod off Willy. We're going to pull up some fish. The whole day is spent fishing. And look what we got. Super lucky a broken trident. Because of the Marigold mod it has been reworked. It is now a much more powerful weapon. It does come with a drawback though. Minus 10% resistance. That means we're more than likely to get debuffs from enemies if we are attacked. The next day I'm going to get the fiberglass rod off Willy. I'm going to get some trout soup. And we are going catfish hunting. The more catfish we can get, the more money we're going to get. Level 5 fishing, the Margo mod has reworked all professions in the game. Trapper now is crab pots are cheaper to craft but also can trap higher quality fish. But we're going to take fisher. Bait is double the effectiveness as what it used to be. That means using regular bait and wild bait, we're going to be able to get fish much faster. So I'm going to sell all this fish to Willy now instead of putting it in the shipping bin later. Reason for this, I just want to get a much larger backpack 
So I'm not throwing items away. I'm going to try to get this as early as possible and getting it on day number 4 was game changer for me. Day number 5, it is time to collect all of our lovely parsnips. I'm going to sell those of course along with the pink cake and the cookies because I want to make as much money as possible. Once all these items have been sold, I am going to purchase more seeds off Pierre, including a bean starter because you guessed it, we're going the community centre route in this video. We're not going to be going to Georgia route. I'm going to challenge myself and go the community centre route. It is going to be much harder for me, but it's always good to mix it up every couple of videos. I put down loads of potatoes. They're going to sell for lots of money. The great thing about potatoes is that sometimes you can pull up an extra potato. That's extra money. I also fixed a bridge, got over to the tide pools, more forages for me, more money. I'm going to complete the spring foraging bundle. The reward, 30 free spring seeds ready to go, ready to be planted. We're now going to make some progress in the mines. I do have the broken trident. The weapon is an absolute beast. Its secondary attack, the multi-hit, will one-shot more or less any enemy in the game, including most of the Skull Cavern enemies. That is how strong the broken trident actually is. As you can see, the starter slimes are no match for the weapon. So the great thing about the Margo mod is it reworks all of the chest rewards also. So I was expecting nether boots when I got floor 10, but instead I got 15 bombs. I was actually very happy with that. To get that amount of bombs early on was game changer. It was Mayor Lewis's birthday today. I gave him a daffodil because he likes those. That's extra friendship points for him. We are going for perfection after all. I got rubber boots from killing an enemy. It's just plus one immunity, but it's better than nothing. Because of the Margo mod, a lot more crates now have spawned in most of the levels in the mines. Crates are now very common, and when I see crates, I do destroy them. They're really good for hardwood also. Floor 30, I got some survival burgers. They're really good for foraging. But floor 40, I got two rain totems. To get those this early is a game changer. I can make it rain the next day, no problem, for a double rainy day, because tomorrow is a natural rainy day. Down to floor 48, as we can see, the mid-tier enemies are no match for the broken trident. When I got to floor 50, I got two quality sprinklers. I was over the moon with that. The sooner I can set my farm up with sprinklers, the better. It just means I don't have to do the god-awful task of watering crops every morning. And the more sprinklers I get, the more crops I can buy the faster I can progress the game. So it was raining today, we're on day number 9 now, I activated my rain totem so tomorrow it would also rain, so I don't have to water crops for the next two days which is great. I sighted up all of my lovely rice shoots, I'm going to sell all that unmilled rice. If I had a mill I could have turned that into regular rice and made a profit, but I didn't have to mill right now, so I'm just going to sell the unmilled rice as it is. I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe, so I can't go to the mines today, instead I'm just going to fish and because it was raining, we might as well pull up as many catfish as possible. I also run around to collect more forageables so I can make more spring wild seeds. I also put up the eel because I need that for the fishing collection. I also need it for the community centre bundle for the fish tank. The next day it was time to pull up lovely potatoes. I also got a few items here from hoeing up the ground. I'm going to donate all these to Gunther. The great thing about the bone flute there is that the reward given back to you is a flute block. And you only need one flute block to complete the mermaid puzzle over on Ginger Island. The rest of the money was spent on parsnip seeds, it's a lot of parsnip seeds, but that means a lot of farming XP for me, and a nice profit. I also got my pickaxe back off Clint, and we're back to fishing again, we're getting more catfish. I also got an ancient seed from a fishing treasure chest that was very lucky to get one so early. Demetrius paid us a visit the next day, we have a choice between the mushroom cave and the bat cave, I'm going to go with the bat cave because I find it a much easier cave to use when you're going to complete community centre bundles, primarily for the pomegranates and the apples. Clint is upgrading more tools for us again today. I want to get that steel pickaxe as quickly as possible and the rest of the day was a bit fishing. So we're now on the 13th. Lucky for some, unlucky for others, but it was a very lucky day for me because I was able to buy so many lovely strawberry seeds. 243 in total. That's going to be a lot of money in the next couple of days. I also won the event, of course. I think eventually Mary Lewis will just ban me from the event, otherwise nobody will just turn up if I keep winning. <laughs> it was raining again today, which was great, and the next day was also a rainy day, so I was just blessed with rainy days for this challenge. It happens sometimes, you just get a huge consecutive chain of rainy days. We're gifting Caroline daffodils in the hopes to get her up to two hearts as quickly as possible. Once she gets two hearts, she will give us the tea sapping recipe, and then we're gonna see some serious cash rolling into the old farm. 
I got the master slingshot on floor 60. I will only use that once to get a golden walnut if I can reach Ginger Island later on. It is much more difficult for me to reach Ginger Island early when I go the community center route. If I went to Georgia route, I'd more than likely be in there at the start of summer. But for now, we're going to go back into the mines and make some progression. Level 70, I got five warp totems to the farm. I wasn't too happy with that. I never really use warp totems to the farm because I normally just pass out. The trick is to just have no money on you. If you have loads of money, you should spend it, invest it straight away. You shouldn't keep huge amounts of money on you. And all of my money was in the ground, grown at this moment in time. So I could just push the caves until I passed out, woke up the next day with a very, very small penalty. It was time to complete more bundles. This time we're going to complete the spring crops bundle. The reward was 20 speed grows. I'll use those later on. I won't bother with the strawberries because it's too late now to get a third harvest. We're going to farm floor 81 here now. And it's a great floor for fiber. I also got dark boots. Plus 4 defense, plus 2 immunity. A fantastic upgrade for us. Much better than that of the thermal boots. We're making our way down. I want to get to floor 100 so I can get that lovely star drop. It's always nice to increase the maximum energy that your character can hold just means I can do more on a daily basis. When I got to floor 90, I wasn't expecting it. 14 gold bars. I was actually really happy with that, because you need gold bars to make quality sprinklers and some other bits and bobs as well down the road. I got to level 100, got the star drop, nice one. All that was left, primarily, was just a skull key on level 120. Level 5 farming, we could take rancher, be for an animal twice as quickly, or harvester. 10% chance to get an extra crop when we pull it up out of the ground. We went with harvester. For mining, I'm going to go with Blaster, craft twice as many explosives, and exploded rocks yield double the coal. That is absolutely amazing. And this is the great thing about the Marigold mod. I went into the mod totally blind, so I just didn't know what to expect when it comes to the perks or any of the gameplay mechanics. For the combat, I'm going to go with Fighter, damage plus 10% and plus 15 HP. Rascal was pretty cool, but I don't really use a slingshot, so it was a bit of a waste for me. Fighter all the way. The next day it was time to collect my iron bars and pick up all of the forgers on my farm. I then decided to complete all of the boiler room bundles. I had all of the items needed I'm doing the mines all the time, so that was an easy first room completion done. That unlocks the travelling carts. I also completed the crab pot bundle because I managed to get all of the items on the beach and I got the crabs from slain monsters in the mines. So I went to Marinet today and I had loads of items that I couldn't sell via the shipping bit. So I just sold it to Marilyn directly to get some extra cash. So I'm using a cudgel here just to try it out because it was a club weapon. But I didn't like the move set that the Margomad set on this weapon. So I end up swapping back to the broken trident later on. When I got to floor 110 I got 12 more gold bars. I was over the moon with that. It just meant that once I got level 6 farming I could just focus on iron bars and refined quartz to make tons of quality sprinklers without wasting resources. It was raining today so we're pulling up more fish. I want to get to fishing level 10 before spring is finished so I can have a go at the legend fish. If I want to collect all the fish in the game by year 1, I need to get the legend in spring. If I don't get the legend in spring, then I have to wait until year 2. So Caroline just taught me the tea sapling recipe there, but she will officially send it to me in the mail the next day. I also gave Robin her last axe and the rest of the day is spent cutting down trees to increase my foraging skill. I got it to 5 there so I get to choose new perks. We had Lumberjack, 25% more wood, or Forager, a 20% chance for double yield of foraged items. We're going to go with Forager because I'm focusing on tea saplings at the moment. Speak of the devil, just got the tea sapling recipe there. And I'm going to use up all my resources now to make as many tea saplings as possible. 71 in total, that's more or less 35,000 gold in the bag. I'm going to get the deluxe backpack. That means all my inventory slots are now unlocked. I sold tea saplings. That's up to 49,000 gold. We're going to go straight into the vault here and unlock all these bundles so we can now get the bus over to the desert and start doing Skull Cavern runs. The sooner we can get started with Skull Cavern, the sooner we can get our hands on Iridium and make loads of money and upgrade the tools. The big prize there with the vault is the Crystallarium. You just get one, but it's better than nothing that I can put a jade into that and start accumulating staircases. We're also going to get a pickaxe upgrade. I couldn't afford it, so I had to sell some gold bars. Not to worry, I had plenty. I sold enough to get 10,000 gold. Then I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to a gold one. That would take a couple of days. I got a quest off Marnie for an emerald. 
I obliged because it was a profit for me and it was extra friendship points. I also gave her a quartz because she likes those as well. I didn't have really have any loved gifts. She loves diamonds, but I didn't want to give her a diamond because I needed those for triple shot expressos. The rest of the day I spent fishing. I got the sunfish there and I actually needed that for the fishing collection. Not that the was handy. But look what I got here when I pulled up a largemouth bass. I got a treasure chest. This is extremely rare. It's as rare as getting a prismatic shard or a dinosaur egg or an ancient seed. It's worth 5,000 gold if you sell it. The funny thing about a treasure chest is that if you try to give it to someone, they absolutely hate it. So if you ever get a treasure chest down the road, do not gift it. Just sell it do yourself a favour. I finally got level 10 fishing. The perks are very interesting here. Angler, fish are 0.5% more valuable for every unique species caught. Fully extending a tackle causes its effects to linger on the fishing rod. That's really cool. Then we had a queryist. Fish pond max capacity plus two, that means more rewards. Catching bar decrease slower for every unique fish species raised in a fish pond. So if you want to get those perfect catches on a super hard fish, just make a fish pond for every single fish in the game. <laughs> and you'll have no problem doing that. Really cool perks there. I was very happy with those. Um, the Marigo mod is just so cool. The strawberries have finally grown. We're going to get all those. I'm also going to get the Iridium rod. And I'm going to get the Trap Bobber and some bait. We're going to go for the Legend now today because it was raining. You can only get the Legend on rainy days. That is the Legend caught. It took me three attempts. It was quite the battle now. Extremely hard fish to catch. One of the hardest fish in the game. I got the gold pickaxe off Clint. It's time to upgrade more tools. This time we're going to go with the axe. We're going to upgrade that to a copper axe. We're going to go back into the mines now. I got a diamond there from a mystery note. That's really nice. I'm going to make some quality sprinklers today. They're going to make my life way easier. I'm going to sell more items to Marilyn just to make more money. There's no point having those in my chest because they're using up space. I'm going to make a fish pond here now and I'm going to put a fish inside that in the next couple of days. I'm doing a Skull Cavern run today, but it's not a full Skull Cavern run. I didn't come in here until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I just went in to wet my feet a bit and get some minerals. I come out then later on and I trade in some items for Chubba Shot Expressos and Spicy Eels. But the next day, we're going to do a full run for real. I picked up an Iridium Band, but it doesn't have any stats on it. It's worth a thousand gold. The Marigold Mod changed the way the Iridium Band worked. And at that moment in time, I did not have a clue of the mechanics of it. So I end up selling it later. And I regret that so much. So, so much. Because it turns out that it was one of the best rings in the game. But I'll talk more about it later. I went to the Flower Dance Festival today. I picked up the Rare Crow. And I also picked up the Top of Flowers recipe. I need those to get perfection. I didn't have enough friendship points accumulated with any of the lovely straws to dance with them. So I just watched in the background. I was probably better off anyway, because if I got really drunk, there would have been a good chance that I would have attempted to use one of the straws as a tool to slurp down a drink. Moving on, I got 10,000 gold off Mr. Key for making a pass for 25 in the mines. Thank you very much, Mr. Key. I also got my lovely copper axe, and we have iron bars smelting back in the farm too at the moment, so we're doing really well. I got Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to an Iridium pickaxe. That's going to make a Skull Cavern life much easier. As we can see here now, I have tons of weapons to sell. Templar's Blades and Wicked Chris's are very common. Because there were so many crates in Skull Cavern and those weapons were just popping out of the crates left, right and centre. I went to the Skull Cavern with a prismatic shard. It didn't work, so I googled it to find out why. And then I read that you have to have a prismatic shard plus 10 Iridium bars to get a galaxy weapon. I was hoping for a galaxy sword or a galaxy hammer. But instead, I got a galaxy dagger. I was very disappointed with this. I was going to reset the day and try again, but I didn't bother. I said, you know what? I'm pretty good with most weapon types. I might as well just keep the dagger and see how we get on. And I regret that later. I went to Marilyn to see if he had the other galaxy weapons for sale because I got the dagger. He didn't. I was stuck with the dagger. <laughs> so I went to check out the traveling cart merchant. Picked up a jelly for the community center bundles. Also picked up a rare seat as well. Not too bad. I went back to the desert with 20 iridium bars and a prismatic shard in the hopes that the pylons here would activate and grace me with another galaxy weapon. But no, they were finished with me. I was absolutely stuck with this galaxy dagger. There was nothing I could do. I had to use it as my main combat weapon. I tried to put the legend into the fishing pond because the Marigold had stated you could do so, but it didn't work. So I put it back into the chest and I would investigate later to see if I could find a workaround for that. 
It was Pierre's birthday, so I gave him a daffer to get some friendship points with him. I went into my bat cave. Lots of forageables ready to be picked up. So I'm going to pick all these up now, and some can be used for community centre bundles. That was going to save me some time later on. The rest of the day was spent fishing. And I just fished primarily to get money because I was going into summer and I wanted to buy lots of starfruit. I got coal here. It's nice to get stuff out of the fishing treasure chests. Coal is always a nice reward. Coal is something that I always run out of because I smell so many bears. I got back my Iridium pickaxe. Super happy. I'm now going to give Clint my copper axe. He's going to upgrade that to a steel axe so I can get into the secret woods. I'm giving Gunter more artifacts here and minerals in the hopes to get access to the sewers so I can get access to Krobus as quickly as possible. There's also a statue down there that allows you to respec and the Maragomod has changed that dramatically, but we'll talk more about that later on when we get down into the sewers. So we were back to completing more community centre bundles. The exotic forage bundle was easy enough because I had the coconut and the cactus fruit. The other items were simple to get. I picked up the autumn's bounties. I don't use the autumn's bounty, I just sell it to make money. I'm back down to floor 81. I'm farming this floor for the whole day for fibre to make more tea saplings. I made over 41,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars and other bits and bobs I got from the mines. We're checking out the travelling cart merchant again today. I'm going to pick up a rare seed. But the big prize today was an ancient seed going for 400 gold and a red cabbage going for a grand. I got those straight away. It was a magnificent day with the travelling carts. So we're going to visit Sandy today. It's the last day of spring. I'm going to get 293 starfruit seeds. Then I'm going to visit the regular mines and I'm going to get all of the exclusive fish in the mines. Such as the ghost fish, the stonefish, the ice pip on floor 60 and the super hard lava eel on floor 100. This fish is really rare so it does take quite a number of attempts to actually catch this. And even if you do get a bite, it's very hard to pull it up if you're not prepared. I strongly recommend using a trap bobber to pull that fish up. It is quite a challenge, especially if you don't see it coming and it takes you by surprise. So it's the first day of summer. I got my steel axe off Clint. That means we can get into the secret woods. I'm going to purchase a few crops off Pierre for some of the community centre bundles. We're also going to go to Sandy and I'm going to spend loads of money on more starfruit seeds, 32 in total. The more starfruits I can grow, the more I can convert into starfruit wine, the more money I can make. Because I have the steel axe, I can now get rid of all these large stumps all around my farm. I can start accumulating hardwood now. And loads of hardwood will be needed later on. I fished up the wood skip today. That was needed for the fishing collection. And I'm also going to do the summer foraging bundle. You only need three summer forageables for that bundle. You also only need three summer forageables to make summer wild seeds. Which is also really good. So it's a lot easier to make tea saplings in summer. It's definitely the best month in the whole game to make tea saplings. I pulled up an octopus today. It was a very hard catch. Definitely one of the hardest, if not the hardest, not legendary fish in the game. I then got the crimson fish and then in the evening time, we were fishing up super cucumbers. They sell for really nice money. We're going to visit Robin and she is going to make us a silo because I want to get some animals on the farm. We're then going to get Clint to break open some geodes for us so we can give Gunther more minerals and artifacts so we can try to get down into the source as quickly as possible. I made some crab pots and I'm using these to get more fish for the fishing collection. If we catch all the fish in the game, Willie will give us a star job and we need that for perfection. So I completed the lake fish bundle by getting a sturgeon there, that was really nice. The reward was a dressed spinner. I'm just going to sell that for 500 gold. I also completed the artisan bundle. The reward there was a cake. That's a very nice reward indeed. You can't have enough eggs in my opinion. I went back into the secret woods today because I want to get more hardwood. But it's also a great place to get foraging XP. I finally got foraging level 7. That means I can make 3 fertilizers. I can now make 3 farms. And I also give a fire quartz into the lava eels here to make them feel more at home. They will also multiply. The more lava eels I get in that fish pond, the better rewards I get. Amazing items here to be had from the travelling cart. I picked up the truffle, which means I don't have to get pigs anymore. And I also picked up the duck egg. I still need a duck though for the duck feather. I also made some lightning rods because I was going to get the thunder and lightning very soon because it was summer. So the lightning rod is a great way to get battery packs. They come in super handy later, especially to get access to Ginger Island. Because it was raining today, I fished up the red snapper. That's needed for the ocean fish bundle. And I just completed that there. The reward was five warp totems to the beach. The next day I was able to get some battery packs, super happy with that. 
We're going to visit Robin now. She is going to make us a coop. And we're going to get a barn the next day. And we're probably going to get one of each animal just to cover all of the items in the game. I fished up a storage and then was off to the desert to pick up some more forage. I also fished up the scorpion carp and the sandfish while I was in the desert. I needed the sandfish for another fish bundle. And that was another one out of the way. Very close now to completing the, the fishing community centre bundles. Back into the mines, I'm farming copper because I need to make tons of tappers for the tree seeds that I planted down at the farm. I want to get loads of oak presses to make kegs later on so I can make starfruit wine. I'm clearing up space now on the farm as the four corners farm. So there's four big areas on the farm that I can clear out to put crops down or to put other stuff down. 51 tappers made. I put those in all my trees. The rest of the day was spent farming up wood. It was Gus's birthday today, so I gave him a diamond. I did have loads of those from the Scott Cavern run. That put him up to two hearts. Robin usually does not work on a Tuesday, but if you talk to her just at the right moment, you can actually access her interface. You can get her to upgrade your house, buy supplies, or even get her to make a building on your farm, even on Tuesdays. You just gotta do it at the right time, just before she leaves the house. So I'm gonna put all my tappers on my trees, and all of my lovely spring forages are now ready. So I'm going to collect all these, I'm going to make more, I'm going to replant them, and any excess summer seeds I have will be used to make tea saplings. Just like this. Look at all the tea saplings I'm going to make right now. 99 in total. That's almost 50,000 gold. I'm going to get back from those. It's a huge amount of money. I got the lobster out of a crab pot today. I was super happy with that. One step closer to catching all the fish in the game. It was Maru's birthday, so I gave her the battery pack, because she loves batteries. Some more friendship points for me. Speaking of friendship points, I put a gold star sturgeon into the luau. That gets the best response from the governor, because he loves the soup. And I get tons of friendship points. Back to Robin, I'm going to get the brick floor recipe from her. And I'm also going to get a barn as well, so she'll have that made in a couple of days. I'm going to put the floor all around my tappers. It just makes it way easier to collect the resins going forward. So that pops up in between the trees. I did a skull cavern run today. And I'm making loads of bombs here now. Because I have the park where I can make. You know two bombs for just the resources of one bomb. It's really easy to make tons of bombs. Using the iron ores and the coal. At the end of the day I got level 10 mining. Because of the Marigold mod. The perks drastically changed. The first one was the demo perk. Bomb radius plus one. But exploded rocks yield 20% more resources. That was really nice. Other one was the gemologist. Progressively identify minerals of higher quality. That means I can get like iridium or gold star diamonds, for example. Crystal arms work faster. I went with the demo perk because I wanted to see how effective bomb farming could be. I also got a dinosaur egg and I put that into the incubator in the coop. That get me back a dinosaur. And any future eggs that dinosaur lays, I can just give it to Gunther, turn the rest into mayonnaise. I'm going to buy more starfruit seeds now today, 208 in total. And I'm going to smelt all of my lovely iridium ores into iridium bars and sell those for even more money. I'm very close now to getting access to the sores. So it's just one or two last big pushes. We're going to get Clint to break open geodes. We're going to give him into Gunther. I'm also studying more weapons here I got from Scott Cavern Run into Marlin. Marlin must be having a field day here with all these weapons. I also checking out the travelling car today. The fried egg was very nice indeed. But it doesn't stop there, we got super lucky, we scrolled down a few pages and the large goat milk was also there. It just meant I didn't have to invest in a goat if I didn't want to. I also got the Mackey roll recipe off Gus, that is needed for another community centre bundle. And it's very easy to make the Mackey roll. I also purchased the other recipes that he had too, bar the Shubbershot Espresso, because I didn't want to waste the rest of my money on that just now. With the resources I had, I made 10 crystallariums, I put those down on the farm. And I finally got level 10 farming. Artisan was now overhauled to all artisan machines for 10% faster. Machine output quality can be as good as input ingredient quality. That's interesting. I'm going to go with agriculturist. Crops grow 10% faster. And there's a chance we can pull up a real quality crops from the ground without using fertilizer. That's a game changer right there. Gunther paid us a visit the next day. He finally gave me the key to the source. I just put up a batch of melons here. But what's really interesting about this is that I got an Iridium quality melon. And because it's higher than the Gold Star, I can also use that for Quality Crops Bundle, for example, if I want. So I went to Robin, and I'm going to get her to upgrade my house again. I'm also going to go to Clint, and I'm going to upgrade a tool. I'm going to get the Gold Axe. And that eventually will go all the way to the Iridium Axe, where I can cut down trees very quickly. It was time to go back to the Statue of Prestige, 
we are going to rework another skill. So this statue will allow us to reset our skill, but we keep some of the perks from the skill originally. So I have a choice here between farming, fishing and mining. Now I didn't have enough gold on me at the moment, so I was going to have to wait and come back to that. But while I was down here, I did manage to pull up the mutant carp, which is another legendary fish added to the roster. I'm going to make a little tree farm here now, and all of this will just be wood for tea saplings and building upgrades, things like that down the road. The great thing about the tree fertilizer is that I can make tree farms whenever I please, as long as I have the basic resources to do it. It just means trees will grow within a few days. It'll even work on trees in winter, which is amazing. As you can see here now, I'm collecting all my resins. I'm getting two XP per resin collected, thanks to the Margo mod. That's really handy for getting up foraging skill. I'm also getting lots of starfruit wines here as well. I'm gonna fill up all these kegs now with starfruit. And when I get back the wine, I'm gonna make an absolute ton of money. I also got shades on my crystallariums, so come Sunday, I can swap those in for staircases. Got my gold axe back off Clinton now today. But we're not finished there. We're going to give him the axe straight back in and he will upgrade that to an iridium quality axe. That's what we're looking for. It's very handy that you can sell bars directly to Clint, especially if you need to upgrade tools but you can't afford it. Having iridium bars or gold bars or things like that can save you a lot of time and energy. So I'm making more tea saplings now today and we're back planting spring forageables on the ground. I'm going to sell all those tea saplings to make a ton of money. It was also Sam's birthday. So I gave him a pizza, I bought that from Gus, and Sam was super happy with that. Pizza is one of Sam's loved gifts. We're back in the mines, farming for 81 for the rest of the day. I'm at over 52,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars and tea saplings. So I'm going to use a carp, some rice and seaweed to make a mackerel. roll. I needed that for a community center bundle. We're going to go back to the Statue of Prestige and we are going to reset our mining skill because I want to accumulate more perks for mining. I heard the sound of the train, so I went straight up to the bad house area in the hopes that I would get a really good item from the train. Sometimes it can drop very rare items, and on this occasion it did. It dropped the leprechaun shoes. They are probably one of the coolest shoes in the game. Leprechauns are also linked to good luck in Ireland. So we do have a myth around Ireland where if you reach the bottom of a rainbow, you may find a leprechaun with a pot of gold. Leprechauns also jump up out of holes in Ireland, so if you're walking on the road or walking through a field, you gotta watch out that you don't accidentally step on a leprechaun. So just be careful if you ever visit Ireland, if you come across any of the leprechaun homes, try not to step on them. The leprechauns can get quite angry. It was Demetrius' birthday, give him an ice cream, he was super happy with that. We're collecting more jades and now we are processing ancient fruit to try to get more. I got back mixed seeds today. That was very unpleasant, extremely unlucky, but we can't have good luck all of the time. So I just rolled with it. Went to the desert, cut down some trees here as well. I needed lots and lots of wood to make more tea saplings and I also wanted building upgrades. So once all these trees have been cut down, I'll be able to go back to Robin and I'll be able to start upgrading coops and barns, getting house upgrades and things like that. I treaded in my jades for staircases. So I'm prepping myself now for another Skull Cavern run. It's always the start of a great day when you wake up to battery packs, gold, iridium bars and jades. Went back to Clint, got the copper hoe. I'm going to hand that back in now for a steel hoe upgrade. That's going to come in super handy for fall when we start putting down pumpkins. I met some iridium sprinklers today. I'm now getting the farm prepped for pumpkins because we're going to get hundreds and hundreds of those just in a few days. Got Robin to make the deluxe coop right there and now we're going to talk to Krobus and we're just going to get the star drop off him for 20,000 gold. That's one more star drop in the bag for us. So I went to the desert now today, and I'm going to get some Trup Shot Expressos, some spicy eels. We are going to do a Skull Cavern run. Today was a great day in the Skull Cavern. When I got to floor 20, I got two Iridium Sprinklers. They would go straight on the farm. When the day was finished, I got level 5 mining again. This time I selected plus 1 ore per vein, and it was even more battery packs the next day on the farm. The more battery packs I got, the more Crystallariums and Iridium Sprinklers I could make. I got my steel hoe off Clint. I stopped upgrades there. It was time to collect all of the lovely starfruit wine. I also completed the summer crops bundle. The reward for that was a quality sprinkler. And I still had use for quality sprinklers. It was Willie's birthday, so I gave him a catfish. Willie just loves catfish. I could have given him a diamond, but I had a few catfish lying around from all the fishing I've been doing. So it just made more sense to give him one of those because I could still trade in diamonds for trip shot espressos and things like that. I purchased a full stack of wheat off Pierre today. That will be used 
for a placeholder. So when fall comes, I won't have to hoe or water the ground when I'm putting down the pumpkins. I can just scythe up the wheat because the wheat also grows in fall as well as summer. I made 46 more cakes today. That's more Stafford wine for us. And our dinosaur was finally born. That means any future eggs a dinosaur lays, we can just give them to Gunther. I went to Marnie, it was time to buy some supplies, so I bought some hay because I had no real grass on the farm so I couldn't cite it for hay at all. I also got an auto grabber, so I wouldn't have to worry about checking the dinosaur every day to see if it laid an egg and I also bought some rabbits and ducks as well. I got a large milk off the travelling cart along with a nautilus shell, I was extremely happy with those. And then I went back to my coop after purchasing all of the animals, I decided to pet them all. I didn't have an auto petter yet, but I do eventually get one by a Skull Cavern. I made loads of grass starter, planted that on the farm, and it was time to collect the last batch of star fruit. All of that would go into the cakes. I then replanted wheat on the ground so I wouldn't have to worry about re or rewatering the ground come fall when it comes to the pumpkins. And there was just a second batch of star fruit on the top left hand side of the farm as well. I was collecting iridium bars now today. They were going to sell for lots of money. Then it was back to Robin and this time I'm going to get her to make a mill. Because when I collect all of the wheat, I can turn that into wheat flour and I can turn that into bread to make a decent profit. I traded in more jets for staircases and we're finishing out summer in style with the lovely jelly event here. It's probably one of the greatest visual effect events in the game. So we're now in the first of fall, sighted up all of the wheat and I'm just purchasing crops off Pierre for community centre bundles. So I got the eggplant, the yam and I was getting pumpkins there as well. And the pumpkins will be the primary money maker for this season that will be converted into pumpkin juice. I finished the fall foraging bundle. The reward, 30 fall seeds, thank you very much. It was then back into the back cave, got a pomegranate there, that was very lucky. I just needed a couple of apples there now and that would be another community centre bundle completed. So I was at the mercy of RNG with this game. Apples are quite rare, but there is a chance if I pick up an apple I might get two and that would be great for me. Back down to the secret woods, we're collecting forageables, breaking open trees, and it's time to take on the community quests. We had the famous omelette and we had Juicy Bugs Wanted. We went with Juicy Bugs Wanted because it's easy to get bug meat. I gave Penny a sandfish for her birthday because she loves those, and that pushed her straight up into the yellow for friendship, which was great. It was then time to refill all of our lovely starfruit kegs. I also put all of the wheat into the mill here to get back wheat flour. That would just take one day to process, which is really nice. The mill is actually a really, really nice structure to have in the game. This time I was going for the big barn, and after that we're going to go for the deluxe barn, just so we can get one of each animal in the game, which would cover more or less everything. I got my watering can upgraded, and then it was back to fishing. So we were getting fish that we didn't get before, such as the sea cucumber, the salmon, the midnight carp, all needed for the fishing collection. The next day, it was time to get the lovely wheat flour from the mill. I converted that into bread straight away. 323 pieces of bread. That would be sold for a very nice profit indeed. It was then time to check the auto grabber, and lo and behold, there was lots of wool here that I needed for a community centre bundle. I also needed the rabbit's foot for the enchanter's bundle, so it was a really nice haul today. We're then collecting all of our lovely oak resins. That means I can make more kegs if I want to. It was time to finish off the Enchanter's Bundle. I had the Oak Resin and the Rabbit's Foot. That was another bundle completed there for the Bulletin Board. The reward was 5 Gold Bars. Not too bad. For the Field Research Bundle, it just needed a Nautilus Shell for that. The reward there was a Recycling Machine. That wasn't too shabby either. And for the Dye Bundle, I just needed a Duck Feather and a Sea Urchin. I'll get those eventually, because I did get a Duck off Marnie. And I also completed the Chef's Bundle by just giving in a Maple Syrup. The reward there was a nice pink cake. So the big challenge here now is to get one more apple, so I'd have three apples in total for the fodder bundle. For the animal bundle, I gave in the milk and the wool, but I needed a chicken egg. I didn't actually have any chickens at the moment, so I had to sacrifice one animal in my coop and purchase a chicken off Marnie later on. For quality crops bundle, I had five ghost star corn. That was easy enough to do because I had the corn grown from summer. It was raining today, pulled up the walleye, so I'm getting much closer now to all of the fishing collections. It was finally time to finish off the lovely fishing bundles by giving in the tiger trout and giving in the walleye. That was all of the bundles completed. A small glow ring and some bay. The prizes weren't great, but we needed to complete all of the bundles if you want to get to Ginger Island, so it was a necessary sacrifice. The plan was to get to Ginger Island by the end of fall or the start of winter, and then we could spend the whole season going through the island, getting the rewards that lie within 
trying to access Key's secret walnut room and just seeing how far the Margo mod has extended. But for now, we were back in the regular mines and we're just going for bugs here for bug meat. We needed 100 in total for Willy's quest. We had a whole week to complete it. The great thing about Willy's quest is that it also ties in with the monster eradication goals and there's always a chance the bugs can drop ancient seeds. It is a small chance, but it will happen to you more often than not when you start farming those bugs. I gave in some mega bombs to the I had to be super careful with those. We all know how I get with bombs sometimes. I was really worried that I would misplace the bomb and blow half the farm up because it was a mega bomb. <laughs> because it was Sunday, we're going back to the desert trader. We're trading in more jades or staircases. Now we're going back to Marlin and we're just getting rid of stuff here that we don't need. I got lots of rubber boots, lots of glow rings, items from the starter levels of the mines I didn't need. I also got the insect head and because of the Margo mod, it was actually upgraded a little bit, but the great thing about it that it was now worth 4,900 gold. So I sell it to Marlin for a really nice profit. I went to the traveling cart today, picked up the snowman rare crow. Rest of the day was spent cutting down trees because I needed a lot more wood to get a lot more upgrades done to the farm. I still hadn't reached level 10 foraging, but I was getting there. And this huge haul of lovely fall forageables will certainly help with that, especially if I get a double pull, get 14 XP instead of 7. With 340 fall wild seeds, I'll plant some of those back down in the ground and then with the rest I'll make tea saplings. I was going to sell all those lovely tea saplings. Met over 100 tea saplings today and the figures just keep going. 150 tea saplings in total, that's 75,000 gold. It was time for the legendary fall fish, the angler. It's a very easy catch, probably one of the easiest legendary fish to catch in the game. Maybe besides the mutant carp, I never have any issues putting that angler fish out of the water. I then spent the rest of the day just getting berries off bushes. Met 185,000 gold today. Primarily from tea saplings and crops and things like that. So I'm going to grab the duck feather and the egg. We're going to give one into the community center and the other into Gunther. So that was one more artifact to Gunther. One step closer to perfection. Got my copper watering can today off Clint. But we're not finished there. We're going to give the can straight back in. Upgrade that to the steel watering can. That would come in super handy for Ginger Island. For the dye bundle, I had the duck feather and I had the sea urchin. That was the dye bundle complete. And the reward was a seed maker. That's not too bad. We will be using lots of seed makers later for ancient fruit. It was then time to get our lovely starfruit wine all over again. And for the rest of the day, we were cutting down trees. I was really close to getting forage in level 10 and I just popped right there. It's going to be very interesting to see what the perks are. I also got greeted by a fairy. So for the first perk, we got ecologist. Wild berries restore 50% more health and energy, progressively identify forage in higher quality. And then we scavenger. And that just gives you the markers, but it has an additional perk. Occasionally detect buried treasure. And this really surprised me. It excited me. So I clicked on it to see what it was like. So I went back to Marnie today. And I almost purchased the rabbit. Then I said, no, I need a chicken. I need chicken eggs to complete the animal bundle. It was also Jodie's birthday. Give her a diamond. Jodie was happy. I'm also going to get another community quest. This time we're going to go with rock rejuvenation. Because I had so much minerals from the Skull Cavern runs. It was then back to the lovely Clint, got my steel watering can, but we weren't finished there, we might as well go all the way, so we're going to upgrade that to the gold watering can. That would take a couple of days. We we're then back into the pantry, it was time to complete the fall crops bundle. That was one more bundle done, one to go. The reward was a bee house, not too bad. I gave Emily all of the minerals she wanted for rock rejuvenation, that was a thousand gold in the bag, and she sent me on a sewing machine the next day. It was time for the first batch of pumpkins. Look at the lovely giant mutated pumpkins. They were huge. I was thinking about destroying them, but I said no, I'm going to leave them the way they are because they looked big and beautiful and they even last throughout all of the seasons. So they look really cool in winter as well. So I'm going to leave the mutated pumpkins and just pick up the rest. For a good portion of today, it was just replanting the pumpkin seeds. So this was the first buried treasure. This was a level 10 foraging perk and I got four pieces of stone and I got one wild seed for the fall. It was it was so disappointing. I gave Abigail an amethyst because it was her birthday. More friendship points with her. So we're actually doing pretty well with the friendship in this game. I don't know if I'll be able to maximize everyone's friendship by the end of the year though. We'll find out soon enough. So it was back to Robin and Deluxe Baron all the way. Then it was back to Clint to get the gold watering can. Now I had a lot of money on me and had a resources. So I said, you know what? Let's just upgrade it to the Iridium watering can. 
It was raining today and the lovely vegetables were ready to be collected. I was going to pick up all those, plant some back down on the ground, turn the rest into tea saplings, the usual story. It was Sunday, that means staircases. It was then back to the travelling carts and she was selling pale ale for a thousand gold a pop. I purchased one just so I can complete the quest for Pam. Pam was looking for the pale ale. Give me that, slurp. Ah, that's the stuff. <laughs> Pam is just so funny. And of course, she's going to drive the bus after it. So for the next set of community quests, we're going to go with a curious substance. Need to get an ectoplasm. So we need to destroy ghosts for that. I spent the whole day locating ghosts and killing them in the hopes to get an ectoplasm. It's quite rare. It was time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I got first place, of course. I had a huge array of really nice items. Gambled all my star tokens on green. And once I had enough star tokens accumulated, I decided then to just use them all up and get the star drop and to get the rare crow in this event. They're the two most important items you need when you're going for perfection. So the rare crow was 800. The reason why you need all the rare crows is because when you get them all, you will be mailed a recipe called the Deluxe Scarecrow and you need to make that in order to achieve perfection. The starfruit wine was ready again and it's so nice just picking up all this lovely starfruit wine. I mean, the money was going to be amazing. I was killing doggies today and rock crabs and anything in between. I was just trying to complete more monster eradication goals for perfection. On floor 16, it was an ambush floor. This was amazing because I could just elevate her down to floor 15, pop a staircase or mine open a few rocks, get down to floor 16 and rinse and repeat for the day. It was Marnie's birthday, give her the diamond. That got enough friendship points with her for me to go in and get Mary Lewis's lucky purple shorts. And I was just going to give these back to Mary Lewis for friendship points because I want to accumulate as many friendship points as possible. <laughs> Mayor Lewis had no idea how his shorts could have got there. Maybe Marnie stole them. Maybe Marnie gets a trill out of robbing people's underwear and bringing them back to her bedroom. Who knows? It was time to complete another quest. I gave the wizard the ectoplasm. He was very happy with that. He gave me 2,500 gold. I feel like you should get a lot more gold for that quest because the ectoplasm is so rare. I got the iridium water and can off Clint. Give back in the hole to upgrade that to a gold hole. We're back down on floor 81, farming it for the day. The next day, the wizard, as a reward for completing his quest, gave me the recipe to make mini obelisks. They're very handy for big farms because they allow you to warp around the farm at your own pace. So it's a very nice item to make. It's time to make more tea saplings. Let's see how many I can make today. 160 tea saplings. That's a lot of tea saplings. That's a lot of money. It was time to sell all of the weapons, armor and rings I didn't need to marry for extra money. I also finally got my sweet gem berry to take fruition. Gave that into the statue here in the secret woods and the reward was another star job for me. So I sold my sweet gem berries. What's interesting here is the iridium quality one. It sells for a whopping 6,000 gold. That is a very nice profit for sweet gem berries. Back to Clint. Got my gold hoe. I'm going to give that strap back into him and I'm just going to upgrade that to the iridium hoe. And that means all my tools are now of iridium quality, except the trash can, of course, but I don't really use the trash can anyway. Might upgrade it down the road. So I'm going to buy a spaghetti off Gus today. I also got the Triple Shot Espresso recipe. And it's Robin's birthday. She loves spaghetti. So I'm going to give Robin a spaghetti. Robin also loves peaches, but I didn't have any peaches on me at the moment, so Robin would just have to settle with a spaghetti. But I would have got the same friendship points regardless, unless the peach, of course, was a silver gold or iridium quality. So that was another Monster Slayer goal done for the Duggies. One step closer to perfection. The Lava Eels wanted an Iridium Bar, so I turned it into the fishing pool. And that fishing pool is actually coming along very well now at the moment. It was time for another community quest. We had Community Cleanup, our fragments of the past. I went with Community Cleanup straight away. Those fiber seeds are just overpowered as hell. Way too good to pass up. So I went up to the Bathouse area. I spent a whole day fishing up there for trash. Once I accumulated 20 pieces, I put them all into the bin the next day to complete Linus's quest. The 500 gold is a small amount of money, but the real reward will come the next day when he gives me the recipe for the fiber seed. I got my iridium hoe back off Clint. It was then time to harvest all of the lovely starfruit wine. That's going to mean a lot more money for us. We're now running a little bit low on starfruit. I did have over 300 but that's going to go very quickly and eventually it's going to be back to processing pumpkins. They're not half as good as starfruit wine, but they're better than nothing. It was now the 24th of fall and this was going to be the last batch of pumpkins that we were going to pick up. So we were now heading into winter. I did get a few more mutated pumpkins though, thanks to the iridium quality sprinklers. 
So I'm going to leave all those pumpkins on the farm. It's also George's birthday. And I actually had a leek lying around the place from spring. So I gave him that because I knew he loves leeks. So I kept one for him. I then decided to make lots and lots of fibre seeds. Now these don't actually need to be watered. But I was just too lazy to pickaxe up all of the sprinklers. So I just put them on the ground as is. I had the space for it. You do have to protect them though because the crows will swoop down and try to eat them. It was Thursday, so I treaded in some prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Probably one of the best, if not the best, consumable in the game. For the rest of the day then, I was farming skeletons because I wanted to kill enough of these to get a monster eradication goal done. And after one day, I managed to do just that. I was getting quite used to using the dagger weapon. I still would have much preferred a sword or a club, but I was getting used to it. I was getting a bit better with it. I purchased another ancient seed off the traveling cart. Also picked up Queen of the Gem Sea since it was a very rare painting. Why not? I had the money for it. And it was finally time to finish off the fodder bundle by putting in the last apple there. As a reward, I got back a heater. Not too bad at all. I also put in the chicken egg, finished off the animal bundle, and that was the pantry fully completed. I could now access the quarry cave. And what fun are we going to have inside the quarry? It was time to get Clint to process some geodes now today. So that's more minerals were given to Gunther. And I almost have all of the minerals done. I just needed a few more bits and bobs. It was time for another Skull Cavern run. So I took the Magic Rock Candy. Took a Shubbershot Espresso. And it was time to break open some crates. Could I get another lucky ring today? Let's find out. Because we all know how lucky I get when it comes to getting lucky rings out of barrels. And there we go. <laughs> it was another lucky ring. They say lucky rings are insanely rare. They are rare, but they're not insanely rare because I manage to get at least one every time I do a challenge. You know, if you keep going into Skull Cavern over and over again and you keep prioritizing the barrels and the crates, you are going to get one eventually. Level 10 mining, let's look at the prospector. Locations of ladders and mining nodes revealed occasionally detect rocks with valuable minerals. Then we had Spelunker, this is the one we're gonna take. Chance to find ladders and shafts increase every mine level. Speed increases every five levels. That is absolutely insane. If we use that in combination with staircases in a skull cavern, we're going to have a super fast, super lucky character. We'll be able to get down to the bottom of skull cavern with ease. So I was very excited to try to do it as quickly as possible. So it was now the first of winter. Look at all the fiber we're going to get here from the fiber seeds. The mutated pumpkins also look amazing in winter. When we're finished with farming all of the lovely fiber, we're going to go up here now and play hide and seek with Krobus. He's going to give us the magnifying glass and that means we can now find secret notes from doing various activities around the game. And some of those notes are very powerful. What I was really hoping for was a secret note that would allow me to go to level 100 in the Skull Cavern and get that lovely Iridium juice that gives me more HP. So I'm going to take Robin's project today, I'm going to find some hardwood. I'm also going to complete the winter foraging bundle. I finally got the crocus there and the snow yam. The reward was winter seeds. And that was the community center completed. I could now access Ginger Island. But before I could access Ginger Island, I needed just a few more pieces of hardwood because I wasn't farming the hardwood as much as I normally do. And I wasn't really getting out of hardwood out of the crates in the mines, which is unfortunate. I also went for the glacier fish today probably one of the hardest fish to catch in the game. It took me a few attempts, I finally caught it. It was then time to get the lovely Hero's Trophy from completing the community center. It does not compare to the reward you get when you go to Georgia route, but it was still nice to get some recognition. It was now time to go into the quarry as well, because I wanted to get that lovely goal in sight. All these floaty skull enemies have a chance of dropping magic rock candies, of course. It is very low, and it's been a long, long time so I actually got one to drop a magic rock candy. But when I went up to the statue, I got the gold inside, but because we're using the Margo mod, something happened afterwards. When I clicked on the statue to teleport out, it said there's something behind the statue. You feel a sinister chill run down your spine. Whatever it is, you should probably leave it alone. I, of course, decided not to leave it alone and grabbed it. I picked up a weapon here called the Blade of Ruin. You reach out and discover an old looking sword. As you grab it, the blade begins to glow a sickly green color. Suddenly you feel as if all the peace and everything else drained from your body. Similar to like a Dementor from Harry Potter, you know, it just drains the life out of everything. 
So I equipped it straight away. I was very curious about this weapon. Little did I know at the time that every time I swung this weapon, it consumed some of my HP. And this weapon becomes an extreme hindrance later on in the video. It really is a double-edged sword. So it was time to fix up the boat to get to Ginger Island. I've seen some battery packs, iridium bars, and some hardwood. I could now go to Ginger Island the next day. It was Linus's birthday. Give him a cactus fruit. Even people like Linus can't stay in the tent all year round. Sometimes you do have to go in for a bit of heat. Thank God for the bad house. The Blade of Ruin was a very nice weapon indeed. Its secondary function, a dash attack, could fly through enemies and it could kill a lot of enemies in one hit. Every time you slay five enemies with this blade, the stats on the weapon would increase. It will get stronger and stronger and eventually it will get to a point where it will start one-shotting enemies. The only drawback is that while this weapon is equipped it, I felt that my defense stat didn't really matter. Enemies were hitting me for maximum damage. Every time I swung the blade, and sometimes even if I just had the blade in my hand, I would lose HP. And this would get worse as the weapon gets stronger. So it really is a double-edged sword. Went to Ginger Island though, and it was time to collect some golden walnuts. I just wanted enough to unlock the house, so I could start putting some crops down on the farm and stuff like that. I really wanted to get at the forge though, start upgrading my equipment. And I really wanted to get access to Key's secret walnut room to see what kind of quests he had. Now I was in the last season, it was winter, so it's going to be difficult to see how much progress I can actually make. So I got the house built, I now had access to the farm here, I could also sleep over. When I went into the volcano for the first chest reward you always get the golden walnut. And you always get a free prismatic shard too when you get to the top. I enchanted my lovely blade of ruin. The enchant was called Wappajack. This enchant is hilarious. Basically, when you hit an enemy with this weapon, there's a chance you could outright kill them, you could turn them into an animal, you could turn them into a different enemy. It had so many different hilarious effects. There was also a chance that when you killed an enemy with Wappajack, they would drop a totally random item. And wait until you see the randomness of the items I get in the next few days. It was a total game changer. A really fun enchant to have. I was very impressed with this. And I'm actually very impressed with the Marigo mod. Fair play to the developers that made such a magnificent mod. So it was back to grinding out the Golden Walnuts in Ginger Island. I'd just done the pylon puzzle there, as you can saw. That took me almost a whole day. Got a clam there for killing a slime. And I turned two others into chickens. <laughs> one regular chicken, another a white chicken. And I think that one was a golden chicken. <laughs> so the only one I didn't have was the brown and the blue chicken. And this is just the start of it. This enchant is absolutely insane. It was time to pull up the fish I needed for the fishing collection. Got the line fish there today. And the first batch of winter forageables were now ready. So I'm going to pick all them up, make more, put them back down on the ground. This method will just rinse and repeat itself. I got a green tea, gave it to Caroline. She was very happy with that. And you can get tea leaves from Caroline's sunroom at the end of each season. So I managed to pick up a few free ones. I also finished off Robin's project by putting in some hardwood. That was the request completed. And it was time to collect our lovely starfruit from the cakes. The next day we had the winter event here, the fishing event, so I purchased another Stoneman Rare Crow. I forgot I already purchased one, so I now have two of those instead of one. I won the fishing event, and Lewis gave me the usual prize of the magnet, barbed hook, dress spinner and sailor's cap. I sell all the tackles and I put the cap into a chest. I'm not a huge fan of the sailor's cap. I made over 200,000 gold from selling items, primarily starfruit wine. It was then time to take on a quest, I'm going to go with Gus's famous omelette. Because I had lots of duck eggs now and chicken eggs at this stage, so this was a super easy quest to complete. So that was done in a matter of in-game hours. The reward was 3,000 gold, thank you very much Gus. It was then time to give Linus his birdie basket. Not much good to him in winter, but I just wanted to get more friendship points up with people. Gave Emily an amethyst, said it was from Clint. She took it up the wrong way and I got a nice kiss off Emily. <laughs> I also gave Willie a squid because he wanted me to fish one up. And I gave Caroline a pumpkin. She wanted one back in the fall, but she can always use it next year because crops in Stardew Valley are magical. They don't expire. Went into the sores and I got the dark talisman here because I wanted to get the ball rolling with the wizard's terminal. Fished up a void salmon needed for the fishing collection for Willy and I also got the void mayonnaise. We're going to give that to the henchman here. And he looks so cute in his straw form. Just look at his cute spiky helmet. He's such a cute, lovely henchman. <laughs> this got me access to the witch's house. 
and I was able to get the magical ink that I can now give to the wizard, which activates his magical terminal. When I went to the wizard, I got a new scene thanks to the Marigold mod. The wizard taught me about the strange sword that I wielded and he gave me the background on the sword. And he taught me it once belonged to a legendary hero, but that hero's heart was broken and the sword turned evil. But he taught me that there is a chance I can turn the sword holy again by doing a huge string of quests. So the NPC that had the sword, his name was Vigo. And to be honest with you, I had to actually Google how to progress the quest because I didn't really know what to do. Before I Googled it though, I did go into a lot of places to see if I could progress but nothing was happening. Eventually I ended up going to the Statue of Yoba, like I do right here. I also gave Sebastian there a sashimi for his birthday. So all the quests I had to do were prim primarily based on choices you get during the NPC cutscenes. So I needed to accumulate more friendship points with a lot of the NPCs to complete a lot of these quests. There was also a quest here to give freely and share your abundance with your fellow townsfolk 500,000 gold. I suppose the best way to do that, maybe, is to get Robin to upgrade Pam's house which costs 500,000 gold. I'm hoping that's the case. So I had a lot more staircases today, had a lot of bombs, had some mega bombs and as you can see my character is now super fast because I'm on floor 206 now, my character is like a bullet. The bombs have a much bigger radius. I mean, it's just really fun. I turned a dinosaur into a cow there. I got a banana off that dinosaur. I can now complete a quest over on Ginger Island without having to grow and wait for the banana tree. That was absolutely amazing. And I mean, if you think that's the pinnacle of what happens, it's not. I got a lucky ring. Now, I didn't have footage of the ring popping out of a crate because it wasn't recording at the time. But I can assure you, it was in a crate. I destroyed it and it popped out. That was double lucky rings for me. Now that I had double lucky rings combined with a magic raw candy, I almost had maxed out luck. The only thing that was stopping me was ginger ale, and that's something we can look at later on in the video. I gave Linus a gold bar for the help wanted quest. I don't know why he wants gold bars. I thought he gave up his ways of richness, but who am I to judge anyone else in this game? I gave Demetrius a melon too. He was looking for one of those for ages. So Demetrius is very happy about that. And he gave me some money, more friendship points as well for Demetrius. Look at all the lovely winter forgeables we have on the farm at the moment. It took me a good portion of the day to pick up all these. Once they were all harvested, I made more winter wild seeds. And I made a lot more. Look at the amount of them I can make here. 930 wild seeds. So I was going to put as many of those as possible into the ground. With the leftovers, we can make more tea saplings. That's 112 in total made right there. I'm going to sell those for more money. Went to Jordy's house, met the family, trying to fish on the ground, we got on great. Went to George, gave him a hot pepper, he was looking for that for ages. George was a happy man. And I traded in more jades for staircases for future Scott Cavern runs. It was also Harvey's birthday, so I gave him a coffee. It was time to make more kegs, 80 kegs in total, ready to go. I was now processing the last pieces of the starfruit. We're going to be moving on to pumpkins very soon. It was also time to treat myself to a desert obelisk. I had the resources to make it. I had the money. I even had almost a million gold left over. It was now time to take on the submarine minigame. And I got the blobfish, the spookfish and the midnight squid. All exclusive submarine fish. You can only get those three days of the whole year. So my advice, when that event does become accessible, go into it straight away. Prioritize it because you won't get those fish anywhere else. So we're going to go with fragments of the past for the next community quest for the week. I also grew some crops on the farm here. I was lucky enough to get garlic from the Skull Cavern run. So that was going to be 15 golden walnuts from the frog in total. 5 for the melon, 5 for the wheat and 5 for the garlic. I also gave in the banana here to the monkey. He's going to give me a few more golden walnuts for that. So I was well on the way to get lots and lots of golden walnuts. Also got the parrots to finish off the resort here. This gives me access to the beach. Put down some flute blocks here. That was the mermaid puzzle complete. Five more golden walnuts. Fished up the stingray. That was all the fish done in the whole game. All fish had been fished up. Let's have a look at the collection. The fish with max underneath them were fish I got perfection on. So I have a long way to go to get perfection on all the fish. The next day, Willie sends me a star drop for collecting all the fish. It's actually very sad because Willie said he doesn't have any kids to give the star drop onto, so he just gives it to me. I really hope in the near future, Willie finds love, because he deserves it. Everyone deserves love. 
It was back to the dig site today. We were looking for fossils to give in to Professor Snail because I wanted to get more golden walnuts from him. I always got Clint to break open a few golden coconuts here. You always get a golden walnut from the first one. And I got very lucky and I managed to get one of the fossils in for Professor Snail from the second one. Now I got a lot of bone fragments already from the dig site. So I just needed to kill a few skeletons to complete Gunther's quest. And that was easy enough to do. That was fragments of the past completed. 3500 gold in the bag. So, Clint was looking for bars. He got an iron bar. He was happy. That was a favour for Clint done. 500 gold in the bag. It was back to the desert trader for another magic rock candy. We were then back to the volcano dungeon. I picked up the dragon scale boots. I was delighted with those. A plus 7 defence is what I needed so badly. I now had a really nice setup. Two lucky rings and the dragon scale boots. I got something I never got before from a chest. I found an old blueprint, some sort of dwarvish blueprint. It must be related to the Marigo mod, so we're going to hand that into Clint eventually, and we're going to start some sort of dwarf quest. I also picked up a golden egg from killing an enemy inside the volcano. That is going to get me a golden chicken. And th the game breaking thing here is you can only get a golden egg once you have attained perfection in the game. So to get golden chickens before perfection is going to be a very interesting mechanic. Went back to the Statue of Prestige, reset my foraging skills to accumulate more foraging perks in the future. Gus was on the resort today, so I purchased the Tropic Curry recipe straight away. Because you could go a whole year without Gus actually visiting the resort. So my advice, if you see Gus at the resort, get that recipe off him straight away. It's one of the hardest recipes to obtain because it's not guaranteed to be gotten at any time in the game. You can only get it when he visits the resort and it's pure RNG. You might not ever visit the resort, just so you know. So if you see him, just use up that 5,000 gold and grab the recipe. I got a cutscene here for George, and this activates when you accumulate enough friendship points with him. And because I chose the right option, I got one point here for the hero's journey, which was to offer sage advice to a townsfolk. It was also Evelyn's birthday, so I gave her a diamond. And we were back slaying void enemies from monster eradication coals. I just got a red mullet there from killing one of the void monsters. I also turned another one into a golden chicken. The Wapajack is such a funny chant to use. It just makes the game so funny. I used the rain totem and I managed to blow a hole in the old Georgia Mart to get at the hidden bundles. Level 5 forging again, this time we're taking Lumberjack. Felled trees yield 25% more wood. I already took the forager before so I should already have that perk accessible to me. It's time to collect more Iridium Barrows today. And here is another classic scene from Stardew Valley. How would you classify a tomato? It is of course a vegetable. Anybody who says otherwise are just straight up wrong. Let me know in the comments what you think. It was time to get Robin to upgrade my house again because I needed to get some sort of silver star wine for the secret bundles. And as we can see I have lots of lava eels in my fishing pond. I had to let them go because I needed caviar so I tried to storage it in there instead. It was then time to go back to the traveling cart this time trading in on the geodes for artifact droves because I now needed artifacts over minerals. And once I have all the artifacts accumulated, I would then be one step closer to perfection because you have to give in all the minerals and artifacts to Gunther in order to achieve perfection. It's one of the steps necessary. It was back to the dig site, blown open more nodes to get more artifacts. Professor Snail's quests were coming along quite well. I got a banana sapling, but there was no point for that now, really, because I already got the golden walnuts from the monkey. I suppose I do need bananas in the future if I wanted to make the obelisk to warp to Ginger Island, so I do plant it regardless. So I got loads of ancient fruit today from the greenhouse, and they would all be transferred back into ancient fruit seeds, so I can fill up the greenhouse with ancient fruit. So we're well on the way to getting a greenhouse filled up to the top with lovely ancient fruit, that can be turned into ancient fruit wine eventually. It was time to get more oak resins, and then all of my lovely mahogany trees were fully grown, so I was going to cut all those down to get more hardwood. I made over 350,000 gold today, primarily from selling lots of bits and bobs, but the big heavy hitters in terms of money were iridium bars and wine. It was Leah's birthday today, gave her a salad, she was impressed. Then it was back down to the mines, killing void monsters and everything in between. I was having a great time using this blade of ruin it was getting much stronger i wanted to see how strong it could become but because it was getting stronger it was draining more and more hp every time i started to use it 
If you look at my health there, as you can see, it's dropping very, very quickly upon each swing. But the Wapa Jack enchant is just too funny to pass up. Level 10 combat, we had Brute taking damage builds, rage, improving combat prowess, plus 25 HP also. Then we had Bushwhacker, crit chance, 50% increase. Strikes have a chance to poach items from enemies. That is very interesting. But for now, I went with Brute because I wanted to see how this limit gauge worked. Very interesting indeed. So it was time to upgrade my house even further. 100,000 gold for the seller. Thank you very much, Robin. It was then onwards to the next community quest. We had Cave Patrol and Aquatic Overpopulation. We're going to go with Cave Patrol. He just wants 50 bats slain. Easy enough for Clint. This was the week of Clint because we had his community quest. It was also his birthday this week and we also got him as a secret Santa. So we were easily going to max out Clint's friendship this week between those three events. I decided to do another quarry run today in the hopes of getting a magic rock candy from the floaty skulls that wasn't meant to be. For Clint's secret gift I gave him a gold star rabbit's foot. That was going to be a massive friendship boost with him. Vincent gave me a rainbow shell. That was actually quite nice and a rainbow shell is needed for a key quest down the road. We're now processing pumpkins into pumpkin juice and Clint said he's going to get started on that dwarvish blueprint that I gave him. I just have to give him a couple of days to sort it out. Unfortunately, we're at the end of the challenge. We don't get to see how that quest unfolds. But if you want a 200 day video, let me know in the comments if you enjoy this Margo mod so far. I switched back to the Galaxy Dagger, the Blade of Ruin. It was just way too hard to handle now. It was taking up too much health. Unfortunately, I couldn't get rid of the Blade of Ruin. Couldn't even put it in a chest. It was stuck to my inventory. The golden chicken hatched, so that was going to be golden eggs in the next few days. I was super excited with that. The horrible thing about the Blade of Ruin is that if I attempt to swap out tools, there is a chance it will automatically bring me to the Blade of Ruin, which reduces my HP. So it was becoming quite the problematic weapon. Sturgeon wanted a diamond. I obliged, of course, because I want caviar as quickly as possible. It was time for the cutscene between Haley and Emily having an argument. I said, Haley, can this just be your only job? Come on now, don't do that to your sister. You have to contribute. And I was given more points for that for the Hero's Journey quest. It was then time to slay some bats for Clint's quest, and I had a few days to do that. When that was finished, I got 6,000 gold off Clint. I was super happy. I also put a crystal fruit wine into one of the cakes here. And once that becomes a silver star wine, I'll be able to put that into one of the hidden bundles. We're now on day number one, year two, and we just meet Kent, a new NPC, so we need to maximize his friendship also in order to achieve perfection. We're now running around the farm, we're going to get our lovely oak resins. We also have a greenhouse almost filled up to the top with ancient fruit. We're going to visit Sandy in the desert. We are going to purchase a full stack of rhubarb seeds. Rhubarb is an amazing crop and it yields huge amounts of profit. We're also going to get to strong stuff, community quest for Pam. And to complete that, we're going to purchase some potato seeds off the lovely pier. We're also going to pick up a dinosaur mayonnaise because we need that for the last community center bundle. And as we can see, we have a lovely golden egg inside of our auto grabber. We're going to incubate that and we're going to have a huge giant farm of golden chickens. Now because it is the first day of spring, lots of stuff has reformed on the farm. So we're going to use all of our lovely iridium tools and clear that up as quickly as possible. We're also collecting more golden walnuts to see if we can get access to Key's secret walnut room. We're going to visit Sandy again now today. We're going to purchase lots and lots of starfruit seeds. We are going to fill up our Ginger Island farm with a ton of starfruits. Starfruit wine is extremely profitable. If we want to get all of the warp obelisks and the gold clock, we are going to need thousands of starfruit wine. The rest of the day we spent watering up the crops and we finally got access the Key's secret walnut room. We can now take on the lovely key quests, get our hands on the lovely key currency, the key gems, which we need to purchase recipes and very powerful items the game has to offer. The first quest we're going to take on is Key's prismatic grange. We need to find a hundred of lots of different colored items. I'm also going to finish off the gem bird puzzle here. That's going to be more golden walnuts for me. There's just a few walnuts left now to collect. I had a lovely gold star rabbit's foot ready to go for Kent. That got him up to 3 hearts out of 10. So it's really good progress with Kent early on. We're then going to finish off the Key's Prismatic Range quest. I had all of the items already assembled beforehand. So it was a nice easy quest to do. 35 key gems straight off the bat. 
We're now going to go back to Sandy. I'm going to purchase Deluxe Speed Grows. And I'm going to put these on the Ginger Island Farm because they will never expire. And it just means that the star fruit going forward will grow much faster. So we had a few little dialogues here that we could choose for Ken's quest. I'm going to choose, I know you're hurting, but he needs to give Jodie a break. He needs to give her a chance. She doesn't know what he went through overseas with the war. And the reason why I'm showing you all these little dialogue scenarios is because I need to select the right options for the quest that we're doing in order to get rid of the horrible blade of ruin that we have equipped it and get a new weapon instead. So friendship of all of the NPCs must be prioritized so I can get these cutscenes so I can select the right options and I can complete all of the various paths. As you can see, it just said there that Gamragar has proven their honor. That has to be done three times along with other bits and bobs. It's a very big quest to do. It's a very difficult quest. But I am very confident that we will get there very soon and we're going to get a nice new shiny weapon as a reward. So I'm giving Abigail the Ornate Necklace that I got. That's more friendship points for me. We're also going to visit Robin. Now we're going to get Robin to make a coop. We do have a golden chicken so we are going to have a giant golden chicken farm over the next couple of weeks and seasons. I'm also going to start the chain quest here. This woman is going to give me a memento. That has to be handed in to Kent and he's going to give us an item and it's going to be passed along until eventually we get back to the woman and we're going to get lots of golden walnuts as a reward. So Kent is going to give us gourmet tomato salt as a reward there. Gus was right beside him. That was very fortunate. I'm going to give Gus the salt. He is going to give me the Stardew Valley Rose. What do we do with the rose? We're going to visit the desert, of course. We're going to give the rose to Sandy. And as a reward, she is going to give us a TV remote. That is going to be given to George. But before we get to talk to George, we get another cutscene here with Alex that says he's worthless. But I'm going to pick the middle option. I'm going to say we all have our strengths and weaknesses. So I have now proven my wisdom yet again. So we're one step closer to getting that lovely weapon upgrade. So we're just giving to George the remote here now. And he's going to give us another reward. He's going to give us an Arctic Shard. That is going to go to the wizard. And he is going to give us a Wiggling Worm. We're going to bring the worm straight down then to Willy, and Willy is finally going to give us the item we need to collect the lovely reward. He is going to give us the pirate's locket. So we're going to go back to Ginger Island with this. Now on my way back I noticed that a crow was on my Ginger Island farm. This is because of the Margo mod overhaul. Wasn't expecting that at all, so I was kind of caught off guard there. So I will have to put scarecrows and rare crows on my Ginger Island farm to protect my crops. Birdie was not fishing today because it was raining, so we're going to have to come back to Ginger Island on a sunny day to give her that pirate's locket. In the meantime, we were still working on friendship. It was Mary Lewis's birthday. He gets another rabbit's foot. I had rabbit's feet to burn. I had so many rabbits in my barn. He goes up to 8 out of 10 hearts. Let's have a look at our hero's journey questline. As we can see, we have the path of honor done. We have empathy and compassion done. We have advice done. All we needed to do now was give freely and share our abundance. Getting Pam's house upgraded would sort that out and I just had to kill a few more monsters and we would finally be rid of the Blade of Ruin and I would get hopefully a much stronger weapon in return. So I'm going to give Birdie now the Pirate's Locket. She is going to award me with 5 Golden Walnuts and the Fairy Dust Recipe which comes in super handy for speeding up certain progressions in this game especially when it comes to the missing bundle. So we're going to put that Fairy Dust to use it was time for another key quest. Danger in the Deep is the one we're going to go with. So that means we're now going to get access to radioactive ore and bars. And we need that in order to get perfection. So this is a necessary quest to do. It was time to get more golden walnuts. I played the dart game a total of three times. It gets a bit harder each time you play it because you have less and less darts to use to get the score down to zero. But I've played the game so many times now it wasn't much of a challenge to me. <laughs> Dartman gave me three golden walnuts. It was now time to finally get rid of our galaxy dagger and we're going to get a galaxy sword instead. Thanks very much for everyone that commented on the last video to give me great advice on how to swap out that galaxy dagger. Because of the Margo mod, I could go back with prismatic shards and iridium bars as much times as I wanted and I could get more galaxy tools. So I just used staircases, got down to 4120 here. It was a very easy quest to do because I had staircases. I can now enter the hardened versions of the mines whenever I wanted to, to farm radioactive ores. I used the fairy dust here now to get a quick caviar and I also used it on a cask so I could get a silver star wine. I needed those for the Junimo missing bundle. 
because I wanted to open up the theatre as quickly as possible. The theatre is a great place to get friendship points up with all of the NPCs of Stardew Valley. So we now had the missing bundle complete. We were awarded with the theatre. We also got a really cool cutscene here of the last Junimo making his way back to the Junimo world. It was also time to pick up all of our lovely potatoes. These were going to be all turned into alcohol, which we were going to give to Pam for her terrible habit. But we needed to do so because we wanted to complete all of the community quests. It was time to pick up more quests. We had biome balance and we had the crop order. I'm going to go with biome balance because I wanted to do a bit of fishing. And I wanted Demetrius to send me on the recipe for the farm computer. It was Vincent's birthday today. He gets a rabbit's foot, and that was at the friendship points, with him up to 8 hearts out of 10. For the rest of the day, I'm just doing some fishing. I had to get a ton of fish together in order to complete the quest for Demetrius. One of the hardest challenges to complete in order to achieve perfection is to craft every item in the game. So I needed to get every recipe in the game, and Robin actually has a lot of door recipes. But the trick about Robin is that you have to come in and out of her inventory multiple times to get all of her recipes especially if you want to get all of the glaziers. So we actually had to do this a good few times up until we got the marble glazier. When I was finished, I got Robin to upgrade my coop to a big coop because I wanted to get as many golden chickens as possible. I got a super rare event the next day. The strange capsule landed on my farm. An alien does break out of that eventually. Nobody knows where it goes though. <laughs> as we can see, it was time to reforge professions. I could choose between combat, farming, fishing and mining. I'm going to go with farming, because I had so much rhubarb now to pull up on the farm and ancient fruit. It would be super simple to max out farming again and again and again. And that's the great thing about the Vargo mod. We can max out professions over and over again, retaining all of the perks previously selected. Farming was back to zero, but it wasn't going to stay on zero for too long. We're going to run straight back out to the farm, collect all of the lovely rhubarb and the other bits and bobs that we have. We're going to get that back up to ten almost instantly. Look at all the XP we're getting here for picking up this rhubarb. We're also going to sell all the rhubarb as well and make an absolute fortune of a profit. It does take a good few in-game hours to pull up all of this rhubarb because I did plant it literally all over the farm. Because I have iridium sprinklers I have lots of space on the farm to plant thousands of crops. The strawberry event had come around and I purchased the full stack of strawberries to use. Level 10 farming, I already had agriculturist activated so now I'm going to select Artisan. Artisan machines work much faster, 10% faster, which is really good. That means the kegs will now produce wines at a much faster level. I'm going to reforge farming again, this time for 50,000 gold. It will get more expensive every time I reforge it, but it will be worth it, because eventually I will be able to harness the power of all of the farming perks. I completed the quest for Pam, the strong stuff. 3,000 gold as a reward. Thank you very much, Pam. It was finally time to go to the forge. I was going to upgrade my galaxy sword. I was going to put a prismatic shard into it here. I got the Wapajack enchant again, which was amazing. The Wapajack is such a fun enchant to use. I'm also going to put three rubies into the weapon as well to increase its attack power. All that was left was to put three galaxy swords into this weapon and transform it into an infinity weapon. So it was finally time to collect all of the lovely star fruit on our ginger island farm. As we can see, our farming XP is just flying up again to the top. We're going to have that maxed out in no time at all again which means we can select more farming perks it was also time for another key quest we had keys cuisine i was thinking about that but i said no we'll do a danger in the deep again to get 50 more key gems it also means we're going back into the mines so we're getting valuable resources that we need in order to progress the game faster for the community quests we're going to go with robin's resource rush it was then back into the mines and we were going down levels now this time i wasn't just spamming floors if I saw ores, even copper ores, iron ores, gold, especially radioactive ores, I would prioritize those straight away. Level 5 farming, this time we're going the animal route, rancher, we can be for an animals twice as fast. We then had a choice between breeder and producer. For breeder, incubation was twice as fast and natural pregnancy occurred three times more likely. But then we had producer, happy animals produced twice as frequently. But then it was the game changer produce worth five percent more for every full barn on the map i went with the first one breeder because i wanted the chickens to hatch much faster i wanted hundreds of golden chickens on the farm it was time to build pam a house i didn't have the wood though i just thought it was 500 000 gold so i had to farm 950 pieces of wood in order to make that happen 
I also got a legend fish off of an enemy because of the Wabjack enchant. It was just another crazy thing that happened with the Marco mod. I was actually super excited about that. Went back to Robin this time with wood in hand. Paid her the 500,000 gold. And that was another part of our lovely Hero's Journey quest completed. As we can see, all I needed now was to slay approximately 300 more monsters and I could get rid of the Blade of Ruin and upgrade it to a new legendary weapon. I was super excited at this stage of the game. Met it down to 4120 again in the mines. I was rewarded with 50 more key gems. It was then time to go back to the forge and we were going to put more rubies into our lovely galaxy sword. There was just one more ruby I could put into it to increase its attack power even more. It was Pam's birthday. Give her some alcohol because we all know Pam just loves a good drink even if she's working that day. I was then back into the regular mines. What I was doing here was I was just slaying enemies trying to do monster eradication goals. It was actually quite fun because of the Wapajack enchant. You just don't know what these enemies are going to drop when you kill them. Because of the Wapajack enchant they could drop literally anything and i mean anything anything was up for grabs with this enchant so i spent a whole day slaying bugs once i was finished with the bugs i started moving on to the slimes then then the dust sprites because in order to get perfection we needed the monster slayer hero achievement which means that we had to slay a good portion of every monster in the game so here is a lovely cutscene here of robin finally upgraded pam's horrible caravan to a lovely fabulous house Maybe now Pam will change her bad habits and she will turn into the woman that she was always destined to be. It was time to reforge farming yet again. This would be the last time we get to reforge farming. There was one more farming perk that we could grab. It was then back to the mines and I was desperately trying to get this valor quest done as quickly as possible. It's always nice of course to get prismatic shards off regular enemies. Even though we were very far now into the game and I had tons of prismatic shards, it's still nice to get one. The Valor quest was finally achieved. I had all of the requirements done. The only thing that confused me was that the other paths that I did were red and not green. So there was actually an issue with the Marigold mod. So I had to turn the quest down to easy mode from medium mode to actually get the reward. But just so everyone knows, I did actually complete the quest on the medium difficulty. It just wouldn't register. Once the quest was handed in, the Blade of Ruin was converted into a new weapon called the Blade of Dawn. And this was a very powerful weapon indeed, it even came with some hidden perks. One of them being Crusader, it could destroy undead enemies such as mummies without having to blow them up to finish them off. It also had really nice attack stats, 120 to 160 damage, and it kept the enchant from the Blade of Ruin, so it also had <laughs> the Wabajack enchant on it, which means for more diverse gameplay. It was now time to do some side quests. I just walked into the secret woods here with a maple syrup just to get the bear's knowledge. I also handed in a rabbit's foot to get a special charm which is a permanent luck increase for me. That means more successful Skull Cavern runs in the future. I spoke to Clint today and he finally finished translating the blueprint. He would have finished much much earlier but there was bugs with the Marigold mod and I had to download and install a previous version of the Marigold mod to get around this little glitch. Once I got past this dialogue, I could then download the latest version of the Marigold mod and continue on from where I left off. Because Clint had transcribed this new blueprint, a new option became available, the Forge option. Clint could now produce a Dragon Tooth Club, provided I gave him the items that were just on the description there, 10 Dragon's Teeth in total, so multiple visits to the Volcano Dungeon would be needed in order to get Clint to forge up this item for us. What was also very interesting is that more blueprints could be gotten and Clint can actually forge a huge array of dragon and dwarvish and other different types of weaponry. But we'll get more into that later on in this video. So we're back to smelting copper bars and we're also getting tons of starfruit wine here. Now we have lots of cakes put down. I don't really make any more cakes. I feel like I had enough cakes to get to 10 million gold after one or two seasons. Level 10 farming, we're now going to get the last perk needed producer this is going to be a huge money maker for us the more coops we get and the more coops we can fill up with lovely golden chickens i also got an option there to say that the farming skill could now be further progressed that means it can go beyond level 10. it was time to reforge yet another profession we're going to select mining this time i felt that mining would be easy enough to max out 
because I had so many bombs and because I could do lots of Skull Cavern runs. So I'm going to buy lots of sugar off here today. Reason for this, I want to make some gold star ginger ale to maximize my luck when I go into the likes of the Skull Cavern. The more luck I go into the Skull Cavern with, the more Iridium nodes will spawn for me. Now I was doing the hardened version of Skull Cavern. This meant that I was also going to get Radioactive Ore along with the regular Iridium Ore. So it just meant much better profits for me. I got down to floor 100 and because I had the secret node that stated from Mr. Key to get down to floor 100, I got the Iridium Milk from him, which gives me a permanent health increase of 25. Thank you very much, Mr. Key. I also got a Galaxy Soul from a slain enemy, which was really nice. These Galaxy Souls are super expensive to buy using Key Gem currency, so it's always nice to pick up a few when you're killing enemies. So it was back down into the Skull Cavern today, farming lots and lots of Iridium Orbs. As you can see, my character is super fast. That's because of a mining perk that I have, where every time I get down a few levels, my character's speed will increase. Level 5 mining again, this time we're going to get Miner, plus 1 ore per vein. We're also going to get Leah to dance with us. Poor Elliot, he will have to sit back, relax, and watch me dance with Leah during the Flower Festival. The reason why I chose Leah was because I needed to get extra friendship points with her, to max out her friendship, and to learn all of her lovely hidden recipe secrets. The next day it was time to farm all of our lovely strawberries. As we can see my farming level now increased to 11. This was very nice for us because the more our farming level increased, the higher the chance there is that we're going to get gold and iridium quality crops. That means more money for us. We're going to visit Robin today. We're going to get her to make another coop so we can put more golden chickens inside. Because it was Thursday I traded in three prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. Level 12 farming today. Not only do I get more proficient with items, which means I use less energy to use these items all the time, but our farming skill also goes up so that the quality of crops that we harvest will also go up. Because I got level 15 farming, I could select one existing perk and upgrade it. Rancher meant animals could be friend a lot faster, but I selected Harvester. 20% chance for extra yield from harvested crops. That was just too good to pass up, especially for the likes of starfruit and ancient fruit. It was Pierre's birthday, he gets a rabbit part, Pierre's super happy. That is almost Pierre maxed out, just one or two hearts to go with him. Back on Ginger Island, look at our lovely starfruit and our farming skill still increases. I imagine at this stage of the game that it went up to 20, but I didn't know if it went beyond 20. I finally got the prismatic jelly community quest. I needed this to learn the monster musk. When I found the prismatic slime, it transformed into an ostrich because of the Wapajack enchant. So I didn't actually kill the slime, which means I did not get the prismatic jelly. <laughs> I was very disgruntled by this because I had to find the slime all over again. Level 20 farm and we could upgrade another perk. Agriculturist crops grow 20% faster or artisan. All artisan machines work 25% faster. Of course, I'm going to go with Artisan. That means kegs will process my lovely wines 25% faster. It was an absolute no-brainer to select that perk for upgrade. It was Emily's birthday today. Finally maxed her out 8 out of 8 hearts for her. So we're doing really well with the friendship. I finally found another prismatic slime. I did not fight it using the Wapajack enchant just in case. We took out my old friend, my galaxy dagger, slayed it, picked up the prismatic jelly, gave it to the wizard, the wizard was actually doing a sprint here, I didn't know why, but he was glitching through everything. I don't know if it's because of the Margo mod or if some other mod I have installed, because I actually have a huge array of mods installed on this game, but I actually had to use a little bit of wit here to corner the wizard to give him the prismatic jelly that he wanted so bad. As a reward, the wizard will give me a couple of thousand gold, but the big reward will come in the mail the next day when he teaches me the monster musk recipe. Monster Musk makes monster eradication goals extremely easy to complete. It was back to Robin for a big coop upgrade. Now we're going to visit the good old dwarf. So I purchased a rare crow off the dwarf. I need that in order to learn the deluxe rare crow recipe. I also picked up a flow recipe from him as well. I had 1.8 million gold, so I decided to get a couple of warp obelisks here for the farm. Because I was using a mod, they looked like doors, not obelisks, but I thought they looked super cool nonetheless. 
So I now have three obelisks on the farm. I've got the desert, I've got the mountains, and I've got the beach. All I needed was just Ginger Island Dwarf Obelisk, but I needed a lot more money for that. I also needed bananas and mango fruit. I was also processing more goods today, and then before we know it, it got into summertime. So I had to sight away all these crops. As you can see, the range on the golden site is absolutely huge because of the Marigold mod. This is one of the great things about the Marigold mod. I love the range on the sites that are given. So I purchased a few of every single summer crop Pierre had to offer. When I was finished with Pierre, I also visited the desert and I had a quick chat with Sandy to purchase the summer crops that she had as well. Pierre also had red cabbages because it was year number two. I needed those as well for perfection. I also got some grass starter just so I wasn't spending huge amounts of money with Marnie all the time buying hay. He was also selling some bouquets, so I'm going to get lots of bouquets. I'm also going to get one of each sapling that Pierre had. I was going to put all these into the greenhouse because eventually will come a time where I will need to craft every single cooking recipe in the game. And to make that very easy, it's best to have all the crops and all of the saplings ready to go on the farm. The great thing about summer is that we can use a star fruit on our main farm. So I'm going to purchase thousands of star fruit. That means we are going to make hundreds of thousands, probably millions of gold from all the star fruit we're going to get. I'm also going to purchase artifact troves off of Desert Trader today because I need to find all of the artifacts in order to get a star drop. And we need all the star drops if we want to get perfection. So we're going to get Clint to break open all of these lovely troves now in the hopes to get the rest of the artifacts that we need. I did get a lot of artifacts that were required, but to get the rest of the artifacts, I actually have to hold them up out of the ground in specific areas. So there actually isn't anything else I can get out of the troves. So I need the palm fossil, the skeleton hand, and I think the last item there is some sort of a skeletal tail. So hopefully, if RNG is in our favor, we can mine, hoe, or slay enemies and get these items no problem at all in the next season or two. It was time for another key quest. This time, we're going to go with Key's Kindness. Give 50 love gifts in one week. This is going to hit two birds at one stone because we still need to max out all of the Stardew Valley NPC's relationships. I also had 178 key gems to play around with, so I purchased two Galaxy Souls so I can upgrade my weapon to an Infinity Weapon. With the rest, I just bought some recipes. I will have to make all those items eventually to get closer to perfection. So the rest of the key gems I get, recipes, will be prioritized. So we're back in the Volcano Dungeon today. We're just getting cinder shards. Picked up an ostrich egg there. That's very nice indeed. Ostriches are actually really nice. I experimented with the Blade of Dawn. It wouldn't take any of the Galaxy Souls. So instead, I decided to put them into my Galaxy Sword to upgrade that to an Infinity Blade. Once it took the three Galaxy Souls, it didn't actually transform, but it had a buff on it called Soul. I was rightly stumped at this stage of the game, so I had to go onto GitHub and look up the notes on the Margomite to find out how on earth I upgrade this weapon from a Galaxy weapon to an Infinity weapon. It turns out I had to dismantle my lovely Blade of Dawn in order to upgrade my Galaxy weapon to an Infinity weapon. After everything I've been through, I was very hesitant about this. I really didn't want to dismantle the weapon because it was so hard to get, it was so time consuming. But curiosity got the better of me and I thought to myself, maybe the Infinity Weapon, because of the Margo mod, is far superior to that of the original Infinity Weapon. So I dismantled the weapon, turned my blade into an Infinity Blade, and it was extremely powerful indeed. 182 to 234 damage. It was a beast of a weapon. It also had a fourth gem slot on it which means I could upgrade it again with a ruby further increasing its attack power potential. The weapon was now a godly weapon with 196 to 252 damage. This weapon would one shot a lot of enemies in the game with the exception of course to the enemies from the hardened versions of the mines and Miskal caverns. The last few artifacts I needed were going to be from the dig site area here. The one of the bone nodes and of course, the artifact dig spots. So I came here every couple of days with bombs in the hopes that I would get the items required to get that lovely star drop of Gunther. I also finished off Professor Snail's artifact quest. This means I get a lot more golden walnuts and I also get the ostrich incubator along with a mango sapling. Mangoes are of course needed in order to get that lovely warp obelisk to Ginger Island. 
I selected Pierre's prime produce, 25 gold star vegetables would now be trivial. Look at all of the lovely eggs that I have assembled today. I also have four Iridium rabbits feet ready to go for maximum friendship potential. So it's now time to run around the map and give all of these lovely NPCs loved gifts in order to complete the key quest I have for this week. This is great because I'm also getting friendship points up with all of the NPCs. That means I'm getting closer to perfection. I harvested some Iridium bars today and I'm also working on the Dwarf. His friendship level is only zero at the moment because I keep forgetting that he actually exists. I keep forgetting that I can actually get relationship points up with him. So a lot more effort will be needed with the Dwarf over the next couple of weeks to push him up to 10 hearts. So it was time to make the Iridium Band. After reading the notes on GitHub, I finally understood the true value of this ring. This ring is extremely overpowered. The first thing you have to do is prep it by giving it a Galaxy Soul. This turns the Iridium Band into an Infinity Band. The Infinity Band has four ring slots attached to it, but you can only use rings that power up stats, such as the Ruby Ring, for example, to increase attack power, or a Magnet Ring to increase magnetism range. I couldn't use, for example, a Burglar Ring, or a Phoenix Ring, or a Slime Charmer Ring. They had to be just regular stat increasing rings. So I put four Ruby Rings into this Infinity Band, giving it a total of a 40% increased damage output. This was absolutely massive. To have 40% increased damage on one ring slot was just so overpowered. If I wanted to, I could have done it on the second ring slot, increasing my overall attack power by 80%, but there wasn't really a whole lot of point to doing that because I already had a very powerful weapon. Most enemies won't stand an absolute chance when it comes to combat. It was finally time to clear out the quarry and turn it into a tree farm. The reason why I wanted wood was because any future coop upgrades or coop expenses would be notified by all the wood I would have in the quarry. It was now time to reforge combat and I also made tons of worm bins today. The reason why I'm making worm bins is because I'm going to need thousands of bait for the tactic that I'm going to utilize now to constantly increase my fishing skill because I would have to reforge fishing over and over and over again if I wanted to max that out at level 20 and grab all of the lovely, juicy fishing perks. Crab pots, of course, are the way to go. It was time then to go back to Robin. We're going to get another coop. That means more lovely chickens for us. Today was Gus's birthday, so we're going to give him a rabbit's foot. Gus is super happy, and Gus is now maxed out 10 out of 10 hearts. Thank you very much. So I am now collecting tons of crab pot vegetables today. This is going to make leveling up fishing super simple. I can now also buy crab pots off Willy if I so wish. I could spend millions of gold on crab pots and it's just a much easier and faster way to get fishing skill up. Instead of spending all my money on crab pots, I just purchase a few hundred for now just to see how things will unfold with this amount of crab pots in the actual game. I was worried that too many crab pots could crash the actual game itself, so I just went with a few hundred instead of purchasing thousands of them. Because I had so many crab pots laid out, it did actually take a very long time to fill them up with bait. It was then back to the statue of Prestige, and it was time to reforge our fishing skill. Fishing would go back to zero. Not to worry though, with all of the crab pots we have put down, it would be very easy to get fishing back up to 10. It was time for the island ingredients quest. The reward from this one would yield the recipe for the solar panels, which we needed for perfection. But I needed to make room on the Ginger Island farm to grow pineapples. I had to ship 100 pineapples in total. Thankfully, I had lots of pineapple seeds in a chest ready to go for an occasion such as this. Mara's birthday today. She is now 8 out of 8 hearts. Very nice indeed. We're getting there with the relationships. The rest of the day is spent just getting all of the lovely fish and trash out of the crab pots. The next day was the Luau, a magnificent event to get multiple hearts up with multiple NPCs. I put in a ghost or a cauliflower. This yields the best result from the governor. I got an achievement there, the beloved farmer. That means that a lot of NPCs now have very high relationships with me, which is really nice. Went back to Sandy in the desert, another full stack of starfruit. We're ready to go for our lovely Stardew Valley farm. We're now incubating more golden eggs. They will turn into golden chickens. Golden chickens will lay a golden egg every single day. Golden chickens are just so overpowered. Our lovely greenhouse is now filled up to the top with ancient fruit. We're going to harvest all of this. 
Level 5 fishing, this time we're going to go to Trapper Out. Crab pots are cheaper. We're also going to give Alex a gift today because it's his birthday. Alex is now maxed out, 8 out of 8 hearts. We also finished Pierre's prime produce, 2500 gold in the bag. So I went to the quarry cave today to slay some floating skulls in the hopes they would drop the skeletal hand artifact that I need in order to get to Gunther. It was then outside of the quarry, cutting down trees. It was then time to upgrade our coop to a deluxe coop. You're going to see that screen a lot. We do end up with a lot of coops because I just absolutely love golden chickens. It was then time to sell all of the lovely crabs and other fish bits and bobs that I got from the crab pots. I'm going to make lots of money from that. It was then time to pick up another key quest. We're going to go with Key's Prismatic Range again. That'll be simple enough to do. I made a simple mistake here now where I thought that regular bait would suffice as the purple coloured item, but it didn't. The game would accept bug meat, but it would not accept bait, which kind of sucked in my opinion. Went back the next day with Iridium Ore because I literally have thousands of Iridium Ore from doing all of the Skull Cavern runs that I have been doing. So I purchased Pierre's missing stock list. This makes grabbing items to craft recipes that are on super simple, especially all of the cooking recipes. I then made some tree fertilizers and we're just going to regrow up our lovely quarry farm again. I'm also going to put down paths so that any sort of future tree farms that I want to make will be made swiftly and efficiently. Look at all of the money I made today, primarily from selling starfruit wines. I even had some iridium starfruit wines there too, which is really nice. I'm going to select the tropical fish quest today. That means I get a nice big fish tank off Willy as a reward. For Key's quests, I was going to go with Extended Family because there was absolutely no way on this earth I was going to get Key's crap. It's just not worth it in my opinion. I know you get a lot of Key gems from it, but the effort that is needed to complete that quest is just not worth the time or the energy. After spending the rest of that day fishing, I completed Willy's quest. The reward, a deluxe fish tank. Thank you very much. It was also time to give Sam a birthday gift that put him up to 8 out of 8 hearts. Nice one, Sam. Now the friendship level with Kent was pretty low at the moment, so I needed to put in an extra effort here. So I completed a quest to give Kent a starfruit. I also gave him a loved gift as well, and I pushed his heart up to 6 out of 10. His heart was originally 4. That wasn't too shabby at all. Level 10 fishing, we had a choice now between Lore Master. Lore Master enables crab pots to trap fish twice per day. That means if I loot a crab pot, then it will recatch a fish that same day. So basically, you can loot the same crab pot twice per day. Conversationist did look good, but because I wanted to level up fishing as quickly as possible, I decided to take the crab pot pork. It was then time to fish all of the legendary fish up again. So we got the glacier fish, the legend 2, followed by the lovely Miss Angler. I actually almost got a perfect catch on Miss Angler. I was so close. The son of the crimson fish and the radioactive carp. That was all of the legendary fish recaught. It was then time to collect all of my lovely caviar. This was going to sell for quite a lot of money. The reason why I'm making caviar is because I have a maxed out sturgeon fishing pond. They generate tons of sturgeon roe every single day. Demetrius' birthday, he was finally maxed out. 10 out of 10. We're getting there with the NPCs. It was then time to collect all of the lovely pineapples. This would yield just over 50. I needed 50 more though to complete the quest for Caroline. I now had enough materials for the island obelisk. This was the final obelisk needed. I now had all of the warp obelisks in the game. I could now fast travel to any of the main portions of the game from my farm instantly. Before the day was out, I visited the greenhouse and picked up all of the ancient fruit. Back down into the mines, we are aiming for monster eradication goals. I did of course take a monster musk and just look at the mayhem here with the Wapajack enchant combined with a monster musk. It's just so funny watching half these monsters transform into weird animals or drop weird items. <laughs> Level 5 combat, we're going with fighter again. Damage plus 10%, HP plus 15. It's always a great start to the day when you get to harvest the lovely staff root. I can just picture all of that starfruit wine right now coming back hundreds of thousands of gold. I purchased more staircases today and I'm also going to get the warp quote into the desert. It was then back to cutting down trees, attempting to increase my foraging skill back to 10 so I can unlock more foraging perks and make my foraging profession much stronger overall. I made just almost 730,000 gold there just from selling starfruit wine and other bits and bobs. I asked the dwarf if he wanted to come to the cinema with me. Of course, he obliged. 
it was going to be a lovely date in the cinema with the dwarf. I purchased his favourite food just so he'd get extra friendship points, which was a rock candy. It's only 90 gold, so it's definitely worth getting to get those extra few friendship points when you go into the theatre with an NPC. We watched Journey of the Pirate King, and the dwarf gave more or less a neutral response for this, but I did accumulate extra friendship points with the dwarf. The dwarf was on now 5 out of 10 hearts, so we're definitely getting there with that. It was time for another key quest. How fast these weeks come and go was just amazing. It's because I was having so much fun with the Marigold mod, I just kept losing track of time. We're going to go with Danger in the Deep again, for the simple fact that I wanted 50 key gems to get the rest of the recipes, and to get other bits and bobs as well. Maru's birthday gave her a gift, and it was back to pulling up starfruit. Today was Tuesday. Normally, you can't get Robin on a Tuesday, but if you click on her till just at the right time when she passes it, you can activate her lovely options and you can get her to build or even buy stuff from her wares. I picked up a weapon today, the Obsidian Edge. The Margo mod has overhauled all weapons and it's made the Obsidian Edge a super rare weapon. It had a 100% crit chance on it. Now that doesn't mean you're going to crit every single time you attack an enemy. It just means that you have a very good chance of landing a critical hit. It was Willy's birthday today. He's going to get a prismatic shard. Willy is now 10 out of 10 hearts. Thank you very much, Willy. It was then back into the volcano dungeon. I was desperately looking for more blueprints that I could give to Clint because I really wanted to get him to make a lot more of those lovely cool weapons. I got level 10 mining today. This time we're going to go with Prospector. Locations of ladders and mining nodes revealed occasionally detect rocks with valuable minerals. It's just an awesome profession altogether. It was Leo's birthday today, gave him a rabbit's foot, 9 out of 10 hearts with Leo, so I was almost there with him now, just one more heart, and Leo would be maxed out. The rest of the day was spent just cutting down more trees, I was very close to getting my forging skill to 10, and there we go, forging back up to 10, I find it very hard to increase forging skills, but the farming skills by far the easiest to do because there's just so many crops. So the parrots just gave Leo a home there on Stardew Valley, that was really nice, level 10 foraging, I'm gonna go with the Arborist, all trees grow faster, normal trees can drop hardwood, that is just amazing. I might get the tapper next time around, if we get foraging back up to 10. It was time to collect the last few remaining pineapples to complete the Island Ingredients Community Quest. It was also time to fill up our lovely cakes with more starfruit wines. 15,000 gold for the completion of Island Ingredients, but the big prize are the solar panels that we get in the mail from Caroline. Sonar panels are absolutely amazing items. Just put them out in the desert, then they'll generate battery packs for you every couple of days. It was time to reforge mining yet again. Just a few more Skull Cavern runs, that would be maxed out no problem. I then spent the great portion of today giving all of the bachelors and bachelorettes bouquets because I wanted to get them all to 10 hearts. I didn't need to get them to 10 hearts, I just wanted to because I'm a completionist. It was time to get the Deluxe Coop upgrade, more golden chickens for us. We got the lovely friendship scene here with Shane. We can now incubate eggs and there's a chance we will get blue chickens once those chickens hatch. Blue chickens are really cool. Of course they operate the exact same as regular chickens. They're just blue. We were now into fall. Today is going to be spent hoeing up the farm, getting it ready for an absolute ton of crops. So we're going to get pumpkins, eggplants. We're going to get all of the crops available to us in fall just for the sake of getting perfection. We're also going to visit Sandy and we're going to get the beet seeds because we also need those to get perfection. We have to ship one of each item. It's also time for more community quests. I had a look at the crop order and it looks like Mir Lewis wants me to generate 100 artichokes for him. I obliged, of course, being the super helpful farmer that I am. It was time for another quest. We had danger in the deep or let's play a game. You know what? On this occasion, I decided to give the Junimo cart another go. I've never in my life of all the thousands of hours I've printed this game, I've never not once beaten Mary Lewis's record. But this challenge was different. I had finally accumulated enough skills to get up to 74,000 points on Juno Kart. I beat Mary Lewis. I finally beat the Let's Play a Game Key Quest. It took me a couple of years to do it in real life, but I got there in the end. <laughs> it was time to plant all of these lovely artichokes, and it was time to reforge another profession. This time, we were going to reforge foraging yet again. Speaking of foraging, I have tons of fall seeds here ready to be planted. It took me the bones of almost a full day to put all those seeds down, and we're incubating more golden chickens. 
Back to Robin, she's going to build us another coop, and we're now continuing at Mr. Key Quest to get into the casino. The next thing we have to do is place 10 beats inside Mary Lewis's fridge. That's going to take a couple of days, because the beats are growing at the moment. So my scavenger senses were tingling, and this is just showing some footage of what you can actually get inside some of the scavenger chests, not too bad. The Wapajack enchant has yet again almost broken the game by awarding me with an additional golden walnut for slaying an enemy. That is just absolutely insane. That means with the Wapajack enchant you could potentially get perfection without finding all of the golden walnuts over on Ginger Island. And if you think that's nuts, wait until you see what else lies in store with this Wapajack enchant. It has now got to the stage in the game where perfection is actually very close. All we're waiting for primarily is just the rest of the cooking recipes and we could more or less force our way through to perfection. But I don't want to get perfection just yet. I want to max out all of the professions. I want to experience everything the Margomod has to offer. There's still a good few things to do though before we can confirm perfection. That includes getting hearts up with all of our lovely Sergio Valley NPCs. We're working on Sandy now at the moment, she's 6 hearts out of 10. When she gets a birthday, hopefully in the next few weeks or days, and we give her a really nice gift that can push her up to 10 hearts. We're back down there, we cavern runs, trying to get our mining skill back up again to 10, just to get all of those lovely additional mining perks. So, the minor perk on the left is grayed out because we have all of the tears selected from that side. This time, we're going to go with Gemologist. Progressively identify minerals at higher quality and crystallariums produce 25% faster that is absolutely overpowered and if just like farming we can now progress our mining skill up to 20 as well so things are going to get very exciting indeed got the archaeologist enchant for my iridium hoe in the hopes to pull up the last few remaining artifacts i need so i can get that lovely star drop off gunther i got every artifact that the beach has to offer except the palm fossil what i need so badly right now is the palm fossil and there's a chance you can get that in Sinistap forest you can get it on the beaches you can also get it in the desert it is just extremely rare it might be common for other people playing the game but on this playthrough it just is not popping up at all so i do spend quite a lot of time every single day running around looking for artifact spots to hoe up I was also able to enchant this site to my surprise, and the enchant that it got, believe it or not, was Haymaker. This means that if I whack fibre bushes with the site, I can't get hay out of it to feed my lovely golden chickens. I was delighted with this new overhaul from the Margo Mod. It was our time to collect all of the lovely caviar because the sturgeons are just outputting extremes amount of sturgeon row on a daily basis. I'm going to purchase a lot more starfruit today. That would be converted into starfruit wine. I'm also going to treat myself here now. I have 81 key gems. So I'm going to get the last few remaining recipes. We're going to get the hopper recipe. That's 50 key gems. That's all of the recipes now obtained from Key's secret walnut room. So any future key gems I get my hands on, I can do what I like with those. Our ginger island farm is now filled up to the top with more starfruit. And look at all of our lovely fall vegetables. I'm going to spend half the day pulling up all these forgeables, increasing my foraging skill. We're going to go with Robin's Resource Rush again. Just a thousand pieces of stone, no problem at all, Robin. We're then going to make an absolute truckload of fall wild seeds. They will be put back on the farm because we're still only in the early stages of fall. So we will rinse and repeat this method and try to get as many foraging levels as possible. The artichokes were also ready, decided to harvest all those. And we also got the beets as well, so we're going to put those into Mary Lewis's fridge, which continues the casino questline for us. The next thing we had to do was give the sand dragon his final meal, and that just means going to the desert and putting a soul essence into this lovely skeleton dragon remains mouth. We can now enter the casino, and the reason why we need to get into the casino is because we need to get the alien rare crow, which is needed for perfection. I also got the casino license here, the club card, so I can now go in and gamble money, no problem at all. 8,000 gold for the crop order quest. Not bad. I suppose at this stage of the game, it is pennies that we're talking about. As we can see, I just keep doing double or nothing until I have enough key points to purchase the rare crow. The alien rare crow wasn't actually the last rare crow I needed. The one I was missing was actually from the Halloween event that I forgot to purchase in the previous video. So I make sure I'm going to purchase that now when we get to the end of fall. 
Another key quest completed. That was just a four precious stones quest for key gems for me. I'm also farming the volcano dungeon for two reasons. The first is that I really, really want to get more schematics to give in to Clint. Secondly, I need to get a kill count up on magma sprites and magma sparkers for monster eradication goals. So I gave Jordi a gift today to get her friendship points up, and I also got the Furtaguman decoration from my farm by putting a strange bone into Vincent's chest. It was then back to Ginger Island, and I was farming these bone nodes every couple of days in the hopes to get a palm fossil. It was just not dropping for me at all. Then it was back into the volcano dungeon to see if I could get more goodies. I managed to get a burglar ring and a hot java ring inside of the volcano dungeon today. It was because of the Wapajack enchant that an enemy managed to drop the burglar ring. That is actually amazing. Look, the burglar ring is so handy. Back to Robin, we are going to get another coop upgraded. That means more golden chickens for us. We're now going back into the mines to do Robin's resource rush. Best way to do this is to just break open the large stone chunks, get lots of stone that way. That's 2500 gold in the bag, and of course, that also means a happy Robin. I'm collecting more Iridium Bars today. It's now time to start assembling all of the lovely resources and materials to craft every item in the game. I was running low on healable foods, so I went to Gus, purchased a couple of salads off him, then it was back into my lovely coops, and we are going to incubate more chickens. At the moment, it looks like I don't have a whole lot of golden chickens, but I actually do. I got a really rare event today. The witch came along, and she's going to convert one of my lovely golden eggs into a void egg. If I so wish, I can have a void chicken farm, but we're not going to go the void chicken route in this challenge. We're sticking with the lovely overpowered golden chickens. Level 10 fishing again. We're going to go with Aquarius. Fish pond max capacity plus two. So overpowered. We can also now put legendary fish into fish ponds, which is absolutely amazing. So I managed to finally ship off one of every item in the game. Here is just a list of all of the items that I had to ship in order to achieve that. We are now one step closer to obtaining perfection using the Margot mod. It's time to convert more Sturgeon Row back into caviar, and we're going back to the Statue of Prestige to reforge fishing. Yet again, it's going to be back to the crab pots now for a couple of days. It was Sandy's birthday. I gave her the best rabbit's foot I could find that maxed her out straight away. It's back to pulling up fall forageables, and we're making more fall wild seeds. Going to plant those straight back into the ground, and that's going to be a lot more forageables for us in a couple of days. It was back to the Sergio Valley Fair. I had extremely good items. There was absolutely no way I wasn't getting first place. And of course, Mary Lewis towards me with a rating of 108. That's first place for me. I gambled loads of coins on green, and I had enough money then to purchase everything that the Stardew Valley Fair merchant had, including the rare claw, the glowstone ring, the rug, and everything in between. It was then time to go back to Robin, and it was another coop upgrade, another deluxe coop added to the farm. That means more golden chickens. It was back to Ginger Island in the hopes to get this palm fossil, so it was just blown up the dig site yet again. But unfortunately, no palm fossil. It was then back to cut down some trees, getting the foraging skill up as quickly as possible. Level 10 foraging, this time we're going to go with Ecologist. Wild berries restore 50% more health and energy, and progressively identify forage of higher quality. This means we can start pulling up Iridium quality forageables. Back to the dig site in the hopes to get this cursed palm fossil. It just wasn't popping up for me at all. Time to harvest all of the starfruit on our ginger island farm. It will of course be processed back into starfruit wine. It's now Saturday, the best set to go to the beach if you haven't been there all week, as forageables will accumulate, but they will reset once Saturday ends. We're then going to lose all of the crab pots. We've hundreds of crab pots now, so it does take quite a number of in-game hours to get you all of the crab pots. Level 10 fishing, we're now going to select conversationist. This means crab pots without bait can trap junk and clean the valley's waters can earn village favour and even get us tax deductions. Now tax does come with the Marigo mod but I disabled that function because I didn't want to have a super stressful playthrough. But tax is something I might incorporate into future challenges. Let me know in the comments. It was time to pick up all of the lovely fall forageables again and it was back to the statue of prestige and we were going to rework foraging all over again. Not to worry though, because we had tons of forageables to pick up to get that sorted as quickly as possible. It was time to do more Junimo Kart, and this time I actually made it to the final level 
but I failed miserably. This level is actually quite hard because you have to time your jumps constantly and there's so many different jumping platforms, I just failed at the level miserably. In my defense though, it was my first time at that level. I just wanted to show everyone my, my progress when it comes to how well I'm doing at Junimo Kart at the moment. One day I am sure I will be able to clear Junimo Kart on both progress mode and endless mode. In the meantime, I purchased the horse flute and the Junimo chests from my lovely farm. I'm also going to get a lot more staircases because we're going to be doing a lot more Skull Cavern runs to get our combat skills up, our mining skills up and everything else in between. It was back to the dig side but to no avail, no pap fossil. It was time to get all these lovely fall forgeables. This was going to be a huge increase to my foraging skill and it was back to Robin to get a stables this time. It was now time for another key quest. This time we're going to go with Key's Cuisine instead of Skull Cavern Invasion. The reason why I chose Key's Cuisine is because I had so much stuff gotten from the crab pots, this quest would just be trivial to do. Went back to the forge here for Clint, and I finally had enough dragon teeth to get Clint to forge the dragon tooth club. It would take Clint a few days to get that done, but once I have the club it will be a ferociously strong weapon because it has been reworked via the Margo mod. It was time to make sashimi for the lovely Key quest. And I had so many crabs and just everything between from the crab pots. I could make thousands upon thousands of sashimi. <laughs> Have you ever seen so much sashimi in your life? This would all be sold, of course, for huge profits altogether. So that is the great thing about crab pots. In huge numbers, crab pots are actually very profitable indeed. Look at all the money I made from the sashimi. I made well over 150,000 gold. It was back to Ginger Island and then it was back to the dig site trying to get this palm fossil. It just was not coming up at all. I've been trying this almost every single day because I really wanted to get the star drop before the challenge ends to make some serious progression. It just wasn't happening. I got the master enchant for my fishing rod though and I spent the rest of the day pulling up lava eels to further increase my fishing skill. Lava eels are actually pretty easy to catch now considering that I have the trap bobber and I have the enchant master on my fishing rod which gives me a fishing skill. It was time to get yet another fish pond because I wanted a fish pond for each legendary fish that I had. It was then time to give George a lovely rabbit's foot for his birthday and he was super happy with that. More natless fossils but no palm fossils. Luck was not on my side when it was coming to the probability of getting the artifacts I needed to complete the Gunther's Height quest. I finally had enough money to get the gold clock 10 million gold for this item it was needed for perfection so I was now finished with all of the huge money hungry challenges. I got my dragon tooth club I wanted to enchant it to experience its amazing potential so I did a few volcano runs just to get some cinder shards to get some rubies and other bits and bobs to fully max out this new dragon tooth club that I got. It was skull cavern the next day and as we can see I was one shotting these circuits most of the time because I just had so much offensive capabilities now, these Skull Cavern enemies didn't stand a chance. The Wapajack has done it again, awarding me with the trimmed lucky purple shorts from killing a giant slime. I was now wiping out serpents left, right and center, just to get the monster hunter medication goals complete, and that was the serpents done and dusted. All that was left now was the magma sprites and the magma sparkers from the volcano dungeon. Level 10 combat, we're getting the Bushwhacker finally. And what's really cool about Bushwhacker is that there's a chance when we kill an enemy, we can poach an item from it. I also picked up the last few recipes I needed from the Ginger Island Trader in order to craft and get perfection. It was now time to upgrade our lovely Dragon Tooth Club. 156 to 468 damage. This thing was an absolute beast. I enchanted it with a new enchant called Blasting. And I still don't know to this day what that actually does. I will have to look it up for the next video because guess what? There will be another Margo video because the mod is just so big, it's so comprehensive. It will take a third video to cover all of the glorious aspects of this Margo mod. So I put the legend fish into a fishing pond. That is the first of many legendary fish that we are going to be breeding on our lovely Stardew Valley Margo farm. Back to the beach to try to get this palm fossil, it was a no-go. At the Ginger Island to try to get the palm fossil, it was a no-go. I did get the Deluxe Scarecrow though, from getting the last rare crow I needed from that lovely Halloween event. We were now in winter and it was time to hoe up every single artifact spot that we saw. In the hopes to get the palm fossil, 
but it just wasn't happening. We were getting everything else, of course. Golden coconuts, snake skulls, nautilus fossils, but weren't getting the one we needed, the pan fossil. I also did some volcano dungeon runs as well, in the hopes to get some new goodies, but nothing major happened. It was time to reforge combat yet again. 50,000 gold, well spent. We're now moving on to ancient fruit. We're going to be making ancient fruit wine. The Skull Cavern Invasion is the perfect quest to accumulate combat skill ups. Look at all of our lovely golden chickens. As we can see, all of my auto grabbers now are filled up to the top with hundreds of golden eggs. I thought I could use golden eggs to complete Gus's omelette quest, but no. He'll take any eggs except golden eggs. I finally maxed out Sam 10 out of 10. Every single Stardew Valley NPC in this game was now maxed out. 10 out of 10 hearts. I didn't have the gift NPCs anymore. I could be the introvert farmer that I was born to be. <laughs> it was back to the desert in the hopes to get the Pan Fossil. After looking up some information on this Pan Fossil, I learned that the best place to get it is in the desert. So I do visit the desert almost every single day in the hopes to hold up out of the ground. It was time to do Skull Cavern Invasion. Super lucky here, a giant slime had a galaxy soul. It's so rare to get that, but God is so satisfying to get galaxy souls of slain enemies. I'm getting lots of combat XP here from all these enemies because my weapon is so strong. These enemies don't stand much of a chance. I don't even have to blow up the mummies when they die because the infinity weapon has a built-in ability to fell these mummies without fail. Level 5 combat we're going with Rascal, but for the level 10 perk, we're going to take the slime the piper. Attract ally slimes when they're enemies. Chance to gain a random buff when a slime is defeated. That's absolutely amazing. Slime the piper all the way. I was very excited to try this out as quickly as possible to see how many allied slimes I could accumulate. So I finally decided to get married or more specifically for Krobus to move in with me because Krobus is the man. Krobus can also morph out of straw form to his original form and back into straw form at will. So it was great to have him around. I put this crimson fish into the second fish pond today, but I will be making more fish ponds in the future to put the rest of the legendary fish into. Back down to the beach, in the hopes to get this pan fossil, it was a no-go on the beach. And it was the usual story here, back to Ginger Island in the hopes to get it one of the bone nodes, but it wasn't happening. Back to the dungeon to see if I can get more schematics. I got dragon scale boots, but I already had those, so they were no good. I was pulling up more crab pots in the hopes to get more fishing skills. I spent the rest of the day pulling up lava eels, 1574 gold per lava eel. I was now getting gold star diamonds from these crystallariums. These are worth a ton of money, 1125 gold for each diamond. That means crystallariums are now extremely overpowered. Fished up the Iridium Crobus today because I wanted to give that to my good buddy Crobus to make him feel more at home. And we're cutting down more trees in the desert and we're looking for artifact spots at the same time. Crobus finally moved into the house. We're going to accumulate friendship points with him in the hopes to get a star drop. Golden relics are super common in the desert. I never knew that, but I know it now. They are so common. But I needed the Pam fossil. It was time to do the volcano dungeon all over again in the hopes to get more schematics. And I finally got one. A schematic finally popped up. I can give that into Clint straight away to see what kind of weapon would unlock that I could make. So we're collecting winter forageables now in the hopes to get lots of foraging skill ups again. I really wanted to get foraging up to the skill of 20 and max it out. I did the fishing event as well today. Now because I won the prizes last year, I just get 2000 gold for the event this year. I don't get the prizes that I got from last year. Level 10 foraging, this time we're going with tapper. Tappers are cheaper to craft and they will generate syrups 25% faster, not too shabby. Krobus tried to make human food today and boy did he do a great job. He made me a lucky lunch. Thanks a million Krobus, buddies for life. Let's give a good bro hug. Let's have a quick look at our ginger island farm right now. It's filled up to the top with ancient fruit. Also, we have a greenhouse filled up with ancient fruit. So, primarily now we're looking at ancient fruit wines to make money. We don't really need a whole lot of money at the moment, but it would be nice to purchase a few more items just before we get perfection. There's still a lot of expensive items left in the game that we can get our hands on. I made more crystallariums so I can get more lovely diamonds to sell to make even more money. 
and I'm also going to go to Robin here now. I'm going to get another fish pond to put another legendary fish into. We're going to go to Clint, and we are going to get him to make a dwarven dagger. To make the dagger, I needed three dwarven metals. Fortunately, I have tons of these from Dune Volcano runs over the past year and a half. The dagger itself didn't look too impressive, but it did have a very unique effect. Not unique, but weird. It had a knockback of 100%, so this dagger could potentially send enemies flying. I finally had all of the monster hunter eradication done, so I clicked on Gil there, got all my lovely rewards, including the crab shell ring, the vampire ring, the slime charmer ring, and the savage ring. They're all magnificent rings, and there's so many great combinations you can do with those. Because I had over 2 million gold, I decided to treat myself to a return scepter. This means I can teleport back to my farm anytime I wanted. This combined with my 4 warp obelisks, I can now get to most parts in the game within seconds. I'm just going to speed up some time here now just to show all of the lovely fruit trees that I got to harvest. And all that fruit becoming super handy later on when it comes to making recipes. Back to the desert and we're horn up more golden relics. And it was now time to get all of our lovely accumulated golden eggs. There was must have been well over a thousand golden eggs. So I'm going to sell all this along with other bits and bobs that our lovely barn animals had accumulated. Including the rabbit foots because we didn't need to befriend villagers anymore. I made an absolute ton of money today. I also got the lava katana from an enemy inside the volcano dungeon. This is another super rare weapon because of Margomide. The lava katana has a special effect where it can burn enemies upon strike. I got the Dwarven Dagger back off Clint today. I decided not to use it though, but I would keep it around just to kind of add it to my weapons collection. I did have a really cool weapons collection at the moment, filled up to the top with rare, unique and powerful weapons. It was time to do another key quest. I just selected the one that needed four prismatic shards, because that's the easiest one for me right now, because I have so many prismatic shards. The rest of the day was spent just cutting down trees to get my forge skill up. Look at all of the lovely forgeables now. These are all winter forgeables, of course. And I'm hoping it will be enough to max out my lovely foraging before spring comes into play. I spent the rest of the day putting down new wild foraging seeds. And then went back up to Ginger Island to get the rest of the ancient fruit wine to sell to make huge profits. I'm going to select Key's Hungry Challenge. The reward is 25 key gems. And I'm attempting to get this pan fast. It's just not dropping. I keep getting golden relics. The night market was available, so I decided to pick up a few paintings because these are actually quite rare. You can only get them really at this event. The rest of the day was spent just getting more wines. So this is the last day of the challenge and we're going to spend it by doing a Scout Cavern run. As we can see, I'm getting great luck here with the Wapjack. All sorts of stuff are dropping for me. I also got some really nice treasures here too out of the chests. The red slime egg would sell for lots and lots of money. And because I made a flash for 100, that was more key gems for me. I kept going until the night market became available. When it did, I quickly ran down to get another painting because I didn't want to miss out on the paintings. So I got 1000 years from now painting and I hanged it up inside the house. At the end of the challenge, I finally got level 15 mining. I mean, it was a no-brainer to select miner. Not plus one, but plus two ores per vein. That was a game changer. It is back to the desert, trying to get this last artifact. I got the golden mask there, but I already had that one. But it was pretty cool to get the golden mask again, because it can be quite rare. I also got the elvish jewelry, but I also had that one as well. I picked up the three trees. There's a tongue twister for you. Off the famous Lupini himself, and the next day, Krobus gives us one of the final star drops we need. One step closer to perfection. Just needed one more star drop. It finally happened. On the 18th of winter, year number two, we finally got the Pan Fossil. That completes Gunther's big side quest. All of the minerals have been found and all of the artifacts have been found. It was time to donate the last few pieces into Gunther to get those lovely rewards. With all of the artifacts donated, we can now pick up the very last star drop that we needed in order to obtain perfection. There was also a magic rock candy he had inside there as well. I don't know how long he had that for, but I picked it up straight away. There's always a use for the magic rock candy. It was then straight back down into Skull Cavern. But we didn't come here to get precious minerals and iridium ores. We came here to slay monsters. For the sole purpose of increasing our combat skill up to level 20 as quickly as possible. We got it to level 10 again, so we're going to select Desperado now. 
we're not going to really use that though because I just don't use slingshots period when it comes to playing this game. I just put the glacier fish into a fishing pond there and it was time to get the workbench off Robin. This means I can craft all items now with ease because I can attach loads of chests to this workbench. I had all recipes gathered so I could craft every item now in the game. I also had an absolute mountain of minerals and resources from all of the mine runs I've been doing and the adventuring that I've been doing around Stardew Valley. I could craft all of the items in the game, no problem at all. Once all the items are crafted, I got the craft master achievement. I was one step closer to obtaining perfection. There was just a few things left to do, but before that, I wanted to try to max out all of my professions, get every single one up to level 20, just to make the most out of the Marigold mod. So, with that in mind, it was time to plant tons of winter wild seeds. I also purchased a statue of Endless Fortune here for a million gold, and I got it because I could simply afford it. I didn't really need to buy anything else with all the money I had. I was just waiting now to learn the rest of the cooking recipes and to max out my professions. It was time to go back to Robin again and get another fish pond because I wanted to put another legendary fish into that one. The rest of the day was just spent fishing to try to get my fishing skill up to 20. I really wanted to fast track my fishing skill, so I spent the rest of my money on crab pots. I purchased over 670 crab pots off Willy. I'm after making Willy's day. Willy is now an extremely rich fisherman. I spent the whole day putting down these crab pots. It took literally the whole day to do it, but it's going to pay off because I can loot these every single day to get tons of fishing XP without actually fishing. The Statue of Endless Fortune is a magnificent tool in this game to very easily accumulate friendship points because it will generate a loved gift for whoever its birthday is on the day. But today is Leah's birthday, so we get a salad. I got level 15 fishing and of course I'm going to choose Fisher. Bait is three times more effective when fishing. This means that when I cast into the water just like this, I get a bite within seconds. And because I've played solo mode, the game time freezes during the fishing minigame. This means I can pull up a huge amount of fish every single day. I can now make a fortune from fishing. Unfortunately, it is the end of the challenge, so there isn't much point to the whole day fishing. But I was just curious to see how much fish I could pull up today if I keep casting into water. And I do get literally hundreds of fish by doing it. It was just absolutely amazing pork. It was almost like using cheats. I got a dinosaur egg as well. I did have plenty of dinosaur eggs, but it's always nice to show that because a dinosaur egg is super rare. It was Christmas. I gave Linus a winter route. And I also got some eggs here off Mary. I was actually really happy with those 12 eggs because I actually needed those for a lot of the cooking recipes. It was now time to pick up more forage rules on our lovely Margot farm. I got level 15 foraging. I had a choice now from Lumberjack upgraded. 40% more wood, but I went with Forager. 40% chance for double yield of foraged items. That is absolutely overpowered. I got level 20 fishing. Now I had a choice here. Aquarius, I could increase the capacity of fish funds by 4, but I went with Angler. Fish are again, note that keyword again, 0.5% more valuable for every unique max sized species caught. And I had a lot of perfect catch fish in my fishing collection. So I was now going to get a lot of money from selling my fish. It was also incredibly easy to pull up hundreds of fish as well on a daily basis. I was now the ultimate fisherman. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day just going into the Scott Caverns, wiping up monsters, trying to get my combat skill off. There's no other way around it. I did take a monster musk to dramatically decrease the spawn rate of monsters. The more monsters that spawned, the faster I was going to level up my combat. And I got loads of cool items off these monsters as well, such as pearls, coffins, the Wapajack Injack was just creating chaos inside of the Skull Caverns, transforming monsters into different things all together. Two years have now passed in Stardew Valley and the lovely Grandpa has visited me and he is so proud of my achievements. He is now going to give me a lovely statue of perfection. And that statue is going to generate iridium ores every single day, which is really nice. We're then going straight back into Rabbit. We're getting another fish pond now, because the more of these fish ponds I have, the more legendary fish I can put into them. And it would be really nice to get a farm filled up to the top of fish ponds with loads of different legendary fish. So it was time to reforge our lovely Ginger Island farm. And I was putting forage down here, just so I could 
fast track my foragers to get up to 20. These were all winter foraging seeds. Then it was straight back down into the skull cavern, slain monsters, and tried to max out my combat skill. At the end of the day, I got level 50 in combat. It was time to power up some perks. I wasn't going to go with Rascal because I wasn't using the slingshot. The fighter was a no-brainer. From 10% to 15% damage output, I selected that straight away. I also got level 20 mining. The Spiloku was pretty cool. Restores some health and energy with every mine level. But I went with Prospector. That was totally overpowered, game-breaking perk. Time freezes during Prospector hunts. That means any floor I get and the Prospector skill activates, time goes still. That means I could get every single resource on those floors without spending a single in-game second. Totally overpowered the perk altogether. The next day it was just spent primarily foraging, picking up foragables, getting up my foraging skill. The next day, to my great surprise, these diamonds weren't gold star diamonds anymore, they were iridium star diamonds. Each one sold for 1500 gold. That is just absolutely amazing. It was also time to throw more legendary fish into these lovely fish ponds. So I now have all the fish ponds filled up with all the legendary fish. Five of them in total, so I was really happy about that. I then went to the volcano dungeon. I was trying so hard to get another dwarven blueprint to give to Clint, but luck just wasn't on my side. All of the forageables were finally ready to be collected on our ginger island farm. So I'm going to pick up all these now in the hopes to max out my foraging skill. I didn't max it out today, but I got very close. So I'm just going to make more winter wild seeds, put those back on the ginger island farm and rinse and repeat until my foraging skill is maxed out. So this is probably the best way to go about it. Back into the volcano, I got the deluxe pirate hat. That is actually a very rare item to get, but I just really wanted another dwarven schematic. Didn't look like I was going to get one though, unfortunately. The next day, it was back in the Skull Cavern to try to finish off my combat. So I was just spending more slime today and anything in between. But I also got some really cool items too from these enemies. I got things like prismatic shards, diamonds, but I also got weird items as well, such as weeds and blocks and things that you normally can't get in the game because of the weapon jack enchant. But I also got another item here called an elder wood. Now I imagine this item somewhat relates to the forge ability that Clint has. So I'm wondering now, is that item needed to make some sort of a, a dwarvish or a dragon or some sort of a, another weapon that we just haven't come across yet in Stardew Valley? I finally got level 20 combat. Happy days. I had a choice now between brute and bushwhacker upgrades. I was going to go with brute. Rage also grants attack speed. That was an absolute no-brainer right there. I was going to pick the Brute Enchant. This will dramatically increase my offensive capabilities. God bless any sort of monster I come up against in the future that won't stand a chance. I also got rid of all of the ancient fruit of my greenhouse. And I replaced it with winter forageables. Once all the forageables had been collected, it was enough to to put down all of the trees that got fully grown. It was then back into the volcano for another go at the chests to see if we could get some sort of a blueprint. But it was a no-go. It was another ostrich egg. I had about 10 of those now at the moment. It was finally time to craft all the cooking recipes in the game. And I have actually crafted most of them. All that was left was the lucky lunch. And I got the gourmet chef achievement there. So I now technically had perfection achieved in the game. Which was really nice. And here is just a few screens here of all of the recipes that I made and sold. Just to show you what some of the recipes actually go for. Pizza, surprisingly enough. It's for 300 gold a pop, which is pretty cool. Cheese cauliflower. It's for 300 gold a pop as well, which was nice. The fiddlehead risotto is a very nice recipe. 350 gold. The fruit salad. 450 gold. The tropical curry. 500 gold. So there are some really nice recipes that you can get your hands on in this game and that you can sell to make some pretty nice profits. So I just maxed out my foraging skill now today. I was really happy about that. All my skills are now level 20. It did take an absolute huge amount of grinding because these skills had to be reforged so many times. Each skill had to be reforged four times so I could unlock all of the perks in each profession. But it was definitely worth it. It was now time to ascend up to the summit to look at the lovely achievement of perfection we've gotten on this game. It was an absolute magnificent journey playing through the Marigo mod, it overhauled so many in-game mechanics, it felt like playing a whole new game and I got really excited 
enjoyed certain aspects of the game, especially with the professions. It did take me a while to figure out some of the things with the Marigo mod, and I won't lie to you, occasionally I did have to go into GitHub and I had to look at the notes to find out what to do with some of the new mechanics of the game, especially when it comes to hitting some of the Iridium Galaxy weapons, or when it comes to completing some of the quests, I had to go and find help. <laughs> So a lot of people have been wondering, are the straw portraits part of the Marigold mod? They are not. They are a separate mod and all mods are in the description of this video. Now we're coming to the end of this video, but we're not totally finished just yet. There are a few more things I want to do before I actually wrap this video up. So I'm just going to show a little bit of the end side here when you get perfection. Basically, it just goes through a huge film like this where it shows you more or less every single thing inside Stardew Valley, from the fish to the artifacts and everything in between. So when I got to level 20 foraging, I had a choice between scavenger and ecologist. Scavenger was a no-brainer. Time freezes during scavenger hunts. That is absolutely insane. That means if you go into any sort of location in Stardew Valley, and there's a scavenger on, time won't move. So we picked up our lovely statue of true perfection, and there is the perfection tracker. 100% everything shipped, all the ablets, the gold clock, monster slayer hero, good friends with everyone, max out the farming level, all the golden walnuts, all the recipes crafted, all the cooking recipes made, what an achievement indeed. I also spoke to a monkey here at the summit of the volcano and he gave me a special mask, it's such a funny mask, the concerned ape mask. And it's not really a mask I wear, but you know what, because of the occasion, I said, let's just throw it on and have a bit of fun. So we're finally at the end of our video. If you've enjoyed this movie, I would really appreciate if you could like the video. It really helps me out because the algorithm will recommend this video to more people based on likes. I hope you all have a great day. And make sure to watch my other 100 day Stardew Valley challenges and also my Stardew Valley movies. My channel is packed up to the top with those, so if you like long form content, you'll absolutely love my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a magnificent day and a magnificent week. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley and made millions. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another 100 days Stardew Valley challenge. The challenge for this video is simple, to make as much money as possible. Let's check out the goals we would like to achieve in this video. The first goal is to obtain the gold clock. And the second goal is to obtain all four warp obelisks. So let's jump straight into this video. And let's have some fun. I'd love to become a full-time YouTuber and release big videos like this every week. You can help by subscribing to my channel and liking my videos. Thanks. Huge thanks to my channel members. Thanks so much for supporting me, everyone. Day number one. Strap yourselves in and prepare to be amazed by some of the best money-making tactics you will ever see. Let's see how much money we can make by the end of the first year. Despite the fact that this video is a 100 day style video, I'll be playing through one whole year of this game. So the first day starts as per usual with cutting down trees, making a chest, searching the grounds for forageables, and of course, giving an artifact to Gunther for that extra 250 gold. We're then gonna spend all our money on parsnip seeds here from Pierre, and we're gonna plant those straight back into the farm. For the rest of the day, once everything is planted, we're gonna cut down some trees in the hopes to increase our foraging skill as quickly as possible. Level 1 foraging means we can now make wild spring seeds. They're going to come in super handy later on for tea saplings. We will be absolutely abusing those in spring. So I'm going to make 20 more wild seeds today. I'm going to hoe up the ground, plant those, and we're going to try to befriend Caroline now as quickly as possible to get her to two hearts. We're also going to go to Willy, but we're going to get the training rod today. We're going to use this to increase the odds of getting perfect catches on fish to dramatically increase our fishing skill as quickly as possible. What we want here is a fishing skill of two, so we can purchase a fiberglass rod off Willy, which yields much better loot when it comes to the treasure chests that you can get from fishing. The lake area is a fantastic spot to fish, so we're gonna spend the rest of the day up here pulling up as much fish as we can. The next day is a rainy day, of course, so we are gonna be prioritizing catfish. 
The catfish is a very difficult catch, especially with a low fishing level, but there are things you can do to make it a bit easier. Trout soup off Willy is a good strategy to use as well. Speaking of which, we're now going to buy a trout soup off Willy, along with a fiberglass rod. I just have about enough money to get both items. The rest of the money will be spent on bait to increase fishing bite rate. The more fish we can get, the more money we're going to make. The current strategy of spring is to get enough money to buy strawberries. We're also going to go to Georgia route because we want to fill up a greenhouse with strawberries in spring. Level 5 fishing, of course, we're going to get the fisher perk. Fish worth more money. I'm also going to go to pier today and purchase kale. It's a magnificent crop that has really good profit margins. I got very lucky today and now I did some more fishing. I pulled up a diamond and a jade ring. Critical strike power increased by 10%. The next day we have another rainy day. So the first thing we're going to do is pull up all of these parsnips. We're going to sell those. Then it's back to fishing again for catfish. I got super lucky today and I managed to pull up an iridium band. This is one of the best rings you can get in the game. Especially early to mid tier. There are rings in my opinion better than this. But it all comes down to what kind of combat build you're going for. In terms of general utility rings, the Iridium Band is a lovely piece of jewellery indeed. So for the rest of the day, we are going to be pulling up catfish. And anything in between comes our way, we'll nab that too and sell it. So at the end of the day, we get level 1 farming. What's great here now is the proficiencies. The more proficient we get with the tool, the less energy we use while using that tool. I also got level 2 farming, I can make regular sprinklers. We're not going to bother with those, we're going to save the resources for quality sprinklers later. So we're gifting Caroline here daffodils. Now we can gift her twice per week, but we can talk to her every single day. And we get some extra bonus friendship points for talking to her every single day. And those extra points will add up, especially when it comes to pushing her to two hearts as quickly as possible. Now sometimes I might wait until the end of the week to give her the second daffodil, in the hopes to get a silver or gold star quality daffodil so I get more friendship points. I also picked up a backpack upgrade today because I had some money. That means more inventory slots for me. With the money I had left over, I decided to purchase more crops. So we're going to get more kale now today. We're going to get a total of 133 pieces of kale. That does mean a lot of watering for me, but that will pay off significantly in a couple of days when I get to sell all that kale for huge profits. And this is going to be the general tactic in spring. We're going to be doing a lot of fishing, a lot of farming, and the yeah, odd dodgy crawl here and there, just to get down to the lower sections so we can get that lovely iron and gold ores to make quality sprinklers. But the big resource that's going to really change the game up for us later on, believe it or not, will be copper. But we'll come back to that later on in the video. Level 1 mining, we can now make cherry bombs. They will come in very handy later on. We're also going to start donating items to Gunther. I was lucky enough to pick up an ancient seed here. To get one this early in spring is extremely lucky. This ancient seed will grow into an ancient fruit, and we can use seed makers later on to replicate those to make giant ancient fruit farms. Level 10 in the mines, we get the leather boots, and we're going to put them on this time because we're not doing the vegan challenge. <laughs> make sure to check out my 100 day vegan video if you haven't watched it yet. It is quite the blast to watch. Level 1 combat at the end of the day. The next day, my first batch of forgeables have fully grown. I'm going to harvest all these forgeables and I'm going to turn them all into the community center to get back 30 free spring seeds. I'm going to plant those back in the farm and we're going to rinse and repeat that method until we have hundreds and hundreds of spring forgeables at the end of the season. I managed to get a wood club today inside of a crate. This is a magnificent weapon to start the cave crawling with. It is an AoE weapon. It can make quick work of most of the enemies in the regular mines, including the enemies on the lower levels. The next day, it was time to harvest our first batch of kale. Not only does kale sell for lots of money, it also yields tons of farming XP, and we wanted to push our farming skill to 6 as quickly as possible. Back into the mines, we're now on the dark floors. Because we have the Iridium Band, we have that lovely glow, making this floor much easier than what it normally is. It was time to craft a bug stick because my energy was really low, and I was on floor 33. But I got really lucky, I killed a fly, that unlocked the ladder, I was able to get down to floor 35 and get that lovely checkpoint before the day came to an end. The next day, we were visited by none other than Demetrius. He gives us an option here between a bat and a mushroom cave. We're going to go with the mushrooms, because we can harvest these mushrooms every single day. And these mushrooms can be really good for health and energy, 
we can also sell them too if we need extra bits of money. For the rest of the day, I spent it fishing because today was the 11th and the strawberry event was coming up very soon, so I wanted to get a lot more money together to purchase on strawberries. I got very lucky with some of the chests, got an emerald ring and a diamond. That diamond will be sold because it's 750 gold that I can actually use. Later on, I can donate it to Gunther and even trade them in for triple shot expressos. But for now, anything like that will be sold for money. So we're harvesting kale and it's a rainy day, which is great. I can spend the entirety of today fishing up more catfish. I got level five farming at the end of the day, thanks to that lovely kale harvest. I'm gonna go with Tiller. Crops were 10% more, that's a no brainer right there. I also got level six farming. I can now make quality sprinklers. But in order to craft them, I need iron and gold bars, so I had to make more progress in the mines. I'm at almost 22,000 gold today, primarily from setting the kale, and I got some fish and minerals in there as well, so it was a very good day in terms of money making. The next day, I purchased 108 strawberries off Pierre. I could have purchased more. The reason why I only purchased this amount is because I'm going to get a greenhouse and fill it up with those strawberry seeds. I also won the straw hat, of course, so that's going to be a whole new look for my farmer. The next day, we're going to start with our daily ritual. We're going to our mushroom cave to collect all our lovely mushrooms. We're then going to spam the entirety of the map looking for fiber and other bits and bobs on the ground such as forage bills. I also got a salmon dinner out of a bin here just outside Gus's. Now that is a loved gift for Alex, but I'm going to sell that because I need the money. I also got George membership today off Morris. It cost 5,000 gold. But to George your route is the way to go if you want to make millions of gold in your first year. I also gave Robin her last axe. 250 gold in the bag. I also visited Marlin today and I sold him rings and weapons that I didn't need just to get that extra bit of money. There's no point having weapons and rings in your chest if you're never going to use them. You might as well have sell them to Marlin. The rest of the day was spent fishing. I was getting bullheads, carp, chubs and the occasional largemouth bass which is actually a pretty nice profitable fish so i finally made it into caroline's sunroom it doesn't really matter what response you give her there she'll still give you the recipe for the tea sapling so the rest of the day i spent literally going through the whole farm trying to get as much fiber as possible because one of the main resources you need to make tea saplings is fiber so the next day i finally get the tea sapling recipe now it is time to bring on the money. But first, I'm gonna harvest all of these lovely spring forage bills. So I'm gonna turn some of these spring forage bills back into spring wild seeds. I'm gonna plant those back in the ground. Others will be converted into tea saplings. I made 85 tea saplings in total. I'm gonna to sell all those to Pierre, bringing me up to 74,000 gold. With all that money, I decided to take the final backpack upgrade right here and now, so I wouldn't have to worry about that later. I then go to visit Morris, and I am going to get the greenhouse. 35,000 gold for the unlock, it is absolutely worth it. We can fill this beautiful building up with strawberries. We're gonna visit Clint, it's time to upgrade some tools. We're gonna to start with the pickaxe, of course. Getting a copper pickaxe will mean that I can make it down to the floor 120 without too much hassle. Then we sent back to Pierre. I could have bought hundreds of kale, but I had to factor in time and energy, so I just bought a hundred off him. Right now, we don't want to spend the whole day just watering crops. The rest of the day was spent fishing, and the reason why I'm fishing so much right now is because I'm trying to get level 10 before spring ends, so if I'm lucky enough, I might get a crack off the legend and catch that. That is worth a huge amount of money. So this is our greenhouse, filled up with strawberry seeds. I left spots there for sprinklers later. It was another rainy day today. I'm getting very lucky with rainy days, actually. And I spent the whole day pulling up as much catfish as possible. I also visited Morris today. It was time for another upgrade. Now I had 23,000 gold, so the only real choice there was the minecarts, and I went for the minecarts straight away. The bridge or the bus would have been nice, but I needed more money. But the minecarts mean fast traveling, and that means I can get around the map much faster, and that's a great time saver. So because I unlocked the greenhouse, Evelyn gives me the garden pot. That's a game changer right there. We get our lovely copper pickaxe off Clint, it's time to upgrade another tool. This time we're going to go with the axe upgrade. The more we upgrade our axe, the less swings it's going to take to cut down trees. We also need to now focus in on hardwood collection. So getting that axe upgraded to a steel axe as quickly as possible is definitely the way to go in terms of general progression on this farm. So it's back down into the mines and I got really lucky here with a huge cluster 
of iron ores. I'm gonna harvest all these, make my way down to the next floor. I'm trying to get down to the gold ores now as quickly as I can. All of these dust sprites were a miracle in disguise, as they all have a chance to drop coffee beans, but they also drop coal, and hundreds and thousands of coal will be needed if we're going to make millions and millions of gold by the end of this challenge. So we're still using the wood club. We haven't got a better weapon yet, but the wood club is holding its own. These are mid-tier blue slimes that have a lot of HP, but the wood club does them in just a few swings easy enough. Got it down to a spiral floor here, floor 59. I do manage to make it to floor 60, but it did take a great amount of time. I also got a diamond today, which is great. We made it down to floor 80 and picked up the firewalker boots. Now, I'm skipping most of the floors that I go down because nothing really great happened. I will show floor 81 here though, as this is going to be a farming floor that we will be using for a lot of days in this challenge. Level 5 mining. Miner is always the way to go with these challenges. The plus 1 ore per vein is a game changer. That means we can smelt more bars to make more items. It was now time to make quality sprinklers, just needed more refined quartz. But I had lots of fire quartz there in the chest so we get processing on those pretty quickly. It was time to have a look at the traveling cart merchant's wares. The merchant sold a rare seed. I bought that now because I could use it now because I had the garden pot. Now you can't put ancient seeds in there, but you can put rare seeds in there. And that means an earlier star job for me later on. So I got my copper axe off Clint today, but we weren't finished with Clint. I had the money, it was time to upgrade another tool. I'm going to go with the steel axe upgrade straight away. That means I'll be able to get into the secret woods as quickly as possible. Got the obsidian edge on floor 90. That is actually a magnificent weapon. And it's probably one of the best weapons you can get before you get your hands on the galaxy weapons. When I made it down to floor 100 here, I got the star job. That's my first one of many. And that increases my maximum energy. Which comes in real handy later on when it comes to watering tons and tons of crops and doing other energy draining activities. Look at all this lovely kale I got to harvest today. I'm going to make 16 quality sprinklers, put those down in the greenhouse. Our greenhouse is now more or less fully automated. All we have to do is come in here every four days and collect our huge harvest of strawberries. We're now on floor 110. We got the space boots. Now these are the best boots you can get before you get into Scott Caverns and before you get over to Ginger Island. But we will get much better boots later on in the video. <laughs> this is just the start of our lovely armor adventures. So we're now down to floor 118. We're going to get down to floor 120 today. We're going to get the skull key. We can now do skull cavern runs with this. But the first thing we have to do is unlock the bus. And that means we need money. Now we get level 5 combat here. We're going to go with fighter. All attacks do 10% more damage. Combine that with our iridium band. And our attacks now deal a bonus 20% extra damage. So this now is going to be one of the last harvests we're going to do with Spring Forage Bros. Because 23rd now of spring, we're getting into summer quite soon. So I'm at 170 Spring Wild Seeds right there. More will follow, of course. So I'm going to purchase just 100 parsnips today. Because they only take 4 days to grow. And I want one last batch of crops before summer hit. Just to make some extra profit. I got the steel axe off Clint. Super happy with that. I'm always super happy with Clint, aren't I? <laughs> We're going to go for the steel axe upgrade right now. That would be, in my opinion, the minimum requirement for Scott Cavern. As a steel axe takes the same amount of swings as a gold axe. When you go to the Skull Cavern nodes. Two swings and you clear a node. So we're now going to get rid of all these tree stumps. All of this hardwood is super welcome. We need 200 hardwood to fix the hull on Willy's ship to get to Ginger Island. So it's definitely worth collecting it now. The great thing about the secret woods is that these stumps respawn every single day. Level 5 foraging, we will take gatherer, chance for the double harvest on a foraged item. That's a no-brainer for us when it comes to making money. We went to the flower dance festival today. And we only went there to primarily get the dandelions, the daffodils and the rare crow. It's always worth picking those up because you can make a lot more spring wild seeds. All you need are two other forageables and you can just go to town and more tea saplings. It is now time for a new flower dance queen. I was going to take Hades crown and become the new ultimate flower dancer. Just look at my character go. Nobody could keep up with my mad farmer skills. Look at our lovely batch of strawberries. This will be the first of many harvests. And the great thing about this batch is that if we ever need some change every couple of days, we can always rely on the strawberries. 
especially when it comes to tool upgrades or when it comes to purchasing bursts of crops here and there. They also help with community development projects. So we're going to go with the bus today, 40,000 gold. But the sooner we get that unlocked, the better, because we can do Skull Cavern runs. The rest of the day was spent fishing, because I needed money to get some prep done. The first thing I needed was healable food from Gus, so I could survive in the Skull Cavern. Now, I only went with 30 salads today, but that would be enough for the first run. We weren't going to get super deep with limited resources. It was sent back to fishing again. Emeralds, and geodes, things like that would now be saved. I would have to start giving things to Gunther. I need to start thinking about getting access to the sores now as quickly as possible so I get my hands in that statue of uncertainty. So it was time to go to the desert trader today to get some triple shot espressos and spicy eels. It was then time for skull cavern runs. Gold ores, iron ores, iridium ores were all on the table for us. All ores would be smelted and used for the purpose of making money. If they weren't sold directly, they'd be used to make resources and machines and they would make more money. So I received a lucky ring today, and I could not believe it when it happened. This is the rarest ring in the game. It gives a permanent plus one to luck, as long as you have that ring equipped it. It is one of the most overpowered rings in the game. The luck factor in Stardew Valley can greatly determine the success of a run. Getting a lucky ring this early will be an absolute game changer. And the luck has started. That is our very first prismatic shard. That can be swapped in for the Galaxy Sword, and that is one of the strongest weapons in the game until, of course, you get to Ginger Island. But for now, we will absolutely take it. The final day of spring, and what a season it was! It's time to collect the last huge batch of spring forageables. All of these will be turned into spring wild seeds, and they will be turned into tea saplings and sold to make even more money. I made a total of 450 spring wild seeds today. What a haul it was! All I needed was wood and fibre to turn those into tea saplings. It was now time to battle the legend fish today. So we're going to come fully prepared for this. We're going to get the iridium rod. We get that so we can hook up trap bobbers to it. This makes fishing much easier in my opinion. Without the trap bobber, some fish are just impossible to catch. I'm also going to get trout soup and bait. Trout soup to increase my fishing skill from 10 to 11 which makes my fishing bar that little much bigger. And we need all the help we can get when it comes to fighting the legend. The legend is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, fish to catch in the game. Some people say the glacier fish is harder. I say they're of equal difficulty. This is the second bout we had with the legend today, and it was easy enough to catch this time. RNG was on our side. Maybe it was the effects of the lucky ring. That was a legend fish in the bag. Gold star with the fishing perks comes in at 11,000. 250 gold so we can sell that today we'll have that in our wallet tomorrow the rest of the day was spent farming floor 81 for fiber and for the general resources if i saw gold ores normally i take those as well if i saw enemies like this i would slay them you never know what you might get so after farming this floor for the whole day it was time to make some tea saplings let's see how much we can make as we see I made over 70 tea saplings, 71 in total, sold all those, also got 10,000 gold from Mr. Key for making the pass for 25 in Skull Cavern. So we had 78,000 gold ready to go for Starfruit. We also had the yield from our lovely greenhouse, so we're going to sell all those strawberries now to Pierre, because we want the gold today. That brings us up to 95,000 gold. We're then going to go to the desert, we're going to swap in our prismatic shard for the galaxy sword which is a magnificent weapon, and it is a weapon we will be using for the rest of the challenge. It does trivialize a lot of enemies in the game. We're then going to visit Sandy, and we're going to spend all of our money on starfruit seeds. If we want to make millions of gold in this challenge, if we want the gold clock and all four warp obelisks, we need thousands upon thousands of starfruit. The tactic for summer was simple, to make as much money as possible and to buy as much starfruit as possible. Secondary goals were making processing machines, of course if we can't process the star fruit, we're not going to make the big money. So we also had to think about setting up tree farms, setting up tappers, making tons and tons of kegs. I'm also going back to the secret woods every single day to get hardwood, I need 200 in total so that when the time comes to fix Willy's ship, I'll have the resources available straight away. I finally got level 7 foraging, that's a game changer, that means I can make tree fertilizer, 
Level 9 farming is an interesting level because you can make Iridium Sprinklers. And that is something we will consider later on in the challenge. But the big gain today was the tree fertilizer. This item is an absolute game changer and it is needed in order to make millions of gold. Because when it comes to making cakes, when it comes to making the big money, it all boils down to the basic resources such as copper, iron, gold and wood of course. So we're farming for 81 again today because the fiber gain that you get from this floor is just amazing and I wanted to make more tree fertilizers and I wanted to make more tea saplings to get more money. So today we're going to use all the fiber to make tree fertilizers and I'm going to make a little tree farm here beside the house and all of these trees are going to be oak trees. They will be equipped with tappers for oak resins. I'm also going to fix the bridge today, just 300 pieces of wood because I wanted access to the summer legendary fish, the crimson fish. This fish will sell for a few thousand gold and we need all the gold we can muster. The rest of the day was spent just primarily fishing as well. Puffer fish do sell for really nice money. I also fished up a sturgeon too, that'll be great for the luau later on, that's one of the best things you can put into the soup. And that was also a gold star sturgeon as well. 15,000 gold made by the end of today, primarily from fishing, which wasn't too shabby at all. Fishing can get a lot more lucrative later on if specific bills are used in specific locations. It was back down to 481 today, we're farming for fibre again. Fibre was needed badly for tree fertilizers and for tea saplings. Right now, tea saplings were probably the best way to make quick bursts of money and I wanted to unlock all of the Georgia bundles as quickly as possible so I can get into Ginger Island and make use of that second farm. That second farm is more or less a giant greenhouse. Selling 95 tea saplings is definitely the way to go to accelerate progression and unlock those Georgia bundles. I also sold other items too that I found on the floor, such as minerals and mushrooms and things like that. Over 60,000 gold was made that day. And here we go again. The strawberries were ready to go. And they will be ready every four days. That's why it's so important to try your best to get the greenhouse set up in spring and to fill it up with a crop that just regrows all the time. So you're just going to make infinite profits. It's time for another community unlock. We're going to go with the bridge. This means we can access the quarry and the resources that lie within. A gold pickaxe upgrade, thank you very much Clint, we'll have that in just a couple of days. And it was back into the secret woods to farm more hardwood and get that forging skill up. So I visited Marilyn today to sell him weapons I didn't need anymore, they were just using up space inside of my chests. So while I was up in this area, I said, you know what, let's just sell him some weapons and make some extra money while we're here. I'm also making a little summer forage patch over there, that will become much bigger as the days and weeks progress. It was time to unlock the last George bundle. We're going to go with Panning. That's all the bundles now unlocked. We can now get access to Willie's ship once we fully repair it, of course. So today we are exploring the Quarry Cave. We get the lovely golden site at the end of this cave, which is a really nice upgrade from that of the regular site. It has a much greater range on it. It does more damage and it has a much greater yield when it comes to collecting resources. So I had some mahogany seeds today. I'm going to plant those. I'm also going to put tree fertilizer on those too so they grow up very quickly because I needed a lot more hardwood to get that hull fixed for Willy. I also got a really nice event here from Georgia. They're going to give me a Georgia machine which generates a free Georgia cola every single day for completing all the Georgia bundles. I picked up an ancient seed off the traveling cart. That was very nice indeed. I'm also going to purchase five rare seeds off the traveling cart merchant as well because I can put those over in Ginger Island and you can get really nice profits from those. I collected my gold pickaxe off Clint today. We're now going to give him another tool to upgrade and this time it's going to be an axe upgrade. We're going to give him the steel axe to be upgraded to a gold axe. I made 47 tappers today. They will be the first of many batches of tappers made. I'm going to put those in all of these trees to start making oak resins so we can start our lovely production on kegs. Starfruit wine is the way to go for making money. The crimson fish isn't the hardest fish in summer. The octopus is the big baddie that you have to watch out for. It is by far one of the hardest fish to catch in the game. It is insanely hard to catch. The super cucumber is difficult, but it's not that hard if you have trap bobbers. A gold star super cucumber sells for over 550 gold. A great money maker when it comes to fishing in summer. Unfortunately, 
They don't pop up until the evening time, but when they do pop up, it's worth fishing them up out of the water and selling them. The next day, it was time for the first batch of summer forage bills. You only need three summer forage bills to make summer wild seeds, grapes, spice berries, and sweet peas. Just three items needed. So we end up with thousands, I mean thousands, of summer wild seeds by the end of the season. This was crazy when you see the amount that we're going to eventually start making. The strawberries have come back again. And when you're playing a challenge like this, it's amazing how quickly the four days comes around. And before you know it, the strawberries are back. You've got between 20 to 35,000 gold in your pocket, ready to spend on whatever you want. Whether it be tool upgrades, like the copper watering can that we're going to get there, or if we need to unlock future bundles, for example, or if we just need money in general to get crops or to buy other resources off the many vendors around Stardew Valley. So we're clearing the quarry of resources today. We're setting up a massive tree farm. We won't be putting tappers on these trees. This is just going to be a wood farm. Now we could buy wood off Robin, but at the moment I needed all the money I could get for a star fruit. Didn't want to waste money on wood. We're doing a Scott Cavern run today. The deeper we can get now, the better. And what we want here now are battery packs for iridium sprinklers. We also want iridium ores for iridium bars, and we can sell those bars for lots of money. Any bonus prismatic shards we get for now will be sold. Because they sell for 2,000 gold apiece, which is really nice. So I got level 9 mine that can make crystallariums. I don't end up making crystallariums. Instead, resources are put towards iridium sprinklers and cakes. So we go to the luau the next day. A gold star sturgeon is probably one of the best things you can put in the soup. We get the best reaction from the governor. And that is going to yield the most friendship points you can get from all of the Stardew Valley NPCs that drink the soup. The next day, we are smelting ores into bars. So we need iron bars. And we also need copper bars and oak resins and wood for kegs. So those resources become very important, especially later on in the video. We get the copper watering can off Clint. Now I got the watering can because I need it for Ginger Island. It's just handy having an upgraded watering can when it comes to transversing the volcano dungeon. You know, it's much handier than that of a regular watering can. I fixed the boat by giving Iridium Bars battery packs and hardwood. We're then going to go to Clint and we're going to get him to break open all these geodes because I wanted to get the key to the sores so I could get access to Krobus and get access to his wares and so that I could also get access to the Statue of Uncertainty. We also needed a sore key in order to get the magical ink so we could access the wizard's terminal so we could actually get the go clock. That's if we get the gold clock by the end of this video. It is going to be very hard to accumulate 10 million gold to buy a gold clock. And to do that in year one sounds impossible, but we have got some very good strategies. So that's just a cool scene there of Willy and Robin fixing up the boat. That means we can have access to Ginger Island. Before we go anywhere though, we're going to harvest our strawberries, smelt iridium ores into bars, and we're going to upgrade our hoe to a copper hoe. Now that hoe is being upgraded for a very specific reason. And you'll find out very soon why we're upgrading the hoe. This challenge would be nigh impossible to do without an upgraded hoe. 1000 gold for a ticket to Ginger Island is quite expensive. But it's worth it. And it is necessary. If we want to get the most out of this one year challenge. We need to use the farm on Ginger Island. The great thing about the Ginger Island farm is that you can plant any crop on the farm regardless of what season it is. Think of it as a giant greenhouse farm. To make progression in Ginger Island, we need to find golden walnuts. These are used to unlock areas in Ginger Island. So the more walnuts we find, the more areas we can unlock, the more of the island we can explore, the more resources we can get our hands on. The Volcano Dungeon is a dungeon you can do every single day in Stardew Valley. It resets every day and it has new chests, new prizes, the enemies respawn. It's a great place to farm when it comes to farming for resources such as stone, copper, gold, pieces of iridium, and of course, cinder shards, which we need to enchant gear and weapons. So the big turtle has been felled by the vicious, vicious parrots. I don't care what people say, those parrots are vicious. But that's just my opinion. It was time to clear all of the resources now on that Ginger Island farm to get it prepped for crops. Level 10 farming. We're going to go with agriculturist. Crops grow 10% faster. We can always swap over to artisan 
when it's time to sell artisan goods. The 10% growth rate is too good to pass up now, especially this early in the challenge. So we're going to get our first batch of starfruit today. None of that will be sold directly. That will all be processed with cakes. Time to make our first batch of cakes as well. 40 cakes in total. So if I keep up with the resources, I can now make 40 cakes every few days once those oak resins become available. That is not enough to make over 10 million gold and to get those lovely items. We will need thousands of cakes for this challenge to actually be completed. So I'm buying more starfruit now of Sandy today with the money that I have accumulated. That's going to go right back into the Stardew Valley farm. But I'm also going to get starfruit and put it over on the Ginger Island farm also. And the great thing about the Ginger Island farm is that we can grow starfruit on that for the whole year. So the earlier you unlock that farm, the better. Fishing around the sea area here in summer is actually very profitable. When it comes to fishing in summer, the sea area is by far the most profitable area. I also buy more starfruit seeds of Sandy today, but they're going over to Ginger Island. This is the South Gembird because it's located at the south part of Ginger Island. So it goes on the south pedestal. And that's how you beat the puzzle. You have to find a total of four gem birds. They only pop up on rainy days. So if you do get a rainy day, it's always worth just transversing Ginger Island. The map isn't actually that big. There's just a few screens in the island. Because I got my hoe back, I could now hoe up all of the golden walnuts I missed the first time I got here. I needed 20 golden walnuts in total to unlock the house so I could stay on Ginger Island every single day. If I don't get that house upgraded, passing out will start you over back on Stardew Valley. So you have to pay a thousand gold again to Willy to get back over to Ginger Island. I didn't really need the house at the moment. I could still grow crops on the farm. I just couldn't sleep over on the island. But we'll fix that now in the next few days. It was time to do some more work on our primary farm. So I planted more summer forageables. Made some tea saplings, sold those, and I finally had enough golden walnuts to fix up the house on Ginger Island. It was now time for another dungeon volcano run. And you can get a total of 5 golden walnuts from mining in the volcano. You can get 5 from combat, you can get 5 from the chests. And there's a few other bits and pieces of ones hanging out of trees and whatnot. You also get a free prismatic shard when you make it up to floor 10 for the very first time, which is nice. We're going to use that now to enchant our weapon here. What we get here now is Haymaker, and this is a blessing in disguise, because when it comes to farming fibre, Haymaker will see to it that our fibre gains are increased. So using Haymaker on a weapon and farming floor 81 in the regular mines is a great way to get yourself hundreds and hundreds of fibre. We also freed Professor Snail so we could have a go at these archaeology quests, and we needed to do those in order to get over 100 golden walnuts to get into Key's secret walnut room. So there's two freebie quests he gives you here, and it's just the island survey report, and it's the same answer every single time you start up a save file. So if you're not too sure on how many flowers or starfish they are, just give it a Google, and you'll find out straight away. So we're hunting for more golden walnuts now today, and I managed to get enough to unlock the Ginger Island Trader. And this trader sells some very potent items indeed, including a banana and mango sapling. Now we really needed the banana sapling, especially if we wanted to make the warp obelisk later on. But we also needed a banana to get our hands on more golden walnuts later, so we wanted to unlock that as quickly as possible. The strawberries were ready again, and I decided to move all of my furnaces now from the farm into the main hub area here of the mines. There's just a lot more space when it comes to smelting stuff. I'm now farming floor 81 of the mines again, but this time I have the Haymaker enchant, so I'm getting a lot more fibre now per floor than I used to get before. I also get hay, which is useless to me, and the hay doesn't sell for anything, so I just discard the hay every day. No worries there. I made more tree fertiliser. I'm going to fertilise all these trees now in the quarry so they all fully grow up in the next few days. Then I get to cut all those down to get thousands of wood. We're back down into the regular mines today. I'm looking for copper. Because I need to make more kegs, I need at least 50 copper bars to keep up with the production of the kegs. I'm also killing dust sprites if I see them because I also need coal to smelt the bars. I find myself struggling with coal now at the moment because I'm smelting so many bars to make kegs. It's constantly smelting bars, gold bars for sprinklers, copper and iron bars for kegs. I did get my sweet gem berry today and I also got battery packs because we had lightning the day before. I can make more iridium sprinklers now with those battery packs. 
I'm going to cut down all these mahogany trees. I don't need the hardwood anymore for the hull fix, but I can use the hardwood for maybe a stables later on. I brought the sweet gem berry to the secret woods. Got my second star drop there. Quite happy with that. It's time to upgrade our hoe now to a steel hoe. We need an upgraded hoe in order to facilitate the planting of thousands and thousands of pumpkins when we get to fall. <laughs> and it is going to be quite insane to see how many pumpkins we buy. And that's just a few days away. So we got more iron ores today. It's time to process our starfruit into starfruit wine. So as we can see, I put all my kegs just outside of the farm there. No NPC goes there, so it's a safe zone. We're doing another Skull Cavern run today because I needed a lot more resources. Skull Cavern is a great place for all of the minerals. So for the copper, the coal, the iron, the gold, the iridium, Skull Cavern is the place to go. We're going to go with Blacksmith. Bars are worth more. Iridium bars now sell for 1,500 gold a pop, which is amazing. 40 more kegs made today. So I'm quite happy with the progression on kegs. But we will have to increase that production line very soon. The strawberries have come back to life. It's time to harvest those. And we're putting more kegs down in the tunnel area here. The tunnel area is not a great place for kegs because no NPCs come here. So you don't have to worry about the NPCs destroying your lovely processing equipment. We're smelting more ores into bars. And we got our lovely steel hoe off Clint. But we're not finished there. He's getting that hoe straight back. We're going to upgrade it to a gold hoe. So it was time to blow away all the trees in the quarry. This is going to get us hundreds upon hundreds of wood, which we need to make cakes. So it's very important to stay on top of these resources, because by the time comes when the tappers are ready to give the oak resins, you want to be able to have the resources at hand to make the cakes straight away. So most of these iridium bars now will be turned into iridium sprinklers, because we still have a lot of farm space left over in the Stardew Valley farm. And iridium sprinklers are the secret to success when it comes to making millions of gold because the more of these sprinklers you put down the more space you have on your farm to plant crops and we want to use up all of the space that this farm has to offer so we're starting our preparations now this is the final week of summer we need to start now to prep the farm properly for pumpkins because we're literally going to be filling up this farm with pumpkins i'm at 610 wild seeds today that is going to make for an absolute huge amount of tea saplings, provided, of course, I have the resources to make it. So again, it's down to wood and fiber to make those. So I'm going to purchase thousands of wheat off beer today. And the reason why I'm getting it today is because I want placeholder land come the start of fall. So I'm going to plant the wheat today in patches that isn't growing starfruit just to get the land ready so I don't have to hoe it up and water it come the start of fall. I can just buy the pumpkin seeds, plant them, and it'll be a lovely, easy first day. So now is the time for preparation. Now is also the time to make more tea saplings. 80 tea saplings in total. That's going to be an extra 40,000 gold right there. We do need a few hundred thousand gold to purchase thousands of pumpkins. I also got my gold hoe, so I'm on the right track now to make the most of fall. It's also time to donate a lot more artifacts to Gunther, because now is the time we kind of want to be getting access to the sores. So we can get our hands on that lovely Statue of Uncertainty and, of course, Crobus. So I spent the rest of the day just planting wheat seeds. Now, it's only the 23rd, but I won't be scything this away until the 1st of fall. I'm just getting this patch set up for fall so I don't have to hoe and water this patch. I'm doing the same with the patches over here. I don't have starfruit grown on them. I'm just going to fill the whole thing up with wheat, get this whole thing set up. It's a lot of work, but it's going to pay off. We will also profit from the wheat. So we're still going to make a lot of money out of it. And the more wheat we put down, the more money we're going to get back. Today we spent putting down a lot more quality sprinklers on the farm. If I had the resources to make a rid of sprinklers, of course I would have put those down. But for now, I didn't have enough battery packs to make those. So quality sprinklers was the way to go. The rest of the day was spent just putting down wheat seeds, filling up the farm with tons and tons of wheat. The next day was another Skull Cavern run, and the reason why you're seeing so many Skull Cavern runs is because I constantly needed resources, especially to keep on top of the keg production, and that would only get harder as time progresses because more tree farms would be made, more oak resins would be produced. The next day was spent processing our lovely starfruit in starfruit wine. More kegs were put down in the tunnel here, and this tunnel will eventually be filled up to the top with kegs. 
more iridium sprinklers were made, thanks to getting battery packs off those lovely bats in the Skull Cavern, more coffee beans were harvested today, and a lot of the wheat was ready to be harvested, but we won't be touching that until the first of fall. So it's now time to go to Clint. He is processing more geodes that we got in the Skull Cavern. Hopefully, the more artifacts we get, the chances will increase of us getting the sword key off Gunther. It's now time to get Robin to make a stable for us. And the reason why I'm building a stable now is so I can get around the map faster to make much better use of my time. It's back to the quarry today. We are going to get rid of all of these nodes. Then we're going to fill up the quarry again with trees. And we're going to blow them all down to get wood a few days from now. So the usual tactics here with the quarry. Now I could turn this into a resin farm. But I decided wood was more valuable at the moment. We're going to finish up summer with the lovely jellyfish event. Just look at the lovely visuals. The next day our prayers were answered. It is now the first of fall. We get the key off Gunther. We can now access the sores. We can get to the lovely statue of uncertainty. But first... We had to clear away the weed from the farm. We also had to buy pumpkin seeds and get those planted. Today was going to be a very busy day. Once all the wheat was cleared up, we're going to harvest our strawberries, sell the strawberries to Pierre, and we're going to purchase thousands upon thousands of pumpkins because we want to fill up the whole farm with pumpkins. Now, the pumpkins aren't half as good as star fruit, but they are one of the best crops you can get when it comes to fall, when it comes to converting them into a processed good, an artisan good, pumpkin juice it's a very nice item to sell now it takes us the whole day to actually plant these pumpkin seeds and we almost got caught for time but we just about did it and we managed to plant all of the seeds by fall the second look at all of the pumpkin seeds now planted on the farm there is a patch here that isn't ready just yet but when that patch becomes available we can put more pumpkins down there as well no problem it's now time for the lovely community quests. So we had a curious substance and we had Gus's famous omelette. We're going to go with the curious substance. We just got the ectoplasm there. It took us the whole day of killing ghosts to get that. It is a rare drop. We can now go to the wizard the next day. Give him the ectoplasm. Friendship points for him. But more importantly, he is going to give us money for completing that quest. So that was basically farming for iron and getting the ectoplasm at the same time. We also go back to Ginger Island and the frog here comes out to inspect our melon. He will also inspect our wheat, giving us 10 golden walnuts in total. Now, he can give up to 15 golden walnuts, but we do not have any garlic for him to inspect. So, for now, we can just get the 10 golden walnuts off him. We do get an extra 5 golden walnuts from farming and farming up crops here. And it's now time to go to the Statue of Uncertainty, pay 10,000 gold, change out our farming profession. So, we're going to turn off Agriculturist. We're going to get artisan because we need to sell some wines because we need to make some money so we can get some more lovely goods. We're also going to do the quest here for the Magical Ink just to get the wizard terminal ready because we're now halfway through the challenge so it's now time to start making some preparations when it comes to the wizard. So that is the Dark Talisman. That would allow us into a new area in the game that we'll go to in a few days. Before we leave the sores, we try our hand at the Mutant Carp, another legendary fish. One of the easier legendary fish to catch. When we catch the mutant carp though, we don't stop there. We are in fall. There is another legendary fish we can catch. And that one is the angler fish. And that is also another easy fish to catch as well. So that's the mutant carp in the bag. That sells for a thousand or two gold. The angler will also sell for a thousand or two gold as well. So bring on the money. Because we have the iridium robber, the trap bobber, level 10 fishing. Most of these fish are quite easy. The big challenge though the glacier fish we get into the winter that is going to be a challenge so we're now respecting our farming profession we're going to take tiller again crops were 10 percent more but this time instead of taking agriculturist we're going to take artisan all artisan goods were 40 percent more this is an absolute must if you want to make millions of gold in your first year especially if you're selling artisan products we're also going to purchase a mill of rub because i want to turn all the wheat that I have into a processed good so I can make more money from it. So I purchased 501 starfruit seeds off Sandy today. I'm also going to get Deluxe Speed Grow. Now that's going to go on over to Ginger Island and because the Ginger Island farm never really changes, the Speed Grow will never go away unless I pickaxe it away, which I won't be doing. This means all future starfruits that I plant on Ginger Island will grow much faster because of the Speed Grow. And the faster that starfruit grows, 
the more wine we can produce. So as Tiny Flask got Cavern Run today, I actually got four quantity sprinklers inside the chest. Now you can get Iridium sprinklers, but you know what? I won't say no to the quantity sprinklers. The more sprinklers I can get, the better. At this moment in time, what I wanted the most was Iridium sprinklers. So when I saw the bats, I used to take the time and kill them in the hopes that they would drop battery packs. Now it is quite a rare drop, but it's always worth giving it a go. Because if you're not in it, you can't win it, folks. <laughs> We're processing more Iridium ores into Iridium bars. Most of those bars now will be sold, unless I get battery packs, of course. So I'm getting more lovely oak resins today. This means I can make more kegs. 40 more kegs. Good to go. Where are we going to put these? We're going to put them in the tunnel, of course. It is now time to get more strawberries. And these strawberries are just a game changer. The guaranteed money every few days, it makes life so much more easier. 546,000 gold in the bag. What are we going to do with that? We are going to buy some pumpkins. The rest of the gold can be saved for starfruit for when the ginger island farm needs to be replenished. So we're going to scythe away all of this wheat here now. And eventually when the mill is built, which it is, we're going to convert all this wheat into wheat flour. And we can even turn that into bread, which will yield even more profits for us. So wheat actually isn't too bad when it comes to making money. It's back to selling now again today. 999 pieces of starfruit seeds. A full stack of starfruit seeds. I mean, it's just so nice to buy a full stack of starfruit like that, especially in the first year of fall, you know, to have the kind of resources to do that. That's why starfruit is just so overpowered. Starfruit wine is just in a league of its own, you know? There's, there isn't really any other artisan good that can beat it. So I blew up all the trees in the quarry. The next day, I'm going to get back all the wheat flour. That wheat flour will be turned into bread. I could sell it now and make a big profit, but I'll make an even greater profit if I cook it into bread. So I need a cooker. I got Robin here to upgrade my house. Then I realized that was a total waste because the Ginger Island house already has a cooker in it. Not to worry though, I can use the extra space in the house for processing machines. So it wasn't all that bad. Clint did another upgrade for us, then it was straight over to Ginger Island to make bread. And I made basically a full stack of bread here, 999 pieces, and I'm going to sell all that now to make loads of money. So I needed one more mineral to complete the gem bird puzzle. I just guessed it, and I got my golden walnuts. So I'm actually a lot closer now to getting 100 golden walnuts. I was also farming these lava dragons here for dragon toots, because I needed five of those to get a banana sapling. And I needed the banana sapling now, if I wanted to get the warp obelisk to Ginger Island. Thankfully, I had enough dragon teeth to make that happen. I also got the mango sapling as well, because I didn't have one. I didn't really need the mango, but I had the resources to get it, so I said, why not? I always went over to the dig site here. I'm going to blow all these nodes up in the hopes to get more bone fragments. Bone fragments would be needed later on for tarot roots, but I also blew up all the nodes in the hopes to get some artifacts for Professor Snail's artifact quest. I just fished up the fossilized spine there, I just needed a few more bits and pieces to get lots of golden walnuts off Professor Snail. The sweet gem berries were ready to be harvested today. I got five in total. As we can see there now, some are worth 3,000, some are worth 3,750, and some are worth 4,500. And an Iridium Star one sells for 6,000, but you need really good fertilizer to get those. I panned up a lucky ring today. Who needs panning with Poxiel when you can just one-shot it with Gamer Gar. <laughs> that is the second lucky ring added to my collection. Two lucky rings in total, one from the Skull Cavern crates and one from panning over on Ginger Island. What great look. I did a volcano dungeon run today, got the mermaid boots, one of the best boots you can get in the game. Plus five defense, plus four immunity. Fantastic boots indeed. I just needed a few more golden walnuts now to get access to key secret walnut room. And those golden walnuts could still be gotten from mining, combat, and opening up the various chests and dwarven crates around the volcano dungeon. I did some ring combinations today, combined a lucky ring with my iridium band, and I also enchanted my gold pickaxe. I was hoping for swift or powerful, but I got efficient, which is probably the least one that I needed. I was hoping for bottomless with watering can, but I also got efficient. Not very happy with that, to be honest. But, not to worry, efficient just means that I won't use up any energy when using the tools. So, how bad could it be? 
It's time for the prismatic jelly quest here now and I spent a whole day trying to find this cursed slime. It eventually popped up, but this slime is not to be underestimated. It packs quite the punch and it has a lot of HP. So if you see it even on the early floors, do not underestimate the slime. It could actually kill you, wasting your whole attempt on trying to find it. It was time to pull up more lovely strawberries. Then we're going to visit the wizard. We're going to give him the prismatic jelly. And he is going to give us 5,000 gold, plus a lovely recipe the next day to say thanks. We get our Iridium Axe off Clint today. Thank you very much, Clint. It's time to upgrade more tools, though. We're going to go with the Iridium Pickaxe this time. So I prioritized the axe over the pickaxe because wood is just more valuable to me than that of the ores. Because I can just primarily use bombs for the ores in Skull Cavern. But I needed the Iridium Axe so I could basically two-shot trees to farm wood much faster. So that's why I decided to upgrade the axe to its maximum potential before the pickaxe. It was time to process more starfruit into starfruit wine. And you're going to see a lot more processing you now, especially come winter when we have hundreds of cakes to work with. So I spent the rest of the day running around Cindersap Forest, cutting down all the trees. Because I had my Iridium axe, it didn't take me that long to cut down all the trees in the forest. The next day I made some more tappers. I'm going to set these up now on all of the trees that I have on the farm. We're also going to go to Pierre. I'm going to set him at this batch of starfruit wines. And the reason why I did that is because I need that 650,000 gold to buy more starfruit to fill up Ginger Island. It was time to change up our professions again with Statue of Uncertainty. I also purchased a star job off Krobus and processing some ancient fruit into ancient fruit seeds just so I could put more down on the Ginger Island. The more ancient fruits I can get now, the better. More gem birds mean more minerals. That's more gold for me. But I spent the whole day cutting down trees because I needed more wood for more cakes. Story of my life, more cakes. Level 10 foraging, we're going to take botanist. All forage was picked up will be of iridium quality. It was now time to harvest all of the pumpkins today. It was going to be an extremely challenging task to harvest all these in just one day. I had to start straight away and it took me the whole day to do it. I actually had to take a speed buff in order for it to... You know, become possible. So I had to take a spicy eel there. I was considering a triple shot espresso, but I managed to do it just fine with the spicy eel. Halfway through my attempt, I had to go to Pierre's and pick up more pumpkin seeds. And this is why I needed all the money as well. This is why I sold that batch of starfruit wine, because I needed to put more pumpkins on the farm. And I needed approximately two and a half thousand pumpkins to fill up the farm with. This time, I had to take the spicy eel and the triple shot espresso to get this done with the time that I had left. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have been possible. This was very stressful, I had to say, but it's gonna be worth it and it is gonna pay off at the end of the challenge. So I got my Iridium pickaxe off Clint today. I then decided to purchase some resources off of him. I decided to purchase coal. Now, coal is very expensive, but I was really struggling when it comes to coal. I didn't want to waste days just farming dust sprites. So I decided to just spend some money and buy half a stack of coal after it. That would keep me going for the rest of the challenge. Definitely. It was then time to process more bars so I could make more cakes. After Ginger Island, we're going to pull up all this lovely starfruit. This will of course be converted into starfruit wine. And then we have to replant the whole of the Ginger Island farm as well. Now when I replanted the farm, I decided to take up all of the quality sprinklers and replace them with Iridium sprinklers since I had some on me. This meant I could now maximize starfruit output on the Ginger Island farm. And this makes most challenges trivial, especially when it comes to money challenges. Because having a huge starfruit greenhouse like this all year round, you know, making money becomes trivial. The only thing that we had to do now is keep up with the starfruit. So we had to keep up with the cakes, keep up with the processing machines. So I got the last artifact needed to complete one of Professor Snail's big fossils. That was going to give me a lot of golden walnuts there. Thanks to Clint for breaking it open out of a golden coconut. So that was six, seven golden walnuts in total, plus an extra banana sapling, which was great. I got the rare mushroom floor in the volcano dungeon. Super happy with this. And you have to watch out when you're on this floor because sometimes some of those mushrooms can be enemies and they can try to attack you. It was time to combine more rings. I had a phoenix ring here and I had a lucky ring. So that was another nice ring combination done. So I was now set up in terms of ring combinations. I also decided to put three rubies into my galaxy sword, dramatically increasing its attack power now to 78 to 104 damage. 
So it was quite the weapon that I had. All I needed now was Galaxy Souls to turn it into an Infinity Blade. I wasn't too sure at this stage of the challenge though if I, if I was going to invest in Galaxy Souls. It would all come down to what kind of quests I'd get in the Key Secret Walnut Room. I did fix up the resort area here now at Ginger Island. I could now access the right hand side of the map which yielded more golden walnuts for me. So you can fish one up here from this pattern here that looks like a star. You can hold one up just to the top right hand side of that star. And you can also get another golden walnut inside here at the bottom right hand of the corner. There's a little dirt patch where you can get a third golden walnut there. It was time now to get some tarot tubers in order for us to complete that quest that Caroline gave us. If we can complete that quest now for Caroline, she will give us a recipe for a solar panel. And that means we can mass produce battery packs if we so wish, if we want to literally fill up our Stardew Valley farm with iridium sprinklers. Solar panels are the way to go. We can also sell battery packs too for nice money. I had 99 out of 100 golden walnuts. I just needed one more to get in to Mr. Key's secret walnut room. So we're going to be in there now very soon. We decided to process more starfruit into starfruit wine. So that took a while now each day to do because the more kegs that I made, the more time it took to process starfruit. I also got first place in the Sergio Valley Fair. I took all the items away from the stand. I then gambled all of my star tokens on green. I got super lucky, one each time of course, and all of these star tokens then can be used to purchase some exclusive rewards at Stardew Valley Fair vendor, including a star drop, which is one more in the bag for us. I also purchased the fedora hat, which I don't actually wear. I got the rare crow, the dried sunflowers, and the light green rug. Now, the hay is actually quite handy to get if you have animals, you know, and if you have the star tokens to spare, it's actually a nice boon to have there. It was time now to take on Mr. Key's quests. So there's just some cool dialogue here from Mr. Key saying well done for collecting over 100 golden walnuts. We had a choice between the Prismatic Grange and the Skull Cavern Invasion. I went with Skull Cavern Invasion for one reason. Radioactive ores. You can turn those into radioactive bars. That means you can make endgame items. You can also sell the bars for 4,500 gold to pop. So Skull Cavern Invasion was a no-brainer for us. And because we had a nice strong weapon, and because we have loads of gold to spend on consumables, such as salads, etc. The Skull Cavern Invasion wouldn't be too difficult. As long as you go in somewhat prepared, it's actually a very great place to farm our resources. Look at all of the gold ores here. I mean, I didn't really need a whole lot of gold bars now anymore because I just needed them primarily to make quality sprinklers. But I could sell the gold bars for money, no problem. The radioactive ores, though, were a top priority. If I saw a radioactive node, I would get it no problem at all. I did get a dark cowboy hat here in one of the treasure floors, which was cool. I swapped out my straw hat for that. There can, of course, be only one straw hat Luffy after all. Who am I to imitate such a legendary pirate? Anyways, back to Stardew Valley. So when I got to level 10 combat, I had a choice between Brute and Defender. We're going to take Brute, 15% more damage is a no-brainer. Combine that with the 10% from the first perk and the 10% from the Iridium Band, we can now dish out substantial damage to most enemies in the game. Today started with the collection of lovely oak resins, followed up by using our lovely axe to break open these giant pumpkins. These are mutated crops. And this can happen on any 3x3 tiles. So the more 3x3 three three tiles you have of pumpkins, the greater chance you have of them becoming a mutated pumpkin. And mutated giant pumpkins not only survive through each season, but they also yield a lot more than 9 crops. So mutated crops are pretty cool. It's a rare sight in Stardew Valley, but it's always nice when you get it. So the next day we're going to go back to Ginger Island. We're going to put more cakes down in our Ginger Island house. All of these will be processing primarily starfruit into starfruit wine. If we run out of starfruit, we'll switch over to pumpkins, but starfruit would always take priority because the profit margins are just far greater. I also went into the, the witch's secret lair and I fished up a void mayonnaise. I'm going to give that to the henchman here. I always call him the goblin, but the NPC is actually pronounced henchman. I hope in the new update, Concerned A will give more dialogue to the henchman and maybe we can befriend the henchman and marry the henchman and have kids with the henchman, but we'll see sure what happens. <laughs> so you're probably noticing a trend now where a lot more processing is happening. That's because we have a lot more kegs. So especially come winter, you're going to see a lot more processing because that's just what we have to do to make millions of gold. It is simply farm, process, make more processing machines, rinse and repeat. 
that's all we're going to be doing from here on out. We're going to be putting up all these crops. Now we're going to sell the tower roots because that's part of a quest for Caroline to get the solar panels. Not only will we get lots of money for the tower roots, Caroline will also give us lots of reward money as well. So I'm spending all my money on starfruit seeds today. Five, 956 starfruit seeds right there. They're all going to go back into Ginger Island. We make copper bars today for more cakes. And it's back, of course, to the secret woods to get more hardwood. Why are we getting more hardwood? We need it for some of the end game items that we're going to make later on. So I got the solar panel off Caroline there along with some 5500 gold. Thank you very much, Caroline. Now I don't end up making solar panels because I've reached the stage of the game now where Ginger Island is filled up to the top with iridium sprinklers. We're almost at the end of fall. There's no point making more iridium sprinklers because you can't grow that many crops in winter. You can only kind of grow the, the forageables and there's no point, you know, wasting resources on iridium sprinklers for winter forageables, in my opinion. So we're going to put more kegs down in the greenhouse. And now we are going to get our last batch of pumpkins before fall comes to an end. Look at all these pumpkins that we get to collect. Let's just drive around here in our speeder vehicle and take a nice look at all of these lovely pumpkin crops ready to be harvested. We also got very lucky and we got a lot of mutated crops as well that we get to break up with the axe. I was considering leaving the mutated pumpkins there just to make the winter farm look a bit nicer. But I said, you know what? This is a money challenge. So we're going to cut them down with the axe and we're going to sell them. If we can't process all of the pumpkins by the end of the year, we just sell the pumpkins and make money that way as well. The great thing about the mutated pumpkins is that they're impervious to crows. They cannot be destroyed. They are an invincible crop. Nothing will ever destroy your mutated crop. Absolutely nothing. It's time to make more wheat seeds. And the reason why I'm making wheat seeds is because I don't have time to grow pumpkins. And I could just turn the wheat back into wheat flour. I can turn that back into bread and I can sell that for a huge profit. And because I had so many slots available on the farm, it was actually worth my time to plant the wheat and sell it. Because I get a lot of gold back. Now I had to take a spicy eel and a sugar salt espresso to move way faster to actually get all of this wheat planted in the time that was left in the day. The next day, we have a lovely tree farm ready to go. Tappers will be equipped to those trees. We're going to collect our lovely strawberries today and it's time for the key quest we had with the Prismatic Grange again and Skull Cavern Invasion again. So we're going to go with Skull Cavern Invasion so we can get our hands on more radioactive ores. I'm also going to purchase the heavy tapper recipe. Now, it is very expensive to make hardwood and radioactive bars. However, it is a game changer for us because it will generate oak resins twice as fast as a regular tapper. So the more heavy tappers we can make, the more kegs we can make, the more money we can make by the end of the year. All of those extra radioactive ores means more heavy tappers for us. Now, eventually there will come a stage where I might decide to just sell the radioactive bars because they're worth so much money. But we'll see what happens in the next few days of the challenge. I got some pretty good rewards in the Skull Caverns today. 10 bombs is actually very nice because I use bombs all the time to blow the ores open. The next day we're back to the regular mines. We're just smelting ores in the bars now today. But we're getting radioactive bars. So bring on the money. We're going to go to Clint now. Sell him the Iridium bars. That's 93,000 gold. And I'm going to buy iron ore. And the reason why I'm buying iron ore is because I don't have a whole lot of iron left. I have lots of copper. Lots of gold, but very little iron, and I needed iron to make more kegs. Because if I didn't get a certain amount of kegs made, you know, by the time it comes to winter, I simply just wouldn't have enough items processed to make the 10 million gold to get the gold clock and to get the obelisks. So I needed to spend money on resources to keep up with keg production. That was extremely important. All of these wines I'm collecting now will just be stored away and they'll be sold at the end of the challenge. It's going to be very interesting to see how much we get for all of these artisan goods when they're all sold in huge bulk. It's going to make for a very nice and impressive number when we come to the end of this challenge. We are getting to the end of this challenge. We're now almost at the end of fall. So we're going to be in winter very soon. So we're now going to process all of this wheat back into wheat flour. So as we can see now, our money-making tactics have more or less been refined into just a few little techniques of just planting tons of star fruit, planting tons of pumpkins, processing those, and selling those. And if there's only a few days left in the season, we'll just buy crops that we know will grow in time 
for us to harvest before the next season comes in, before those crops are redundant. So we're getting more radioactive bars today, we're getting iron bars, things are looking pretty good for us now at the moment. We now have a lot of iron bars and copper bars and wood to make more cakes. I'm going to get the community cleanup quest today. There was only one day to do it though because I totally forgot about it a few days ago because I was so fixated on doing the key quests and doing other things. So I spent the whole day fishing up by the bad house because you're guaranteed to only get trash from this uh, water. That night I managed to fish up 20 pieces of trash in total completing the quest community cleanup. This rewards me with 500 gold. What a game changer. <laughs> The real reward would be what Linus gives us the next day. I accidentally sold the wheat flour. I totally forgot to convert that into bread. Not to worry though, we still have lots more stuff to sell to complete the challenge. The bread will not be a make it or break it for us, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I get the magnifying glass off Krobus today. I also decided to take the cave patrol quest for Clint here. We're going to kill some skeletons for him. It's just because I needed to farm more iron ores. So it would really make sense to kill skeletons when I'm farming ores just to hit two birds with the one stone. Back down into Ginger Island. We're pulling up more starfruit now today. This is going to be another full starfruit batch to be processed. It's going to take a lot more cakes to get through it. I do have a lot of starfruit in reserve so I can fill up the farm again straight away to keep the starfruit flowing. We're going to pick up another key quest. We have keys crop or prismatic grains. There's no way I was doing keys crop. I just didn't have the space for it. So I'm going to take the Prismatic Grange, 100 of the red, orange, yellow, green and blue items, and purple of course. And I'm going to show you a very easy trick now to get that quest complete in the next few seconds. But first, we're going to process more iron ores into iron bars, because we need a lot more iron bars to make a lot more kegs. The usual story. So for red, we're going to go with Cherry Bombs. I didn't really have anything else for red, and I had lots of money. For blue, we're going with Georgia Colas. Now, if you don't have the Georgia Mart unlocked, if you went to the community centre route, you can just get Georgia Colas from the cola machine in the Star Drop Saloon. I'm collecting oak resins now today, uh, but I'm not going to use those for green. I'm going to use fibre instead for those. I'll use sap for yellow. It's now time to process more starfruit into starfruit wines. I was processing pumpkins to pumpkin juices, but because I had so much starfruit saved up from Ginger Island, I decided to not use the pumpkins right now and just use the starfruit instead. The pumpkins can wait and we will only use the pumpkins once we have no starfruit left. It just means we can make more money that way. So the rest of the day is spent just killing skeletons, killing dust brides for coal and if we see iron ore we'll grab that as well as just an extra bonus for us. So it was another day of grinding out resources in the Stardew Valley regular mines. I was hoping to get the key quest to get the hardened version of the mines. Let's see what the next few weeks have in store for us in relation to key quests. 6,000 gold isn't bad for slaying 50 skeletons. The Geode Crusher is actually a really nice item if you make it in huge quantities. And it's great just spamming all of the Omni Geodes or Magma Geodes to see what kind of artifacts you can get from them, you know? So it actually makes for a very nice strategy when it comes to making huge profits with artifacts. The Geode Crusher is a must-have for that. So we're slaying bugs today, farming copper ores, and collecting bug meat. Because I'm going to use that for the key quest. So the items I'm putting in here now are fiber, bug meat, sap, Georgia colas, and cherry bombs. And that's an easy quest to complete right there. So with the rewards now, I'm going to get pressure nozzles. You get four pressure nozzles for 20 key gems. So I'm going to get a couple of stacks of those. And that will increase the range of my iridium sprinklers over on Ginger Island. That means I can plant more starfruit and make more money. The heavy tappers are doing great. They generate resins now just every couple of days. I had to buy wood from Robin today because I was lacking on wood and I've kind of been neglecting the quarry when it comes to blowing down trees. Wood is very cheap in year one anyway, so I just spent a few hundred thousand gold, got some stacks of wood off Robin and I built a shed as well to store more cakes into because I had lots of space now on the farm come winter and I wasn't going to fill it up with crops or anything like that. I also filled up the quarry with seeds so I didn't have to buy more wood off Robin. These trees will grow in winter as long as they're fertilized. I'm at almost 100,000 gold today, primarily from selling iridium bars, 1,500 gold to pop. The gold bars aren't even that bad, 375 gold, and I had so many gold ores, it just made sense to smelt them and sell them because I wasn't making any more quality sprinklers with gold bars, and I didn't really need gold bars for anything else at the moment, so I just sold them for extra money. The next day, it was back to collecting oak resins, and that meant just one thing, 
That's right, folks. We're making more cakes. So all these cakes now are going to be placed in the newly built shed that Robin is building for us. The desert is a nice place to go to get forages, but also to get some wood if you're stuck for it. And I was stuck for wood at the moment. Now, I could buy more wood off Robin, but I need to start to save now because we're now in winter and I needed to build up huge amounts of money if I was going to get the golden clock and all four warp obelisks. I decided to start a little winter foraging farm now just for something else to do while I was waiting for the kegs to process all of the lovely goods. It was now time to enchant my fishing rod. I got master. That gives me an extra fishing skill which is great. I also had the wild bait. There's a chance I can put up two fish instead of one and I'm going to spend the whole day pulling up lava eels. This is by far the best area in the game for fishing. If you come here with the wild bait, with a trap bobber, with an iridium rod enchanted up to the top, you're going to get tons of lava eels. You can make easily over 150,000 gold a day from fishing. So fishing end game is quite potent when it comes to money making. So I collected all the pumpkin juice in my greenhouse and did the fishing event today. I lost this event because I was too focused on watching anime on country roll than actually fishing. But it doesn't really matter because Willy only gives you a few little pieces that you can attach to your fishing rod. So, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference in terms of how this challenge is going to turn out. <laughs> I did go to Sandy today though. Another huge batch of starfruit seeds right there, 831. It was time for another community quest, tropical fish. So we have to catch five of each of the Ginger Island specific fish. That was the lionfish, the blue discus and the stingrays. But first we're going to pull up all the snuggly starfruit on Ginger Island and then plant a new healthy batch right back into the ground. Then it was back to the quarry. I'm going to blow up all of these trees, collect all the wood. That means we're now good to go for the next few batches of cakes when they become available. The heavy tappers are doing their thing. I also decided to pickaxe up all of these sprinklers and I'm going to sell them to make money because I don't need them anymore. Today we spent doing the tropical fish quest. Now this quest doesn't give you a whole lot of gold but at the moment primarily I was just waiting for stuff to finish. So I was just waiting on the kegs, waiting on the tappers. So I would just do all these extra chores just to kind of pass time. I mean I could have just done a few tasks here and there and went to bed went into the next day, but I wanted to make the most out of each day. Even if that meant just getting a few extra thousand gold, it was still extra gold in my pocket. And I really wanted to complete the challenge this time because I did attempt to get the gold clock within 100 days in a previous 100 day challenge video. But because I've done a lot more challenges, I felt that my skills have been greatly enhanced. And I felt that if I did a full year, not only could I get the gold clock, but I could get all four war obelisks as well. And we're going to know now how well we did in the next few days because we're now halfway through winter. Almost halfway through winter. Today was another day of fishing up lava eels. 108,000 gold. Lava eels are just trivial when it comes to fishing them up if you have all the fishing perks. The next day it was time to pick up all of our lovely winter forageables. These would be converted back into winter wild seeds and they'd be put back into the ground. And of course, like the previous three seasons, this method would be repeated over and over again until we end up with a giant farm of winter forageables. And because it was winter, it dawned on me that I actually didn't catch the legendary fish of this season, which was the glacier fish. I caught it there first attempt. It wasn't that difficult, but I have tried to catch this fish in the past, and it can be, depending on how RNG goes, extremely difficult to catch. It is as hard as the legend fish. I also finished off the tropical fish quest by getting the five stingray today. Once they were caught, I got 2,500 gold off Willy. He'll also send me a fish tank the next day, which makes for a really cool decoration. All that was left now to finish off winter was to just get all of these items processed. All of the starfruit, all of the pumpkins, make as many kegs as possible. Collect as much resources as I could to make as much kegs as possible. I had tree farms set up to make oak resins. I had lots of ores from the Skull Cavern Mines. It was time for another key quest. I wasn't doing keys craft. There was let's play a game which I've never been able to complete before. You had to beat me or lose a score of 50,000. I'm just going to show footage of one attempt. Um, I'm going to speed it up here just to show me doing a few levels before I fail miserably. So when it comes to beating me or lose, you only have one life. If you die, that's it. You have to start from the start. If you collect all the fruit on each level, you do get a massive bonus score at the end, which is what you want. You have to beat 50,000. So if you can get all the fruit on the first three levels, you actually can get up to a good 
kind of between 35 and 40,000 when you get to level 4. So you could potentially beat it by just clearing 4 levels. So I purchased spicy eels off Gus today. We're preparing for the Skull Cavern run. And I got really lucky today. And this never happened before. I got 4 holes in close proximity. <laughs> so I got down 8 levels there. It doesn't matter what hole you take. They're all the exact same. It was time to get more resources. Iridium ores were definitely on the table today because Iridium bars have 1500 gold to pop. So the more Iridium I got now, the more money I can make. And because we are now just past halfway through winter, I just wanted to make as much money as possible. Now I just got one level there on that hole because I was on floor 99 and the game will always hard cap you on floor 100 before it kind of opens up the holes again for you. The more prismatic shards I got now, the better. They sell for really nice money. And the next day, of course, the strawberries were back. Now, I could have very easily swapped out these strawberries for starfruit and made even more money. But the reason why I kept the strawberries was because they only regrew every four days. And there were times where I needed maybe 5,000 gold or 10,000 gold for a tool upgrade. If I had starfruit inside the greenhouse instead of strawberries, I'd be waiting maybe, you know, 10 or 11 days for that starfruit to grow. So I wouldn't have the same access to money. So my advice is to just keep the strawberries in the greenhouse for the whole year. If you end up with millions of gold and you want to make a lot more, you could then consider swapping out the strawberries for starfruit. But it's totally up to yourself, you know, everyone has their own different play styles when it comes to making money in this game. Speaking of making money, I had to take a speed buff now tonight to finish off planting all of the starfruit before the day came to an end. And we've just managed to do that today. The next day, the tappers were ready again. And all of the kegs on our lovely Sarge Valley farm were ready to be collected. I also went into the regular mines to smelt more ores in the bars. I was still making more kegs. So this was primarily going to be the last batch of kegs I was going to make. Because we're almost finished winter. And starfruit does take a very long time to make. That's 86 more kegs. Now I did buy more wood off Robin. And at the time I was considering making more kegs. But all I wanted to do for now was to just fill out the Ginger Island farm with as much processing machines as possible. And the beach here at the bottom of your farm is a great place for processing machines because nobody comes down here. So you can just fill it up with cakes. You can't grow crops down there, so you might as well just put processing machines down there in my opinion. I went with four precious stones today for the keys quests. 40 key gems for completing that, and I had tons of prismatic shards. I made 420,000 gold today, primarily just from selling iridium bars, 278 in total from doing all those skull cavern runs. Today it was harvesting lovely winter forageables. I'm going to pick those all up, turn them all into winter wild seeds, and I'm going to plant them straight back down in the farm. I had quality sprinklers to burn, so I just took some out of the chest and put it back down in the ground. Now at this stage in the game, I wasn't really thinking about making any more cakes, but I did create a backup plan just in case. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make one more tree farm in the quarry just in case I needed more wood very quickly and didn't want to go to Robin and buy wood or needed wood in a pinch. So I gave Mr. Key four prismatic shards, got some key gems off him, it was time to treat myself to some hoppers. I purchased five hoppers. Now I didn't purchase them to use them, I purchased them to deconstruct them because you get back a radioactive bar every time you deconstruct a hopper and if you have the, the blacksmith perk you get 4,500 gold for each radioactive bar. So basically, one hopper is worth 4,500 gold if you have a deconstructor. And that's really nice money. Especially if you had tons of key gems, if you had tons of deconstructors, and if you had tons of hoppers, you could make loads of money very quickly. The rest of the day was spent processing, and then it was back up to the volcano dungeon, fishing at the summit, pulling up lava eels for even more money. And as you can see, our money is growing slowly but surely of 800,000 gold there now at the moment time for another key quest keys hungry challenge and this is a tough one because you have to get down 100 floors without taking any consumables the trick here is to take buffs before you go into the skull cavern and if you need health in the skull cavern you can actually get it from killing slimes the big slimes but i'll show footage of that now in a second i bought bombs here after dwarf just so i could blow some ores up and i went down to farm iron ores in the regular mines today just to prep so I can make more bombs for Key's Hungry Challenge that we're going to do the next day. So today was just a day of farming iron ores. The next day we're doing Key's Hungry Challenge. I got a lovely hat there. Now this is a large slime 
with a heart inside it that gives you back 10 health. That's how you accumulate health when you're doing Keys Hungry Challenge. You just kill those big slimes. Because I got the secret letter that says come down to floor 100, I got um, Iridium Juice there that increases my health by 25. That was really nice. So that's a really nice prize when you get to floor 100. Any other time now when you get to floor 100, you just get a treasure chest instead. So today was a great day. I got loads of Iridium ores, loads of prismatic shards, loads of gold, loads of iron, loads of copper. Didn't need iron or copper anymore. I just wanted Iridium ores now. I want the prismatic shards to sell for gold. So I'm going to process all these ores now into bars, sell these. I'm going to convert all of these pumpkins out into pumpkin juices because I've run out of star fruit, believe it or not. I finally caught up. All the star fruit is gone. Now I do have some grown on Ginger Island, but for now, we just have pumpkins and that's what we're going to process into pumpkin juice. We're going to go to the lovely Statue of Uncertainty, switch up the farming profession again, get artisan because we want to start selling our wines down to see how much money we're going to get. We're also going to attend the um, the Winter Star event. I'm going to give Alex a prismatic shard. He's super happy. Giving NPCs loved gifts at this event gives you a huge friendship multiplier. Absolutely huge. So I got Penny. Um, Penny was my secret Santa. She can be a ruby. Not too bad. Got Alex up to two and a half hearts there just giving him one gift. That's how good the Winter Star event actually is. This is going to be our very last starfruit harvest on Ginger Island. So I wasn't going to process all these starfruits in time. Because there's only two days left in the challenge. So all of those starfruits would be sold. All of these iridium bars will be sold. It's now time to start selling stuff. Because we're almost finished. All of these thousands upon thousands of pumpkins. You know I didn't get to process these. Because I was so busy processing the starfruit over on Ginger Island. So I'm just going to sell all the pumpkins the way they are. Now I do have the farming park where crops are worth 10% more. That is a must have, especially if you're selling thousands of crops. I do deconstruct my warp totems, I get honey back for that. All of these oak resins that I'm collecting now will also be sold. There's no point making more kegs now, you know, because we're so close to finishing. So we're going to blow all the trees down in the quarry. We're going to sell all the wood. We're going to sell everything we have because i want to see how much money i can make in year one that's the whole essence of this challenge and because we're now so close to completing the challenge it's a very exciting time for me especially when i was playing through it myself because at this moment in time i didn't know how much money i was going to make i made 2.1 million gold today just from selling raw materials pumpkins starfruit but look at the starfruit unprocessed a gold star starfruit 1237 gold that's crazy money altogether, and that's why starfruit is unrivaled when it comes to crops in this game. The starfruit is probably one of, if not the best, moneymaker crop in the game. Today, we're collecting items from kegs. We're not filling up the kegs, though. I'm also going to pickaxe up all of these sprinklers and sell them. I'm going to sell everything. Today, it was going to be spent just selling stuff. Look at all these things here. These are going to be used to make warp obelisks. I have a chest over here now. Filled up with items needed to make the four warp obelisks. I had 3 million gold on me. That's enough to complete one of the goals I've set out in this video. Which was to make four warp obelisks. So these warp obelisks look a little bit different to the ones you see. Because of a mod that we're using. And I think the mod is the Japanese buildings mod. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But I think that is the mod that is responsible for making those two of the four obelisks look a bit different but that is the first goal completed four warp obelisks have been purchased what we have to do now is accumulate over 10 million gold to make the gold clock and at this stage in the game i just don't think i have enough resources to actually make it but we will know for sure at the end of this day when we sell all of these wines that we have accumulated we also have to remember that we now have the artisan park we have stacks of starfruit wine and pumpkin juice. It's time to send them all to Pierre to see what we're going to get. And there we have it, folks. We did it. We met over 11 million gold. We could get the gold clock. What an achievement. To play one year of this game and unlock the gold clock plus four warp obelisks. What a flex. If, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to flex, but in all fairness, it is quite the achievement. And I don't think many content creators could pull off such a feat. Of course, it's not a challenge to any content creators out there. But still, 17 million 
328,487 gold made on the ultimate farm in year one. Thanks everyone for watching my video. If you've stuck with it this far, thanks a million for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you for taking the time to watch my content. So stick around, subscribe to the channel if you like content like this, because there's going to be a lot more in the future. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but I used the randomizer mod. Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another 100 days Stardew Valley challenge. The goal for this video is simple, to complete as much of the game as possible. However, the randomizer mod won't make it that simple for us, as the mod changes an absolute ton of in-game mechanics. Some of the changes include a lot of the recipes in the game now need entirely different materials to craft. Professions have been slightly randomized where you are not guaranteed to learn specific recipes upon reaching certain profession levels. The cost of a lot of the crops you can purchase in Stardew Valley have now been dramatically randomized as well as the resources needed for construction with Robin. NPC sprites have also been swapped around and this will make for a much more interesting gameplay especially when it comes to locating and interacting with a lot of the Stardew Valley NPCs. They are just some of the changes that this randomization mod includes. There is however a huge array of changes that we just don't have time to cover in the intro but we will find out exactly what these changes are as we delve into the video and get on with the challenge. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy 100 day style content such as this. I really do appreciate your effort and thanks so much to all my channel members for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. It is day number one and we start by cutting down some trees, planting some crops and we attempt to make our first chest of the challenge only to find out that the chest requires stone and slime. This is a huge problem for us as we can only get slime by day number five when we get access to the mines. This means it's going to be a very challenging in order to keep items and also purchase new items when it comes to making game progression. Upon entering the shop, we notice that Mayor Lewis has now taken over from Pierre. Who knows, maybe Mayor Lewis will do a much better job. But tulips here are going for six gold. Prices of our crops have been randomized. Because the tulips were so cheap, I spent all my gold on tulips, getting a grand total of 94 ready to be planted. We noticed Leah here on the beach. Her sprite has swapped with Elliot, which is actually hilarious. And we also locate Haley taking pictures she swapped with Pam. Oh, look, Haley. Now your personality matches your looks. <laughs> because it was day number one, it was time to explore Stardew Valley. And what I noticed here was there was wild plums on the ground. The problem here is that I wasn't getting spring forageables. I was getting fall forageables. And that's going to be a massive problem when it comes to using tea saplings later if you want to make tons of money. The next day is spent just primarily fishing. Now because of the randomizer mod, the difficulty of certain fish has been randomized. So extremely deadly fish to catch could be extremely easy fish, vice versa. On the third day, it was rain and skulls. Thankfully, it was just a visual effect. The skulls didn't actually have any sort of physical effect on my character. Because it was raining, we could still get the catfish, which was great. The difficulty of the catfish didn't seem to waver that much. It was back to pulling up forageables. Now, I was actually getting a lot of fall forageables, but I needed a very high foraging skill to turn fall forageables into fall wild seeds. So it looks like at this rate, tea saplings were not going to be on the table for us. We would have to use other in-game methods to make money. I dropped off a few artifacts at the museum, and then it was on to pick up the first batch of parsnips that we got for free on the first day. This gave me a level up in farming, which was nice. It was then time to water up the crops and get on with the rest of the day. Because it was day number five, the mines were now open and the priority were slimes. The first enemy to encounter was actually a rock crab, which is fairly uncommon. I just needed some slime to make a chest and I wanted that chest made as quickly as possible. Once I could put some chests down on the farm, I could start properly sorting items and freeing up my very limited inventory slots. It was time to go back to the farm, put down some chests and make some progression. But before that, I hit level 10 in the mines and I picked up the leather boots. It looked like at this moment in time that the chest rewards were not randomized. I noticed the wizard wasn't in his tower. Instead, Sebastian has taken over the place. I never knew Sebastian to be a seeker of the arcane truths, but nothing surprises me anymore when it comes to this randomizer mod. 
I managed to pick up two of the four spring forest birds, but there was no sign of dandelions or leeks to be found anywhere. Back into the mines, we are making some pretty good progression. We still had our rusty sword, but I wasn't too worried about that. We would get better weapons eventually. Any copper I come across, I would stop and prioritize that, as I was pretty sure later on, copper would be needed especially for kegs. To level 20, we get to steal small sword, and the next day, it is time to get our first massive batch of tulips. Now, I wasn't getting huge money gains or XP from these tulips, but because there was so many tulips, I should get just about enough money where I can make some decent progression early in spring. By day 7, I had almost 13,000 gold, which was pretty good. Some of that money went towards a backpack upgrade so I can get more free inventory slots. I was considering spending the rest of my money on just tulips, but then I realized I wouldn't have enough time or energy or any sort of resources to plant them all in one day. Level 3 farming finally rewarded me with the scarecrow that I needed so desperately as the crows were having a field day and all my lovely tulips. Some wood and mixed seeds were required to make a scarecrow. That wasn't too bad at all. It was time to get a coop and the reason why I wanted to go down the route of a coop so early is because I just couldn't rely on crops or tea saplings. A sure free way to make decent money, especially early in the game, is to stock up on chickens and use mayonnaise. We was then back to the mines, we're making some good progression, got down to the dark floors here. And it was raining skulls the next day, we were smelting bars. To make a furnace, I needed copper, clay and wood. The challenge here was actually getting clay. And clay isn't something that you can get in huge abundance when it comes to early farming, unless you use clay farming. But we didn't want to cheat in this challenge. It was time to get Clint to break up with some geodes. You never know, there's always a chance you might get some clay off geodes. If not, we would get some decent museum rewards regardless. It was then back to pulling off some catfish. I got a dressed spinner here and that would sell for a pretty nice 500 gold. Because we had some money left over, I decided to get some early upgrades done. Clint will upgrade my axe to a copper axe. It was then back to the community center, and you guessed it, we won't be going the Georgia route in this run. Instead, we're going to challenge ourselves and go the community center route. We actually managed to complete the fall foraging bundle as the first foraging bundle for this challenge because of the randomizer mod, and that was actually quite interesting. I also purchased some chickens off Marley. They were still only 800 gold a pop, so we could get loads of chickens, no problem. Back to Clint, picked up my copper axe, but we're not finished there. We're going to go to Robin, and we are going to construct another building. This time, we're going to go with the silo, so if we get rainy days, it won't be the end of the world for our fabulous chickens. It was then back to pulling up more vegetables from around the map. If I could make more fall seeds, I could potentially make a lot of tea saplings. I also picked up Robin's last axe, and I found where the wizard was hiding. It was in Sebastian's bedroom. The wizard was our new social quest. We were going to try and marry the wizard, in this challenge and have tons of little wizard kids. I was back into the mines, I picked up the slingshot on floor 40. I also got down to floor 50 today and I got the tundra boots. So as far as the randomizer mod goes, it didn't actually, to my current knowledge, randomize any of the chest rewards. Demetrius smelt the money and he visits us the next day. We're going to go with the bat cave because we're going the community center route and the bat cave does make life a little bit easier if we get lucky with pomegranates, apples and things like that. It was back to pulling up our tulips, and then it was off to the lovely Easter event when we were going to get some lovely strawberry seeds. So I had enough for the 120 strawberry seeds. I was hoping to sell the tulips, but then I remembered you can't sell items to event vendors, which was unfortunate. I then spent a great deal of time today hoeing up some of the grass to get hay for my chickens, and then we were going to pay the general store another visit just to get the last few items that we needed to complete some of the spring bundles, such as parsnips, beans, and potatoes. Once those items were purchased, it was off to Clint to get more tool upgrades done. We were going to push the pickaxe this time to a copper pickaxe so we could make smoother progression in the mines. It was then up to the lake area where we were doing more fishing. The next day it was raining skulls again. It was time to check on our newly acquired chickens and our chickens had now all fully grown up and they were laying eggs which was great. These chickens would lay eggs every single day and these eggs could be converted into mayonnaise for a pretty nice profit indeed. Once the chickens were tended to, it was then time to purchase some mayonnaise machines. Now in order to make these we needed stone, slime and amethysts. Thankfully, I had enough amethysts to make four mayonnaise machines, but in order to make more, we would have to delve back down into the mines. And hopefully, with the luck of Yoba, we'd be able to get more amethysts to make more lovely mayonnaise. 
as a rule of thumb and because we didn't have our pickaxe it just made sense to do more fishing today and get more catfish because catfish are probably one of the most if not the most profitable fish apart from the legend that you can get in spring so if it was rain and skulls we were pulling up catfish we then went back to the blacksmith clint we got our lovely copper pickaxe but why stop there we had the funds and we had the resources to upgrade our copper pickaxe to a steel pickaxe we were working on Caroline for the tea saplings and we didn't have a whole lot of daffodils to give her so I was just giving her other bits and bobs instead. It would mean that it would take much longer to get Caroline up to two hearts to get those tea saplings but I'm a very patient farmer and I knew we would get there eventually. Because I had the bronze axe I could now take care of all of the small tree stumps on my farm accumulating hardwood which gives lots of foraging XP and the more foraging XP we can get early on the faster we can make tree fertilizers and grow giant tree farms for all sorts of future projects. It was time to give Penny a catfish because she asked for one in the bulletin board. As a reward, we were going to get a whopping 600 gold and that was a really nice quest to get there off Penny. I then got my steel pickaxe back off Clint. It was time to make some good mind progression with that. It was Haley's birthday today and I decided to give her a parsnip and she was super happy with that. She had great time for me at the moment. Spoke to Haley again, she told me to go away. She had way too many caramel porters at the saloon last night. Oh, how far you've fallen, Haley. It was back into the mines. I managed to kill an elite black slime. And I got a magnet ring. That was actually a very nice upgrade at that moment in time. We were then into the middle section of the mines. We were getting some iron ores. I came across a mystery note here, but it only yielded a topaz. Down to floor 70, we get the master slingshot. That will come in handy later on in the challenge. And because I had so much money on me at the moment, I decided to get the last backpack upgrade, the Deluxe Pack. It was then after Robin to get a coop upgrade. This time we're going to go with the big coop. It needed wood, stone and iron bars. Thankfully, I had plenty to spare. It was then finally time to get the tea saplings off Caroline. We finally pushed her to two hearts. But because of the way Farge was worked now with the randomizer mod, we couldn't really bank on the tea saplings to make tons of money because we couldn't have giant foraging farms. I did fix the bridge to the tide pools though and finished off the crab pot bundle resulting in three lovely free crab pots. Having a look at the tea saplings the recipe cost didn't change. Two of any wild seed, five fiber and five wood. The challenge there is the mass accumulation of wild seeds. Randomizer makes that incredibly difficult. Not to worry though if we get bits and bobs of wild seeds that are on in the video we can always make tea saplings then if we need quick bursts of cash. For now, we would have to play the game without utilizing the overpowered tea saplings. Our first big batch of strawberries were ready to go. Because we didn't have tea saplings, the strawberries were going to save the day. We were going to get tons of money from selling all these lovely strawberries. I also got my first harvest of cauliflower as well, which was nice. It was then off to the pantry, and it was time to almost finish off the spring crops bundle. I was just waiting on that lovely green bean that we'll have ready to go in a few days. Back down into the mines and we got very lucky there with the diamond. On floor 73 I was graced with a huge amount of iron which was good to have. On floor 80 I picked up the firewalker boots and on floor 82 we got super lucky with a mushroom floor. Lots of red mushrooms to be picked up. That's bonus forageables for us and we could also sell the red mushrooms to make extra money. On floor 90 we picked up the obsidian edge. That was a massive weapon upgrade that we badly needed at this stage of the game. Level 6 farming awarded me with lots of cool recipes, but it did not give me the quality sprinklers, so I started to panic a little bit. Not to worry though, the next day I checked out my crafting recipes, and I actually had the quality sprinkler there. To make it though, I needed 40 wood and one regular sprinkler. So to make a regular sprinkler, I needed wood and I also needed slime. All I can say for now is may Yoba bless those slimes, because I certainly wasn't. It was time for a slime massacre to make tons of sprinklers. <laughs> it was back to Clint. We were going to get more tool upgrades. We're going for the steel axe so we can get access to lots more hardwood early on. It was then time to finish up all of the boiler room bundles. I had all of the mats acquired and this would unlock the fast traveling for us around Stardew Valley, which is going to save us a ton of time. We also got some pretty nice rewards, including a furnace. And I really appreciated the furnace because they're much more difficult to make because of the randomizer mod. Down to floor 100 in the mines, I got my first star drop of the challenge. I was very happy about that. On floor 102, it was a double diamond floor. That was the first diamond and just north 
was the second diamond, 150 XP for each one, plus 750 for each diamond. Bring on the XP, bring on the money. I noticed Vincent was in Jas's room today. Found that quite strange, but you know what? Maybe they just decided to swap kids because they were sick of him. You know how it goes with parenting, right? <laughs> Back down into the mines, and I was on floor 112, and the goal here was just to get the Skull Key so we could start doing some nice Skull Cavern runs. On floor 20, I sure enough got this Skull Key. Nothing fishy there with the randomizer mod. We were now on the 24th, and we were getting there with spring. Got some gold bars today, decided to water up all these crops. I had a few sprinklers planted on the ground, and I do plan on making a lot more once I get more slime. So it was time to go to the lovely flower dance today. Now, I managed to get some daffodils and dandelions today, just to have some spring forage bills, because you never know, I might get lots next season, and I could make lots of tea saplings then. Also picked up the rare crow, along with the tub of flowers recipe, and then we had this hilarious scene. We had Elliot trying to dance, but, you know, he was doing his best pulling it off. Leah was having a great time, totally in the wrong queue. We had Linus, and he was looking absolutely awesome there, with Penny, and then we finally had a lovely father and daughter relationship, the wizard and Abigail, just look at them go. I also noticed Pierre with Marnie, and I thought something felt a bit suspicious there with that as well. So I went back to Clint today, picked up my steel axe, I can now get into the secret woods and start farming some hardwood, which was great. Went up to Marnie to get some supplies, but we're also going to get some animals. This time, because we had the coop upgraded, I was going to get some ducks instead of chickens. Duck mayonnaise is quite profitable, and it also means that I have a lot more variety when it comes to completing community centre bundles and other challenges. Into the secret woods, I was getting chanterelles and other goodies. I was also getting the lovely hardwood stumps, which would give me 25 XP a pop and lots of hardwood. It was then time to pick up the next and last batch of strawberries, along with a huge amount of chicken eggs, and all these will be converted into mayonnaise. That's going to be a nice money boost right there. It was then off to the pantry and we're going to donate that green bean, getting us 20 Spiegel in the process. I had just about enough money to unlock all of the vault bundles. This means I can now access the desert and do Skull Cavern runs and I can even get into Sandy's shop as well, get all the goodies she has to offer. The Crystallarium there as a reward is always worth it. That can be generating jades for staircases for future Skull Cavern runs. It was then back to fishing because I wanted to get money so I could have a good start of the summer. I wanted lots of money to purchase lots of crops. That night, the Junimos did their magic and fixed up the bus. The next day, it was straight back to fishing again to get even more money. And when we were done with all the fishing, it was then time to prepare for a Skull Cavern run before we hit summer. So I spent a good deal of time pulling up tons of fish today. I got 105 XP for that bream because I got a perfect catch plus a treasure chest. I also purchased an Iridium Rod off Willy here along with a Trap Bobber because we were going to go for the legend. I did so much fishing in spring, I actually managed to get level 10 in fishing, so I could take a crack at the legend. The legend actually wasn't that difficult at all, nowhere near the difficulty of the glacier fish in my opinion, and for that I was going to get 11,250 gold. It was then back into Alex here, instead of Gus, they did a switcheroo, and it was time to buy some salads. Those salads will come with super handy in the skull cavern. Now, I attempted a Skull Cavern run today. It did not go well. I literally only made it down three or four levels, and then I had to call it because luck was just not on my side. I didn't have bombs, and I just didn't have the resources to do a decent run at all. But we will go back into Skull Cavern soon enough. So I started getting dandelions today in summer, which wasn't very favorable for us. And I was also getting daffodils as well. Thank you very much, Randomizer Mad. So... If this season is anything like spring, what it just means is that we can't mass produce tea saplings. I could, however, purchase one of each of the summer crops, no problem. And we're going to go with hops for summer because there were 62 gold a pop. And once the hops fully grow, we can harvest them every single day. And pale ale is absolutely nothing to be snuffed at. It is an amazing money maker. Not as good as Starfruit, but I wanted to change things up in this challenge instead of going the usual Starfruit route all the time. So we are going to be going the hops route in this challenge, and we are going to be making thousands of pale ales. Now, in order for us to make pale ales, we needed hundreds and hundreds of kegs. It was time to make some tree farms. It was also time to clear out the farm, get rid of all the debris, collect all the resources, and plant some acorns. Once I hit foraging skill level 7, I will learn the tree fertilizer 
and that will exponentially increase the growth rate of all our trees. I was also picking up wild horseradishes too, and all I needed now were leeks and I could actually make some tea saplings no problem at all. It was then back to the secret woods and we were farming hardwood stumps. All of the hardwood will come in super handy later on, especially if you want to get to Ginger Island. I also had a crack at the legendary crimson fish today, he wasn't too hard, and for the rest of the day we spent just fishing up super cucumbers and other bits and bobs. Super cucumbers are absolutely amazing when it comes to selling and also eating. It was then time to get the first harvest of duck eggs, they'll come in super handy for maydays for profits and also the duck egg for the animal bundle. I then decided to move my coop down to an area here where there was tons of grass. The reason for this was that the chickens weren't going that far to eat the grass and that was costing me money and it was also making the chickens disgruntled so sometimes they wouldn't lay eggs. I also got Robin to build a barn because we were going to get some cows and the more variety of animals I had I felt the more advantages I would have especially if the randomizer decides to turn around next season and do something really weird that could jeopardize how well I could do on this challenge. So it was no harm getting a huge different types of animals that would generate all different kinds of items for me. In order to make bombs I needed gold ores and sap. That is actually very difficult because even if you go to Skull Cavern I find that iron ores are much more common than gold ores. So it might turn out that we just have to buy bombs off the dwarf instead of trying to make the bombs. I finally got the recipe for three fertilizers and they just needed stone and fiber which was the same as per usual so that was really good. It was then time to fertilize all of our lovely acorns and it was straight back to Skull Cavern for a rematch. And this run, we did so much better than the last because we came down slightly more prepared. We had a lot more healables, we had a lot more bombs and we had a lot more luck on our side. We got nice rewards, lots of iridium ores and other goodies that we can sell to make even more money. So this time it was time to look at how to make tappers. And the cost of tappers was slightly different. We needed wood and refined quartz. Thankfully, I had tons of fire quartz there to turn into refined quartz. And then it finally happened. I picked up my first leak of the challenge and I was so excited because now I could complete another community center bundle. A tasty relative of the onion. The leak. It was time to go into the craft room, complete the spring foraging bundle and as a reward I would get 30 free spring wild seeds. Now because we were summer I couldn't plant these in the ground and exploit them. But I could turn them into tea saplings and sell those for a couple of K in the pocket. I also completed the construction bundle as well, got a charcoal kennel. So I had enough resources there to make 15 tea saplings and that wasn't too bad. That's seven and a half thousand gold ready to go for tomorrow. So I was super happy with that. It was then back to putting up more fish, super cucumbers all the way. They're just so profitable. I also got 10,000 gold from Mr. Key the next day for making a past floor 25 in the Skull Cavern. I also collected some iridium bars and it was off to Marnie to purchase some cows for our newly built barn so things were looking up. It was also time to complete the exotic foraging bundle because I managed to grab the coconut and the cactus fruit while I was out in the desert. It was then time to finish off the artisan bundle thanks to our lovely bat cave and also thanks to the mummies for dropping cloth for me inside Skull Cavern. The reward was a keg, I was super happy there. It was then back to Robin and this time we were going to get a deluxe coop. The requirements were slightly more expensive, almost 22,000 gold, wood, stone and 5 iron bars. We had those resources easy enough though so that wasn't a huge challenge at all. It was back down into the regular mines and I was farming gold ores for bombs because I really wanted to do another Skull Cavern run. I was also farming fibre and other bits and pieces as well. I made 60 tappers today, enough to tap up all of our lovely oak trees so we can start getting some nice oak resins. So when the time comes to transfer the hops into lovely pale ales, we would have the resources to do so. It was time to upgrade our pickaxe to a gold pickaxe and I decided to incubate a dinosaur egg because I managed to pick one up in the Skull Cavern just so we have that dinosaur mayonnaise ready to go if we get far later on in the challenge. I fished up a Dorota today. That is by far the rarest fish in summer. It took me so long to get it. So, so long. I also got the sturgeon the next day. I need that for the luau to get the best results. I fished up a few of those too because I will need caviar later on for the challenge as well. I also pulled up the wood skip because I am aiming to capture every fish in the game so I can get that nice star drop off wheelie really later on. Got my gold pickaxe back off Clint, but we weren't finished there. This time we were going to give him our axe to upgrade to a gold axe. 
It was then time to go to the luau and I added the sturgeon to the soup. That yielded the best result from the governor and that's going to get me lots of friendship points with a lot of the Stardew Valley NPCs. It was finally time to harvest the first batch of crops and there were so many crops to harvest. I know there's probably way better ways that I can set up these trellises but when it comes to trellises I am a total noob. Trellises are my weakness so this is the best I could do in terms of a first or second attempt of using trellises. But all these hops are super profitable. The pale ale that you get from hops is just absolutely amazing. We are going to make hundreds of thousands of gold from converting those hops into pale ale and then selling the pale ale. Went down to the mines to collect the fish that I needed for the fishing collection. Started with the ghost fish. Then I managed to get the ice pip slightly more challenging but not impossible. It was then down to floor 100 to get the difficult lava eel. The great thing about gold star lava eels with the right fishing perks sell for over 1500 gold. Lava eel fishing is actually a very nice way to make money. It was then time to make kegs and I was slapped in the face by the randomizer mod. These kegs required wood, sap and fish. No oak resins to be seen. Hence, the tree farm I made was a total waste of time and energy. <laughs> so when I wanted to make hundreds of kegs, I would need hundreds of fish. To make a crab pot, I needed a gold bar and 10 void essence. I mean, it just wasn't happening. I could not mass produce crab pots. There's no way I could farm hundreds of void essence every single day unless I had a very unique setup, which I did not have. I was forced to purchase crab pots off Willy so I could make kegs so I could get those lovely pale ales. There was no other choice, I'm afraid. Eventually, we can go the road of Monster Musk with a really good offensive build to try to get void essences that way. But for now, we would just have to stick to Willy. We are also working on the wizard here, trying to get his friendship points up because we wanted to marry the wizard and have lovely magical kids. It was then time to finish off the summer crops bundle. The reward, a quality sprinkler, thank you very much. It was back to Robin, constructing more structures. This time though, I wanted to get a shed because I just wanted some nice order to my farm, somewhere I could store my lovely cakes. I got my gold axe off Clint, I was super happy there. I had 23,000 gold ready to go. I decided to upgrade the watering can just to make life a little bit easier for me when we get into fall. It was back down to the beach and Vincent was having a great time pointing up and down. I accidentally gave Jess some bait. She wasn't depressed, but I thought to myself, you know what, maybe Linus wouldn't mind if I gave him bait. He would surely use it or maybe eat it himself. He wasn't impressed either. He said he just don't get it. But you know what, I don't get people going through trash cans every night either, Linus, or maybe I do. <laughs> it was then time to get all that oak resin I would end up just selling that oak resin because I couldn't really use it for anything else. I did very well in the back cave though. Got some oranges. They make for a nice gift for someone. I also got the last apple I needed to complete the fodder bundle, resulting in a lovely new reward, the heater. That will come in handy in winter to keep our animals nice and warm. I finally had enough resources to make 36 kegs. It wasn't enough by a long shot to keep on top of the amount of hops that we were going to get on a daily basis, but it was a start. Level 10 farming, of course, we would select Artisan. Then it was back to Robin, and it was time to get some wood. I needed hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of wood, to make a lot more kegs. Once all of the kegs had been placed, it was time to just sit and wait for the money to roll in. Now, hops aren't anything like starfruit. Hops require much less time in a keg to give you back an Artisan good. Now, of course, starfruit is much more profitable. Starfruit is very, very difficult to beat, but you know what? Pale ale is absolutely nothing to be snuffed at. The next day, I got the owl statue. Super lucky there. I'm going to put that up for good luck. And it was time to get our first batch of pale ales. On average, we can get a full batch of pale ales every day and a half. And one pale ale would sell for 420 gold. One hop sells for only 27 gold. That is a huge, huge profit margin right there because i made so many kegs i didn't have enough space in my small shed so i put some more kegs just left at the bus stop Seventy-two thousand two hundred and forty gold ready to go we now had eighty-five thousand gold i also checked out the traveling cart merchant today i got super lucky the red cabbage seed was ready to go it took nine days to grow i had just about enough time to grow it but just to make sure i would get that red cabbage before summer was out I put down a deluxe speed grow with it as well. It was time for more upgrades with Clint. This time we're going to go with the steel watering can. Then it was back to Robin to get another structure upgrade. 
we're going to go with the big shed this time. And it was just 550 wood, 300 stone. The usual story there. It was then back to Sinusap Forest and our mission was wood so we could make more kegs. So we were just cutting down all of the trees that we saw, having exhausted most of the trees on our farm. It was then back to converting hops into pale ale and you will see a lot of this because it doesn't take that long for hops to turn into pale ale. So the oak resins weren't doing me much good so I decided to just get rid of my lovely tree farm here and take the wood instead to turn into cakes. It was then off to Marnie and I was going to purchase some rabbits. Now I wanted rabbits for two reasons. The first was the rabbits feet that they drop. Amazing loved gifts. And the second they can drop wool. I could turn that into cloth later on if I wanted to make some special clothes. So my dinosaur finally hatched. That would be future dinosaur mayonnaise. Off him no problem. Then we were converting iridium ores into iridium bars. Now I did a little bit of a mistake here. Whatever way I put down my shed I was blocking off some of my furnaces. So I would have to move those furnaces eventually. Maybe into the mines to give myself more space to smelt ores. I made 22 more cakes today. I had lots of fish from the crab pots. So I could make a lot more cakes, put them into my large shed. The more cakes I could make, the more money I would make. Because I was getting so many hops every single day. I had thousands and thousands of hops ready to be converted into lovely alcohol. It was then back to Robin to purchase more wood. And I also upgrade my barn to a big barn. So I can get a much bigger variety of animals. It was then back to my shed and I was converting hops into pale ale. Then it was back to Clint to get my steel watering can, but I wasn't finished there. Because I had so many iridium bars and because I had the money, I decided to take the iridium pickaxe. That means I can one-shot the nodes in future Skull Cavern runs. My pale ale was a talk of the town. Alex here slash Gus saying, hey, so I picked up a pale ale at the store last night. Grandma met her special casserole. A quest from Sebastian the wizard. He wanted an iron bar. I of course will oblige because... This lovely wizard here will be thankful and the more friendship points I can accumulate, the faster I can get married, the faster I can have magical wizard kids. Five hearts out of eight, we were making good progress and even the wizard was talking about my lovely pale ale that I sold to the general store. It was then back to the desert, fished up a scorpion carp and a sandfish for the fishing collection. I also needed the sandfish though for the speciality fishing bundle, so that was a must. I was taking a nice, warm, cosy stroll through Sinusap Forest today. I noticed Vincent acting a bit weird. He kept pointing upwards and I thought to myself, maybe, just maybe, there's a secret behind the trees. But no, he was just counting. I then met Sebastian, the wizard, slash wizard number two. And it seemed that he was enjoying the lovely arcane energies all around the wizarding tower. I was then back to cutting down trees, getting more wood to make more kegs. We also back to Clint today for the usual iridium pickaxe. That was one of the best pickaxe we could get in the game. Why stop there though? We had the bars, we had the money. It was time to upgrade our axe to an iridium axe. It was then off to Robin to construct more buildings. This time though, we were going to go with the deluxe barn. That means we could get pigs. So the barn was very expensive. Especially the 65 hardwood. That hurt. But not to worry. We're going to plant loads of mahogany seeds down here now. And the hardwood will come in super handy after these later on. But that's not the only reason we're planting mahogany seeds. You'll find out in a few days why I'm planting so many. Back down to the Skull Cavern, it was an absolutely magnificent run. Got a Crystallarium, got some Prismatic Shards, got some great progress on her all together, and I got so much Iridium Ore that it'll probably do me for the rest of the challenge when it comes to tool upgrades. Speaking of upgrades, it was finally time to upgrade our weapon to one of the best weapons you can get pre Ginger Iden, of course, and that was. The galaxy sword and because we now had the galaxy sword we could easily beat most of the enemies the game had to offer back into the mines today just to smell some iridium ores into bars and then it was the processing of yet more hops into pale ales bring on the money it was then time to purchase an absolute ton of wheat seeds because you guessed it come fall our primary money making crop will be wheat it was time to purchase a wizard couch. I wanted to spice up my house a little because soon enough I was going to get married. And when the wizard moved into my house, I wanted it to feel very arcane for the wizard. In the hopes that he would be inclined to have kids with myself. It was then time to do more fishing. I got the octopus finally. I needed that before fall. Just so I could complete all of the fishing collection. I was very happy to get that. I had the puffer fish as well. That completed the speciality fishing bundle. There was just a few fish left to actually complete. There was the eel that I needed to get. And there was also the walleye. 
It was the last day of summer, and this was going to be the very last harvest of hops that we were going to get. Once all of the hops were harvested, it took me the whole day to get rid of all the trellises and to replace them with wheat, because I didn't want to have to rehold the ground come fall. Having the steel watering can did help out in terms of getting everything watered before the day came to an end, and I got it done just by the skin of my teeth. Our house was now upgraded, it was slightly larger, so I had a lot more room to do stuff. It also had a cooker, so I could cook some items as well for community centre bundles. It was then time to visit the general store, and I was going to sell all the paid as to start with, and I got the achievement there, Millionaire, so we're the first of fall now, and we've already made over 1 million gold. So we're not doing too bad, especially if you look at the fact that we didn't use star fruit. I'm also going to purchase some corn here, some pumpkins, and I'm also going to get eggplant and a yam for the community centre bundles as well. The reason why I got 50 pumpkins is because I needed at least 5 gold star pumpkins to complete the quality crops bundle. I also got my iridium axe off Clint, thank you very much Clint. For the rest of the day, it was just spent planting crops on the farm, prepping it for a very interesting season indeed. I also made the mackie roll, that was quite easy to make, along with the fried egg. I had tons of eggs on me from the chickens, so the fried egg posed no challenge either. And they were also for community centre bundles. Because we were now in fall, we could now take on the lovely community quests. The first one we're going to go with is Robin's Resource Rush. We just needed to acquire 1,000 pieces of stone. Now, there's very easy ways you can do this if you have a deconstructor. You can just deconstruct staircases. We didn't have the luxury of deconstructors, so we would have to do it the old-fashioned way. But first, it was time to make more mayonnaise and complete more community centre bundles. I had the pomegranate and I also had the rabbit's foot. That was the enchantress bundle complete. Five gold bars as a reward. Look at all of this lovely mayonnaise we get to collect today. This is going to sell for tons of money. I also got the tiger trout. Super happy there. And I also picked up the sea cucumber because I needed that for the fishing collection. Tiger trout was needed for a fishing bundle. Once the tiger trout was submitted, that was the river fish bundle done. Dirty bait as a reward. All that was left was the night fishing bundle. I just needed an eel and a walleye for that one. So I needed it to rain to get those fish. I also completed the animal bundle. The reward was a cheese press. Very nice indeed. Because we will be making lots of cheese in this challenge. And all I needed now for the quality crops bundle was just the gold star corn and the gold star pumpkins, which we will have in time. It was time to work on the wizard a bit more. This time we had him on six out of eight hearts. And on the fourth of fall, it was time to get our first batch of wheat. And all of this wheat will be converted into beer. We are going to be beer farmers in fall. And we are going to make tons of money from selling beer down the road. It was time to go back to Robin. And this time we wanted to make another shade because we needed a lot more cakes. Because beer is something that gets processed very quickly in this game. Just over the day it would take for a wheat to turn into a beer. So we are going to have to come into these sheds almost every single day and harvest the hundreds if not thousands of beer that we will be making. It was now time to put tappers on these mahogany trees and what they're going to give back, believe it or not, is sap. And the reason why I needed so much sap is because I needed to make a lot more kegs and the material requirement in this challenge for kegs was sap, unfortunately. It was then time to get the ball rolling with Robin's Resource Rush. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to just go down through the mines as you normally would. But if you see the big stone chunks, break them open because they give 10 stone per chunk. Also, if you see the grey rocks, you get a good few stone from those as well. So as we can see, I am getting lots of sap off these lovely mahogany tappers. And they generate sap every single day. And you get loads of sap this way. And we needed thousands of sap to keep up with the cake production. We also went to Robin, got the shed upgraded, and it was time to convert even more hops into pale ale. But these hops that we had wouldn't last forever. Because the conversion had happened so fast, we would be running out of hops in just a few short days, and then it would be onto wheat processing into beer. I also purchased a few pigs today because I didn't want to bank on the travelling cart merchant to bring up a truffle. I wanted to guarantee my chances of completing the community centre, so I just purchased a few pigs because I could afford it. I was extremely rich at the moment with over 625,000 gold. Getting the sap every day off the mahogany tappers was just so nice. I was also given the wizard hair slash Sebastian <laughs> rabbit's feet every time my rabbits were kind enough to sever their limbs. So I finally learned the stone chest recipe. Thankfully, it was just stone needed to make that. So making chests was now slightly easier. 
because I had the wizard friendship maxed out, I'm going to get the bouquet so we could get the ball rolling with marriage eventually. The wizard of course would accept. It was now becoming a reality where we get to finally move in with a wizard. Every four days we would have to do the life draining task of harvesting all this wheat and replanting it back down. It was just so, so tedious. But you know what? It is a fantastic money maker. And here we have a nice scene with the wizard slash Sebastian just looking out over the dark horizon. I also fished up an eel today which I needed for the fishing collection and also for the community center bundle. So we're going to take Robin's project today. 80 hardwood is needed. That'll be easy enough to get. And we also fished up the walleye as well. We now had all the fish needed to finally complete the fish tank. So after donating the walleye and the eel, the reward is a small glory. But the big reward for the fish tank will be the pan so we can now pan up stuff if we so wish the next day it was time to have a crack at the legendary fall fish the angler probably one of the easiest fish to catch in the game it was sent back to clint but this time to upgrade tools but to process geodes and the reason why we wanted to process these geodes is because i wanted to get down into the sores to make some game progression i also got robin to upgrade my house yet again because i wanted to make my house a little bit bigger so when the wizard moved in he'd feel right at home. It was then back to farming all of the tree stumps in the secret woods to get hardwood for Robin's quest. We also needed tons of hardwood for future projects as well. The next day Gunther visited me and he was very happy with all the minerals and artifacts I was donating. He gave me the key to the sores. We could now go down and visit Krobus and access his rare and exotic goods. We have officially run out of hops to put into these kegs. We were now putting wheat into these kegs getting back bare and as you can see the profit margins are still quite good where we're getting 280 gold for every single bear that we sell and it's super easy to make bear in this game speaking of bears the pigs that i purchased weren't actually pigs they were bears as long as i could find truffles i didn't care what they were they could be three-headed ponies for all i care speaking of which if you made it this far into the video just put into the comments three-headed pony and ask me any question you like i will try my best to reply and if you have gotten this far thanks so much for being invested in my videos i really do appreciate it if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet just to remind you to hit that subscribe button it really helps me out back to the game i just fished up the mutant carp that is another legendary fish added to our fishing collection and it is back to scything away all of the wheat on our farm you know the great thing about scything away all this wheat is the sheer amount of hay that we're getting along the way we don't even have to think about purchasing hay off marnie to keep our animals fed we had huge amounts of hay ready to go it was then back to our lovely big shed look at all the bear we were getting we also got our gold watering can off clint why stop there though it was time to finalize the upgrades and upgrade that watering can to an iridium watering can speaking of iridium we're going to smelt more ores into iridium bars and we can sell those for a decent profit as well we're also going to get the last house upgrade off Robin, which will give us access to the casks that we need in order to complete the missing bundle later on in the challenge. Today it was raining, so I petted all my animals, and I was still working on the wizard here, giving him more gifts to get him up to 10 hearts, so we can get married, and I'll say it again, have lovely magical wizard kids. <laughs> it was back to harvesting even more bear. Now I purchased a wine off the champion cart merchant today, because now I didn't even have to think about getting wine any other way from the kegs because they were all being used up when it comes to beer and i could just put that wine into a cask to get a silver star wine for the missing bundle later on it was back to the secret woods and we were cutting down more tree stumps to get even more hardwood for robin's quest the next day it was time for the first batch of pumpkins i just needed one regular pumpkin and five gold star pumpkins and we got that no problem at all that was another bundle almost completed just needed the five gold star corn which we should have soon enough I did complete the fall crops bundle though. As a reward, I got the bee house. Then it was back down to the wizard to give him another rabbit's foot. God bless my poor rabbits. And the wizard still wasn't fully satisfied. He was still 9 out of 10 hearts. We were processing milk now into cheese. And we were also processing eggs into mayonnaise. And the day finally came where we could get all of the corn. I just needed 5 ghost star corns. And that more or less done it right there. 
I also put the wine into a cask. The house was now fully upgraded. We're also going to put some cheese into the casks here as well because Iridium cheese not only sells for a great profit, but it's also amazing to eat because it gives you tons of health and energy. We got first place at the Stardew Valley Fair. I gambled my star tokens again, but luck was not on my side. Because I had tons of money, I just purchased the star tokens instead to get the star drop, the rare crow and other bits and bobs that the Stardew Valley Fair merchant had an offer today. I just didn't want to spend time pulling up fish to get more star tokens and then gambling those. It was back to Robin to construct, this time, a fish pond. Because I needed to get caviar and the only way to get that without using the travelling cart is to make a fish pond and put a sturgeon inside. Pierre was having a nervous breakdown at the moment. I think it finally got to him. Caroline was in fact in love with Mary Lewis. Sorry Pierre. It was back to do another community centre quest. This time we're going to pick up fragments of the past and try to get 100 pieces of bone for Gunther himself. It was then back to the farm and we were sighting up more wheat ready to be turned into lovely bear. Speaking of which, these bears have finally found some choppers for me. I was so happy. That is not a community centre bundle. We could now complete. The chef's bundle was now done. The reward was some pink cakes. And we're also going to complete the quality crafts bundle as well. The reward was a preserve jar. Which will come in super handy for that caviar later on. That was two rooms now completed. With just one room remaining inside the community centre. We're also going to unlock the greenhouse. Which is going to be super interesting as well. We also picked up our iridium watering can from Clint. That was most of our tools now fully upgraded. Except of course for the trash can. And the hole, which we're going to upgrade right now, and that's going to be a copper hole in the next few days. So it was Marnie's birthday today, give her a rabbit's foot. But I wasn't just being a nice farmer, I was being a nosy farmer. I wanted to find out what exactly was going on between Marnie and Pierre. What did to Marnie's bedroom? I noticed some lucky purple shorts. It says return it to Lewis. But I wasn't going to return it to Lewis, instead I was going to give it to Pierre. And look what happened. You found them, where? Hey... I have no idea how they could have got there, so there's definitely something going on here between Pierre and Marnie. The same way that there's something going on between Caroline and Mayor Lewis. What is just going on in Stardew Valley at the moment? So because the greenhouse is fully upgraded, the starfruit seeds were only 6 gold more than what they normally are. That wasn't too bad, especially considering the profit margins you get for starfruit wine. So I went ahead and purchased a full stack of starfruit, and that would be used with the greenhouse all of the time. Now, I didn't have my trusty hoe on me to hoe up the ground. Not to worry, though. I had bombs that I could use to get the job done instead. So I had mega bombs just to hoe out the huge segments and then the smaller bombs to get the little squares that the bigger bombs didn't pick up. Then I put down the sprinklers, followed by the starfruit seeds, and then I had my iridium watering can to water up all the crops. Then I put down Deluxe Speed Grow, and that's going to dramatically increase the growth rate of these lovely starfruit so that I can pick them up every couple of days. It was then back to my big shade to get even more bears, and all of this lovely alcohol was going to make me tons of money. It was then time to get the last pieces of sap. After that, I decided that I had enough sap, enough kegs were made. It was time to cut on all the mahogany trees. I finally had the wizard 10 out of 10 hearts. We could now get married, and the next day was also a rainy day. Hurrah for me. Put the sturgeon into the fishing pond. That will generate a sturgeon row eventually, and that can be preserved into a caviar. Went back to Clint, got my copper hoe. I was going to give the hoe straight back in and upgrade that to a steel hoe. It was then time to get the lovely mermaid's pendant off of the old mariner here. It was finally time to ask the wizard to marry us. We could move in together and have magical kids. Yes. But before that, we had to sight the way all of our wheat yet again. And we had to farm even more bear to sell. Also back into the barn here too, we're converting milk back into cheese. And it's back to Clint again to get our steel hoe. And that'll be put straight back in and upgraded to a gold hoe. Now, the reason why I'm upgrading all the tools now is that if we get to Ginger Island around in the challenge, with all the upgraded tools, it'll be much easier to transverse. I'm also getting Robin to build another silo. And I'm also going to purchase all of the flooring recipes as well, just to add more customization to my farm. I also purchased the furniture catalogue and the plasma TV. I also purchased the regular catalogue from the general store as well along with one of each sapling now i didn't actually need to purchase the plasma tv because that comes included in the big furniture catalog that i got off robin but it's good to know for future runs i then purchased the monster fireplace off crobus along with the sign of the vessel just to make my house a bit more arcane -y. and here we have it 
this is what me and the wizard are going to live in and hopefully our future magical wizard kids. Each room had lots of really cool decorations and accessories to make any wizard feel like home. It was then time for another community quest. I picked up the curious substance as Morius here wanted an ectoplasm. I took a magic rock candy because I had horrible luck today and I needed all the luck I could get in order for one of these ghosts to drop an ectoplasm. Lo and behold, after a couple of ghost kills, I got lucky enough where one of the ghosts didn't manage to drop one. It did take quite some time, but it was worth it because this is going to get me a really cool reward, which is going to be the little mini obelisks that can transport you from one end of the farm to the other. Once I gave that to Sebastian here, the new magical wizard, he gave me 2,500 gold, but more importantly, he'll give me a cool recipe later on. It was also time to get ready for the wedding. I made two suits, one using a bouquet and the other using a rare disc. Both suits were slightly different. One was a navy suit, the other one was a top suit. So I decided to go for just a regular suit top. And it finally happened. I got married to a magical wizard. It was now time to focus on this wizard with everything I had. I tried to get some magical babies. It was then back to Robin. We were going to construct even more structures to make our farm look nice and pretty. And of course functional. We are going to go with yet another silo. Because fall was coming to an end and I wanted to accumulate as much hay as possible before we got into winter. I gave Clint my hoe again to upgrade that to an iridium hoe and I gave our lovely wizard husband a good kiss and a prismatic shard to get his friendship levels up. The next day it was finally time for the last harvest of all our wheat. I also picked up the sweet gemberry that we were growing all season and that could be traded in for a star drop just inside the secret woods here at this shrine. That was another star drop added to the collection. There was still a few more star drops to get though. We were now ending fall and before winter kicked in I wanted to harvest as much grass as possible to accumulate tons of hay so I wouldn't have to buy any for winter. I got my iridium hoe back off Clint. That's all of the tools now except the trash can fully upgraded. I had three silos ready to go so I filled that silo right up to the top. I had 720 pieces of hay. I was now fully sorted in terms of food for my lovely animals come the winter season. I also picked up the sturgeon roll and that can be put into a preserve jar now to get caviar which we need for the upcoming missing bundle so we can get access to the theatre and the theatre is a great way to get friendship points with all of the Stardew Valley NPCs. I then went into the tunnel here to collect even more bear and it finally happened the starfruit could be collected this would all be turned into lovely starfruit wine. I also tried to plant as I collected the starfruit to save myself some time it was now time for the lovely Halloween event. I purchased the rare crow. I also got some recipes and the funky rug that I think would make for a great addition over back at home. I also picked up the golden pumpkin and we would give that to my lovely husband as well to increase friendship points even further. The next day was the usual harvesting of beer and it was back to Robin then to make some house renovations. I got her to expand the house and the great thing about this is that she expands the house for free. You can add two rooms onto the house no charge whatsoever. I also got her to make a stables. She needed two iridium bars. Normally you don't need iridium to make the stables, but I had iridium bars to burn. We were now in the first of winter and I wanted to complete the community center as quickly as possible. So I started hoeing up the beach here to get the snow yam that I needed. I also needed the crocus as well and we do end up picking that up. So in terms of forgeables, it's it looks like that come winter, the randomizer didn't do anything weird. We were getting all the usual winter forgeables. We also got the magnifying glass off Krobus there so we can now find hidden notes all over Stardew Valley and beyond. So that was the final bundle completed, the winter foraging bundle. That was the quarry unlocked and the community center finished. Speaking of unlocking the quarry, we can now go into the quarry cave and get the goodies within. Before we did that though, we had to keep on top of our lovely bear production. It was time to collect all of our bear and start pulling up more of the winter fish. So we almost had all of the fishing collection done. We just had to get the squid, the lingcod and a few other bits and bobs that you can only get in winter to get that collection finished. Here is a cool cutscene here of the community center, fully complete. Vincent is having a great time up there in the top right, pointing his finger up and down. Well done Vincent. It was then time to get the hardest fish in the game, in my opinion. I took a dish of the sea to increase my fishing skill. 
It was then time to fight the glacier fish. Now I'm going to show the full attempt with this one. I sped it up 3x just to show you how long this fight actually dragged on for. This glacier fish just literally spun from one end of the meter to the other. It was just so hard, so hard to catch. But we got there eventually and that was another fish added to the collection. I also got the dark talisman here in the mutant bug layer. Fished up the void salmon as well as the void mayonnaise. I'm going to give the void mayonnaise to the henchman just so I can get access to the magical ink so I can access the wizard's magical terminal. And we need that magical terminal if we want to make advanced structures such as the warp obelisks and the Junima huts and other bits and bobs. I also got access to the shrine that allows me to change my character's features. That's also a very interesting piece. So I had my silver star wine. I had my caviar. And because I met it rain, I could now access the hidden bundle inside the Georgia Mart. And the bundle can be quite challenging if you haven't prepared for it. Thankfully, we have prepared for it and we had all mats on us to complete that bundle, no problem at all, including the dinosaur mayonnaise, the void fish and all the other bits and bobs that we collected throughout our journey. It was finally time to fix up Willie's boat to get access to Ginger Island. And the mat requirements were the same. It was five battery packs, five iridium bars and 200 hardwood to fix up Willie's boat. We then got a star drop of our lovely, magical wizard husband. That was one more star drop in the bag. I decided to purchase some movie tickets today and I wanted to cheer my husband up. So we are going to give the wizard here one ticket, another ticket for me and we we're going to go see a movie together. The best thing to get the wizard here now slash Sebastian is a jasmine tea. He absolutely loves that. He doesn't however love the miracle at Costa Ranch. He hated that so it kind of evened itself out. I pulled up the slime jack today, that was needed for the fishing collection. And before we went to bed, we got a cool scene here of Willy and Robin working together to fix up the boat for Ginger Island. The next day, I visited the quarry cave and I managed to round up all of the skulls in one fell swoop and kill them all. There is a chance they can drop magic rock candies, but it is extremely rare. I did, however, get the golden sight. Once that was obtained, I could then warp on out of here and continue on with our lovely randomized quest. Over on Ginger Island it was time to get some golden walnuts. I needed to get enough golden walnuts to access the beach area so I could fish up some stingrays. They were needed for the fishing collection if I wanted to get the star drop off Willy for catching every fish in the game. I did however upgrade my house here on Ginger Island so I could use it as a checkpoint and I put up a lionfish here as well. I also got the blue discus earlier. All that was needed now over on Ginger Island was the stingray. The next day I went and did a volcano run. I purchased a couple of recipes here from the dwarf, especially the ginger ale that is so overpowered because it gives you a luck increase. You can replace the coffee buff. Got some more golden walnuts inside the volcano. I got one from each chest, which was really nice. You also get golden walnuts from killing enemies, mining open ores and other bits and bobs around the volcano. I chanted my sword with the least favorite enchant that I wanted, which was haymaker. I just didn't need haymaker at all. It was then time to do the winter fishing event and there was some very strange shenanigans going on here. We had double Haley's, we had one Haley playing in the water, another Haley cheering on the Haley playing in the water and then <laughs> we had two Leahs and we had one dancing in the water and the other one dancing beside her. I thought this was just absolutely hilarious just watching Leah go but you know what sometimes it is great fun to just jump in puddles of water and dance your heart out. I, of course, won the fishing event, got the sailor's cap and the other goodies. Then it was time to get all of our lovely winter forageables, and we would make more winter wild seeds and put them back into the ground. It was then time to convert some starfruit into starfruit wine. That was going to sell for an absolute ton of money. I then went back to the theatre, and I decided to take on the lovely theatre minigame, the crane game, to get loads of little Junimo plushies. I put these inside the baby room. Just to kind of send some signals to my husband that I wanted kids and I wanted them now. I wanted magical wizard kids. 340,000 gold from Starfruit Wine. I had enough money to get one big obelisk so I could have got the desert obelisk or two regular obelisks. I went with two reb regular obelisks. I went with the earth obelisk and I went with the beach obelisk. I also went to the shrine of illusions here, paid 500 gold and I changed my character from a male to a female in the hopes that my partner might be more encouraged to have kids with me because as far as I was concerned he wasn't going to adopt them. It was then back to Ginger Island to get more golden walnuts and there was golden walnuts hidden all over the place here and because I found a few secret journals I was able to get a few secret golden walnuts as well. 
just about enough to upgrade the beach area and get access to the last ginger island area I needed to pull up the stingray. After a couple of fishing attempts, I managed to get a stingray bite, and it wasn't too hard to pull that up out of the water. The pearl I got was converted into a bridal veil. I now had the full bridal dress ready to go. Could I entice my partner to have kids with me? Let's find out. But I wasn't going back to the farm just yet. I decided to go into the bathhouse and give myself a nice bath so I could smell nice and fresh for my partner when I got back to the farm. I sat down at the lovely seat here just outside of the bathhouse to put on some makeup. I was now ready to go. I felt fresh. I felt good. I felt confident. Let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. The next day, I got a comment here saying I was mumbling in my sleep. The wizard said I seemed scared, but I have to admit it was kind of cute. I tried to kiss the wizard, but he turned away from me. It just wasn't working out. I decided to take out my frustration and some helpless slimes here in the volcano dungeon. Yoba bless their souls. I was fuming with anger at the moment that my husband would not have kids with me. So we were going to spend the whole day in the volcano dungeon massacring enemies. I did however want to enchant my bride with the master enchant to get plus one skin on fishing because I really wanted to get the iridium crobus. But unfortunately I just didn't get lucky enough. I managed to get auto hook and efficient but I wanted master. Didn't have enough resources to go for another attempt. It was then time to cut down some trees to try to increase my foraging skill. I wanted to see if I could get that to 10 before the challenge was finished. There was only a few days left in the challenge though. So I also spent some time with mega bombs here. Just blowing away all the resources in the quarry to get stone, copper and other bits and bobs. I was thinking about doing a project in the quarry but because it was a 100 day challenge there just wasn't enough time to do that. I went with biome balance here now and I just needed to get some ocean fish, 20 in total. So I spent a whole day pulling up ocean fish to make Demetrius happy. Maybe Demetrius can give me some nice kids. They won't be magical kids but you can be sure they'd be super smart scientist kids. I got some nice rewards from killing the floaty skulls, including an aquamarine ring, critical strike chance plus 10%. That night I went for a game of darts, and you can actually play darts up to 3 times. Each time the minigame gets harder because you get less darts to score 301 points, but you do get 3 golden walnuts from doing the game. It was then time to collect more starfruit wine, and this is going to get me a ton of money. Then it was on to the submarine event to get the last 3 fish I needed. So I needed the blobfish, the spookfish and the midnight squid and that was the entirety of the fishing collection completed. Before I went back to the farm I decided to purchase a painting of the famous Lupini, the red eagle painting and I also changed the bed in the hopes that my partner might want me to have kids but alas it just wasn't going to happen. Instead a meteor hit my farm, broke it up for the Rydia Moors, got a star fruit off Willy for catching all the fish because Willy doesn't have any kids so he passed the starfruit onto me. Then something clicked. What if I married Willy? He would surely have kids with me. And there you have it folks. That is 100 days using the randomizer mod. Thanks again for watching. I do really appreciate you. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Make sure to check out my other 100 day videos. I have tons of 100 day videos on this channel. So just visit my channel page. Click on videos and you will see a huge array of different type of 100 day videos for you to watch and enjoy. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley but as a vegan. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome back to another 100 day Stardew Valley challenge. Veganism is a lifestyle that avoids all animal foods such as meat, dairy, eggs and honey. Also animal derived products like leather. So taking this into consideration let's look at the rules we have set up for this video. Rule number one, we cannot use any animals in Stardew Valley or take advantage of any animal products. Rule number two, we cannot kill any monsters in the game. We must respect the natural life cycle of all monsters in Stardew Valley. And for the final rule, we will not be allowing ourselves to fish in Stardew Valley. All fish must be respected. Taking those rules into consideration, let's have a look at two of the primary goals that we have set up for this challenge. The first is to make as much money as possible. How much money can we make in a full year? using the rules that we've imposed upon ourselves. 
The second goal is to complete the community center. This will now be possible using a vegan mod that replaces some of the bundles in the community center with vegan approved bundles. All mods are in the description of the video. Let's get straight into the challenge and let's have some fun. Day one of the challenge commences on our lovely cozy vegan farm. We start by cutting down a couple of trees so we can get just enough wood to craft our very first chest. This will be used to store everything we pick up over the next few days. It was then time to move on to the farming aspect of the game and we start by hoeing up the ground. We plant our free 15 parsnip seeds and we also plant some mixed seeds as well there as there's a chance they can eat potatoes and cauliflowers. Once that's done, we're going to spend the rest of the day running around the map collecting as many forgeables as possible in the hopes to increase our skill to forging level 1 so we can make spring wild seeds in the near future. I also run down to the beach and I picked up a mussel here and I also picked up an oyster. But because of the rules that I have imposed by myself, I couldn't actually sell these items because they were fish, so I just turned them back into the sea. I did however find some lovely spring onions which are going to come in super handy later on for cutting down more trees and making the most out of day one. These are probably one of the best things you can get in day one for quick reserves of energy. I got super lucky at the end of today and I got a fairy which is going to boost my crop production by huge amounts. So I was able to harvest seven parsnips and a cauliflower today thanks to our lovely fairy friend. I then spent a good portion of today just holding up the ground and planting some spring wild seeds that I made. It was then time to check out some of the help wanted quests. And we had Haley here looking for a green algae. So Haley was a prime candidate for the flower dance. I decided to give her the green algae just to get some friendship points and some extra money with her. She also commented saying nice shoes are those made out of plastic. And I took that as a great compliment because we can't use any clothing made from leather. It was then time to speak to Pierre. I sold him my parsnips, my cauliflowers, my cookies and bread. And these are all vegan friendly variants of course and I spent all my money on kale. The reason why I bought so much kale is because it only takes six days for it to grow and it's a really nice money maker. So I got my fishing rod off Willy. I quickly turned that into the water because we won't be doing any fishing in this challenge. I also visited Gunther today as well and I managed to get a chicken statue from the farm, handed that in for a nice reward of 250 gold. And that 250 gold will come super handy later on as I can purchase more crops with that. For the rest of the day, I actually was mining rocks on the farm because they give mining XP. Mining level 1 not only gives me the ability to make a cherry bomb, but it gives me pickaxe proficiency which means less energy when I use my pickaxe. So day number 3 was a rainy day. I normally fish on day number 3, but because we are a vegan, we couldn't actually fish today. Instead, I spent the day just doing foraging. I also picked up a sashimi inside of a trash can, but because of my strict veganism way of life, I could not eat or sell this sashimi. I figured the best thing to do was to just throw it into the water and be done with it. Despite the fact that it was raining today, there was still plenty to do around Stardew Valley, including scything up all of the fibre the game has to offer. Fibre will come in super handy later on in the video, especially when it comes to making things like tree fertilizers, tea saplings, and other bits and bobs down the road. There was also lots and lots of fibre on the farm that we could scythe up as well, so I spent the great majority of the day doing just that. Day number 4 starts with watering up the crops, and many days will start this way until we unlock the sprinklers of course. I had a look at the help wanted quest, Shane was looking for an eel, that was a no go for us, so we decided to push on and get on with the rest of our day. I found Caroline in the square here, give her a daffodil, Caroline was super happy with that. We would attempt to push Caroline to two hearts, so she would tell us the secrets of the tea sapling, which will make us tons of profits. I got another level in foraging today which was great, that pushes me up to level 2 foraging and it just means more proficiencies for me. The less energy is used every time I swing my axe and we're going to be doing a lot of axe swinging in this video. <laughs> the more proficient we get in foraging, the less energy we use while using the axe. So we got a cat off Marnie today, we're going to call it a cat veggie. It is going to be the first vegetarian cat to ever exist in Stardew Valley. As far as I'm concerned, of course. <laughs> I also managed to pick up some parsnips today, which was great. I'll end up selling those for some extra profit. I also went into the mines today, but I had to be super careful in the mines. I could not destroy any enemies whatsoever. So the main tactic was to avoid enemies at all costs, mine up all of the nodes that I see, hope to get the ladder as quickly as possible, and descend down into the next floor. Rinse and repeat until I get to floor 120. When I got to floor 6, I got an ambushed room. 
And I got stuck here because I couldn't kill any enemies. And the only way to clear this room was by either A, killing all the enemies, which unlocks the ladder, or building a staircase yourself and using that. But I needed 100 stone to make one of those. I didn't have enough stone to make a ladder. The next day, it was time to look at the community center. So I start with the spring foraging bundle. And that just required one of each spring forage, which was easy enough. The reward, 30 spring wild seeds. They were going to be planted right on the farm. I also purchased one of almost every spring crop from Pierre as I needed those for community center bundles. So it was time to get all those set up on the farm. It was then back down to the mines and the goal was level 10 for now. When I got to level 10, I picked up leather boots. And the first thing that struck me here was the fact that these boots were leather, so I couldn't actually use them. So I had to throw the boots away, unfortunately. Hopefully, the next set of boots will have a description in them that won't indicate they are made from leather. The next day, our lovely kale was ready to be harvested, so we're going to scythe all this up, get level up in farming, and we're going to sell all this kale to make even more money and put that back into crops. This tactic will rinse and repeat itself, until we have tons of crops on the farm, which equals tons of lovely money. Demetrius was looking for a red mushroom. We will oblige, of course, because we needed to get friendship points with Demetrius to learn certain recipes for the new vegan community center bundles that we'll touch off later on in the video. But for now, we were going to settle for a backpack upgrade, which means our cave dwelling runs will be that much more profitable as we can store more items in our bags, so we're throwing away less. Today we're going with parsnip seeds and not kale because I wanted that extra bit of money so I can purchase lots of strawberries come the 13th, come the Easter event. So when I got to floor number 16 here, it was an ambush floor. I did come prepared, however, and I met a staircase which let me get down to floor 17 and I could motor on then, no problem at all, and try to make it to floor 20 before the day was out. The biggest problem with not sending enemies for this challenge was that I couldn't increase my combat level, hence I could not increase the HP my character had when it comes to taking hits off enemies. The starter enemies aren't so bad, but there will come a time where enemies will almost one-shot my character because my combat level will always be zero for the whole run. When I got to floor 20, I got the steel small sword. Now I swapped this out for the rusty sword, and the only reason I did this was because the steel small sword looked a little bit cooler. <laughs> I couldn't kill enemies, so it didn't really make a difference what weapon I had. The next day, look at all these lovely spring forageables ready to be harvested. I made 70 spring wild seeds from that harvest. I'm going to plant those straight back into the farm, and this method will be rinsed and repeated over and over again until we have hundreds, if not thousands, of lovely spring forageables. Demetrius gave me 225 gold today, giving him the red mushroom. I also got level 3 foraging. I can now make tappers, and I do end up making lots of tappers later on in the challenge. I picked up another help wanted quest today from Leah. She was just looking for a Georgia Cola. I was lucky enough to get one out of a trash can here. I didn't really need to accumulate a whole lot of friendship points with Leah, but 75 gold was not in the snuff at, especially when we're coming up so close to the Easter event where we can get those strawberries. So I completed a recycling bundle today. As a reward, I got a recycling machine. A very handy item indeed, especially if we're tearing open trash cans every day. Gave Leah the George Cola. She was happy with that. That was more money in my pocket. Back down to the mines, we are now on the dark floors. When I got to floor 39, I had the usual problem here of almost zero energy. So instead of making the sacrifice and almost passing out, I just made a staircase because I had the stone to do it. Got down to floor 40. I got the slingshot here. I don't end up using that because it's a bit too risky, especially when it comes to the enemies in the game. It could potentially one-shot one of those flying critters. The next day, I got cookies from the lovely mother. Thank you so much, mum. And I can say for sure that these were vegan-friendly cookies. Milk was not used to make these, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> there was one day left on the parsnips, which meant I could sell those on the 12th, and I would have lots of money for strawberries on the 13th. I picked up the last axe that belonged to Robin, so that would be a handy 250 gold. We will return that into Robin there. Friendship points with Robin, but more importantly, 250 gold in our pocket. It was then back down to the mines, and the great thing about dust sprites is that they would mine open some of the ores for you. So I considered them to be a friend, until they started attacking me. <laughs> On floor 44, things got very dicey indeed. This is just a sped up version of what I actually went through in the mines. I was trying to get a staircase because on floor 44, didn't want to start back on floor 40 if I left. 
The choice was made clear after a few minutes of running around, die, or leave the mines. I decided to leave and reset progression just a little bit. The next day cheered me up quite a bit. I was able to harvest tons of crops on the farm, sell those, and then I was straight back down into the mines to make some more progress. Got down to floor 50, I got the tundra boots, checked out the description of these, and I read the fuzzy lining keeps your ankles so warm. Not in there about leather or anything that vegans can't use, so I put the boots on straight away. Plus two defense was hugely welcome to my character. It was a great day in the mines. Before I knew it, I was down to floor 60 and picked up the crystal dagger. This was no good, of course, as the secondary function of the dagger was a high DPS multi-hit attack. I decided to keep the steel small sword because of its secondary function allowed me to defend myself against monster attacks. Floor 61 was, of course, an ambush floor. I didn't have enough stone to make a staircase, so I left and decided to farm the previous floors. The next day, I purchased 54 strawberries. Not too bad for a run that involves no fishing. I'm going to plant those on the farm. But before I do that, it was time to win the lovely straw hat, which I win in every challenge video because I've done it so many times now, I last count. <laughs> of course, the winner was Gamer Gar, and as a reward, the lovely straw hat. The next day, it was the 14th, and we begin with picking up all of the lovely forageables on the farm. Leeks, daffodils, horseradishes, and dandelions, all ready to be picked up. I made over 100 wild spring seeds, gonna plant those straight back on the farm, and that cycle will of course rinse and repeat itself. I also had strawberries planted on the farm as well, so we were off to a really strong mid-summer approach. It was then time to give Haley some gifts because it was her birthday, and I wanted to get her to four hearts for the flower dance just so I'd have someone to dance with. I felt like Haley understood my veganism ways, especially when she commented on my plastic shoes earlier on in the video. So it's back down in the mines, and I love showing footage like this where you come across rooms with tons and tons of crates. You never know what goods you might get out of those crates. When I got down into the 70s, I found the skeleton type enemies to be very difficult to deal with because they just would not lose aggro. Despite the fact that they weren't very fast, I only had a regular pickaxe, and sometimes I found myself cornered and they would throw projectiles at me, so getting through those floors was very difficult. The next day was a magnificent day. We finally got access to Caroline's secret sunroom. She would give us recipe for the tea sapling. I also made it down to floor 80 in the mines on day 15 here. Got the firewalker boots. A massive increase in defense, plus 3 defense, plus 3 immunity. Also, the description of these boots said nothing about leather, so I figured it was okay to use these boots on a daily basis. When I got down into 82 here now, it got very dicey indeed. Not only did the red slimes pack a massive wallop, but if they debuffed me and my character got really slow, it was more or less impending doom for me. The bats were a nuisance as they were very fast. The nodes didn't restrict them like they restricted other enemies, so I had to get out of here very quickly indeed. It was going to take a lot of luck, a lot of RNG to get down to floor 100 without getting killed. It would all come down to what spawned on each floor. If I got spawns like this, I wasn't going to get very far unless I had lots of staircases. The next day, I'm going to spend a whole day cutting down trees because I needed wood to make tea saplings because I needed to make lots and lots of money if I wanted some really good progress in spring. The main tactic here was to get enough money together to get star fruit in summer. So we start by pulling up all of the forageables the farm has to offer. I could then turn all these forageables into spring wild seeds. Now because we're on the 17th, I could still plant a lot of these spring wild seeds back into the farm. But I would also convert a lot into tea saplings, just to get my hands on some big money early on. I managed to make 85 tea saplings in total. That's over 40,000 gold in the bag. It was then time to complete some of the community centre bundles. The spring crops bundle was an easy one to do. As a reward, I got 20 speed grows. I decided to keep those for now. I might use them later on in the challenge. I managed to finish off all of the minor bundles as well. The geologist bundle, the miner bundle. We also had an explorer's bundle here. Instead of slime and bat wings and solar essences and void essences, it gave us artifacts to find. Thankfully, I managed to get those artifacts, no problem at all. Completing all the bundles in the boiler room, this would unlock fast traveling for us around Stardew Valley. The minecarts are always super handy to get early on in the game. It was also salmonberry day today, so I spent a good portion of today running around, rummaging through all the bushes, showing Linus who the king of foraging really is. Level 5 foraging, we're going to go with the gatherer perk, a chance to pick up two forageables instead of one. 42,655 gold at the end of day number 17, 
This of course triggers Demetrius to visit our farm. We're going to go with the Bat Cave. I find this to be the best choice when it comes to completing the community center as the bats can sometimes find items such as oranges and peaches that can speed up in-game progression. It was time to visit Clint here and upgrade our tool. We're going to start with the pickaxe. I find that the regular pickaxe is really slowing me down in the later levels of the mines. A copper pickaxe should make life a little bit more manageable for us. The next day, it was just back to good old foraging. I also went down to the beach. There was lots of stuff to pick up on the beach. Now, I could pick up the clams and sell those no problem because there's nothing living in the clams. I do decide to pick up the other items that were labelled as fish, but I end up throwing all those into the water. I just wanted to forage an XP. I spent a great deal of day today just clearing more space on the farm because these farm patches were going to get way bigger over the next few days, especially when we go into summer and especially when we go into fall. So it's best to clear the farm of all resources as quickly as possible to make the most out of your farm space. So the next day we're going to visit Clint again. We're going to get our copper pickaxe back from him. This is going to make mining much easier. It's time to upgrade more tools. We're going to go with a copper pickaxe upgrade so we can cut down those trees much faster. I'm also going to spend a lot of money today on kale seeds. I'm going to purchase 200 in total. Plant those down in the farm. Now that will take a considerable amount of time to water on a daily basis. But that will pay off when it comes to harvesting those kales six days from now. So we're going to spend a great deal of time today hoeing up the ground. Getting it ready for all these lovely kale seeds. This massive farming endeavour will require lots of energy. Thankfully, we had lots of seeds from chopping down trees to make field snacks. And these are absolutely magnificent for restoring energy, allowing me to continue on with cutting down trees and watering crops every single day. On the 21st of spring, look at all these lovely foragebles we get to collect. Using all these foragebles, I was able to make 270 wild spring seeds. And they will all be converted into tea saplings eventually. So I purchased a summer spangle today. I also grabbed the fairy rose. And I also grabbed the tulip as well. Because I needed all those for community center bundles. All of the original fish tank bundles have been replaced with vegan approved bundles. The flower bundles is just one example. To my surprise, I was not expecting five warp totems to the desert for completing that bundle. This meant I could bypass spending all my money to unlock the bus to get starfruit at the end of spring and just use a warp totem instead so I could get a lot more starfruit than usual. So it was a really nice tactic I could implement there by getting that desert warp totem. When I got to floor 87 in the mines, it was an ambushed floor. I didn't have enough stone on me to make a staircase, so unfortunately, I had to leave. But at the end of the day, I did make almost 42,000 gold. With all that money at my disposal, I decided to purchase the last of the backpack upgrades, increasing my inventory to 36 slots. I also got my copper axe off Clint. This would make cutting down trees a lot more efficient for me. It was also time to get Clint to break open all of these geodes as there was a bundle in the community center called the Sparkly Bundle and I needed items that you can only get from geodes to complete that bundle. Four rare mineral items were required. This would prove to be one of the more challenging bundles to complete in the game as I was at the mercy of RNG. I did however get an ocean stone. That was one of the four items needed. The rest of the minerals I got, I could donate to Gunther. So let's have a look at the fish tank bundle here, the sparkly bundle. We needed an ocean stone, a gemonite, an aeronite, and an alamite. So there were four minerals you could only get from geodes to get that bundle done. I decided to not take chances with RNG, purchased some saplings, which would guarantee me an apple, a pomegranate, a peach, and an orange come summer and fall as I needed those for the artisan bundle and a few other bits and bobs. Back on the farm, it was time to use my copper axe to its full effect and get rid of all these tree stumps. Not only did they give me a great amount of XP, but I was also clearing space on the farm. So on floor 97 here, very close to floor 100, I got a little bit greedy and I tried to get a ladder down into the next level before these enemies could catch up and spell my demise. Now I had two bats currently on me at the moment. I was able to evade them mostly but when they swarmed like this damage was inevitable the problem here was the debuff i got off one of the slimes they slowed me down so my maneuverability literally went from 100 to zero and then i was picked off quite easily as a result i lost 5,000 gold and lots of valuable items the biggest pain was the 35 gold ore that i lost as i really needed that to make gold bars to make sprinklers 
Level 5 mining though, I'm going to go with the minor perk plus 1 ore per vein. That's a no-brainer upgrade for me as I need to make lots and lots of sprinklers over the next few days. If I can automate the farm, come summertime with the sprinklers, I'll be off to a great start. So I went to the flower dance festival today. I picked up the 10 dandelions and the 10 daffodils because I needed those to make more spring wild seeds. I also picked up the rare crow as well because it looked really cool. There was only one NPC that would be my dance partner at this event and that was of course Hayley as I was working on Hayley over the past couple of weeks in terms of doing quests and giving her gifts so that we can make this flower dance happen. The reason why I worked with Hayley is because she's one of the easiest to get up to four hearts before the event because her birthday happens before the event and giving her a daffodil is always an easy way to get friendship points. Level 7 foraging was a great way to end that day with getting the tree fertilizer. I also got the copper watering can off Clint, but we weren't finished there. It was time to get another tool upgraded. It was time to upgrade our pickaxe to a steel pickaxe, which would make life a lot easier for us back down in the mines. We spent the rest of the day cutting down trees as I needed to make even more farm space and I also needed lots and lots of wood to make more tea saplings and to make other bits and bobs that we need later. The next day it was time to harvest the last batch of strawberries. There was also just one day left on the gales so we were going to get a mega harvest the day after this. It's also worth noting that I visit a travelling cart every single time she becomes available because I needed items from her that she couldn't get in year one. A lot of the community centre bundles that replaced the fish tank bundles were recipes you could only learn in year two so it was up to the travelling cart and Gus to see if I could complete those bundles in year one. For the rest of the day we were cutting on even more trees. I also planted some seeds in the ground here and we're going to use tree fertilizers to grow those trees up very quickly and we'll attach tappers to those trees as well to get some early resins. The next day it was time to harvest all of the kale. Not only were we going to get huge farming XP from this, we we're also going to get huge amounts of money. I kept the steel pickaxe off Clint. The ball was now rolling for a good successful year. It was time to upgrade our copper axe to a steel axe also. I got a mushroom floor in 496, I was really happy with this. The purple mushrooms are by far one of the best forageables you can pick up in this game, especially if you get iridium quality purple mushrooms. They are absolutely amazing. We also had to remember that our combat level was still and will always be zero, so we had to make sure that none of these enemies would land attacks on us as we could die very quickly. I decided to go all the way down to the bottom of this spiral floor in the hopes to get something really good out of the crates, get anything great but also I couldn't find any staircases. It was hard enough finding a staircase in the spiral floor but having enemies like this follow you around and take bits of your health off every few seconds was extra challenging. I would like nothing more than to take out my obsidian edge and end this enemy within a few swings but I had to stick to the rules and eventually I just decided to make a staircase and get down to floor 100 because just luck wasn't on my side today. But when I did get to floor 100 I was able to pick up the lovely star drop this is our first star drop of the run and this not only replenishes our energy to max but it also increases our maximum energy meaning we can do a lot more in the day that is given to us without the need for taking food to replenish energy level 6 farming rewards us with the quality sprinkler that's an absolute game changer for us and we will be making hundreds and hundreds of quality sprinklers in this challenge i also got thirty thousand gold there on the 27th of spring for selling all of that kale that we planted on the farm the next day was all about farm management on our lovely vegan farm and we start by getting rid of all of these giant stone nodes. Now we didn't get any mining experience for getting rid of these nodes but what we did get was 15 stone a pop which was really good for making future staircases and completing bundles such as this. The construction bundle was now completed. The reward was a charcoal kennel, a very nice item indeed if we needed coal later on. It was time to make another staircase as floor 109 was an ambush floor. This got us down to floor 110 and the reward were fabulous space boots. And these would more than likely be the best boots that we're going to get in the challenge. Plus 4 defense and plus 4 immunity, they were a welcome addition to our character. The more defense we had, the more punishment we could take from enemies before our character meets his demise. <laughs> we finally made it down to floor 120. We got the skull key. This meant we could now do skull cavern runs, but we needed to prepare properly for skull cavern runs because we couldn't slay enemies. We had to rely on staircase spamming in the skull cavern for successful runs and to farm levels in the skull cavern that don't have any high mobility enemies, such as the serpents, for example, or the iridium bats. 
So I got my steel axe upgraded today. Super happy with that. I can now access the secret woods. Because it was the first day of summer, it was time to use one of the five warp totems to the desert. And we're going to visit Sandy here. And we're going to use all our money to buy starfruit seeds. Now a starfruit seed costs 400 gold a pop. These seeds, however, are the key to reaching millions of gold by the end of year one. It's one of the most profitable crops in the game, especially if you convert it into starfruit wine, which we will be doing, of course, in this challenge. So we're going to spend a great deal of time today planting all of our starfruit seeds on the farm. We also set up our sprinklers, and because we have the watering can here now, the copper one, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to actually water up all the farm. The steel axe means that we can get a lot more forging XP on a daily basis because we can start with the logs on the farm. Now these won't respawn but we can get into the secret woods later on and we can farm at the tree stumps in there every single day. Each tree stump yields 25 forging XP and that's actually a fair bit of XP every single day if you cut down all of the tree stumps in the secret woods. So you can actually get level 10 foraging a lot sooner rather than later if you come in here every single day and just cut these down. Later on in the day, we visit the community center and we're going to donate a grape, a sweet pea and a spice berry to be rewarded with 30 summer seeds that we can plant straight back into the farm. And we can then harvest those, rinse and repeat for tons of summer forageables later on in the video. I was smelting copper bars today because I needed to make tappers to put on trees to get back resins. I also needed copper bars to make kegs and I end up making loads of kegs later on in the video. The bat cave produced some really nice forageables. They were small little game changers, the pomegranate being one of course. I also made some tappers that I could put on my fully grown trees. I had two of each tree type, which would generate two maple syrups, two pine tars and two oak resins every couple of days. It was time to go into the craft room. The exotic foragey bundle could now be completed, thanks to the few bits and bobs I also got in the desert. The coconut and the cactus came in super handy for that. Five autumn bounties as a reward. I could sell those, no problem. Back to the help wanted quest. We got a quest off Demetrius to get a sweet pea. We of course obliged because we needed to get Demetrius to Tree Hearts to learn the fried mushroom recipe because one of the community center bundles required a fried mushroom to complete. So we had to get friendly with Demetrius. He was on two hearts out of ten at the moment. We also went to Clint. It was time to upgrade more tools. We're going to go with the copper hoe this time. The hoe will come in super handy later on, especially when it gets fully upgraded. Back down into the mines and we were farming copper. We're also farming stone. We're also farming fiber. So every resource that the lower section of the mines has on hand, we need it for various projects that were happening on the farm, especially stone for staircases later on. Also needed stone for tree fertilizers. The success of this challenge will largely come down to how much of the basic resources can be accumulated. That's why it's super important to upgrade your tools as early as possible so you can make the most of your day, you can make the most of the time you are given for each day. If you treat each day like a separate project, generally you will do very well by the end of the year when it comes to making millions of gold instead of making thousands or just mere hundreds of thousands of gold. So we're on floor 81 now today and we're going to farm this floor for the whole day and we're farming it for fibre but if we do see other valuable minerals we'll grab those as well. The next day I managed to make over 31 tappers and I also made some tree fertilizers as well, 66 tree fertilizers in total. I do end up making a lot more because I want to make massive tree farms where I'm going to get tons and tons of oak resins every couple of days and then I'll be able to make loads of cakes provided I have the copper and the wood to make that happen. Today was also travelling cart merchant day so like most days when the merchant turns up we go and check the inventory. This time we got super lucky, the travelling cart had a poppy seed muffin. We needed this for one of the community centre bundles so I purchased that without hesitation. It was then time to make another huge tree farm. Now this tree farm would be set up with some tappers, but I do end up just using it primarily for wood generation. I got an orange today. It was super lucky. It was also Gus's birthday. He loves oranges. So I was going to get lots of friendship points with Gus. I also got my copper hoe today as well. I was super happy with that. The main reason we're accumulating friendship points with Gus is because we need to get up to seven hearts to learn the cranberry sauce recipe, which we need for the community center. Gus had fried mushrooms on him today. This was marvellous. This meant we didn't have to get Demetrius to Tree Hearts. We could just buy the fried mushroom off Gus and put that into the community centre. So this is the snacks bundle. I had two items in there now at the moment. The hash browns and I had the fried eggs. Just needed the roasted hazelnuts and the tortilla. 
So it was back to the mines now today and I was farming iron ores today because you need iron and copper to make cakes. You also need iron and gold to make quality sprinklers. So there's always a need for metal bars when it comes to serious progression in this game to maximize each season and to make tons of money. So we were off to Pierre. We just picked up a lot of forage was there as well. And I had to buy a hop starter and I had to buy blueberries. I needed those for community center bundles. So the great challenge here now was trying to adjust to the new vegan bundles, especially the fish tank, because all of the fish bundles were gone and it was replaced with new bundles and most of those bundles were actually very challenging. So I had to constantly remind myself of the items I needed and the goals I had to achieve in order to make those bundles complete. It was back to Clint now today, he was breaking up in more geodes in the hopes to get those rare minerals for the sparkly bundle and we were also getting more forageables off the farm. The great thing about summer is that you only need three specific summer forageables to make summer wild seeds. That means more tea saplings for you, that's more money in your pocket. So we went back down to the mines today to farm more copper. I was also getting stone as well. The great thing about the start levels of the mines is that the enemies primarily are very slow, so it's very easy to farm copper without killing anything by accident. I made 10,000 gold just from selling a couple of tea saplings today. That money boost will come in real handy later on. It was back into the back cave. I was getting more forage was here and I would check the cave every couple of days to see if it had any items needed for any of the community bundles and I managed to pick up two apples I was super happy with that I also made a preserve jar because I needed a jelly for one of the community center bundles as well so I put a cauliflower into the luau here governor was super happy with that main reason I went to the luau was because it's a great event to increase friendship points with a lot of the NPCs in the game on the 12th of summer, look at my fabulous tree farm. It was huge. Now, I would use tappers for some of these trees, but the rest I would just cut down. This would yield lots of forage and XP, but also yield lots of wood. Got a tortilla today after traveling cart. Super happy with that. Just needed the roasted hazelnuts to complete one more bundle in the community center. So it was all down to RNG if those roasted hazelnuts would turn up for me or not. Back down into the mines, of course. We're farming the usual resources also avoiding all of the enemies that spawn in. There's a lot of enemies on this floor, so I just left and rinsed and repeated until I had enough resources then to make lots of copper bars so I could make even more tappers. 23 tappers today. I did need a lot more, however, but then I thought about it and I decided to just tap a handful of trees and cut down the rest later on. I didn't need hundreds and hundreds of pine tires every couple of days. We're back to cutting down more trees, increasing our foraging skill. The sooner we get that to level 10, the better. Give Gus a diamond today. Got him up to 4 hearts now out of 10. Need to get him to 7 though, to get that cranberry sauce. There's always a chance I can get the cranberry sauce elsewhere. If that happens, I don't have to work on him anymore in terms of friendship. Clint was breaking up more geodes for us today. We were fortunate enough to get one more item we needed for the sparkly bundle. Two items to go. I also got level 8 farming. I could finally make the keg so it was time to farm for that so i got a jelly today too that was needed for the artisan bundle look at all our lovely star fruit today that was ready to be harvested along with lots of oak resins so things were finally starting to look up for us and the money was going to pour in soon enough i also picked up melons today too but i needed five gold star melons so i made a decision Instead of selling all this starfruit and purchasing even more starfruit to turn that into starfruit wine, I decided to keep this starfruit, convert these starfruits into starfruit wine, and just use the money I have to purchase lots and lots of melons. So what I've done here now is I purchased 178 melons, and that would ensure that I would get at least 5 gold star melons, so I could finish off the quality bundle inside of the community center when it comes to the crops. So the bathhouse area opened up. There was lots of resources to be had up here, including fiber, stone, and wood. So I drained the area of resources today. I also went to Robin, and I decided to purchase tons of wood off Robin, just to speed up my cake production. There's no harm in spending money on basic resources if you're going to end up with tons of profits in the near future. So I used up all my money on wood. I'm going to put all these kegs down around the farm. I do get a shed eventually. But for now, I just put the kegs kind of all over the place. I made 18 tea saplings today because I needed a burst of cash to get more progression goals done. I also sold the rest of my summer seeds as well because I'm going to get way more summer seeds in the next couple of days. And I was going to get an extra few thousand gold for those. So the next day, it was time to harvest all of these lovely forage Look at all of the forage getting 
This was going to bring me up to foraging level 9, but it was going to take a lot of foraging to get that foraging level 10. There's a huge difference between getting foraging 1 to 9 to going from 9 to 10. Massive XP was required. So I just needed two more items here now for the Sparkly Bundle, the Geminite and the Aeronite. So hopefully Clint will produce those for me eventually. I just needed the roasted hazelnuts for the snacks bundle as well. So hopefully that would turn up sooner rather than later. And we could get that bundle completed. The next bundle up was the chef's bundle. That bundle was easy enough. If I couldn't get a tortilla off any of the merchants, I could just make one using corn. All I had to do was grow some corn and upgrade the house and I was good to go with that one. The next bundle was the enchanters bundle. That was another easy one. The big challenge would have been the pomegranate. But I did purchase a pomegranate tree. So I would be guaranteed pomegranates in the next couple of weeks no problem the next day yielded tons of sunflowers the best thing about sunflowers is that you can get them from the georgia mart super cheap but also when you harvest a sunflower there's a good chance it'll drop a sunflower seed and you can plant that straight back into the ground so i purchased tons of salads off ghost today we are now preparing for a skull cavern run lots of healables will be needed for that it was also time to upgrade our pickaxe to a gold pickaxe just to make the skull cavern a little bit more forgiving we also spent the rest of the day cutting down trees, getting more wood because we needed to make more kegs and potentially more tappers if we wanted to go down the tapper route. So we were smelting gold ores into gold barrels today. I wanted to make a lot more sprinklers, especially come fall when we're going to end up with thousands of crops. Level 10 farming, we're going to go with artisan so we can get a lot more money for selling artisan products such as wine. So we're going to start hoeing up the ground today. We're going to prep it for even more crops. I decided to go with 113 poppies today because the poppies look really nice. That was more or less it. There wasn't any other kind of tactical reason as to why I went with poppies. I just wanted poppies. <laughs> we went back to Clint now today. I got my gold pickaxe. We were finished with Clint for the moment because I only had 2600 gold so I didn't have a whole lot of money to upgrade any more tools. So I gave Gus another diamond today that put him up to 5 hearts. I also spoke to him every day as well because you get extra friendship points for speaking to the NPCs every single day. So I decided to cut down a lot of these trees because I figured I wasn't going to set them all up with tappers. Instead, I really needed the wood to make more cakes. So I'm going to cut down an absolute enormous amount of trees today. I also sold some of the star fruits up here because I really needed money to get more items needed for a good skull cavern run so it was back to robin but this time it was to buy stone because i needed to make tons of staircases to have a really good go at the skull cavern because i couldn't kill enemies because of the rules i had imposed upon myself skull cavern would be extremely hard especially if you get swarmed by serpents or by iridium bats you know those enemies are very hard to shake off especially if you can't actually kill them so I managed to make a good few staircases today, but we were still a good ways off doing this called Cavern Run because I wanted to go in with around 100 staircases just to give myself a very good chance to get lots of Iridium ores and lots of other goodies. So my first batch of Starfruit Wines today would be sold straight away because I wanted to get extra money to buy more stone off Robin so I could make more staircases for the good Skull Cavern Run. I collected all of my oak resins today from the tappers as well. They would all go towards future cakes. I also checked out the travelling cart today. She had a yam. Needed that for the bundle, so I purchased that offer. She also had a cranberry sauce. I was over the moon with this. I now didn't have to generate seven hearts with Gus, because I could just buy the cranberry sauce there and then. So I was sorted for another community centre bundle. So I sold all of the starfruit wines to Pierre there now. 56,000 gold, good to go. Went back to Robin. And I bought even more stone off Robin. I'd love to know Robin's secret for accumulating infinite amounts of stone. Maybe she uses deconstructors with jades and she doesn't tell us about it. <laughs> Today was the day. It was the Big Skull Cavern Challenge. It was a great luck day. We also had lots of staircases. So the Skull Cavern was a ferociously hard place because we couldn't kill enemies. The Serpent Hair was just mad to swing out of our necks and ruin our day. But we weren't going to let that happen. Because I had so much salad, I could just spam eat that, defend myself against the serpent. But I had to be careful because if I defended myself too much, the serpent could potentially die. So if push came to shove, I would just plug a staircase on the ground and just go to the next floor and hope for the best. So when I got down to floor 51 here now, I managed to get some iridium bars. I was super happy with that. 
These treasure floors always seem to have some extra luck that the other floors don't have, so it's always worth mining open the nodes around the treasure chest to see if you're lucky enough to get a hole. So I got an ambush room here, dropped the staircase straight away, met it down to floor 72, I got 3 more iridium bars, that's 6 iridium bars in total. Now I came across a huge cluster of gold ores here, too good to pass up. Gold was needed for sprinklers, so all the gold I could get, the better. I picked up an autograbber as well on floor 100. Now because we're not using animals in this run, the autograbber was completely useless, I just turned that into the bin. At the end of our Skull Cavern run, we come out with a huge haul, 2 prismatic shards, 150 iridium ores, we also got 6 iridium bars, 4 diamonds, we got lots of geodes, lots of copper, lots of iron, lots of extra stone. It was a really good run for a first run, so I was super happy with that attempt. The next day, it was time to convert all of our lovely starfruit into starfruit wine. This is going to bring in huge amounts of money. Our fruit trees were now fully set up, so we had a tree generating oranges and another tree generating peaches, so we could harvest those every single day to make extra money. I also got lots of summer forageables there as well, and it was time to go back to the community center. So I actually had five gold star corns, and they slowly accumulated over the course of the summer season, which was great. Putting the peach into the final artisan slot completes the artisan bundle, rewarding us with a cake. I also had some stuff for the fall crops bundle. I had a yam that I got off the traveling cart, so I thrown that in there. Now, I didn't have a corn on me right now, but I come back with corn later on. I also finished off the summer crops bundle, which rewarded me with a quality sprinkler, so we were getting there with the bundles. For the desert bundle, I submitted the cranberry sauce, so I needed a plum pudding, a maple bar, and a blackberry cobbler to finish off that bundle. Quite the challenging bundle indeed. I just needed a green tea for the beverages bundle, and I could easily get that from Caroline's sunroom by nabbing one tea leaf and putting that into a cake, which will yield a green tea. It was time to convert our lovely iridium ores into iridium bars. They'll sell for 1,000 gold a pop. And it was also time to get Clint to break open all of these geos that we got from doing Scott Cavern Run. We needed two more rare minerals to complete the sparkly bundle. Now, I was fortunate enough to get one more of the minerals. I just needed the Aeronite, and I was good to go with that. So, out of the prismatic shards that I got from the Skull Cavern Run, I gave one into Gunther because I had two on me. I also managed to get a huge Iridium Meteor fall on the farm, and I mined it open just for a few extra resources. So, I was collecting Iridium bars now tonight, and I would sell all those for more money. I made almost 58,000 gold today. I'm selling bits and bobs. I also got 10,000 gold off Mr. Key the next day for making a pass for 25 on my first attempt at the Skull Cavern. So, things were looking up for me at the moment. I got more Iridium bars today, and it was back to Clint to get our axe upgraded to a gold axe, which would make cutting down trees that much simpler. Because I had so much money on me at the moment, I decided to complete all of the Vault bundles. The prizes that I get for some of these would be really nice. So the vegetable medley was a good addition, the fertilizer, the crystallarium, I could not however use the lightning rod because bat wings were used in the creation of this item and as a vegan we don't support products where animal parts were used to create. So I end up throwing away the lightning rod, I would have to find an alternative source to get my hands on battery packs if I wanted to make more crystallariums later on. I made almost 31,000 gold by the end of today. This primarily came from the starfruit wine, which was sending up 3,150 gold. I got a pale ale today from one of our kegs. I decided to give that to Pam because it was an easy quest to do and I'd get some extra money on the side. My poppies were now ready to be harvested, so I'm going to harvest all of these poppies and sell these to Pierre for even more money. On my way to the mines, I noticed Pam beside the bus chilling out, so I gave her the pale ale, had a quick chat about drinking and driving, and it was then a minecart off down to the mines to farm more resources so we could make even more staircases and more cakes to make even more money down the road. So when I come across these mystery nodes, I always mine them up. There's always a chance you can get a diamond from one. That would give you 150 mining XP. It's a great way to level up mining early on in the game. The next day, we were greeted with tons of melons just begging to be picked up and get sent off to the great beyond. So I spent a great portion of this morning harvesting all these melons. I also got 5 gold star melons as well, so I can put those into the quality community center bundle, completing that bundle. I also purchased tons of wheat as well, just so I don't have to re huge portions of the land come fall. So I got a preserve jar for completing that bundle. Not a bad prize indeed. I also got my gold axe back off Clint, 
but we weren't finished there. It was time to upgrade our hoe to a steel hoe, which we needed for the start of fall because we were going to end up buying thousands and thousands of pumpkins to fill up the farm with. Spent the rest of the day just putting down the wheat and doing some farm management, getting prepared for fall that's going to come in soon enough. I made almost 60,000 gold at the end of today. This money primarily came from all of the melons that I picked up. The next day, the blueberries were ready to be harvested, so I picked up all those, grabbed the hops, and I was on my way to Silverset Forest to cut down even more trees, to get more wood, to make more cakes, to make more money. The cycle continues, everybody. <laughs> We also needed a lot more sprinklers for falls, so I was smelting gold ores into gold bars. I also checked out the travelling cart today, she had a plum pudding. I was super happy with this. I needed the plum pudding for one of the dessert bundles in the community centre. Today was an event day, which is why you see balloons there hanging out of the trees. Not too sure which mod actually does that, but it's one of the many mods you see in my description. I got a steel hoe off Clint today, super happy with that. It was the last day of summer. And the event today was the Moonlight Jellies, which is a great finish of summer. It's a nice visual effect there before we get into fall. We are now in the first day of fall. This was probably one of the most challenging days in the entirety of the 100 day challenge because I had to hoe up huge amounts of land to plant the thousands of pumpkins that I purchased off pier. Now, I couldn't actually water all of the pumpkins today. It was just way too many. The best I could do was to hoe up the ground, put down the sprinklers, and just plant the pumpkins before the day finished. Despite the fact that I had a steel hoe, it just wasn't enough to get the range that I needed to plant these pumpkins, so I ended up using bombs. The second day of fall was a rainy day, so we start with making some quality sprinklers. The main aim of today is to make enough quality sprinklers to fully automate our pumpkin growing process over the entirety of the season. So we needed to make a lot more quality sprinklers in seven, but we do get there eventually with all of the reserve bars we had in our chest from doing the Skull Cavern run and other regular mining endeavours. Once this was completed, we had a look at the lovely community board. So we had a choice of biome balance and aquatic overpopulation because these quests required fishing, even despite the fact that some fish went to unsustainable levels. Because of our veganism ways, we decided not to fish at all and just leave everything off to the natural cycle of nature. Speaking of natural cycles, I purchased 300 more pumpkin seeds today. We were going to fill up the farm with pumpkins. You can't beat a good pumpkin farm with thousands and thousands of pumpkins. When it comes to fall, pumpkins are by far the most profitable crop you can get your hands on. We could even convert these pumpkins into pumpkin juice, sell those for tons of money. Let's take a quick look at our farm now at the moment. As you can see, we have tons of quality sprinklers put down in the farm. We also have thousands of pumpkin seeds growing. So we went back into the mines today. We were looking for stone, we were looking for gold, we were looking for iron, we were looking for copper. We were looking for everything. But we started with the gold because we needed to make more sprinklers. The next day was all about using the resources we got in the mines to make more quality sprinklers as there were still large patches of the farm that didn't have quality sprinklers and I wanted to automate this process as quickly as possible. So I would have to water all these up today, but I did have a decent watering can, so it wouldn't take too long to water up the missing patches. I also made a mistake here with this patch. It was set up incorrectly for the proper placement of quality sprinklers, so I decided to sacrifice just a few pumpkins so I could fix that issue. A few pumpkins in the grand scheme of things wouldn't make much of a difference in terms of total profits earned by the end of the year. I also noticed too later on that the bottom layer was also incorrect. I do come back and fix that eventually. So I went back to Clint, it was time to upgrade our axe to an Iridium axe. This meant just three swings for a full tree breakdown. I haven't checked the back cave in a while, so I went in today to have a gander and I picked up all the forageables inside, getting more forageable XP that way. I also ran around the map today looking for more forageables that I could pick up because I was actually really close to level 10 foraging and I wanted to get level 10 as quickly as possible just to get those lovely Iridium Forageables for even more profits. I finished the Fall Foraging Bundle. I got 30 free Fall Seeds ready to go, ready to be planted on our lovely farm. So I made a little patch up here just to the left and I'm going to put all of the Forageable Seeds here. Now I didn't set it up with the quality sprinklers properly so I do actually address that later on when these Fall Seeds increase in capacity. So for the next couple of days, I'm just going to use my copper watering can and water those up. There's only a small amount there, so it didn't take too much time. I also got a green tea, put that into the beverages bundle. That awarded me with a cake. I was super happy with that. 
I put a tea leaf into the dye bundle, just needed a red cabbage to finish that bundle off, but the red cabbage was all down to RNG. Hopefully, RNG would be on my side in this challenge, and the travelling cart would have either a red cabbage or a red cabbage seed over the next couple of weeks in the game. So I went back to Clint today, got my Iridium axe off Clint, I was super happy with this. It was time to upgrade more tools, we're going to go with an Iridium pickaxe this time. This meant I could one-shot all of the nodes in the Skull Cavern. So I visited the desert today to get the forageables to do some hoeing, but also to cut down all of the trees that the desert had to offer, because I really needed a lot more wood. I could have bought wood off Robin, but I wanted to save my money to make even greater profits. I would only buy basic resources if I was desperately stuck. I also wanted to get my forage into level 10, so cutting down all these trees would contribute to that as well. Went to the secret woods as well today, just to get all those lovely tree stumps, the more hardwood I could accumulate now, the better. Look at all of this lovely starfruit wine. Doesn't seem like a lot, but we are going to get tons of money from selling this. 93,000, almost 100,000 gold. 27 starfruit wines there, that came to 85,000 gold. I was just super happy with that. I had 160,000 gold at the moment. It was time to get Robin to put a shed into the farm, and I'll fill up the shed then with cakes to increase my profits every couple of days thereafter. So I went down to the beach today, primarily just to pick up all of the forageable items to increase my forageable XP. If I picked up any item that stated it was a livable creature or a fish, I just turned it back into the water because of my Venus and ways. Went back to Clint, I got my Iridium pickaxe. I was almost finished with the tool upgrades, so I was doing really well in terms of upgrading tools. I had lots of geodes now to give to Clint to break open in the hopes to get that last mineral I needed for the sparkly bundle. Unfortunately, I did not get the mineral that I so desired. I did, however, get minerals that I could give to Gunther, you know, and get progression done that way. So I had a choice today of Cave Patrol or Pierre's Prime Produce because I had lots of pumpkins growing on the farm and because I couldn't actually slay 50 grubs for Clint, Pierre's Prime Produce was the perfect quest for me. That would be an easy money once I pick up all of those lovely pumpkins that will be ready in a couple of days. It was also blackberry season, so I spent a good portion of today running around, looting all the bushes, making Linus's life very hard. And I also went up to the bathhouse area as well to get all of the fibre and to cut down all of the trees up here too. I was very close now to level 10 foraging. I was just a few trees away, so I prioritised that today to see if I could max out foraging skill on the 8 of fall. So just a few trees left and that was going to get level 10 foraging. And the best perk, in my opinion, to take level 10 foraging is the perk that makes all your forageable items of iridium quality. This is great for two reasons. Number one, because they're iridium quality, they sell for a lot more and they give you a lot more health and energy. And number two, when it comes to inventory management, it's just so much more simplified. So today was the 9th of fall. We start by watering up our lovely forageables. I also gathered enough amaranth here to complete the scythe bundle. I got an oil maker as a reward for this. Super happy with that. Now, I didn't actually have a need for the oil maker at the moment. I know you can put truffles into it, but because we're a vegan, we can't use pigs, we can't use truffles. Back down into the mines today, iron ore was on our list of priorities. Needed iron ores to make iron bars, to make cakes, so I could put more starfruit into the cakes to get more starfruit wine to get more money. Story of our lives, right? <laughs> Back to Clint, we're breaking up more geodes here now in the hopes to get that era night to complete the sparkly bundle. It was a no-go today though. I picked up a berry basket today because I was just running around getting berry bushes and I came across the basket and said, you know what, we'll give that to Linus and be a good neighbour. Visit Robin today, it was time for a shed upgrade. We're going to go with the big shed. 550 wood, 300 stone and 20,000 gold. It was a good investment because it would save space on our farm. We have Linus the berry basket today, he was super happy. I checked my quest log, but he doesn't actually give you anything for it. Instead, you just get friendship points with Linus. Now, getting friendship points up with Linus early on is actually very good because of the wild bait recipe he can give you. But because we're the vegan, that wouldn't do much for us. So the next day, all of our lovely fall forageables were ready to be harvested. So we're going to get blackberries, we we're going to get hazelnuts, we we're going to get wild plums, and we were going to get mushrooms. Because we were still in the early days of fall, I decided to redo the patch that I had here for forageables, put down quality sprinklers, and put down more fall seeds. All I needed now to complete the fish tank desert bundle was the blackberry cobbler and the maple bar. Now they are year two recipes, 
but hopefully RNG would be on my side. Just needed the Aeronite for the sparkly bundle, and for the underrated bundle, I just needed the Holly, which you can get in winter no problem at all. The last bundle then was the Snacks bundle, and I just needed the roasted hazelnuts for that one. That's another year two recipe, but we might get one from the traveling cart or Gus if we're lucky. Back down into the mines, and today was gold to make even more sprinklers. The reason why I wanted more sprinklers is because I wanted to have a lot more fall forageables before the season came to an end. I also wanted a lot more sprinklers for winter because we could go the winter foraging route as well. And I would like to end up with thousands of winter forageables before the challenge actually ends. So today we got Clint to break open even more geodes in the hopes to get that aeronite. It just wasn't popping up. So we went off to Gunther and Gunther was having an absolute field day with our quest to complete the sparkly bundle. We're also getting closer to getting the sword key off Gunther though, so we get down into Krobus, and he actually has some very nice things that we can purchase off him as well. We are back down into the mines today, and the reason why we're going to the mines so much is because we absolutely need all of the basic and the advanced resources the mines has to offer to make the most out of this challenge. So we needed more gold bars to make more sprinklers, and we also needed stone to make more staircases for future Skull Cavern runs. So we got a fairy there that night that was super lucky. Didn't make a huge difference though, because in the grand scheme of things, that would just be 9 or 10 pumpkins. So I spent an absolute ton of money in robins today on stone. And you can guess why. I wanted to do another Skull Cavern run. So I made 69 staircases there, and I had a few staircases left over from the previous run. So once I got 100 staircases, or close to 100, I'd go in for the goal to see how well I would do. I also purchased some saddles with the rest of my money. That put me down to just 1500 gold. And I spent the rest of the day then just doing some farm management. I also pickaxed up all of the kegs. I was going to put these inside the big shed that Robin had now fully made for me. This was going to make farming all of the lovely starfruit wine every couple of days much easier because it would just be in one place. It would just be inside the shed. So I made 85,000 gold today from seven starfruit wine. Such a huge money maker. So I got some triple shot espressos off of the merchant today. And those triple shot espressos, I'm sure, don't have milk inside them because I'm a vegan. I made sure of that. <laughs> Back in the Skull Cavern, things were going as planned. I had food. I had staircases. So despite the fact that I had multiple serpents taking away huge portions of my health, I was in good hands because I could really quickly heal up if I needed to. I just had to make sure that I didn't leave my health go down too fast, too quickly. I got a battery pack out of a barrel today. That actually never happened to me before. I've got knuckle rings out of those barrels. I've got all sorts of minerals out of those barrels. Never got a battery pack, so I don't know how rare that actually is. But because I got the battery pack, I could make a crystallarium, for example. Every time I saw crates or barrels, I would always destroy them in the hopes of getting a lucky ring, because the lucky ring at this stage of the game would be a huge game changer. The more luck that you accumulate coming down into the Skull Cavern, the better items you could actually get, the more treasure rooms you could potentially find. Finding holes like this is also great to get down quickly. Now, I only got three levels there, but those holes can give up to 15 levels of deep diving, which is amazing. Gold ore was on the priority list. Got a prismatic shard out of a treasure chest here. I was super happy with that. I actually hadn't traded in any prismatic shards yet for the galaxy weapon. And the reason being that it wouldn't make much of a difference in terms of combat because I had to avoid enemies, not attack enemies. I got another auto grabber. I had to destroy that because we weren't going to use any animals in this challenge, so it was just using up a valuable inventory slot. When I got down past the floor 100s, I started getting lots of Iridium ores, but at the same time, there was a huge increase in Iridium bat activity, and because my combat level was zero, I had to be ever so careful to not get hit by those Iridium bats, because those Iridium bats are one of the hardest hitting enemies in the game. I got a hole there, put me on 15 levels. They're super rare, but it's always so nice when you get holes like that. It just saved me 15 staircases, potentially. I was now at a point in Skull Cavern where I would only activate a staircase to descend the floor if I needed to, if I was being swarmed by enemies. There wasn't much point spamming staircases anymore because each level now would yield quite a lot of minerals, quite a lot of iridium, iron, copper, gold, you name it. The floors would now spawn those in great number. When I got down to floor 128, I managed to get a crystallarium. I was super happy with this. Floor 136 yielded a prismatic shard, and floor 157 yielded an auto grabber, which I had to destroy because we all know by now, 
We can't use those because of our veganism ways. <laughs> it was now 1.40 in the Scott Cavern. I was going to pass out soon. This floor was absolutely marvellous though for Iridium ores. Unfortunately, it had not one or two, but three Iridium bats chasing me down. So I was under a lot of pressure and I had to make a decision. Thankfully, the clock made the decision for me and it passed me out. Level 10 mining, gonna go with blacksmith. Metal bars worth 50% more is an absolute no-brainer for us. It was the 15th of fall. Look at this pumpkin patch of beauty. I took a triple shot espresso for the speed buff just to quickly show you how big it actually was. I also finished Pierre's prime produce that netted me 2,500 gold and I also sold the rest of the pumpkins to Pierre. In the meantime, it was time to buy another full batch of pumpkins. I had half a million gold to spend but I didn't have the resources on me right now to get more than 1,300 pumpkins. It took the majority of the day to plant all these pumpkins, but it is going to be worth it. These pumpkins will be ready to go on the 28th of fall, which is the very last day of fall, and that is going to make me a lot of money. Those pumpkins will be put into cakes, so they won't be sold directly to Pierre. It was finally time for the Stardew Valley Fair, and I felt very lucky today. So the first thing to do was to put a great assortment of items into my display there. I'm going to get Lewis to check those out. He should potentially give me first place for that display, and that will give me half of what I need to get the star drop, which is 1,000 star tokens. I need 2,000 to get the star drop. So I gambled all on green, and I lost because it landed on orange, which is very unlucky, because normally it lands on green for me all the time. I couldn't do the fishing minigame because of my veganism ways. But there was another minigame I could do. I could do the slingshot minigame. Now, this minigame is a game that I never ever do, so I wasn't too great at it. I gave it one go to see how much I would get 60 star tokens for the fair attempt. I gambled those, doubled my profits, 120 star tokens, and lost them all on the next go. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to buy the star tokens using money. You can buy 999 in a single go. So I purchased 2,000 star tokens in total. Now it did cost me the bones of like a hundred thousand gold, but it was worth it because I was going to get a star drop. And I didn't want to spend hours in my life, literally hours in my life, doing the Stink Shot minigame and hoping for the best when it comes to gambling the star tokens. So it was time to look at the community quests. We had Robin's Resource Rush, Prismatic Jelly. I went with Robin's Resource Rush because I could absolutely cut down trees and accumulate 1,000 pieces of wood without any issues with my lovely shiny Iridium Axe. It only took three swings to fully take down a tree and collect all of the wood within. I also got a train visit, which is quite rare. I decided to see what this train had for grabs. For some reason, I thought that if I could get to the other side of the train, I'd be in a safe spot, but no. The train hit me, I got stuck, and I kept having to eat food to stay alive. So what I'd done here was a little bit of a hack. I clicked on the option to eat food, but I didn't select yes or no, and my health stopped going down. So, if you ever get stuck with the train, and if you have food on you, this is a great way to survive the train's onslaught. The train is an invincible entity. Don't try what I did, and mess around with the train, because you're going to get hurt. After what seemed to be an eternity, because I swear it was one of the longest trains I've ever encountered, I got two stone and two coal for my efforts. I wasn't very impressed with that, to be honest. But not to worry, things were now looking up. Look at all of these lovely fall forages ready to be collected. This is the first thing I do on the 18th. It's half six in the morning and I am ready to go. We're going to get all of the lovely fall forages, make more fall wild seeds. I made 240 in total and it's only the 18th of fall, so we're going to replant all these. I decided not to make this patch bigger. I was happy enough with the amount of sprinklers I had on the farm and I was happy enough with the size of that foraging patch. I decided to pay a visit to the beach today to see if there was any forageables I could pick up and sell to make a profit. Most of the forageables were fish related items. Because I had the botanist perk, all of the items that were picked up went to iridium quality. So you could say I was doing the fish a favour where they washed up regular fish, but they went back into the sea iridium quality fish. Far superior than their previous states. So I was doing nature a huge advantage by upgrading all of the fish that fell out into the wilderness of land. I went back to the desert today. There's a lot more trees that respawned on the desert, so I cut down all the trees. The pylons were just calling for me. I just couldn't resist it anymore. I knew getting the galaxy sword wouldn't make my life easier in this cavern, but I just felt safer all the same by having it in my inventory 
and because I had the gorgeous weapons mod installed into the game, it also looked way cooler than that of the original, in my humble opinion of course. So I got rid of the obsidian edge, and I now had the lovely cool galaxy sword. Later on that evening I decided to process all of my hard earned iridium ores into iridium bars and because I had the blacksmith perk, I could sell all these to make huge profits. Each bar would sell for 1500 gold a pop, I was going to make an absolute mountain of money by selling all of these iridium bars. I also went back to Gus with lots of geodes for him to open up, praying for the one mineral that I so badly needed and I got it finally it popped up the aeronite the last item needed to finish off the sparkly bundle inside the community center. I went straight up to the community center, popped it into the sparkly bundle, and the reward that I got was a crystallarium. I was so happy with this reward. Crystallariums were something I really needed because staircases were super important for successful Skull Cavern runs. So I got Clint to upgrade my hoe again, this time to a gold hoe because I wanted to get it ready for winter when it comes to doing some serious hoe farming. And I'm going to show you some really cool hoe farming techniques now come winter. Bear in mind that this isn't the clay farming hack that you might see people do, this is something different entirely. So we were back in Cinder Sap Forest, just cutting down more trees, trying to get Robin's resource rush done, and we just done that today. 2500 gold in the bag, and we also get more friendship points with Robin, not that we need friendship points of course. So with all of the wood and resources that I had accumulated, I decided to make 50 cakes in total. I also finished off the fall crops bundle as well by putting the pumpkin and an eggplant in there. This completes the pantry that rewards us with the greenhouse unlock and the greenhouse is an amazing building that you should get as early as possible. You can put anything you want into a greenhouse, you can put starfruit in there, you can put pumpkins in there, you can put forgeables in there, you can put trees in there, you name it, you can grow it in the greenhouse. So I got my gold hoe off Clint today but we're not finished there. We're going to give him back the hoe and he's going to upgrade it to an iridium hoe. This is going to come in super handy later on for uh, some tactics that I have in order to get more completion done with the game. So I went to Pierre's today, got some pumpkin seeds. I'm going to put those inside the greenhouse, which means they'll grow in winter for me, no problem at all. I had a look at the community quest board today. Now, we had Gus's famous omelette. That was a no-no, because we needed eggs for that. But Robin's project was good to go. She just needed 80 hardwood. That was a no-brainer, of course. So we started that quest, and we can always make some hardwood trees if we need using mahogany seeds. So when I went into the greenhouse now today, I didn't have my hoe to actually plant the crop, so instead I just used the bombs instead. And this is a great use of bombs, especially if you need to hoe huge patches of land within a strict time limit. Bombs are definitely the way to go. I would have had mega bombs, but you need solar essences to make mega bombs, and I couldn't use solar essences because they came from ghosts, and I can't kill monsters to get those. So I met some more quality sprinklers from resources that I got from Skull Cavern and from doing regular mine runs and I filled up the greenhouse with lovely pumpkin seeds. So it was time to make more tree fertilizers today, and the reason why I made some was to plant mahogany seeds for hardwood trees to ensure that I complete Robin's hardwood resource rush within the time limit that I was given. I got a mini shipping in off Pierre for completing his prime produce request for shipping off the 25 ghost star pumpkins, so that was a handy dandy item to put into the greenhouse there. So we are smelting more copper bars today. The reason why we're smelting copper bars is because I want to make more kegs. The more kegs I make, the more money I'm going to make with this challenge. Back to Pierre, I got my Iridium hoe, and we are going to have fantastic fun with this. I didn't have enough artifacts gathered to get the sword key to get down into Krobus, so we're going to use the hoe to go artifact farming. So we're going to take the minecart to the mines right now, and all of these dirt patches we see in the mines, we're going to hold those up to see if we can get some artifacts. The rusty cog is one item you can get. We can also get lots of dwarf items. We can get the dwarf scrolls. We can also get the dwarf helmet. We can get the dwarf computer. We can also get items such as the strange dolls. There's loads of things you can get from hoeing up the ground, including hundreds and hundreds of cave carrots. I end up with hundreds, if not thousands, of cave carrots when it comes to the amount of hoe that I was doing today. The only thing we have to watch out for are the bugs with the 1 HP. You can actually kill them with the hoe if you hit them, so we had to be really careful with that. So after donating those extra artifacts into Gunther, I was hoping that would be enough to get the key to the source, so we can go down, talk to Krobus and get the star drop. So I went down into the midsection now today and I got the dwarf gadget. I actually called the Dwarf Computer, it's actually called the Dwarf Gadget. <laughs> but that was the last item I actually needed in order to get access to the source. 
the dust sprites were not letting up i couldn't actually hold properly in this area because there was so many dust sprites so after a few attempts i decided to just leave it because either i would have ended up getting killed or the dust sprite would have ended up getting killed from the hole i sold 98 cave cards today 25 gold to pop i made 2450 gold gunter visited me the next day he was going to give me the key to the souls so we could now go down make friends with Krobus and get a lovely star job off him I also made a lot more fall wild seeds today, 260 in total. I was going to turn those into sea saplings and sell those for extra profit. I also went to the secret woods today with my sweet gem berry, and I'm going to get a star drop from this lovely statue. So I'm going to get two star drops today, one from the statue here, and we're also going to get one from Krobus when we go down and visit him in the source. Speaking of which, let's talk to lovely Krobus right now. Krobus also has other high luxury items that we can get too, such as the Return Scepter. He also sells Iridium Sprinklers every single Friday. He also sells Solar Invite Essences. But I didn't actually purchase those because they come from monsters. Because they come from technically animals. And because we're the vegan, I deemed that it wouldn't be appropriate to purchase items like that for this specific challenge. So it was time to cut down all of the hardwood trees today. And I was going to get over 80 hardwood easily from doing this. Give that to Robin. That was another quest complete. 2,000 gold in the bag. More friendship points at Robin. And she would give us a really good recipe as well going forward. I also went to the Halloween event. Picked up the golden pumpkin. I don't actually end up using this. To be honest, I put it in a chest and I forget about it. It's now the last day of fall. And look at our lovely pumpkin patches. It is a thing of beauty. 1,300 pumpkins is what you see before you. It's going to take us the whole day to harvest those. What are we going to do with the pumpkins? Why, we're going to put them all into cakes. We're going to get back pumpkin juice. And that's going to sell for loads of money. It doesn't sell as good as the star fruit, but it's still quite profitable. So today I woke up to lovely Jade's popping out of the crystallariums. It's now the first of winter, so we're definitely getting there with the challenge. The first thing on our list was to get items to complete bundles as quickly as possible. And the holly would see to it that another bundle would be completed. The crocus also helps when it comes to the winter foraging bundle. It was Krobus' birthday today. Krobus actually loves wild horse radishes, but I didn't keep any from spring, so I just give him an Iridium Bar instead. Today I had a choice of aquatic overpopulation and a curious substance. I couldn't do either quests because it would be against our veganism ways, so we just left the community board altogether. Went back to Clint, got the steel watering can, because we're going for all the two upgrades, we might as well just go all the way with it because we had the money to do so and we'll just upgrade that to the gold watering can. Went down to the beach today. Because it was winter, if we use our iridium hole, we won't get a whole lot of clay. There's actually a really good chance we get lots of snow yams and winter roots using this technique. Now there is a very specific technique you can use. It's called the clay farming technique to actually get a lot more out of it. But we don't use any hacks when it comes to our 100 day videos. So we just hold up huge portions of the ground instead, hoping for the best results. So that was the underrated bundle finished. The reward was an Iridium Sprinkler. Because we were in the winter season, I didn't have a huge use for that sprinkler, so I just ended up selling it. I also finished off the winter foraging bundle, and that completed another room in the community center. This would unlock the quarry for us, so we could now get all of the resources that the quarry had, and we could also go into the quarry cave and get the goodies inside there as well. But before I could do anything else, I had to make use of the winter foraging seeds that I got, so I ended up hoeing up some of the ground there on the farm to plant those. The next day I went down to the quarry and I ended up mining every single node the quarry has to offer. And I also ended up cutting on all the trees in here eventually as well because it was free wood for the taking. So it was quite a challenge to get through the quarry cave here without killing any of the haunted skulls. I was being swarmed at the moment. Thankfully I had an Iridium pickaxe so it only took one swing to get rid of some of those nodes to get up into the prize area where I could finally get this golden scythe. I just had to click on the statue one more time and it would teleport me back to the entrance of the mines where I was safe and sound. Went back to Clint now today, I got my gold watering can off him but we weren't finished with Clint just yet. It was time to upgrade to the Iridium watering can. Once I left Clint I decided to check on the bat cave just to see how much forage had accumulated and to my surprise there was actually quite the number of forage to collect. The great thing about the botanist perk is that each of these forages I picked up were of iridium quality. So I totally forgot to get the magnifying glass on the first day of winter, so I ended up getting it now by just clicking on the bush there. Krobus was hiding behind the bush, so he gives us the magnifying glass so we can now get secret notes. 
I checked out the travelling cart today she had a battery pack for 1500 gold. I purchased that straight away because that would allow me to make another crystallarium to increase my jades. I also went to Gunther today and just handed in some more artifacts that I had lying around the farm. Some of the rewards you can get from Gunther are totally overpowered including a magic rock candy. It was back to Clint now today where we got the Iridium watering can. We weren't finished there though. Because we had all the other tools upgraded, we might as well upgrade our trash can as well and upgrade that to an Iridium quality trash can. Back to our big shed today, we were going to harvest all of these lovely pumpkin juices, sell those for loads of money. Then it was back to Robin to construct another structure. The structure this time we were going for was another shed. I wanted two big sheds on the farm, filled up to the top with cakes, just so I can get through all of those pumpkins that I harvested at the end of fall, turn them all into pumpkin juices, and maximize profits for the end of the challenge. Speaking of profits, I was farming floor 81 in the mines today to get tons and tons of fibre. If I saw minerals like jades, diamonds, rubies for example, I'd grab those as well because you could trade those in for some decent stuff inside the desert, especially the jades for staircases. Speaking of staircases, our crystallariums inside our regular home were doing quite well and every few days I was getting four new jades, which meant I could get four fresh staircases after the desert trader on a Sunday. It was back to Clint to upgrade more trash cans, but before I upgraded to the next trash can tier, I purchased a full stack of coal because I was struggling with coal for quite some time and because I couldn't kill dust sprites and farm coal, I was finding it really hard to accumulate lots of coal. But because I had so much money, I said, you know what, no harm in purchasing a full stack of coal because for the rest of the challenge, I would be able to process all of the minerals I had from doing Skull Cavern and regular mine runs into bars and then use those bars then to make other items that were greatly needed for example cakes so today was the festival of ice and i decided to go to the event today just to have a look to see what the merchants had on offer there was a cranberry sauce a stuffing and a pumpkin soup none of these items would help me with the community center bundles i decided not to pull up any fish during the event because of my veganism ways so willie won instead with five fish that he caught not to worry though because the next day he had great results where I was able to get my first batch of winter forest builds. I was getting snow yams, crystal fruit, crocuses, and winter roots. All ready to be converted straight back into winter wild seeds, they will be planted right back at the farm again. The goal in winter was to fill up the farm with as many winter wild seeds as possible to make it look really nice at the end of the year, but also to make huge profits before our challenge ends. We were also processing a lot more pumpkins into pumpkin juices and those pumpkin juices were currently being accumulated in the chest and eventually I ended up selling all of the pumpkin juices at the end of the challenge to see how much money we can make from it. So for now, don't expect to see any sort of great gains when it comes to money. So I got a quest off Linus Community Cleanup and I decided to do this quest because I just had to fish up trash from the water. If I got a fish catch, I could just cancel it and try to get it till I got trash. So I had to get a fishing rod off Willy and I felt a bit silly for throwing away the first one but I just spent 25 gold for a training rod. This would easily do the job when it comes to getting trash from the waters. Unfortunately I had to do the fishing tutorial before I could fish for real so when I pulled up the sunfish I turned it back into the water straight away and I'm pretty sure that fish survived. <laughs> now I could just fish up trash. If I got any sort of a fish pull I could just cancel that request, put the rod into the water again, and hope to get trash in that fish. So it took me the whole day to get that done. The next day, I managed to complete the quest. 500 gold in the bag. Absolutely amazing. But that's not the real prize. The real prize is the recipe Linus will give us the next day. Back to Robin. Get the big shed upgrade. And we're going to fill that shed up with cakes when it's fully built. I also decided to get rid of all the tappers down here that were generating pine towers and just get the wood instead so I can make more cakes that way. I got the fibre seeds off Linus the next day. I was super happy with those. Because I could now plant fibre seeds, this was going to get me back thousands of fibre. I could use this to make tons of tea saplings and sell those to make tons of money. Great thing about fibre seeds, they don't require watering. They're just so overpowered. So I made 47 more cakes today. That's going to go inside the shade. That means more profits for us. I also made a huge tree farm at the bottom left side of the farm here. This was going to bring in thousands of wood when all those trees fully grow. Tree fertilizer will of course work in winter, which is why it's also so overpowered. So we're processing our pumpkins again today. We're getting back more pumpkin juice. So I paid a visit to Robins today, but not to purchase a shed or a big shed. 
it was to get his stables. We're going to put that into the farm. And it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of amount we're going to get from that a few days from now. So we were processing more bars, ran back to Clint, got the steel trash can. We're going to upgrade that to the gold trash can. And eventually, in a couple of days from now, we'll upgrade that to the iridium trash can. I also visited the desert merchant today. And we're going to get a lot more staircases. We're also going to attempt a Skull Cavern run very soon. I'd like to do one more run before the challenge ends to see how well we can do. Especially with all of our newly required resources. I have a lot more money. I can buy a lot more stone. I can make a lot more staircases. Our pumpkins in the greenhouse are now ready. So we're going to harvest all these pumpkins. And we're going to try our best to process all of these into pumpkin juices as well. Before we get to the 28th of winter. So it was time to name our horse slash wolf today. We're going to go with Veggie Wolf. And he is going to be the very first vegetarian wolf to walk the earth. In my opinion, of course. I don't know if other people have tried it. But this wolf is going to live on vegetables. Let's go, Veggie Wolf. So because I now have a mount, I can now travel around Sergio Valley a lot faster. This makes it a lot easier to go and collect forageables. Now that I reflect upon the mount, normally I get the mount at the very end of a challenge. But for future challenges... I might decide to get the mount a lot earlier, if possible, just so I can get around faster and do more things. So I purchased the painting of the famous Lupini today. I also had a look at the um, traveling cart merchant to see if she had any items that I needed for the community center. She hadn't. I also visited the mermaid show and I had a great time and then I headed off home. It was time for day number 16th of winter. This is day 100, but we're not going to end the challenge here. I'm actually going to play through the whole year of this game. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I've received a lot of comments, a lot of feedback from my subscriber base, requesting that I play through the whole year. So from now on, all of these 100 day challenges will be an actual full year of gameplay. They will still be called 100 day challenges just for the YouTube algorithm. So I watered up tons of winter forageables today, and I also visited the famous painter Rapini again, and I got the portrait of a mermaid. We also checked the traveling cart merchant to see if she had anything we needed for the community center, and my fingers were crossed for something, anything, that would allow me to complete a bundle, but she had nothing on her at the moment. So we headed off home, and the next day we were processing more pumpkins into pumpkin juices. So we had one more night of the night market. Fingers crossed, we will get an item that we need for the community center. I had a look at the community quests today, didn't choose any of them because they were against our veganism ways. I did go back to the night market, got the Solar Kingdom painting of the famous Rapini, and I had a look at the merchants to see if they had anything that I needed. They actually hadn't. I did purchase a rare crow though for 5,000 because I just wanted to purchase something, you know, just for showing up at the event. I also got Robin to upgrade my house to the second tier house. Main reason for this was I had a lot of items accumulated over the past three seasons and I needed a bigger house to store those items in, especially the paintings. So I got Clint to do another trash can upgrade there. And on the 18th of winter, because I didn't want to cut down all of the trees because there were so many, I just used one of the bombs I had and I blew half the forest away and I would end up using my axe then to cut down the rest of the trees, saving me a ton of time and resources. So all of the fiber seeds had fully grown today into fully fledged Fibre crops, I got 1,415 fibre from those crops, plus tons of mixed seeds as well, which would allow me to make even more fibre seeds, so I could replant those down and get even more fibre a few days from now. I made 130 tea saplings, because I had so much fibre accumulated, that was going to get me a huge amount of money. So to make the fibre seeds, I needed mixed seeds, sap and clay. I had tons of clay from using my iridium hole down in the mines and on the beach. I had tons of sap from cutting down trees. The only thing that was holding me back was the mixed seeds. As far as I know, there isn't any great way to mass accumulate mixed seeds in this game. So it was Evelyn's birthday today and I was feeling very gifty. So I gave her a diamond because in all fairness, Evelyn deserves it. She's an awesome woman. Then me and Veggie Wolf went roaming around Sergio Valley looking for forage bills to pick up so we can increase our foraging space on our farm. So it was time to organize our house today because it was now the second tier house. It was a little bit bigger. So it was moving around a few bits of furniture, putting the kegs just opposite the bed there, just making use of the space. Because it was Sunday, I visited the desert and I managed to get some more staircases. I also purchased some bombs using quartz that I had. And I also went to Gus and I purchased some salads. It was time for a new Skull Cavern run. Let's see how well we can do. 
When I got to floor 37, I got a red slime egg. The slime eggs sell for really nice cash, especially early on. But when I got to floor 69, I got 15 red cabbage seeds. And because it was the 22nd, I knew if I planted the seed today using the Deluxe Bee Grow, I could harvest it on the 28th of winter, finishing off the dye bundle before this year was out, before the challenge concluded. So that was a no-brainer. So I decided to spam my staircases just to see what other treasure floors I could get before leaving and planting that seed. I got a Crystallarium, Energy Tonics, I got Iridium Sprinklers, I then left, planted the red cabbage. I had some Deluxe Bee Grows in around the place, so I just planted one six days for it to fully grow, which was perfect. That would be done by the 28th of winter. That was the dye bundle, more or less in the bag. So today is now the 23rd of winter. We're almost finished the challenge. And this is what our farm looks like at the moment. As we can see, we have got hundreds of winter forageables ready to be collected. So I ended up making over 1,000 winter wild seeds from collecting all of those crops. That is the power of foraging in this game. And it's just so profitable. Now, you're never going to beat the farming profession, you know, when it comes to starfruit and pumpkins. But foraging is a great profession to get you those quick bursts of cash if you need it. So I made more tea saplings after that. I'm gonna sell those for even more money. And we're back to processing our pumpkins into pumpkin juices. I have two sheds, filled up the top of cakes. I've got pumpkin juice coming out my ears. It's gonna be very interesting to see what we make on the last or second last day when we sell those juices. I did make a lot of money for tea saplings that day. It put me back up to 430,000 gold. Today was another day where we couldn't do any community quests because of our veganism ways. It was a choice between the omelettes and killing monsters for the wizards, so we couldn't do any of that. I did, however, go to Robin, get another house upgrade, because why not? I had the resources, I had the money. Let's give Robin some work. Went down for 81 in the mines today. I wanted to farm more fibre to make more tea saplings. So today it was the event of the Winter Star. Evelyn was the person I had to gift, give her a tulip. I was trying to get a diamond for her, but I couldn't find one. Thankfully, I had a tulip hanging around in a chest, and she loves those. Alex was my secret gift giver. He gave me some wine. I was actually really happy with that. I could sell the wine using the artisan perk to get some money that way as well. It was time to harvest all of the lovely fibre today. I got over a thousand again. Tons of fibre. Went into the bat cave, cleared it out, picked up all of the forage it had, made more tea saplings because I had just so much fibre lying around the place, and I managed to process almost all of the pumpkins into pumpkin juice and there was about 100-200 pumpkins left over. If I made more cakes I could have got through them but I processed the great majority of pumpkins so I was kind of happy with that. It was now time to sell literally everything that I had to see how much money I could end this challenge with. So I ended up selling all of the sprinklers on the farm, all of the items in my chest, literally anything that could be sold for money, I sold it. At the end of the day I made a huge 1,282,570 gold. I was rich. Most of that money, of course, came from the pumpkin juice, which sold for 1,008 gold a pop. That's why pumpkins are just so awesome to sell for huge amounts of money. It was the last day of the challenge. No matter run it was, this is the 100 days as a vegan. Plus an extra few days to make it a year. <laughs> so the red cabbage was ready. We're going to grab that, go to the community centre, and we're going to throw that in to complete the dye bundle. Unfortunately, we couldn't complete the community centre because we just couldn't get the other items needed. Now, I could have got the tortilla and I could have completed the chef's bundle if I saved the corn and just made one because I had the recipe for it. Or I could have bought the recipe off Gus to make it easily enough. I could not, for the life of me, get my hands on a moral for the field research bundle. It just did not pop up. Out of all the vendors that I checked, out of all the travelling I did, didn't come across one. Couldn't get the maple bar or the blackberry cobbler from the merchants, their year two recipes. So not much I could do about that. So that was just RNG not on my side. And then if we take a look at the snacks bundle, the roasted hazelnuts, another year two recipe. So that wasn't popping up for me at all through the merchants. And I checked the travelling card every time she appeared, but it just wasn't happening. So if I got... A 200 day challenge from this I would easily complete the community center so at the end of this challenge on hand I had 1,838,140 gold and the total earnings I made was 3,246,398 gold 
Not bad, considering the fact that I couldn't actually fish. Wasn't a bad figure to end up with. So I'm going to leave the video there. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks again to all my channel members for supporting me thus far. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a great day everyone. And I'm sure I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I played 100 days of Stardew Valley, but as a miner. Hello everybody, this is GamerGar. Welcome back to another 100 days Stardew Valley challenge. Let's get straight into the goals. The first goal is to make as much money as possible as a miner. The second goal is to complete all monster eradication goals. And the final goal is to complete the museum. That means locating every mineral and artifact in the game. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this video and let's have some fun. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button and help the GamerGar channel grow. I'd greatly appreciate it. A huge thanks to all my channel members. Thanks so much everyone for supporting me thus far. I really appreciate it. Day number one on our lovely Zenith farm. All mods of course are in description. So we're going to start by planting our lovely free 15 parsnip seeds. We won't be selling these of course because we're doing a minor challenge. Instead, we're going to eat those for health and energy. We're just going to cut down a couple of trees here and make our usual chest. And we're just going to fill this up with items that we don't want to bring around with us on a daily basis. The next thing we're going to do is run around the map. As per usual, I try to get as much forageables as possible. We want to get our foraging skill up as quickly as possible so we can learn the lightning rod recipe because we're going to need lots of battery packs later on in the challenge. The next day is just going to be spent fishing. Now what we want to do today is get as much copper ore as possible and this is achieved by getting the clint to break open lots of geodes here. You can also get them from fishing treasure chests as well. What we want to do is make the copper pickaxe before our on day number 5 and to pull this off we need lots of money and lots of copper ore. So giving Gunther an artifact here is a good way to start. 250 gold in the bag. Getting items like topazes, I can sell those for money and I can get Clint to break up next geodes as well. I got really lucky here and I got copper ores twice in a row from geodes. Five each time, that was 10 copper ores. I needed to buy the rest though and I needed to get Clint then to upgrade it by giving him 2000 gold. So the challenge was on. I also had to use up a lot of copper ore to make the furnace here on day number three. All of today is going to be spent fishing because I need to get more copper ore and this is the best way to get it if you start with the farm other than the hilltop farm. So I'm going to sell some coal here now as a clinch. Normally I don't sell coal, but I'm making an exception today because I needed to get over that 2000 threshold so Clint would upgrade my regular pickaxe into a copper pickaxe. That will be ready on day number 5 when the mines open. So straight away we're off to a really good start in terms of farming the mines for everything it's worth to make millions of gold in this game. I'm cutting down lots of trees today to try to increase my foraging skill. Making field snacks like this is a great way to ensure that you can spend the whole day cutting down trees. So today is finally the day, it's day number 5. We're going to collect our parsnip seeds, we're going to fix the bridge here so we can access a larger portion of the beach so we can get access to more forageables. And we're going to get our copper pickaxe off Clint. I'm also going to get a backpack upgrade off Pierre as well. All we need now is a really good weapon and we can dominate the mines. Unfortunately, we didn't get the Neptune's Glaive or any other weapons from the fishing, so we will have to use the Rusty Sword for now. So we are prioritizing minerals if we see them, because we can sell those to make money. If we see copper ores like this, we will also prioritize those, because we're going to need tons of copper, especially if we want to upgrade the huge array of tools that we have. We got level 20 today, which is really nice. I passed out just when I got access to the floor, so I managed to get that checkpoint. The next day, however, I went straight back down into the mines and picked up the steel small sword. You'll also notice that some of the enemies look a little bit different to what you're used to looking at. That's just because of a mod, it just reskins the enemies. Their attack patterns and stats, of course, are the exact same. So I got an ambush floor here. Normally, these ambush floors are a blessing in disguise because it's a great way to get kill counts up on slimes, especially if we're going for monster eradication goals. But because we had a weak weapon, I wasn't going to spend the whole day farming this floor. Instead, I just went down into the next floor and progressed. So the steel small sword isn't too bad, but there's much better weapons we can get. A great example here now is the forest sword that we just picked up there. We got super lucky. This is a level 3 weapon, and it does more or less double the damage of that of the steel small sword. So it was a really nice upgrade to get early on in the mines. 
We're also going to visit Marlin and we're going to sell him items that we can't sell. Primarily the weapons and the rings. Now we can sell of course the bug meat and the bat wings etc via the shipping bin at our farm. But it's handy just giving the Marlin for quick cash there and then. So we're processing quartz into refined quartz. And I'm not doing this to stock up on quality sprinklers or anything like that. I'm doing this to make extra money. So we're now down into the darkened versions of the mines. And instead of fighting golems, we're fighting what looks like fairies. But they have the same stats as golems. Because we have the forest sword, it's actually quite easy to dispatch these enemies. Normally when you come down here, you have to steal a small sword. And it takes quite a number of strikes to kill these golem enemies. But the forest sword just makes short work of them. And that's good for us. That means faster combat XP, and the higher our combat skill goes, the more HP we get. And we're going to need all the HP we can get, especially later on in the challenge, when new mods are introduced, and the mines becomes very, very interesting. <laughs> For now, I will leave that up to your imagination, in terms of how interesting the mines is going to get, thanks to a lovely array of mods that I've put on this video. For now, the money that we're bringing in is really small, because copper bars and iron bars don't sell for a whole lot. The gold bars in huge quantities aren't too bad, and it will open up various paths of opportunity for us later on in the video. But for now, the priority is progression in the mines, getting down to the later floors, getting access to the gold lores, and eventually getting access to Skull Cavern. Once we can start farming Iridium, the real money will start pouring in. We also want to try to increase our mining skill up to level 10 as quickly as possible, so we can get that blacksmith perk. I got the crystal dagger now today, we're getting there, floor 60. I got an ambush floor on floor 62, but we still had the forest sword, so it wasn't ideal for farming slimes on this level. I picked up the wood mallet there, that's a game changer, that's 15 to 24 damage. It's an awesome weapon, it also has the ground pound, so it can hit enemies multiple times. Everybody has their own combat preference in this game, but my own personal opinion, club weapons are much more effective in combat than that of sword weapons because of the ground pound ability. Now I picked up some combat boots there, plus three defense is a really nice upgrade for me. I'm going to get Clint to break open all these geodes. Now I could give these items to Gunther and I could progress the game quickly that way in terms of minerals, but I decided to sell them because I really need money. We're going the Georgia route of course because it's a minor run. There's no real point farming at all in this playthrough. And farming is something you're not really going to see. Primarily, most days will be spent in the mines or preparing for some sort of a mining run. So we're going to go to Marlin now today. We're going to sell him items we don't need. This includes boots, rings, weapons and monster pieces. Marlin is super handy to have because he's just outside of the mines. And it just means you can get money today rather than wait for the next day. Especially if you really want to get something on the day. If you don't want to have to wait for the clock to tick over into the next day. Level 80 now in the mines, where you can now farm gold, which is really good. The enemies down here also give really good combat XP, so it's a great place to farm to get the combat XP up, to get the mining XP up, and of course, to get lots of gold ores and diamonds and rubies to get lots of money. Now, those diamonds could be kept for Triple Shot Expressos later on, but I'm going to sell these ones for now because the priority is money. I got the Obsidian Edge now on floor 90. But I'm not going to swap out my current weapon. My current weapon is the Tempered Broadsword. And it's a very nice weapon indeed. So we're just going to sell the Obsidian Edge instead. Another Elite Slime here. What is it going to drop? I always get excited when I fight these slimes. It dropped a Yeti Tooth. And that is an actual upgrade for us. 26 to 42 damage. But it gives a plus 4 defense. Which is really nice. And especially if we're going to the Skull Cavern in the early days. That plus 4 defense is a game changer. Level 100 gives us a star drop, which is nice, but energy is something that we won't really need a whole lot of in this challenge. It's still nice to get the star drop all the same. When it comes to rooms like this, getting these crates is always a good way to go. The hardwood will come in super handy later. Level 5 combat, we're going to pick fighter. All attacks deal 10% more damage. That's a no-brainer for us. Getting diamonds this regularly is really nice. Not only does it give a lot of mining XP, they also sell for 750 gold to pop. And that's going to come in super handy, especially in the early days of the challenge. So we're now on day number 12, and we managed to get down to floor 120. We pick up the Skull Key, we can now do Skull Cavern runs. We just have to unlock the bus. The best way we can go about doing that in this challenge is to make as many gold bars as possible and sell those along with anything we pick up in the mines. These mushrooms, for example, are a forageable item, but because we picked them up in the mines, I'm allowing myself to sell these. So today... I made 11,529 gold, not too bad, that includes 32 gold bars, 250 gold each, it is a small amount of gold, 
But because gold ore is so common in the latter version of the mines, we can sell quite a lot of gold bars to get some money. We now have 30,000 gold, so we can start getting some upgrades now for ourselves. So I went with the mushroom cave via Demetrius because mushrooms spawn in every single day and I can sell those if I wish. I've smelted more ores into bars here now and that's something you're going to see a lot is me smelting ores into bars because it is a mining challenge. More diamonds today and we're just farming more gold. There's also a mystery node in this room and I got super lucky with this. I managed to pick up another diamond. It's always nice to get double diamonds in the same room. George membership, 5,000 gold. No problem at all, Morris. We're going to get that. And now we're going to save up to 40,000 gold and unlock the bus. That means we can start doing Skull Cavern runs. And that's where the real fun is going to start because you get some very nice things in the Skull Cavern. So we're getting Clint to break open more geodes today and we're going to sell Clint all of the minerals. Eventually we will start giving these to Gunther. But for now, money is still the priority. That brings us up to 41,000 gold. Now we're going to spend 5,000 gold upgrade the pickaxe to the steel. We could have unlocked the bus today but it's more important to upgrade the pickaxe before you go into Skull Cavern. And in my personal opinion, a steel pickaxe would be the minimum requirement because both the steel and the gold pickaxe just requires two swings to break open a regular node. If you run out of bombs, two swings isn't the end of the world. So what we're doing here now today is we're in the middle section. We're farming iron ores. The reason why we're farming iron is because I want to make bombs, such as the one I just put down there. While my pickaxe has been upgraded, I will use a bomb if it's two or more iron ore nodes on the floor because it will get back more iron ores than what it took to make the bomb. So it just makes sense to put bombs down for those. So the next day we're going to go with the bus upgrade. 40,000 gold well spent. Morris is very happy, I'm very happy. And of course Pam is also happy because we just got Pam a job thanks to Georgia and myself. You're welcome Pam. We're going to go to Gus buy some salads. Salads is probably one of the best foods you can get when it comes to Skull Cavern runs because you can get as many as you want off Gus, and it's only 220 gold a piece, so it's not too expensive. But if you are lacking on money and you're not doing a specific minor challenge, you can always go tea saplings. Of course, we won't be going tea saplings in this challenge because it's a mining challenge. So for the rest of the day, we're back down in the middle section again, farming iron ores. The next day we get our steel pickaxe off Clint, we can now do Skull Cavern runs. We have some bombs, we have some salads, we've got a good weapon there, the steel falchion, and we have our steel pickaxe. We're going to trade in some diamonds and rubies for chup shot espressos and spicy eels. You'll also notice that the Skull Caverns, similar to the mines, looks a bit different. That's thanks to a mod. The butterflies are serpents. The fire-breathing chickens are dinosaurs. So we're sick of watch out for those. They may look nice. They may look cute. But they're well able to dish out some serious damage and send you packing. So do not underestimate the fire-breathing chickens. There is a chance, however, when we kill these chickens, they will drop dinosaur eggs. And if we do get a dinosaur egg, we can, of course, start a dinosaur farm because we got it inside the mines. So let's see if luck will be on our side over the next few days. So I met a past floor 25. That's going to be 10,000 gold off Mr. Key. The scarecrows are mummies, so they're more or less the same. You have to kill them, then blow them up. We will get much better tools that are on in the video to dispatch them much faster. So the next day I got 10,000 gold left, Mr. Key, it was really nice. That was just for making the past 25 floors of the Skull Cavern, which isn't too difficult if you go in in the morning time somewhat prepared. Now I had 15,000 gold on me. I decided to get the final backpack upgrade now rather than later because having the second tier backpack was severely impacting me in the Skull Cavern and I ended up throwing away a lot of items that I could have sold to make extra money. So it was a big investment there for me. Getting Clint to break open more geodes here, and I'm still selling off the minerals to Clint because I still need a lot more money to get some upgrades. The plan now is to just get the 20,000 gold, which is what I'm doing here, and upgrade my pickaxe even further to a gold pickaxe. I do want to get that all the way to an iridium pickaxe so I can one shot the nodes in this whole cavern. And that will be done in the next few days once we start bringing in much bigger money. Our mining skill still wasn't maxed out, so we were only getting a thousand gold per iridium bar instead of 1500 gold and that extra 500 gold makes a massive difference especially when you start selling hundreds of iridium bars so i'm going to buy some warp totems to the desert today this means i can start my skull cavern runs first thing in the morning instead of waiting for pam at 10 o'clock i also picked up a prismatic shard as well and we're going to trade it in now for the galaxy weapon this is the galaxy sword and because we have the galaxy sword now this opens up an array of galaxy weapons we can purchase off marlin including the dagger and of course the hammer but the hammer is very expensive. 
does cost 75,000 gold. So it's something that we might look at later on in the video. But for now, we'll stick with the Galaxy Sword. It's still an awesome weapon. And it will make short work of all of the enemies in the regular mines. And most of the enemies in the Skull Cavern. We can also upgrade these Galaxy weapons to Infinity Weapons. And that's something we might do later on in the video. Depending on how progression goes. So we're killing Dust Sprites today for a very specific reason. We want to get the kill count up to 500. So we can get a Burglar Ring off of the Adventurer's Guild as a reward. I also picked up my gold pickaxe today, so I just have one more upgrade to go for the Iridium pickaxe. It's time for another upgrade. We're going to go with the minecarts for 15,000 gold. This unlocks fast travel around Stardew Valley, meaning we can save a lot more time. So we're back in the Skull Cavern now today, and we're fighting fire-breathing chickens. And the reason why I'm prioritizing those floors and the reason why I'm killing all these monsters is because I want to complete all monster eradication goals. And if I want to pull that off, in the first one year of this challenge, we really need to start farming these enemies as early as possible. It's not something you want to leave when you're halfway through the challenge or something you kind of want to start now. So if we do get infested floors and it's filled up to the top with dinosaurs, that's actually a blessing for us and not a hindrance. So we're farming crates if we see them and we did it again. A lucky ring inside one of the crates. I cannot believe my luck when it comes to making these 100 day videos. I, the game just knows I'm doing a 100 day video and it just gives me a lucky ring. And I'm going to say it again because I say it in most of my videos. But why would you pan with Poxiel when you can one shot it with Gamer Gar? I get a lucky ring out of a crate, no problem at all. <laughs> because I got a dinosaur egg, I'm going to make a coop. And that coop is going to hold dinosaurs. So yes, we are going to become dinosaur farmers. It's back to Clint. It's time to get an upgrade, but we're not going to go with the pickaxe as we can't afford it. We're just going to upgrade the regular axe. I need to get a steel axe now as quickly as possible to start farming hardwood. Because sooner or later the time is going to come where we're going to have to fix up the boat to get to Ginger Island. And that requires a whopping 200 pieces of hardwood. We're smelting ores back in the bars now again today. And we got some Iridium bars, which is really nice. And of course, we're going to sell those because we need tons of money. We only have 390 gold at the moment. We're also back down in the middle section. We're killing slimes. And if we see dust sprites, of course, we'll prioritize those. But it's just doing regular monster eradication goals again today. Now, it's not a total time waste killing these enemies. Sometimes they can drop very nice items. I made 33,000 gold today. Primarily from selling iridium bars. They sell for 1,000 gold apiece. And that will get better. Because I had so much money, we we're going to go back to the lovely Morris and get a new upgrade. We're going to go with the bridge. And the main reason we're taking the bridge is because it unlocks a new cave that we can do on a daily basis. And there's a chance we can get magic rock candies off the floaty skull enemies in that cave. Now it's a very small chance, but there is still a chance for it to happen. Getting those dwarf scrolls is also super important. We want to befriend the dwarf as quickly as possible, as he might have special weapons for us in the near future. This is just a nice scene here of Morris working super hard fixing up the bridge. Morris is such a hard worker, isn't he? <laughs> I got my copper axe back off Clint. The copper axe isn't too bad. I can break open regular tree stumps with that. But we want the steel axe to break open the much, much tougher tree stumps that we have on the farm. And of course, to get access into the secret woods to farm the hardwood inside there. I got a dark sword today. It's a level 9 weapon. It's actually a very nice weapon pre-Skull Cavern before you get the galaxy weapons. But well, because we have a galaxy sword, we're just going to sell that to Marilyn for some extra money. So what we see here now are bird-like enemies. These are just the floaty skulls disguised as birds. And they have a 0.1% chance to drop magic rock candies. So coming in here on a daily basis is worth it. They can also drop really nice rings, such as ruby rings that increase your attack power by 10%. can also drop aquamarine rings as well that increase critical strike chance. We also picked up the golden sight and we teleport out of there in style. Back to Marilyn, it is time to set items you don't need anymore. So we got some bone swords here from Farmer the Skeletons, we got the Slammer, the Dark Sword and some other bits and bobs, that's some extra coins in our pocket. We finally completed the Monster Eradication goal for the Dust Sprites, that's a total of 500 Dust Sprites wiped out. We can now go claim our prize, which is the Burglar Ring and that doubles the drop rates of items that fall from monsters. It's a very nice ring to have, especially if we're doing lots of dungeon crawls like we'll be doing in this challenge. So getting double the items off enemies is going to be a huge game changer in terms of how much money we're going to make at the end of the challenge. 
So today, we're just going to do our usual farming method inside the quarry cave. I've got an aquamarine ring there. That was nice. I'm not going to use that ring, but we can sell it for some money. Today, we're farming insects and we're farming doggies just to complete more monster eradication goals. You don't get any great prizes farming these monsters, but if we want to complete the challenges we set out, we got to put in the time, we got to put in the work. Finally, level 10 mining, we're going to pick blacksmith. Bars are now worth 50% more. That's a game changer. Even gold bars now are quite lucrative to sell those. We're also going to get rid of this tree stump, enter the secret woods, and farm the hardwood within. We need to get as much hardwood as possible because in the next few days or in the next week or two, we will be getting access to Ginger Island. And it is a place we want to get to as early as possible so we can start doing the hardened version of the mines to get even more rewards. That's of course if luck is on our side. There's always a chance that the key quests just won't have those activities and we won't be able to go into any of the hardened version of the mines. So fingers crossed we will be successful. It was a really nice run in the Skull Cavern today. We got lots of prismatic shards. We managed to kill lots of fire-breathing chickens. And we managed to get lots of really nice items, including lots of Iridium Ores as well. Iridium Bars are now worth 1500 gold, so getting those Iridium Ores is now super important. If I see bars like this, I will always prioritize them, of course. You never know, you might get another lucky ring. There's always a chance you can get one out of a barn inside a Skull Cavern. Will I get two lucky rings on this challenge? I'm sure we'll find out in the next couple of minutes. So this is just what I got after the Skull Cavern run. As you can see, I got a huge array of different types of items. Most of these items will be sold directly into the shipping bin. Some will be kept for future use later on. I do keep a few prismatic shards, of course, because I might want to enchant some stuff later on and having a couple of prismatic shards lying around the place is always handy. But on the other side, prismatic shards do sell for 2,000 gold apiece. So if I'm really struggling with money, I might just sell those. I also picked up my nice ring rewards today from Gil, that was the Vampire Ring and the Burglar Ring. I do sell the Vampire Ring, but I will absolutely keep the Burglar Ring, and that will be equipped straight away. Later on, I can start combining rings, so my character can have a total of four rings instead of two, which would be really nice as well when I get to Ginger Island. Because we now have the Burglar Ring, going into the Skull Cavern and going into the other caves would be quite lucrative, as double rewards means double money. So we're going back to Clint today, and we're just going to sell him some Iridium Bars, because we want to get the money up. We got up to 57,000 gold right there, that's really nice. And because we have so much money, we're going to go back to Morris and buy another upgrade. We're just going to get the Pan upgrade now, and that just leaves the greenhouse, which we can get tomorrow, and then we can start cracking on the Ginger Island, once we come up with all the mats, of course, needed to fix up the old boat. We also need battery packs to fix up the boat as well, so making lightning rods now it will be very beneficial for us. And if we're lucky come summer, we'll get a few nights where we get the thunder and lightning and we can get battery packs the next day. So primarily, just farming 481 today. I find this floor to be one of the best floors in the game. Not only for farming fiber, but for farming crates, enemies and minerals, you know, to get diamonds, etc. It's a magnificent floor because it's such a small floor. Everything is just clumped up into one small little area and you can make a lot of money from farming it in one day. I also got super lucky today and I came across not one but two mushroom floors. So I got lots of red mushrooms, a few purple mushrooms and I'll sell all them as well to make a pretty nice profit. Breaking open the barrels can always surprise you. The slammer there is a fantastic weapon and it's probably one of the best, if not the best, pre-Skull Cavern weapon that you can get your hands on before you go into the Skull Cavern and start getting prismatic shards. But we'll be selling that to Marilyn for some extra money because we don't need it. We're also going to set him Yeti Toots, Steel Fanchons, and we got a Bone Sword there as well. And all those weapons, bar the Bone Sword, can come straight out of crates. So going in and out of Floor 81 constantly, be very surprised just on how many of those weapons you can stock up on and sell for money. So we finally got the last upgrade there off Marlis. We're going back into the Secret Woods now today. We're farming these tree stumps. Just got level 5 foraging there, which is really nice. That will unlock a foraging perk. We also done the Monster Slayer goal for insects today. That will award us with an insect head. We'll sell that, of course. And it's one less monster eradication goal to worry about. So we're going to go with Forester. Trees give us 25% more wood. And the reason why we chose that over Gather is because we're not really going to be gathering a whole lot of forageables. And we will need lots of wood later on for various activities. So I got my first dinosaur egg. I'm going to put it into the incubator there inside the coop. And after about 10 or 11 days, that will hatch into a dinosaur for us. So I'm going to spend most of today cutting down trees and the reason why I need so much regular wood is because I want to upgrade the coop even further and automate my dinosaur farm. 
I picked up Robin's last axe, totally forgot about it in spring because I was so focused on getting money and making progression in the mines. But whenever we do meet Robin, we can hand that axe to her for some extra friendship points. Level 6 foraging means we can make lightning rods and we need those to get battery packs. I also got my Iridium pickaxe off Clint. I can now one-shot the nodes in the Skull Cavern. So today, I'm actually farming doggies, and I find floor 15 to be the best floor for this activity. I can come in and out of this floor as many times as I want, and I can kill the doggies. And once I kill enough doggies, the reward there will be a hard hat, and one less monster eradication goal to worry about. So I collected lots of refined quartz today, not to sell, but to make lightning rods. I'm at 25 in total, I just needed iron bars, bat wings and refined quartz. I'm going to set these up now on the Zenit farm. The next day is going to be a thunder and lightning day, which is really good. So hopefully most of these lightning rods will activate and I'll end up with tons of battery packs. I just need five to upgrade the ship to get to Ginger Island. So I'm going to get Clint to break open geodes today. We won't be selling any more minerals to Clint. Instead, we're going to start making some progress now with Gunther and the museum. And we're going to be giving him all of the artifacts and minerals that we have collected so far. We're also going back into the quarry cave. We do farm this a lot in the hopes we get a magic rock candy. Haven't got one yet though. We're also going back in the Skull Cavern today as well. And we're not really trying to make huge progression today in the Skull Cavern. We just want to kill as many enemies as possible just for monster eradication goals. So if we come across slimes, serpents, mummies, they're all up for grabs in terms of killing. At the end of the day, I finally achieved level 10 combat. We're going to pick Brute, 15% more damage. Definitely the way to go. I also gathered enough materials to fix up the boat here. Five battery packs, five iridium bars, and 200 pieces of hardwood. Clint's boat was now fully repaired, and it would only take him one night with the help of Robin to get that boat set up to travel over to Ginger Island. So I'm also going to get my axe upgraded to a gold axe, just so I can cut down trees a lot faster. It's just to save time. And because I had all this loose change on me now, I had all the Georgia achievements done, I could start upgrading tools at my own leisure. I didn't really need huge amounts of money anymore, unless I want to go for an obelisk or two later on in the video. So we're back to farming regular ores today, now in the regular mines. Copper ores, we're killing slimes. We're also killing void monsters when we see those, because we need the void monsters for another monster eradication goal. Coming across huge gold clusters like this is always super exciting. And of course, super profitable. Had an ambush floor today, but unfortunately it was on floor 97, so there was no super quick way to get down into this floor. If it was floor 96, it would have been golden, but I did take full advantage of it and slayed every single monster in the floor to get the kill counts up. I sold a huge array of items today just to make some extra money, including sap, slimes, all picked up in the caves, of course. And this is just a nice scene here of Robin and Willie working together to fix up the board so we can now get to Ginger Island. And the next day, Gunther even visited us and gave us the key to the sores so we can now go down and have a chat with Krobus and have a look at his wares. So I purchased one melon and one wheat off Pierre and this is for the sole purpose of getting golden walnuts over on Ginger Island. I also purchased a fiberglass rod because I need to do some fishing over on Ginger Island as well to get even more golden walnuts and I purchased some bait to increase the bite rate of the fish. So it's 1,000 gold for a ticket over the Ginger Island. It is quite expensive. But the more progress you make in Ginger Island, the more items you can get where you can bypass that 1,000 gold. One example would be the Warp Obelisk over and back to Ginger Island from your farm. So the strategy was simple. Get as many golden walnuts as quickly as possible. And luckily for me, I know where every single golden walnut is because I've done this so many times. <laughs> so it was quite easy for me to get the house upgrade today. Just needed 20 golden walnuts in total in this area for that lovely parrot to fix up the house, which means I could sleep here and I can start doing up this farm. So I'm just going to water the wheat and the melon seed. I can't get the garlic, you know, to get the, the last five golden walnuts off the frog because that's a year two crop. But I might get lucky and I might get it in the skull cavern. So we're going to do a volcano run today and there's 10 floors in this dungeon and you can do this dungeon every single day it resets and you always get an elite chest on floor 9 and you can get some really nice items in that elite chest including dragon tooth weapons, really nice boot armors, really nice hats for your character and so on and so forth. So there's a total of 5 golden walnuts to be gotten from mining and combat and from the dwarven caches in this volcano dungeon 
and you can get a few more golden walnuts from other bits and bobs as well, including the final area you hear just two stuck onto trees. You also get a free prismatic shard when you get up to level 10. Now that's a once off, that doesn't happen again. I enchanted my sword, I got the crusader enchant, super happy with that. I'm going to put three rubies into it as well. Rubies would increase the sword's attack power. So it was a f almost a fully upgraded galaxy weapon with the crusader enchant. I was off to a great start now in terms of enchants with weapons. It's time to upgrade more tools with Clint. That'll take a few days, of course. So what we're doing now is collecting artifacts for Professor Snail's archaeology side quest. And you can free Professor Snail just up there as a rock block in the way any sort of bomb will release him. And once we have all of the artifacts found, we will get a huge amount of golden walnuts from Professor Snail. The reason why we're prioritizing the golden walnuts is because if we gather a total of 100, we will get access to Key's secret walnut room. From there, if we get really lucky, we can get quests that would unlock hardened versions of the mines. That means a lot more rewards for us. So that is the current tactic that we're utilizing at the moment. If you want to see a guide on how to obtain all golden walnuts, just click on the link up above there and that'll bring you into a video that I created which will show you the location of all golden walnuts. Now, I'm clearing the farm of everything, but I'm not going to be putting crops on, I'm just going to leave it blank. And the reason for this is to increase the spawn rate of artifact points. That will increase my chances of getting all the artifacts for Professor Snail. So I just unlocked a new area here down by the beach. This is the Pirate's Cove area. And there's a few golden walnuts to be had around here as well. There's also a chance you can get golden walnuts from those mussels. You can get a total of five, but the drop rate is quite low. Now I hold up a snake skull there. Just need two vertebrae and we're good to go with the snake. I'm going to purchase some spaghettis off Gus. We're going to try to get Robin to six hearts. So she will give us the drum block and the blue block that we need to complete a puzzle over on Ginger Island, which will award us with five more golden walnuts. Now we have been working on Robin for a while, so we're not too far off getting her up to six hearts. I had some money lying around, so I treated myself to a surge off Probus. Then I decided to go into the mutant bug lair, get my hands on the dark talisman. This means I'll be able to get the magic link later on, so I want to use the wizard's terminal to get those lovely warp obelisks. Let's see how many warp obelisks we can get by the end of this video. So the lightning rods are ready again, I'm going to collect more battery packs. Now, I'm going to keep all these battery packs, I might be able to make crystallariums with those later on, and it would be nice to get a farm filled up to the top of crystallariums. We're going to get Clint now to process some golden coconuts. You always get a golden wallet from the first one. And there's a chance then that you can get an artifact needed from Professor Snail from the rest of them. Along with banana saplings and mango saplings. They're really nice saplings to have. So I'm combining rings there. The lucky ring with the burglar ring. I now have a free ring slot. So I can put two more rings together when I receive those. So we're going to donate some stuff here now into Professor Snail. And as we can see, all I'm missing now is just the snake. And the snake can be quite tedious depending on your luck when it comes to hoeing up stuff from the ground. I also finished off the gem bird puzzle by guessing the last two minerals needed. And it was just a toss up between an amethyst, an aquamarine and a topaz. So it was going to be one of them to get the last uh, couple of golden walnuts there from that puzzle. I also fished up a sturgeon today and the reason why I specifically sought out that fish was just for the luau coming up in a few days. So I got a gold star sturgeon there, I'm going to put it into the soup. That gives you the best response from the governor. And that is going to excel our friendship with Robin. So she will now give us the flute block and the drum block. Thank you very much, Robin. Super lucky today, I got the final snake vertebrae needed to finish Professor Snail's side quest. That's going to reward us, not only with an ostrich incubator, but lots of gold walnuts. So we were getting quite close to entering Key's secret walnut room. The mango sapling isn't needed for anything, but we did need a banana sapling to get more golden walnuts later on. I did have enough golden walnuts to get an upgrade there for the obelisk on the farm. And I also put down the flute blocks as well and completed the mermaid puzzle, which awarded me with five more golden walnuts. Now a new baby lizard has joined the farm. I'm gonna call it Drogon because I couldn't think of any other name. And that is the first of many dinosaurs that we're going to have on our lovely farm. Let's see how many dinosaurs we can collect on our journey to become the ultimate 100 day miner. Despite the fact that this is a 100 day challenge, just so you all know, I'll be playing through one whole year of the game. I suppose I should have said that at the start of the video, but you'd find out eventually anyway if you watch the whole video through. <laughs> 
So today we're back in the regular mines. We're farming for 81, but we're also on the lookout for slimes and for the void spirits as well to get those monster eradication goals complete. More battery packs than exit, that was really nice. And I also got Robin to make a silo, just so if we get rainy days, it's not the end of the world. And we'll be able to keep our lovely dinosaur happy. Got some staircases off the desert trader, and the pirates were hanging out in the cove. It was time to play the pirates dark game. You can play this a total of three times. It gets harder each time because you get less throws, but you can get a total of three golden walnuts from playing that game. Because I had the crusader inchant, I didn't need to detonate those scarecrows anymore or the mummies. I could just kill them outright with the crusader inchant on the weapon. I got tons of prismatic shards today and an absolute mountain of iridium ores. That means a lot more money for us. Look at all the iridium ores I have. I have hundreds of it. I'm going to convert all these into bars, sell them for loads of money. I'm also going to make a slime hutch as well. So we're going to start with a bit of a slime farm because I suppose it is a mining activity. You can only get the slime hutch from mining. Technically, you can also get it from fishing, but because it is primarily a mining activity and a combat activity when it comes to raising the slimes, I will allow it for this challenge. So that is another monster eradication goal complete for the skeletons. So we're one step closer to completing all of the challenges. Back to 481, and we're just farming the usual enemies here, getting fiber. We're also getting lots of minerals to make crystallariums. I made 27 crystallariums in total today. I'm gonna fill these up with jades, and it only takes one day, 13 hours for a jade to spawn. That means once I accumulate loads of those, I can trade them in every Sunday for staircases. The frog is gonna give me a total of 10 golden walnuts today. One for the melon and one for the wheat. He will give me five more if I manage to grow a garlic. But for now, the ten will have to do. I did get access to Key's secret walnut room. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of the mining quests that makes the difficulty of any of the caves harder. So we're just going to have to go with Key's prismatic grange for now. Because there's absolutely no way I was doing Key's crop on a challenge like this. So for the Grange, for blue items, I find that purchasing a hundred Georgia Colas is the way to go. They are cheaper methods, like filling up crystal arms with aquamarines and things like that. For red, I'm going with cherry bombs, and because I had so many copper ores, it was easy just to make a hundred of those. And for orange, I could just use the copper ores themselves. So it's an easy enough quest to do, you know, for green, I had fiber, for yellow, I had sap, and for purple, I had bug meat. So I suppose the most expensive item there was just the Georgia Colas that you can buy from the Georgia Mart, if you go the Georgia route, of course. So do yourselves a favour and go the Georgia route. So the top item on the list for priority in relation to key coins was the Galaxy Swords. I wanted three of those to get an infinity weapon. They also upgraded my pickaxe, got the Swift Enchant. That will make life a little bit easier now when I do regular mining runs. I'm going to put a purple slime egg into that slime incubation machine and we're going to start a nice little slime farm going to put more jades into these crystallariums eventually i will have hundreds and hundreds of jades i will have hundreds of staircases so today we are going to combine some resources and make an iridium band because i had a free ring slot available and the iridium band is a fine ring if you don't have anything better 10 percent increased attack damage and it even has the magnetism as well and it glows up in the dark what more could you ask for We'll go back into the quarry cave today now these enemies that we're killing they're not on the monster eradication list but it's still worth coming in every day and farming them in the hopes that one of them might drop a magic rock candy. Magic rock candies are probably the best consumables you can get in the game. The luck buff alone that they provide is just absolutely insane. And if you go in to any sort of dungeon with the magic rock candy, you're going to have so much luck, especially if you combine it with a super lucky day, you're going to end up getting great rewards. 29 iridium bars right there, 1500 gold apiece. We were well on the way to getting millions of gold. We had 79,000 gold at the moment, but we didn't really have anything to spend it on. So for now, we're just going to save it up, and we might get a few weapon upgrades or tool upgrades down the road with it. So I got an ambush floor today, it was floor number 7, and I do end up using staircases to try to get all of these monster eradication goals done today. I know I just got the goal completed there for killing rock crabs. And I also got the goal for slimes as well. So we're well on the way now to completing all those goals. I suppose the slimes would have been the most tedious one. But in my opinion, the serpents to kill 250 of those is a little bit harder. So I got my first dinosaur egg today off Drogon. Thank you very much. And we are, of course, going to hatch that up. We're then going to visit Robin. And we're going to get Robin to make the deluxe coop. Because we had the gold, we had the stone and the wood. So why not? We might as well increase the capacity 
for our lovely dinosaurs. The next day, we're going to jump straight back into the Skull Cavern, and we're going to try to complete now monster eradication goals for the mummies. We're very close to getting that done, and because we have the Crusader enchant, these mummies are now so easy to kill. They're also a magnificent enemy to farm as they drop cloth on a regular basis. Look at all the rewards we're going to get today. The big rewards that we wanted, of course, was the Crab Shell Ring, a plus 5 defense is nothing to snuff at, and a Slime Charmer Ring, which negates damage from all types of slimes. All it's left to do is the mummies, the pepper rexes, the serpents, and magma sprites over in Ginger Island there in the Volcano Dungeon. We also had a huge array of weapons to sell that we didn't need, including Wicked Chris's, Yeti Tudes, Bone Swords, etc. So it was a nice extra bit of money there in the pocket. I managed to get the Deluxe Pirate Hat today. That is actually a super rare hat. It's always nice to pick up something like that. I also combined the Lucky Ring with my Iridium Band, and I'm also going to combine the Crab Shell Ring with the Slime Charmer Ring. So that's going to be a very nice defensive ring setup there as well. The plus 5 defense combined with the boots that I have, it just means getting killed is going to be a lot harder. Enemies will hit me for a lot less. So we finally got super lucky today. We got Danger in the Deep. 21 days to get it done. The reward, 50 key gems. But more importantly, we could now access the hardened version of the regular mines. This means we could farm radioactive ore. The enemies are much stronger in the hardened versions of the mines, but the rewards are much greater if you know how to farm this place properly. And I will show you how to farm this place over the next few days. I'm going to show you some magnificent tips. I'm going to show you ways on how miners can make hundreds of thousands of gold. Is it as good as farming? No, nothing beats farming really, especially with the Starfruit Wines. But if you're doing a mining challenge, then this is what you're going to do to make millions of gold. Once we complete this mines, I will show you the ultimate farming floor. So keep watching and stay tuned. The hardened version of the mines has a few enemies that are actually big threats. The putrid ghost is one. It can give us a debuff where we can't take any consumables or healing items. And that can actually break a run if you can't heal. Now I could have made tons of staircases and went down through the floors very quickly, but I wanted to make the most out of my first descent into the mines because you can get some really nice stuff out of the barrels including pressure nozzles if we want to use some crops later on put the pressure nozzle on a sprinkler it does increase its range by one tile in all directions which is very overpowered indeed especially if you put it on iridium sprinklers so i just completed the monster eradication goal there for void spirits i was super happy with that getting mushroom floors like this is always a blessing not only do you get tons of foraging xp but the purple mushrooms are really good for healing and for energy, and they can also sell for really nice money as well. So we're now down at the floor 119. There's one floor to go, and we have the challenge complete. That's 50 key gems in the pocket. I just have the ladder right there now, and that is the first big key challenge done. That's 88 key gems in total. That's enough for one galaxy soul. We just need 12 more to get a second. And we can always buy the last galaxy soul on the last day of a season using the Ginger Island Trader. So today, this is the ultimate farming technique for radioactive ore. Just go in and out of floor 1 as many times as possible. The higher your luck, the more chance there is of these nodes to spawn. You will end up with hundreds of radioactive ore. One radioactive bar with the blacksmith perk will sell for 4,500 gold. Now I have 11 bars there that's totaling to 49,500 gold. That is why the radioactive bars. That's why getting access to this hardened version of the mines is a game changer. And we're only halfway through the challenge. And look at all the money we're going to make. We are going to come out of this challenge with millions of gold. I also picked up the dragon scale boots today in the volcano. They are the best boots in the game in terms of raw physical defense. I also got an ambush floor here with more fire breeding chickens. This was actually a blessing because I needed these for the kill count. And I was very close to actually getting the goal here. And I just unlocked it there. Monster Stair goal complete for the dinosaurs. Or should I say fire breeding chickens. <laughs> so there was only a handful of enemies left to farm. But the biggest challenge was actually going to be the serpents. Because the serpents don't really attack in huge swarms. You might get two or three if you're unlucky. But most of the time it's kind of one here and one there. Lots more Skull Cavern runs will be needed to get the kill counts up on the serpents. Or should I say giant blue butterflies. As we can see now today, the Crystallariums are doing their job. They're working really well with our current strategy. We're getting lots of jades. 
We can now visit the desert trader because it's Sunday. We can trade those in for staircases. Because it's the last day of the season, we can trade in 10 radioactive bars for the Galaxy Soul. And I can buy the rest of the Galaxy Souls using the key gems. So that's two right there because they're 40 gems a piece. So that's 80 in total. So I now have three Galaxy Souls that I can put in into my Galaxy Sword to make it an Infinity Blade. It doesn't look as sparkly as the Galaxy Sword because the mod that I'm using just doesn't have the Infinity Weapons in it. But it's still a very strong weapon indeed. So we're going to do some progression here now with the Goblin. I just want to get the Magical Ink now. I want to get access to the Magical Terminal for the Obelisks and for things like that. Because you never know, I might get enough money to get one or two or even four Obelisks later on in the challenge. So we're getting gold bars today. Now the reason for these gold bars, I'm not going to sell them all. I want to make more Crystallariums. Because I want more jades, I want more staircases. That means I can do much more effective Skull Cavern runs. That means more money for us. More jades today from the Crystallariums. So as you can see now, there's kind of a trend that's starting to form. Where we're going to collect the jades, trade them in on Sundays and do a massive Skull Cavern run. So we're going to go with a curious substance today. And we're going to get very lucky with that now in the next day or two. I also got a banana here from my banana tree over on Ginger Island. I'm going to give that to the monkey. And he's going to give us a couple of golden walnuts as a reward. Now we don't really need any more golden walnuts at the moment. Because we got into key secret walnut room. But we can trade in those golden walnuts for key gems if we want to buy more goodies. So we're going to do key's hungry challenge next. Let's get down 100 floors in the skull cavern without using any consumables. And the staircases just trivializes that challenge. I also got the glop here as well off the putrid ghost. That was super lucky. We're going to give that to the wizard. That is another quest complete. More money in the bag for us. So that's going to give us a total of 2,500 gold. It gets much better though. I made a total of 58,826 gold. Primarily from selling radioactive bars and our bits and bobs. It was another skull cavern run today. I got a lot of auto grabbers today and auto petters. Now I just needed one of each to just do up the dinosaur farm that I was going to have going there. So that was going to make life really easy for us. The next day, the jades have reappeared. And what's great about the jades is that they come in so quickly. Literally a day and a half. And you can harvest those jades all over again. So we got one dinosaur at the moment and it has a life of luxury. Our sweet gem berry is ready. We popped it into a garden pot there ages ago. We're going to give that into the statue here now in the secret woods. That is going to get us another star drop, which is really nice. Maximum energy increase right there. We're now going to purchase our first magic rock candy for three prismatic shards. We had prismatic shards to burn. We have so many of them. So every Thursday we now probably go to the desert trader and get a magic rock candy. And if we can get a total of two, that means we can go down into the mines and have that buff for the whole day, which is going to be amazing. We're smelting more ores now into barrels today. And what we see here now is our first boss. Now it was very simple, just two strikes and it died. But those bosses will get progressively harder. And it drops a huge array of loot. It doesn't drop any amazing loot in particular, but it's all RNG. So here's another boss here now. It's a giant snowman. And that's meant to be a giant skeleton that throws bones at you. And he died in a few hits. Over the next few days, we will encounter more bosses that will get much harder. So we have to prepare by upgrading to a better weapon. What we have here now is the Summit Shaper, the Unforged, the Vortex Vanquisher, and the Wolf's Gravestone. I had enough money to buy one. I had 613,000 gold. So I'm gonna go with the Wolf's Gravestone. And it's an absolutely magnificent <laughs> weapon. And you'll see it here now in a few seconds. It is a crazy strong weapon. Not only does the weapon have a huge high base DPS, it also has a right-click special move where it fires Loads of fireball projectiles and it even has lifesteal. Basically, I am now extremely hard to kill with this weapon. And if you're curious on how to get these weapons, the mods are in the description. This is an actual mod. Can't get these weapons normally in the game. But I figured I'd use the weapons mod in this video because of the boss that I'm going to implement. The bosses are going to get much harder. So we just done another Monster Slayer goal there. And that was the Magma Sprites and the Magma Sparkers. Got a Dwarf Warhammer, but that doesn't compare to our new sword. We will make our sword stronger by putting three rubies into it. There's no point re-enchanting it, because the enchant it has is amazing. A fireball and lifesteal is just really good. So we're going to use this for the rest of the run. It is a ridiculously strong weapon. Now here is another boss, and this one 
has a lot of HP and it does take quite a few hits to actually beat this boss. We have to be very careful because the boss freezes us in place and it shoots many different projectiles at us and it can actually whip us down very quickly. So we need to make sure that we have our heal up at hand if we need to heal up. But not to worry, the sword does see us through the day and that boss is now dead. Back onto the farm, we have more jades and this never gets old for me. I absolutely love getting the jades out of the crystallariums. Another quest, we're going to go with rock rejuvenation and we're going to give Emily some nice gemstones over the next few days. We got danger in the deep again, which was really good. Because it's a mining challenge, you couldn't have really asked for a better quest. Maybe the Skull Cavern Invasion, but the Angel of the Deep is nice. And with the bosses now implemented, it'll be a lot more interesting. Now, the big danger in this floor wasn't the actual boss. It's those squid enemies. They can hit for a truck ton. Here was another very challenging room for me because it had so many spiders and they're all jumping around the place. So I couldn't kill them all in one fell swoop, unfortunately. Eventually, I just put down a staircase and went to the next level because it takes so long to fight all those spiders because they keep jumping around and while they're in the air you can't actually hit them they're invincible so i made it down to the bottom floors here now i got ambushed it didn't really matter though because the weapon i have is so powerful these enemies they just don't really stand a chance unless i just stood there and did nothing i'd be in trouble i picked up an iridium needle off an enemy now this is a magnificent weapon if you spec into it so there's a couple of perks you can choose from the combat tree and you can spec into that weapon. Uh, you can enchant it with some gems that increases critical hit chance. And it's actually probably the best single DPS weapon in the game. The Iridium Needle, hands down. It is quite good for boss builds, but this game doesn't really have any bosses. So we're going to go to Robins today. We're going to upgrade our house and we will try to upgrade our house all the way. We're also going to go to Clint's. We've got a ton of geodes here, so I want to get all the minerals done now as quickly as possible because we are in fall and winter is around the corner. And I want to have all the minerals done at least before we get into winter so I can start focusing on artifacts then. So I just completed rock rejuvenation there. That's more money for us. And Emily will send us a sewing machine the next day for that as well. These arch enemies can be quite dangerous. If they hit you with the arrow, your screen does get darkened quite a bit. So it's very hard to see things. I made it down to the bottom, got some key gems. It was time to visit Marden. Look at all these weapons we get to sell. A lot of these weapons I picked up inside the Volcano Dungeon. Got a few Iridium Needles there too, just from killing enemies in the hardened versions of the mines. And Gil is going to give us a special reward here now for killing 150 Magma Sprites and Sparkers. It's going to give us a phone number, so instead of coming in here to use the item recovery service, we can just call in if we get a telephone off Robin, which is really nice. So I'm going to use the Knight's Helmet now for the rest of the game. It's probably one of my favourite helmets in the game. The Knight's Helmet. And as we can see here now, we have almost all of the goals complete. All that's left is the Serpents. 214 out of 250. So bosses can also spawn outside with the mod I have implemented. And this is the first time I saw this slime boss with all this weird kind of slime balls coming off it. So it didn't do much damage, which was good. So I just went hell for leather. Rushed in, strike the boss a few times with my big bad weapon, and that was the end of that. <laughs> I'm going to get another magic rock candy today. It's crazy how fast the weeks come around, but this challenge did take an extremely long time to make, because time goes slower while you're in the Skull Cavern, and there is a huge amount of Skull Cavern runs in this video. So I just completed the monster eradication goal there for the serpents. That was one of our main challenges done, all monster eradication goals. Have been completed the reward was a napalm ring it's a very nice ring indeed what's great about it is that when you kill an enemy it explodes any sort of ores around that enemy will also dissolve so it's a great ring especially if you want to farm some ores so i'm going to combine it now with my lucky ring and we'll take away the iridium band i don't really need the attack power boost because the weapon i have is so powerful over 245 staircases purchased today this is just a very quick attempt of Junimo kart just to show you my progress that I'm getting a lot better with it. One day, I'm pretty sure I will clear Endless Mode. I'll be able to beat all the levels. So I got pretty far at that attempt. So it's back to Clint. I'm going to get him to break open all of the treasure troves that I have. I got quite a lot of artifacts. And I'm actually at a stage down the game where I only need a small handful of artifacts to complete the museum. But getting those artifacts requires a lot of luck with the RNG gods of this game. 
and we have no control over RNG unless you're the Habu or Blade and you can just do something with steps to manipulate the game, but I'm nowhere near that level. It was time for another Special Orders quest. We're going to go with Prismatic Jelly because that does involve us going into the mines and we might as well hit two birds with one stone. Now, I did plant a lot of taro tubers down here and pineapples and I got those from killing enemies in the Volcano Dungeon just to get some more golden walnuts. We're going to go with Skull Cavern Invasion today. This is a very nice quest indeed. But before we go down to the Skull Cavern, we're going to kill this Prismatic Jelly. It actually popped up the very first time I went down to 4-5 which was really nice. So it didn't take up a huge amount of time at all in order to get that quest with the wizard. So we're gonna give the wizard a jelly. He's a happy wizard. He gives us 5,000 gold. We're a happy farmer, or should I say a miner. It was then time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I won second place. I was actually surprised by this because I had two magic rock candies in there, three prismatic shards, a radioactive bar. But um, obviously it wasn't that impressive to Mary Lewis. So I gambled all the Star tokens as per usual, saved up to 2000, got the star drop and we're straight into Skull Cavern the next day. Now this is the hardened version of the Skull Cavern so you have to be a little bit careful now here. The bosses are much harder, lots of fire breed chickens and we have to watch out but the super long serpents they can hit quite hard as well. The iridium bats also still pack a punch. Because my weapon was so strong I could have very easily used the ladder multiple times to get through the ambush floors but I just wanted to experiment with this crazy weapon and every time I had a boss encounter I just fought the boss to see what kind of items it would drop. From experience so far the bosses didn't drop really good items they just dropped a huge array of mediocre items. You might get one or two diamonds but that would be the extent of it. They didn't drop any special items or items worth hundreds of thousands of gold. So today is Thursday again another magic rock candy for us and now we're going to go down to the quarry here. We got a mystery note we're going to break that open and we got a prismatic shard that was really lucky, I was super happy with that. We're farming the quarry cave again today to see if we get any extra magic rock candies from these enemies, but it was a no-go. I got an event out tonight where the witch came along to curse one of my eggs to turn it into a void egg. I didn't actually realize that event would activate if I had just dinosaurs in the coop, but it appears that the event works regardless of what you have in the coop. If it can produce an egg, the witch will come along and give you a white egg. Or maybe the witch will come along if you have a coop. But if someone knows the answer to that, let me know in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate it. So, our slime hutch is ready to go. And there's a lot of slime balls now to collect. All of this slime could be turned into slime eggs. And the eggs could be sold for loads of money. So I got Robin to build me a horse here. I'm going to call it magic. Because the horse has no legs. And it uses, obviously, uses magic to get around. Hence the name, magic. I also bought a horse flute with my key gems because there wasn't really anything else I needed and that means I can use the horse over on Ginger Island. I'm also going to get some key seasoning. This means that when I make an item using key seasoning such as ginger ale, it will be enhanced so it'll actually give me a lot more luck than intended. And this is going to come in super handy for Skull Cavern runs later on. I also purchased the deluxe bed so my character can sleep in much more comfort. I suppose at the end of the day the most important things for any person are their shoes and their bed. Anything other than that is up to yourself, but you need to have a good bed and a good pair of shoes to have a good comfortable life in Gamer Gar's opinion. So I'm going to make some ginger ale today, and this is gold star ginger ale because we used key seasoning, and as we can see it gives plus two luck. If we didn't use the key seasoning, it would have just given plus one luck. That extra luck is absolutely amazing, it's a game changer, and you're going to see the results in the next Skull Cavern run when we use it. So today I sold iridium bars, iron, copper, gold and radioactive bars. I made a ton of money. I also got 183 more staircases today off the desert trader. We're going back into the volcano dungeon just to farm some items. I'm looking for dragon teeth. And the reason why I need those is because I want to try to make the obelisk that will warp me off the ginger island. For that I need 10 dragon tooth. I also need 10 bananas. That means a couple of extra runs in the volcano to make that happen. I also need 1 million gold on the magical terminal to spawn in the obelisk. So it's a very expensive obelisk indeed. I got super lucky again, Skull Cavern Invasion. I'm also getting the community cleanup quest because I just love the fibre seeds so much. I didn't have a whole use for fibre in this challenge but it would be very handy to have fibre if a prismatic range quest came back up again. So I'm going to spend the whole day pulling up trash here, just down by the bathhouse area, it's probably the best area in the game for pulling up trash. And the next day I completed the quest community cleanup. I get 500 gold 
and I'll get the fiber seeds off Linus the next day as well. Then it's back to Ginger Island just to get more dragon teeth and I got a good few now today which was great just a small handful to go and that'll be 10 in total and I'll be able to get that obelisk once I get a million gold. So I was doing a Skull Cavern run today but this was the hardened version of Skull Cavern and I had all the luck buffs, I had the magic rock candy, I had the ginger ales, I had a luck ring. The only thing I could have asked for which would have increased my luck would be a second luck ring and I haven't gotten that yet. Will I get it before this challenge is finished? We'll find out. <laughs> so that was the slime boss and the great thing about the slime boss was because I had the napalm ring. They all just exploded when they died. It was just so satisfying watching them all just explode in front of me. I got lots of Iridium ores today and the reason why I got so much is because I spammed the staircases so much primarily looking for radioactive ores. I spent all day today farming radioactive ores, just spamming floor one over and over again. Before the day was out I did make a quick trip to the desert and purchased another magic rock candy because it was Thursday. I made 190,000 gold today, 90 Iridium bars and 9 radioactive bars. Back to the quarry cave and I decided to chance my arm to see if I get a magic rock candy but it was a no-go. They didn't drop it today. If I can get one before the challenge is out, I'd be so happy. I know it's a very rare chance, but we still have a chance to get it. Back to the slime hutch, more slime balls. That means more slime for us. And we're going to put this now to the lovely slime press machines. And within about 19 or 20 hours, they are going to produce slime eggs for us. And we're going to sell all those slime eggs to make tons of money. We're going to go with Robin again here now. She's going to upgrade her house even further to make it a bit bigger. And I'm also going to go to the Halloween event here and get the Golden Pumpkin. That's a universal loved gift. It might come in handy later on depending on what kind of quests I get. So i got two blue slime eggs now today and seven green ones. Now the green ones are worth a thousand gold each. That's still really good for putting all that slime in. You get back a great return. I had enough money to finally make the Ginger Island Warp Obelisks. I put that straight down in the farm. That's the first of four obelisks created. Now we're getting Clint to break open some treasure shoves to get some artifacts. So I'm going to purchase a ton of staircases now again today, 127 in total. This is the last day of fall, so we're almost finished with the challenge. It was Krobus's birthday today, the first day of winter. We're going to give him a horseradish, he loves those. I also had a quick look at his inventory. He had a weapon here called Deathmatch and the Black Sword. But they can be forged further, but we needed the Legend Fish to transcend those into their superior versions. Because we weren't really doing a whole lot of fishing in this challenge, we didn't get an opportunity to pull the legend up out of the water. Now, I could have gotten my fishing skill up to 10, and I could have used magic bait and gotten the legend, but it was in the last season now, and I wanted to go hell for leather with mining, so I decided not to pursue those weapons. I went with Key's Prismatic Grange again, and then I got a rare event, and a train came along. It was one of the longest trains ever, but it didn't drop any items at all, so it was a huge waste of time on the second of winter. I did make more crystallariums though, and I'm going to put these inside my house because I have a lot of extra space now. I'm going to fill those up to the top with diamonds, sell those for extra money. I also found Krobus in a game of hide and seek. He rewarded me with a magnifying glass. Thank you very much, Krobus. So I have the savage ring here now, and it gives you a speed buff whenever you kill an enemy. I'm going to use it to farm bugs because I need to get a hundred bug meat just for the purple item for Key's Prismatic Grange. So I spent a great deal of time today just running around with an Abraham ring and a savage ring just wiping out bugs and slimes. And I actually got a lot of really nice items from doing this, including a lot of minerals, some pressure nozzles, and other bits and bobs from the barrels. So it was actually quite the fun day just running around with that setup, wiping out insects. I purchased 100 Georgia Colas and then it was back into Key's secret walnut room to get another couple of key gems, 79 in total. I also spent a great deal of time just cutting down trees, getting hardwood. Needed hardwood for Robin's quest, needed 80 pieces of hardwood to make her happy. I also went back to the desert shredder, because guess what? It was Thursday again. Time to purchase another magic rock candy. I took that straight away, and it was time to do a skull cavern run. I also took the gold star ginger ale, so I was maxed out again with luck. It was going to be another whole day inside the Skull Cavern, fighting bosses, getting the Iridium Ores, and getting rich. So that was the big floaty head boss there that we just fought. He was easy enough, but sometimes that boss can do substantial damage if he hits you with the lightning strikes. You gotta watch out for those. The next day it was just spent processing ores into bars, 
I was going to sell all those. I wanted to get another obelisk. I had so many auto petters, I couldn't sell them. I just put them down into the coop. Maybe the dinosaurs might feel a little bit happier if there's more auto petters to go around. They can all get automated pets. 199,000 gold made, almost 200,000 gold made from selling all the items there. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of my jades and I'm putting diamonds into these crystal items because I have so many staircases, don't really need the jades anymore. I spent the rest of the day farming radioactive ore and then it was onto the desert the next day to get even more staircases, 201 in total. We're then going to get all of our lovely radioactive bars, sell those for 4,500 gold apiece. And we're going to farm even more radioactive ores. Let's have a look at the special orders quest. We had Juicy Bugs Wanted and Robin's Resource Rush. We're going to go with Juicy Bugs Wanted. Um, because I love killing insects because I have a nice big mean weapon. <laughs> Key's Prismatic Range lined up nicely because we have to kill bugs anyway. So why not hit two birds with the one stone? Or two insects with the one big giant bad weapon that flings fireballs at people. <laughs> I also did the fishing event today. But I can't use those items. I did it just because I needed a break from the mines. Because I was getting burnt out a bit. So it was time to make cherry bombs today for Key's Prismatic Grange. I made 51 there. And I had the rest in the chest. It was then time to cut down trees to get sap. Because I needed sap for the yellow item. And sap was the only thing that came to mind. I know there's other items you can get to, you know, to fill the spot of yellow. But sap seems to be the easiest. And because I had the forester perk. I was getting more wood per tree as well. So the wood might come in handy later too. Then it was down into the mines once I had obtained 100 sap, and we were massacring insects again. It was then time to go back into Key's secret walnut room, and we're going to print our usual items. And we're going to give back some key gems, 115 key gems in total. What I was going to do with all these lovely key gems, I was going to buy two deconstructors, and then the rest was going to be spent on hoppers. And I was going to deconstruct the hoppers to get radioactive bars, so I could sell those to get even more money. It's a great money making tactic if you need fast cash. Radioactive bars are just so overpowered. They're just in a league of their own. So we're back on the farm. Look at all our lovely diamonds ready to be collected. Each one sells for 750 gold. And Thursday has come around yet again. So we're going to purchase another magic rock candy. It was then time to process all of our lovely slime into slime balls. I also picked up a secret note here, so I gave a rabbit's foot that I got from killing a serpent into the truck driver and he gave me back a special charm. That is a permanent increase to our luck. It was then time to run around with the hoe and pick up artifacts that I was missing with the museum. And I got two strange dolls needed to hand it to Gunther to almost finish off the artifact set. I was still missing a few bits and pieces, so I traded in tons of Omni Geos for treasure troves and got Clint to break those open. If I got pearls or if I got golden pumpkins they were kind of useless the pirate's treasure was nice but at this stage of the game 5,000 gold wasn't a whole lot of money i had 492,000 gold at the moment it would be nice if i can just increase that to a million i purchased the desert warp obelisk i made it down to floor 100 it's got cavern but this time it activated a nice scene here where i took some iridium milk and it increased my hp by 25 because i got the quest from the secret note i also got a second lucky ring Super lucky, that's two lucky rings now within 100 days. You can't really ask for better than that. The rest of the day was a very fortunate day indeed. There was just loads of iridium, loads of minerals, loads of money. And of course, we're going to spend the next day processing all of these lovely ores into bars. And we're going to purchase some more staircases with the jades that we had left. That's 96 more staircases right there. So we're going to go up to the forge here now. And we're going to combine our lucky ring with our side charmer ring. So we're swapping out the crab shell ring. For the lucky ring. So we're sacrificing the fence, but we are obtaining a luck. We're also gonna get fragments of the past, 100 pieces of bone needed. That'll be very easy to do once we set up ourselves with a monster musk. There'll be enemies literally all over the place. We also have the night market here as well, so we're gonna go to the night market every night. We grab the painting of Dupini because they're so rare, and I'm also gonna do the mermaid event here too and get myself a pearl, which is absolutely useless, but it is cool just doing the event to get that special item nonetheless. The next day, we now have a farm filled up to the top with diamond crystallariums. We're going to go down into the hardened version of the mines, and we're going to kill these skeleton lords for loads of bone shards. Once we get 100, give them to Gunther. That's a nice reward for us. That's going to give us a total of 3,500 gold, which isn't too bad. And we're also going to get a bone mill the next day as well. A baby lizard hatched. We're going to call it Rengoku, because I'm watching Demon Slayer at the moment, 
and I just watched the Mugen Train arc and Rengoku was absolutely amazing. So he is stuck in my mind for the moment. So there you go, Rengoku, our new baby lizard. May his fire breathing techniques surpass that of the best dinosaurs. It was back to the night market of course, we're getting another painting off Lupini here. Now winter has almost come to an end, there is one artifact that we need to complete the museum and that is the trilobite and it is going to be quite a fight to get that because you have to hold it up from the ground you can't get it from treasure troves so it's down to rng to decide if we're going to get that or not so every few days we're going to go over to ginger island we're going to blow up all the nodes on the dig site and cross our fingers in the hopes that we're going to get the trilobite so we're selling more weapons here to marlin back down into skull cavern what we have now is maximum luck we have a magic rock candy, we have an enhanced ginger ale which gives plus two luck and we have two lucky rings, it's also a super lucky day. So you cannot get more luck than what we have right now, this luck is just maxed out for us. And it's showing because we're getting tons of prismatic shards, we're getting tons of iridium ores, we're going to get tons of money from this. We're going to go back to the dig site here now over on ginger island, we're going to detonate all these nodes in the hopes that we're going to get a trilobite. Unfortunately. That's not the case. You can also get one down at the beach here. So we're going to go to the beach every day. We're going to go to Citrusap Forest every day. And we're just going to hone up everything that we see. In the hopes that this trilobite would pop up before winter has come to an end. 224,000 gold made at the end of today. And we also have a huge array of diamonds to sell as well. Because our crystal items are now ready. We're also going to get all the slime. Turn that into lovely slime balls. And we're going to harvest all of our lovely iridium bars. And farm radioactive ore. For the rest of the day, what a great productive day it was. The next day, we managed to get one red slime egg. That sells for a lot of money, which is really nice. We also have enough money now to get the desert obelisk, so we're going to put that straight down in our farm. That's a desert obelisk and the ginger island obelisk before the challenge has been done. So it's really nice. I got finally, I got farming level 5 from Pet the Lovely Dinosaurs. It was time for another key quest, and look at that. We had danger in the deep again for 50 key gems, so we're going to take that quest, and we actually do that in just one day, I just end up spamming staircases, because I didn't have a whole lot of time to go through it legitimately, because I really wanted to get the trilobite. I can't remember what I picked for level 5 farming there, it didn't really matter, because the challenge was almost finished, I got a palm fossil today, I thought for a split second that was the trilobite, I got very excited, then I realised, no, it was a palm fossil, we already have that. So I was very disappointed there. So today it was Christmas. I wasn't in the greatest of moods. So I gave Haley some clay. And I thought I might get off on her reaction. But she was very calm about it. And she said clay. Tanks. And that was kind of it. I was hoping for a much more explosive reaction from Haley, Because we all know how she can get. But no. She took it very well. I got a ruby off Pam. Hurrah. Back to the dig site. Can we get this trilobite? No, it's not happening today. Or will it? Let's detonate the rest of these nodes and find out. So we're getting lots of bone shards. We're getting lots of Nautilus fossils. And they're very common. And we're getting everything in between, including all different manner of cogs. We're even getting prismatic shards here. We're getting everything except the children. We're getting ancient swords, bone flutes, chewing sticks. You name it, we've dug it up out of the ground. But the trilobite is just not popping up for us. We do have three days left. I also got the ancient fruit here from the greenhouse. Which I thought was a bit hilarious because there's nothing else in there. I could only grow the ancient fruit and sell it because I got it from the mines. They were the rules that I set. They're the rules we're going to stick with. So I'm going to sell all of these leftover ores to Clint. Because we're nearing the end of our challenge. And I just didn't have time to process them into bars. So that's going to make Clint's day. Because he's always pouting on about ores. I got a chipped mug there off the ground. I thought for a split second that was a trilobite, but it wasn't. Now, I do get a magic rock candy as a reward here for finding all the minerals. I got a crystallarium too. Didn't really bother grabbing the other rewards because I just didn't have time to decorate the farm. I just really wanted this trilobite. I desperately wanted it. I really wanted to complete the challenge. Another palm fossil, that was a huge disappointment because it looked like the trilobite, but no, it was another palm fossil. But our search continues, there are more artifact spots all around the map. I got another ancient seed, if only this was a few months ago, it would have been a great addition to the greenhouse. There was an artifact spot up here beside Grandpa's shrine, will Grandpa have mercy? No, 
Clay and bone fragments. Probably my grandpa's bone fragments. <laughs> Between last books and everything else, it looked like this chillabite was not going to pop up. Now, I am a very optimistic and determined individual, and I wasn't just going to give up because it was the 28th. I was going to scrounge the entirety of this map. I was going to get every single artifact spot before I went to bed to make the most of today. And believe you me, there was not one artifact spot that I did not come across. I found them all, hold them all up, but this trilobite did not want to come out of the ground and be added to a lovely museum where people could look at it for the rest of its life in awe and wonder. And that is the challenge completed. We did manage to complete all monster eradication goals, which is really nice. We couldn't complete the museum, however, because we were missing the trilobite, and we made 3,455,000 gold, which wasn't too bad for a mining-focused challenge. If you've made it this far into the video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If my channel grows to a certain extent, I can become a full-time YouTuber again and release videos like this every week. If you enjoy 100 day style videos like this, check out the huge array of 100 day videos I have on my channel. Thanks a million for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now, and I hope you have a great week.